miss out on the conversation we had. Mm. Um, well, we could always repeat. Gonna... What, what, what were we just talking yeah. about? What Restage was that? Restage it again. Let's have well, like a cold and dead version it... of it that's completely artificial. Well, to be fair, it wasn't really a conversation. It was really more like us talking about metals. This problem, problems, you know? yeah. We we yeah. Oh, and the thing where my dick fell off. It was off. more of an yeah. Yeah, it was, it was more of an intervention. It was an Wait. intervention into your your. We told you to stop losing your dick all the time. It just keeps falling off everywhere. And yet, I imagine the EFAP are. intervention would be a psychiatrist talking about how we just we won't stop talking about like Star Wars and things. Like mm. you need to stop. You've been talking. You talked <clears> about a woman for twelve hours. You need to stop. <laughs> or That's you terrible. gotta keep go further. Or we haven't. We haven't talked about it enough. We haven't talked about Star Wars enough. You haven't gone further than you needed to. That's what they'll you say about it. You haven't gone further than you needed to. I don't get it. Um, well, that's how right. they talk in Welsh, Lind. Uh, from the land Wales. of Wales. My, my Welsh training is not yet finished. I, I'm out of touch with the Welsh. I have to relearn it. You'll get there eventually. My Welshness has gone... Has, Increase double since last we met. Damn. Ah, Twice the Welsh, we double the fall. Don't worry, chat. You're on screen, you little rascals. You're Twice fine. the Welsh, double the sheep. Ooh, nice. Ah. Is that is that true? Have we, we've discussed this before? I think that it doesn't Welshland have more sheep than people. Kind of like the Star Wars fandom. Ka-chow! But seriously, isn't in Welsh? Uh, I feel like that's not than people? edgy enough because that just implies it's over half uh, consumers, and it's like, right, we're looking at like a oh. full ninety percent, okay, at least. Well, I think the star. I think it gets the idea across that there are more sheep than people. I think in the it star does Wars too. Um, and if you have any problem with that, feel free to tweet at JXE <laughs> and let him know exactly how you feel. About his well, Nazi friends on the podcast. Oh, we could uh, we could open with that tweet then, if you want. We can show the people. Ooh, which tweet, one? Jay, the one that like, you shared. One? You want to oh, the one about it? episode four. Well, oh yeah. So I should probably open with that. The 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 wonderful people in chat. They've not seen our coverage of episode four yet because it was supposed to go out yesterday. Unfortunately, YouTube. I, I was on Discord complaining about this. YouTube did a check, quote unquote, that lasted for seven hours. So. It, it took me done. ages to upload my videos because of that check too. The Fuck copyright thing. It took forever. It never takes that long. The ending. It, 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 it turns out there's uh, nothing it just wrong. Started taking long recently. I don't know. It, but, With the last maybe, uh, like the maybe the servers are having trouble or something. Oh. It might be. It might be explicitly oh. Star Wars related <laughs> because both of the Kenobi videos that I put out, they they uploaded and everything fine, except for the copyright check, which took forever for mm. them to do. Well. Yeah, this one, it would have gone out on time, it would have been beautiful, but no, it refused until, like, well late into the day. I I was almost going to sleep, and then it went, it's ready now, and I was like, <laughs> whatever. No. So, too late. it won't go out today, because we're just doing this little, little here stream. Uh, it'll go out to Mozraz, and I don't know when I'll re-upload this stream. I don't exactly Mozraz. know. You'll know in the future, people. Mozraz. You'll be seeing this and being like, I know when he puts it up. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. The episode 5 coverage is being edited, I was about to say as we speak, not quite, whenever we're not oh, speaking. Not right now, but... <laughs> not quite. <yeah. laughs> um, Whatever breaks that are available. <laughs> but yeah, for those who haven't heard, uh, they're both pretty bad, 4 and 5. Uh, what? I think I say it in the recording, but 5 had a very good reputation. We talked for a while about our theories on exactly why that is. We won't need to talk about 5 really at all, because this video we're covering doesn't go into 5, and nor do we have to. So you'll be able to see all that fresh in the episode. However, it's only just a spoiler to say that um, I basically concluded, I think, that it's the worst of the five episodes, number five. I I, I would, agree. would agree with that. Yeah, it's, um, and that is that is quite an accolade. Yeah, it's difficult because, to do well, that. So yes, because <laughs> three and four three are and four really four bad. <laughs> and two, really, yeah. That's yeah. Two okay. two sort of two, two's just. And I'm curious uh, if one even really holds up now either. Probably not. Like in uh, any way. <laughs> When do things way get better on a rewatch? Rarely. <laughs> and I don't think Kenobi Episode 1 is going to be one of those unusual things that when we take a look at it, it actually improves in quality. 
Mm -hmm. Working my way through it in much more detail with a fine tooth comb. What's wrong yeah. with the big fat combs? They're they missed a lot of stuff. Wet. There's too much space in between the. I feel the like teeth. them being wet does not describe them being fat tooth combs, <laughs> but rather it's a. You could be fat and wet, <laughs> right, metal? You can, <laughs> but don't what discriminate. I'm is they would seem to be two different things. You know, it, it, it being wet has nothing to do with it being a fat tooth comb. And the only time that you should ever use fine and Kenobi in a sentence is, do you want to watch Kenobi? <sighs> fine. Fine. Um, oh, that was a mistake to say that. But yeah, there's this, uh, there's a tweet that's got over 10,000 likes, oh where the argument is basically, remember what happened to Ming-Na Wen's character in, no, I was about to say Book of Boba Fett, but it was in Mando that that was established, right? Her stupid stomach. She got shot in the stomach yeah, by a blaster. That's not, that's not, that is not the only example. Well, of no, so wait. Tweet. If you remember, uh, precious, precious chat, that video is still up on the Moolah channel. We all laugh our asses off the second we see that. I think it's bloody brilliant. Another example is pa somehow Palpatine returned. Basically, <laughs> the, the ridiculed fucking thing by literally everybody all over the world. I don't even know how that one would be honestly put in these examples. Um, the only one that I think would be controversial among Star Wars fans is the Darth Maul one. We still think it's stupid as fuck, but a lot of people are like, no, 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 that one works because he survived by being very angry. Um, he was thrown, like, into space or something? He fell down a bottomless pit. I don't even know. After being chopped in half by a lightsaber. Was, you know, and he was really pissed off about that. <laughs> I would he, be upset too, but maybe I don't know the if force he could just float. Like, yeah, I don't know if that just lets my body survive, you know? Like, I've been bisecting, regardless of how I feel about it. Do you have the dark side rags? No, I, no, I don't. So what would you know? I have, I have no dark side connections, what's, at least I don't think so. Maybe mm -hmm. it's very subversive and subtle. Mm. Well, I think I'll like add a, a lot of Star Wars fans. Just not telling us. Mm. Imagine, Jay, imagine all of the Star Wars fans who oh, hate our guts. Imagine me, I'm right here. Say... <laughs> I suppose you killed true. him. <laughs> imagine, yourself, <laughs> imagine yourself in like third person, right? Imagine, Jay. Imagine all of the people on the internet who love Star Wars and they think that we're big dumb stupids who can't enjoy anything, who unironically say that EFAP has fallen to the dark side amongst mm. themselves. That's pretty Monk. cringe. It's Monk? Pretty cringe. Monk? Monk? What am I missing? Is jungle out there? Um, sorry, the fourth example is, uh, is the Grand Inquisitor getting stabbed because he comes yeah, back. So the fourth reference is its own, the, own, the series itself. So yeah, uh, the, their point is, people survive this, so how, how is it going to be shocking that Reva survives being stabbed by Vader? And it's like, it's funny because you're like, which time? Yeah, because <laughs> twice now. The spoilers yeah. for episode 5, it's dumb. <laughs> no, no, they probably it's shouldn't insane. have had her say she played dead, because that confirms that they expected her to be dead, and they just didn't know the difference, and that's embarrassing. I'm telling you, man. If I'm if I'm in Star Wars and I'm a Sith, I'm just chopping off heads. No, stab him in one of I'm the many stomachs. <laughs> yeah, I just I just gonna go ham on that. I'm just gonna dice you. You're I gonna get him. diced with a lightsaber. I'm gonna chop you up and put you in a taco. Sweet. And then I'm gonna eat you. Um. Like ham. So anyway, I guess for like, anybody exactly like ham. who doesn't watch the minis, you psychos. We didn't. We haven't yeah, been liking freaks. Kenobi. We've been thinking Kenobi not very good. Um, Wait, what? Shocking. Kenobi is not shocking. good. Kenobi is bad. If you think it's not Boring. bad, you are wrong. Oh my god. It's uh, incredibly inconsistent. It's super disrespectful. And frustrating to watch. It does all the things you'd be worried that it does. Like, Ooh. contradict the OT. Contradict... Ooh, they wouldn't do that. Character traits. Make everybody what? stupid through very poorly put together plot lines. Waste time. Yeah. And That's squander potential. Mm. <sighs> um, what a what a shame. But you know, Ruined plenty of people Ruined. enjoy it, and um, it's nice to Bless see their hearts. your little, little interviews and videos and assessments and reviews, and just check out everyone's opinions on everything. And 
As people may know, Red Letter Media have gone over quite a bit of Star Wars, Star Trek, mm. the Marvel, and, the Star Wars. and then they do some highlights on some more obscure movies here and there, and then they do their best, the worst stuff. Funny Maybe. lads. Funny, funny lads. Um, Hell yeah. They came out with yeah, a with a take on Kenobi, and I think some of you in chat would be like, oh, come on. Just, they're, just having, they're just having a different opinion. You know what? I could have agreed with that, if not for... How many messages were sent, how many requests were sent to cover this, combined with some of the things they actually say in here? Chat, I don't think you're ready. Okay. Yeah, you guys sent me a lot of messages, way more than normal, about, have you seen this? Have you seen what they say? And I get tagged, <laughs> rags. Have you watched this RLM video? It's horrific. There was something that was and... said that uh, I was like, I think this is a hotter Star Wars take than we've had about anything. Um, so... It'll be interesting to get to that one, and it's said very casually. So, oh, um, then I know exactly which one you mean. I, I think I do too, but it's hard to tell. So many bad takes happen. I would go as far as saying, both before and after seeing this video, that I would recommend RLM as a channel. They are fun. Oh, yeah. They have lots of really yes. interesting takes. They have lots of experience when it comes to uh, the production and consumption of uh, uh, storytelling, media. But, you know, sometimes they say some things that are a bit strange. And, uh, this is no exception. And it, like, it hits the ground running. They don't really have a format for how they're discussing this. They just sort of discuss it. And they yeah, just jump just around topics. Relaxing. Um, relaxing. and so what I've done is cut a one-hour video down to 24 minutes. Because oh, anything we, like, 100% agree with them on, I figured it wasn't necessary. So, for example, they do randomly sort of insert, like, wow, how dumb is the trench coat thing? Or, wow, how dumb is the, uh... Oh, I just realized the trench coat thing hasn't come out yet on our coverage. <laughs> yeah, because oh. that was episode four. Um, what, what things can I reference that have happened? Just all the stupid shit in the first three episodes, yeah. I guess. Like the chasing. Yeah. Well, like um, like, um, like uh, them putting, like Vader putting Obi-Wan's face in the fire. Yeah. Everybody thinks yeah, that's have, cool, yeah. though. They have yeah. an opinion on that, Jay, yeah. Um, this is, I was about to mention before we started, actually, it's like, I don't know why we're going through the whole thing. Like, there's a bunch of stuff in there that we said as well. But now you said, oh, I cut it down. It's like, oh, okay. Yes, yeah. We're fine. Yeah, and they have a couple <laughs> of makes, tangent makes conversations of about stuff that I just, I don't have an opinion yeah, yeah. on. Uh, one of the ones is, like, how tall Veda is. They do, they go on that for a little while, and it's just like, I don't think we need to oh, yeah, yeah. put that in there. Talk about right. how tall Vader is. Really, a lot considering <laughs> how much of a minute insignificant detail that is and Which considering weird. the things that are in this show that are actually important to note i think it, uh, it's important to give context the red Le red Le media are seen as like the ones that took down the prequels in a sense and so there's like an aspect to this where it's like the kenobi show is practically on par or worse with the sequels a lot of people feel that way i uh, i would go as far as saying it's easily worse um the the prequels didn't like assassinate Obi Wan Kenobi. Um, this did really quick and several times over. It's it's kind of weird. Yeah, Obi Wan's ruined now. They they've Obi Wan sucks. Obi -Wan. Um, Obi -Wan sucks big time. Tiny penis as well. And like it's so. Oh my goodness. But I'd be happy to entertain the idea that uh you know how does it all rank really you know but I think a lot of people jump the gun because it's new content where they're just like this is leagues ahead of the prequels and it's like okay all right if you say so okay, you down. say so um <laughs> and so a lot of their thoughts and perspectives come from like that position and and one of the things that people I think expected as a result of their their sort of approach is that they would tear this apart because it's like it's almost like as in that same sector of content where it's like Ewan McGregor's Obi Wan, which feels more connected mm -hmm. to the prequels than it does to the OT, and so, and and it may have some reference. So it's just people were like, oh, and look, it's got all the same sort of things you can point out: plot problems, like awkward production elements, um, uh, really poor storytelling, terrible dialogue. It's like this is gonna be great, and then they sort of did something else, um, and and that's what I mean. So. We, we, this is why we, we were asked by many people to cover this. Now what I've done is bake in the EFAP logo on it at uh, intervals. And so hopefully we should be right for getting copyright hit. Because they run that on their channel as far as I know. Um, it's going to be a bit of a risk because of how the audio works. But uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. I think I get little little warnings, right? Or the stream... It'll say stuff before it completely nukes the channel, right? <laughs> if, I don't actually yeah. know. I think we should be okay. 
Um, Let's go find out. But yeah, I've seen I've seen a couple people even tweet about this, like like how annoyed they are with their reviews. Just like, all right, let's go in. <laughs> and this is the thing I want to make it clear: myself, Rags, and I think Metal are very much biased in favor of RLM. Okay. Oh I yeah, really I watch like like all the time. It's super fun content. Easily one of my favorite channels. So, you know, not not just trying to hate them for the sake of it. Fringy and Jay, however, hate this channel. With a fire yeah, they're like, like oh, they suck. Yeah. 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 Constantly I mean, having to calm them true. down. And be like, yeah. Remember when Every they said they have the best I've seen, I've hated. Uh, oh, my oh God. I just, Jay already yeah. doubled down, so I can't even make more jokes. So let's just start, I guess. <laughs> I just, we're already doomed. Yeah. So, you guys ready to yeah. begin? I'd love to begin. As I'd I love say, to, I guess so. yeah. it really hits like, the ground running. So, here we go. The reason why uh, I are found we getting it, a watch together? Uh, are we getting a link oh. for watch together? I'm retarded, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least I didn't do a Chud logic and just show the link on stream. Okay, I get points for that, right? We we just could have just ran that's... with it. Could just run with it. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good edit. Uh huh. <laughs> what are you gonna I think say? Showing the link on stream is uh, an easier mistake to make than just not okay. giving people a link at all to your. Your, the people in Because like, you can see on Watch Together, you can see at the bottom the users that are and aren't in. Like, yeah, but the when... invite uh, displays on the center of your screen. So if you miss that you're streaming your screen, wouldn't that just make you a completely foolish wombo? Also, I see disable chat cover. There we go. Let me let me see this here. Can I can I do this here and go there and then watch that. Close and then click this link and see what happens if we slim. There we go. For anyone in chat wondering, the room code is HY0. <laughs> I'm gonna... he I, was waiting for, I was waiting for someone to stop me and then no one did. And I was just like, well, okay, since the room code actually, is like actually... you thought, 25 you we letters really or whatever, I was like, I'll let you get at least halfway. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a joke at the end of this rainbow of. Of an adventure. Imagine you read out the whole thing and you said three of those are wrong. <laughs> it's like, well, I should have kind of tempted to do that. <laughs> because how would you even figure that out at that point, right? Yeah, I'll give you ninety percent of the room code. That Only the real fans will be able to get in. Mm -hmm. We will. We will post the entire room code. Uh, as part as part of several different puzzles that we will post <laughs> everywhere, and if you work out all of the puzzles uh, before the stream ends, you get in the room. The thing is, if they get in and the room, that doesn't do anything other than allow them to pause and randomly like they don't get to talk to us or anything. <laughs> it's just like... they, can, they could they could make a video in that time and then put it on. Oh yeah, and they could be they like, could, hello, they could record something. I am here. Record it. To warn you. Put it on YouTube. The Snyder paste Cut the, paste the link, 2 and then we, I think the coming. rules are that we just have to let oh, them. no. This is, a. Uh... Oh, I... Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh what no. happened? You okay? Oh, no, I, 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 I logged into a... I, well, I didn't log in. I'm always logged in, but I, I went to Fur Affinity to check my notes, and there's a picture of someone in their fursona getting, getting railed by Albert Wesker, and I thought that was amusing. That that you could have just kept that. that yeah, yourself. you didn't have to say like, that at all. Have, it's no, very no. interesting that that's he, that's like oh, he's got the gloves and everything. No, it's actually in his I'm sunglasses. Just, I'm glad you shared that. The, sun, the glad sunglasses. You, I'm glad you the sunglasses to stay on during. I just want to die now. They're inside too, so there's dude? no reason for the sunglasses. They're just glasses. Hey, sometimes some houses, you know, they have windows, and sometimes the sun it comes in through the window. Not the uh, no. This is probably some umbrella facility, and it's miles underground. They're they're trying to get as far away from the sun as possible because they're umbrella. If they were parasol, that would be more appropriate for a company name because they're always trying to get underground away from the sun because it's parasol supposed to stop well, the sun you know from what, getting you on know you. What else doesn't you know what else you you get away from underground rags? The fucking rain. So there's no sun down here, but oh, I wish I wish the rain would stop. It's been raining in this basement for days. That's how dumb unfortunately, you said. Un unfortunately, unfortunately, Jay, rainwater does indeed mm. collect in all kinds of aquifers and stuff underground, and it That's seeps true, into the water. But I don't think 
I don't. But think I, you would call the spirit it of your range. question or your your notification is is I I understand what you get what you're getting at here. Not bad. Point being, yeah, Umbrella hard. does sound does Umbrella sound more evil than Parasol because of Resident Evil or just like naturally it sounds more evil. I don't because really, now honestly, we associate I don't think Umbrella of the with words Parasol. Sound particularly evil. Parasol, Umbrella, umb Oh, maybe Umb. The U M B is like Umbrella, Umbra, Umbra. Isn't is that like uh? Doesn't that mean night or something? In well, um, Parasol starts with para. Umbra is Latin for shade. Okay. Oh, like an umbrella. Umbra. Okay. Like it creates shade. An umbrella. Because Umbra is Latin for shade. We already derailed so hard. We just started. It's amazing. Speaking I was derailed. almost going to hit play. We would nearly be. Speaking of, speaking of derail, has anyone have seen those round trains? No. Oh away. my goodness. Those round trains. They <laughs> look like trains. It looks like something in the 1950s that they would think a train will look like in the future. I didn't, actually, I didn't actually mean for that to tangent. I just wanted to make the joke. If you see, we'll show people the round trains later. Speaking of round trains, though. Let's watch this video. Everybody in? I'm in. Segue. Wonderful. Excellent. Uh, All right. Yeah. Wimp the is reason in here, why I, I found it uh, lovely and charming and fun. The very first episode was because the bar had been set so low from my traumatic experience with Star Trek. Picard. I don't know. I don't know what even time they're in with the Picard thing, right? They could be traveling all over so, the place. Looking at the, but looking at the words on the cop there, police, ice, it's almost like they messed up and they didn't spell police again. <laughs> police, like, ice. <laughs> police ice. Like they forgot the P-O-L in police. And they were gonna write it a second time. <laughs> um, but yeah, the opening is just a matter of look, things have been pretty bad, right? Like Picard. Yeah. Therefore, Kenobi is kind of kind of neat. And it's weird because um funny enough, it's a Gundam has a, a comment getting up there on, on this video that basically says uh, Kenobi is his Picard. It's like, yeah, this is the same shit, man. I'm confused. Yeah. Um I've seen that coverage of Picard, and Picard looks oh, yeah. fucking terrible, Hilarious. of course. But it's weird to be like, Picard's so bad, this is a welcome release. It's like, how? <laughs> yeah. Mm. But all oh, right. Oh, no. Guys, no. <clears throat> no. Hmm? Oh, it what? hurts. It, the thing I posted, it hurts. I, it's just, it's, I just, yeah, I'm not, I'm not. I hate it. Ain't talking about that. I'm talking about the criticism of the show. Which is plenty. No. And charming yeah. and fun. The very first episode was because the bar had been set so low from my traumatic experience with Star Trek Picard, I'll literally enjoy uh, having fecal matter rubbed into my eyeballs. So <laughs> I enjoyed the Accurate for what Kenobi is, having fecal say, matter rubbed in your eyes. Though. I think that's the meanest yeah. thing he says about the show throughout the entire thing. <laughs> because I think so, yeah. He just said a... It, it, does it seems call to warm up to the show as it as the episode progresses. Does yes. He? Um, I well, I think, I I think, think he just called it... Oh, his point there is, theoretically, fecal matter wouldn't matter to him. I don't think he thinks of the show that way. I suppose so, yeah. We um, think it is, though. Oh, yeah. We think the show is fecal matter. <laughs> and the first episode's just a distant fart, <clears throat> but it quickly turns into full-on poo. What we've often Diarrhea. said is when we watch, like, things that are okay, they come across as really good when we watch loads of bad stuff. And then we try and, like, pull ourselves down a bit, like, okay, you know, it's still, it's still like, it's still got its normal issues as opposed to being um, mm -hmm. great or anything. Uh, but they seem to have gotten to the point where Picard's so bad, it's, it's pushing really bad shit up all the way up to mediocre to good, I guess. Um, but it's so odd because like, couldn't Kenobi have been so bad that it pushes Picard up? Is there any reason why they couldn't have just switched places? I know, it's interesting to think what would have happened if they watched it the other way around, right? Yeah. Or didn't watch Picard at all and just watch this. I guess I'm confused too because wouldn't, uh, wouldn't Star Trek Discovery have been that level of bad? From what I hear anyway, Star Trek Discovery is hideously sure awful. It's Really bad, yeah. I'm assuming there's people in chat who've watched it. I, I've only heard bad things. Um, no one in chat has watched it. So you'd think that would also maybe prep you for being like, you know what, Picard ain't so bad anymore. And then I was thinking, wouldn't Rise of Skywalker have been so bad that maybe they I feel like we've already gotten over this hump years ago. 
Yeah, yeah. How far back are we going to go? Exactly, like you keep tracing you know, and you're like, like is it the just... dawn of time wasn't great. <laughs> there was there was know. some bugs. Literal bugs. There wasn't bugs. In the beginning yet. the universe was <laughs> created. This has been widely regarded as a bad move. It took <laughs> billions of years for us oh, to get a good guide. Nice, nice, I got that one. Oh, wow, nerds. You. With your references. So. I guess the point being is that we too also think that Star Wars has been terrible for many years, but that yeah. doesn't make Kenobi any better. It nope. still is what it is. Well, remember, a lot of people would accuse us of being like, oh, so the prequels are better now because the sequels are so bad. And it's like, I think we've been pretty consistent on how we feel about the prequels. Uh, um, prequels are bad, but I kind of like parts of them. And I yeah, appreciate but that they exist, but they're bad. When we have good and bad to represent the two halves of the scale almost as like a umbrella terms um, or parasol terms, maybe I should say. I think that yeah, we just need to be a little bit more specific, right? We're just like, it's like, it's like three out of ten bad, while the sequels are like two out of ten bad. Which is only one number, true. It's a big what number. A number that is. <laughs> that is yeah. What a number that is. How many <clears throat> discussions have we had on the differences between a two and a three? I can't say it's been... Uh, that, we, we have people being like, why do they rate everything like a three? And it's just like, we have not, but it does come up a lot. We a lot does, of threes yeah. tend to be made, we have noticed. It just so happens that people like to make three out of tens. And people <laughs> like, like to, to clap them. at three out of tens. So three out of tens persist. I'm sure we'd much rather be discussing if this is a, is this a five or a six or a seven? And we could kind of talk about, no, we always talk about, is this a two, three or four? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, sometimes we're really happy to announce that we've watched something that's a five. But the, the, the I, I don't that? know if that's, in, in the video, but doesn't Mike like call it a guilty pleasure at the end? So like, he, yeah, if, if I guess is uh, is most of this would be included in this video, but the okay. the participants you got Jay thinks it's bad, not the, not this Jay, the other Jay, Jay Bauman. Yeah, he, he's going as far as saying bad. Mike is going as far as saying, yeah, bad. No, no, that, that, no, no you're confused. That is me. No, <laughs> now you you're going to confuse I, everyone, saying, Jay. I, I I I am saying this is bad. Well, that's, you're saying Jay it's worse is, than that. Right? Jay is wearing a suit made of a type of prehensile rubber, much like they do in Hologram Man. Hmm. So anyway, Bauman says... Okay, now you've lost me. ...that uh, Kenobi bad. Mike says, Kenobi bad, but really enjoyable. And then Rich says, no, Kenobi okay. Kenobi okay. Super okay, even. Super okay, yeah. So, <laughs> and, and we get a different statements made throughout... Uh, at around this, so we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll yeah. see what they are. Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> I enjoy the show. Okay. And it might be you might be right. The bar is very low right now. Yeah, it's very low. So the bar I, I was curious to watch this just because, like, I like you and McGregor as Obi Wan. He's the best thing about those prequels. What do you think about that? What is the best thing? The best thing about the prequels. We've we've so I think we've are, said. I feel like there are a lot of actors that you could name those being one of the. Well, best so uh, the Emperor is a pretty good thing about the prequels. Yeah. He's pretty strong throughout. I, would, I guess oh, I would just say I think that, that Obi Wan's one of the best parts of the uh, prequels. I think it's a fair choice. Right I'm that's trying to think. Who I would remember them. It's a character I remember the most, and I haven't seen them in forever. So I probably would agree with that just by that definition or that context of for myself i think the only real competition he might have is palpatine good old palpy good old palpatine uh, but i'm seeing yeah, a lot of it, there's not a lot of oh dexter jetster yeah of course of course dexter jetster <laughs> Ja, ja, ja. Are, we not, are we uh we're not gonna <sighs> say that honorable Hayden mention Christensen is also pretty good um i think he's fine i uh, think he's fine uh, the I, problem I with have... the prequels is that you can't tell a lot of the times if it's just a weird, bad acting job, or if, or if Lucas just wanted them to do his bizarre alien speech. I'll happily, um, mm -hmm. like when I see Hayden Christensen pop up, I'm like, e yay! <laughs> yay! But if you were like, you know, try and remove your own personal flisms there, I'd be like, he's. He's fine. You know. While um, Ewan McGregor, I think, is a, not only a fantastic actor, but he, a lot of that shines through with his performance yeah. in the prequels. A lot of lines that he delivers are given more emotion and sort of character context than they would have been with a shitty actor, I believe. Uh, same I for the so. Emperor. Mm, yeah. Wow, yeah. I, yeah, between Obi-Wan and the Emperor, I think, are kind of the top two, I'd say. 
Because some people were saying Dooku. It's like, uh, maybe he's just he's in it for like five minutes. Um, so <laughs> it's kind of hard to say. Child Oh, Boba yeah, Fett. Dooku's. Yeah, I like Dooku a lot. He's pretty damn cool. Um, so, yeah, I guess the point I'm posing here was just to say, I think that's a fair choice from, uh, from Jay. This is going to get complicated as we can progress, isn't it? <laughs> Call him with his last name, whatever it is. He's got a this Bauman. It sounds like I'm saying Bauman. something weird when I do that. Sounds like a German surname, actually. Bauman. 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 He's the Bauman. Wow, making fun oh, of me Bauman. already. Wow. Wow. Oh nine! Oh nine! Oh nine! Sir Bowman is talking about Kenobi. <laughs> Kenobi. But all right, let's see what they say in response. He's the most boring character. I'm not talking about characters. I'm talking about no, him as an actor. He's not. He's the, the most best boring character. about those. He movies. is a good actor playing a very boring character. So right. that is a, that is an incredibly hot take. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I've heard the prequels character. be called boring. I don't know how many times I've ever heard people say Obi Wan Kenobi as a character is boring. It's like I have oh, never whoa. heard that before. <laughs> I was very surprised when I heard that while I was watching the video. It's like, uh, okay, that's oh, yeah, a that was, new one. This is why a lot of people said they couldn't make it five minutes in this video because the takes were so bizarre. Without like, I, <laughs> it's it's one thing to have this perspective. It's another to not realize that this is the kind of thing you need to explain a little bit if you're gonna say yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, people well, do not believe I this. Think you'll find generally that a lot of people think Obi Wan is one of the most interesting characters in the uh, in the series. Yes, uh, with I think good reason. <laughs> He's... I think so. He's an interesting guy. So yeah, He's maybe we should um, um... maybe we should go over it a little bit just to try and flesh out an argument instead of just saying no you sort of thing. So like, who is Obi Wan no Kenobi? You. It's like, seems to me he's almost an archetypal paragon Jedi. He's like, he believes as a person that the Jedi are, you know, good-natured and protect the innocent and the, the weak from the evil and um, help people where he can and do his best, try hard and be courageous. Like, he's got all those attributes whilst having been given the responsibility of training what's supposed to be the guy who's going to save the world. And that all starts mm -hmm. to fall apart gradually as uh, the different adventures with them are going worse and worse. Meanwhile, trying to subvert the plans that are going to destroy the Jedi and have to face the fact that the guy he trained turned out to be one of the worst pieces of shit in the universe. Like, that's like a, his journey overall. Being given an opportunity to set into motion events that will make things right um, by sending Luke on his journey to become a Jedi. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so, because uh, some people are like, well, aren't archetypes boring or whatever, and it's like, well, the whole point is that he has to remain that committed to his position, despite everything going wrong, basically, and it's, uh, it ain't easy for him, and he still manages to maintain some level of, like, lightheartedness, but, you know, it's fair to say he's broken by the end of the trilogy. Um, which is why this season had a shit ton of potential. Because what, what does yeah. that look like? With a guy who's pretty damn confident, and uh, you know, like when you look at the beginning of uh, Revenge of the Sith, he's like super overconfident, um, in a, in like a fun way. Him and Anakin have, have, have developed that kind of relationship. They are the two Jedi that can deal with mostly everything at this point, stuff like that. And then, yeah, uh, I would be curious to conclude that he's got like no elements of interest to him when a lot of the memes uh, focus around him. And that's not to say that just because you have a meme made about you, that makes you an interesting character. But think of the, the memes are often about the delivery of lines. We kind of went yeah, over this a bit earlier. Uh, but him, him, him saying hello there the way that he does, it, makes, it gives you an impression of, uh, man, this guy. Because uh, I think one of our criticisms, what a fucking insane decision it was to jump down to Grievous in front of his entire droid army. Um, yeah. And look how confident he is. It's just like, I mean, I guess it's a, it'll give you characteristics when you do stuff like that. Sure. Uh, Definitely a characteristic. Not something I'd do. So, uh, I don't know. Somehow, saying the prequels are boring, to me, is a lot less controversial than saying this That's character in particular is boring. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, so Obi-Wan was a boring, boring character. There are definitely things you could pull out of the prequels, but Obi-Wan is not. Obi-Wan yeah. is not really on that list. Like, maybe you could find some scenes where that are just not... 
like generally, he could be he's got the interest in that stuff going on. Good, but well, yeah, and then yeah. I guess the yeah, we need the boilerplate clones and everything. Uh, we need the boilerplate thing of just like, but by the way, boring, pretty much down to the person. If you find him boring, right, I guess you do. Yeah, boring. yeah. What one sure. finds boring, someone else could just say, "Well, I didn't find him boring," so. <laughs> that's, and that's the end of the conversation. Oh, really. God. I actually think I agree. In the prequels, Obi-Wan's a pretty bland character. When you're not looking at with rose-tinted glasses, what does he do? How is he even active in the plot? So he's the most active, I think, out of all the characters. He's the ones that yeah. he goes on all the important missions. It was even said with our coverage that, like, maybe it should have been him and Anakin, not just him. Because he goes on investigation. Was he like, even active uh... in the plot? He's, I don't know, like, talk about rose-tinted glasses, you need to remember what happens in these films. He killed General Grievous to try and bring about an end to the Clone Wars. He, yeah, he was the what? one who ends the Clone Wars, technically wow, speaking. He's, it. he's it. the one that discovers the clones, it. yeah. So, like, saying, like, what does he even do? To me, it's just like, oh boy, you don't want to make that he argument. <laughs> what? Oh, wait, no, he didn't. He killed Darth Maul. <laughs> No, he didn't. He chopped him in half. Oh, yeah, that's oh, right. right. He chopped right, him in right. half, and uh, then he fell into the bottom of his pit. Let's just say he, he a, defeated a Darth Maul. No, he, did he defeated kill Darth, Darth Maul. Maul. He, does, he does eventually kill Darth Maul. But yeah. And Rebels. <laughs> and someone oh, said, okay. and that yeah, was... Spoilers for people who care about Rebels. <laughs> um, and someone said that, and that was boring. And it's like, I don't know, I can't really, like, you know, if, if one person finds his fight with Grievous or his investigations Sorry. boring versus not well, boring, what can you do? Well, I mean, that's that wasn't what the point was. The point was he is active in the plot. Whether you think that's boring, whatever. But yeah. was, well, someone said he wasn't active in the plot. He very much is. Definitely. Maybe he might be the much, most uh, active in the uh, plot. Like well, he might I think be the mo of all the characters, the most active in the plot, besides well, maybe Palpatine. Yeah, that's what I, I got. I think so. The first one, maybe. Yeah, uh, big kind of menace. About he's he's most active Clone. in the first one. Well, it's just one of the big complaints of Attack of the Clones is he's off actually going on an adventure without Anakin. He really yeah, he's sitting in a field there, talking about Anakin how on. authoritarian governments are. Great. <laughs> yeah, Anakin is on what I would probably consider the more boring part, where. Him and, him and Padme are sharing very stilted dialogue to build up their relationship. <laughs> also adding, I mean, when you say Obi-Wan is boring, surely we are considering the totality of this character, which includes in the OT. Is anybody really going to say that about Obi-Wan over the course of the entire series? Well, and that's the thing. Boring. For me, the, I wouldn't... the prequels added a nice little chunk of context that I think actually slides into what we know about Obi-Wan from the OT. Uh, certainly a new hope in terms of he's um, he's a bit more of a sneaky boy, uh, and it seems like it's a, maybe a result of the fact that he's had everything taken from him by a lot of subversive elements. So, you know, um, he's... Because he's, we, me and Vreen actually did talk about this, I think, yesterday, but it's like when you think about how he's the linchpin for basically everything happening in the original trilogy... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, being it story very much set into motion the way that it is because of him. Yeah, uh, so I don't know. Um, it's just argued that um, could it be argued that most of what he did in the ori um, original and the um, prequel trilogy was, and if if it wasn't him, someone else would have just gone in his place and done vaguely the same things. I don't even know um, why that would be a relevant know. argument. He did them. Um, he did. Yeah. And who, and who knows if they would have done them in the same way as the character. Well, yeah, remember, he, it's his yeah, connection, was... unironically, to Dexter Jetster that benefits him. It's his pursuit of knowledge in the archives. It's him talking to Yoda to get information. These are all decisions he makes. Yeah, and how many people could actually beat Grievous, you know? And it's stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I, mean, I mean, if you replaced him with a different character, then I guess things would go differently, yeah. Like, I don't, I don't that's know. true. It's like, well, yeah. I, I guess, I guess my... You'd have to replace him with, with someone with him who's grievous, to right, it's, the democracy. I, I understand the argument with him. I would understand if someone argued that he's not active in the plot when he defeats Grievous because he is told to, to, go, and be, to go and fight Grievous and he does, right? He's not... He, it's not his decision-making that's particularly active there. It's his oh, I mean, um, I proficiency like with combat. I, I don't know... This feels like the active and passive uh, 
conversation really like of the who's really making the choices he did these things he went and did them it, it, like being told to do something is different from being forced by the story or other characters yeah, and i think that's true. there's a significant difference between the idea of go to utapau and kill general grievous and then everything we see because he decides how to do but all of that it's how is is a lot more important than uh in terms of telling us who a character is than simply what happens how why and I think, yeah, you really would have to argue. Obi-Wan's supposed to be one of the best swordsmen, like, Jedi out of everybody at that point. I'm not sure you can replace it. Like, Anakin might be able to defeat Grievous, probably. But, um, I don't know anyone else can. Maybe Windu Yoda with the Force, maybe Mace Windu, Yoda. but at that point we were only picking literally the most powerful oh people. Well, Yoda, like, surely, Yoda surely you would be able to annihilate Grievous with this, the Force a lot more easily than you would by besting him with a lightsaber. That's what I said. Well, yes, yeah, so, yeah, that I mean... It's yeah. They probably should have used the force more in that fight. Yeah, we it's, we we've uh, uh, the first time he does use the force on Grievous in that fight is really good. Like so, it's just like maybe you should use that more. It's the cool aspect of General Grievous is he's he's really good at using lightsabers. He got a lot of them, but he has no connection to the force at all. That's a really interesting uh, foe to have someone go up against. And I don't I don't think I would say that they fully uh, achieved. Um, what they plenty could of, have done. Plenty of potential character. for Grievous, yeah. There's well, little... <laughs> I mean, if you, if you asked me a few years ago, I would have been like, yeah, General Grievous show would be cool. I don't want it anymore. No, I don't, <laughs> I don't, want, any I don't want anything more. I want it to die. <laughs> Let it die. Yep. I, want to, I, I want to weld the sarcophagus shut and bury it in a tomb. Yeah, weld the, the sarcophagus. Valley. Rest, sweet prince. You're safe now. <laughs> well, I mean, because... We uh, while we're behind. Was it like a Star Wars... What... what, what? con or announcement or, or get together or whatever was it that was talking about like marvel and um and uh, uh star wars's next stuff uh what the star wars cele oh was it star wars celebration wait. well because disney does a thing called d23 where they talk about like everything that they're working on which generally right. includes like well star on the wars note of uh wanted to end jeez oh okay yeah that yeah. would have been the that would have been the Star Wars celebration, I think. Yeah, it looks about. Star look Wars at that. Uh, yeah, I think I was talking about it on Real BBC, and I was like, okay, so Andor, Mandalorian season three, maybe mm -hmm. Ahsoka, Skeleton Crew. Hmm. Well, I, like, I the guess the movie the from Taika. Oh well, that they said that one's next, so I guess um. Oh, wait. A droid story. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Droid Probably going to be an we'll animated up. thing. Look through this. It's like that Star Wars Eclipse. Wasn't that game? That game was announced. And they're like, yeah, it's probably going to be out by like 2026, <laughs> I think. What was. Or am I, am I totally mixing that up? That that thing is. I know the Ubisoft project. Okay. Rogue Squadron's probably not coming out. I would be surprised at this stage. Lando's. Is Lando? Is that okay? Are they making a Lando thing? <laughs> I yeah, I'm pretty sure it's with the oh, there it is. Donald there Glover it is. as well. TBD. Uh, yeah, great, awesome. Skeleton Crew is the one that I'm interested in because it's John Watts. I wish Star Wars had a Skeleton Crew. Oh, it does. I don't, I, it, it's right there. Oh yeah, there it is, right there. Sky oh yeah, yeah look at that. <laughs> so yeah, plenty to get excited oh, about. Okay. Content. Big old Yay. content slurry. L I, I, I love content. Why I didn't, man, that didn't sound why, sincere. Why are you struggling to say yeah? yeah? Listen, you could have just ignored it and just yeah. let me... <laughs> wow, none of that came through Discord, but probably came through through the stream, but that's okay. Anyway. Oh, no. <laughs> what, what did you say about us? No, it was a big old <laughs> banging sound, uh, but it's fine. Good actor playing a very boring character. Right. But he was brilliant casting right. as Obi-Wan. Right. And so a show now the agreement. that isn't the prequels <laughs> that's bringing Ewan McGregor back. I was like, okay, I'm going to... I mean, hey, for the people in chat who agree that he's boring, uh, do you like what they did with him in this show? He's not boring anymore, huh? No. Plenty, uh, doing plenty of shit yeah, with him now. He's, yeah, he's... He is terrible. This will... Excitingly terrible. Little pause here, kind of. That's a good facial expression to represent him as a whole in this show. 
that's yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm gonna give this a fair shot. And then I watched half of the first episode. I was like, nah. Well, the first shot me. So that's really interesting because I think the first half of the first episode, we were like, hmm. Yeah, oh, there might it was be the something most, here. Hmm. It was like uh, it was it was the parallels between this and Moon Knight, where we watched that first episode and we're like, I mean, it's not good, but there's there's some there's some stuff here, and I'm interested to see what they do with it. We and were then, yeah, I think all of our compliments for the show would have been in the first half of the first episode, right? Yeah, yeah. because we hit that point where the plot starts and it's all just oh flim gone. flam. It's all just flim that. flam after that. Absolutely. It is uh, yeah. flim flam after that. It was written by a flim flam man. Damn. We got nice. our five minutes of nice. character sort of stuff, and now it's, uh, it's all yeah. gone. Made me laugh, and this turned oh, right. into a Twitter kerfuffle. Right, right. Because right. the first shot is the Serene pulls out. All the, the little Jedi kids are training. They got their dumb helmets on. They are dumb helmets. And then the storm. The So, uh, I, I actually. Uh, Saw a comment about this that I thought was really interesting. Uh, one of the common oh. complaints from uh, RLM uh, that I think is really on point is that some of the stuff in the prequels like can do some retroactive ruining in terms of just misunderstanding why a thing is a thing. The prime example of this is Obi-Wan wasn't wearing what he was wearing in Tatooine because they're Jedi clothes. He was wearing them because they're suitable for the environment. But they became Jedi clothes because he was like the iconic representation of what a Jedi is and wears. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. So when you see them all wearing like the same outfit in, in the prequels, it's like, oh man, that, that wasn't the point of that. And now it makes people question, wait, why would Obi-Wan dress as a Jedi when in hiding? And it's like, that's a good question. Why would he do that? Yeah, like, you know? not change his hair maybe. Or, um, yeah, maybe. So funnily enough, <clears throat> the same point is then raised. It's like, don't you see they're doing that now, but with the next generation? Why are these kids wearing, like, some weird variation of the helmets? The, the helmets, if you remember them, would, would put on the kids, presumably, to simulate, like, blinding them, right? So that they have to feel the deflect... You know what I'm talking about, the scene where they're deflecting the, the blasters with their lightsabers? Where you have to headcanon that they're not actually lightsabers and that they're probably, like... The, the lightsabers from Futurama that only like hit you. Yeah, because something. fuck me how dangerous that scene is if they're all active lightsabers. But, um, you know, mm -hmm. Luke put the, 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 he gave him, it's it's funny, He's, he gives another example, right? He puts the little thing on, uh, the blast shield on the helmet on Luke and then says, try and dodge this little training droid thing or feel it. And then that becomes like a full training exercise in the prequels. That's another example. But here is actually an example. Those helmets were meant for like so to blind the the person while simultaneously maybe preventing them from hitting their own head while uh thingy with 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 the bat but now they're just wearing them because that's just what younglings wear question mark because why would they be doing it while doing this and um doing tai chi when you see episode four so they don't hit themselves in the head when you see episode four you start to think wait did they did they do it just so that we understand very easily through the helmet that it was a young leg. Remember the one in Abba? Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought that was really funny as a theory. Like, that they only really kept yeah. the, the hats. So, like, that's that's the easy way to identify these young legs. Because <laughs> they have the silly little I hats identify on. identify children with my eyes, like, with, when they're not wearing a hat. I suppose, like, if you take their hats off, then well, yeah, someone well, you, may you, get you, confused as to overalls. exactly. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, I agree. I don't know why. I just thought it was funny that they took that element and they were like... They have... Um, they, they normally like wear the imagery, right? Well, I, I, I mean, it's the first thing we noticed when we saw him in Amber, if you remember. I think me and Rags both just go like, oh my god, look at his hat. He's got his <laughs> helmet on. They kept his helmet on. It's the young leg hat. It would have been better if he had the little colorful hat with the, the propeller on it. Oh god, that would be great, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, I know that's a kid. Yeah, I gotcha. Sorry, um, that subtle detail. But yeah, um, but the thing about I noticed about these ones, though, is that they've actually got it so that you can see out of them. Uh, pretty easily, even like they're built that way. So at this point, they're just they're just hats, right? I guess so. Yeah. Just fun little youngling hats, I guess. I don't know. <sighs> Very I mean, fun. A lot of people sure, are saying sure. they were meant for the sensory oh. deprivation to focus, and it's like, yeah, I don't think these ones are doing that job, are they? They're semi parasols. They're good for yeah. If it, if it if it was very sunny or rainy, even like you, a, you, you uh your face is protected like for the a most sun time. hat that you need to be made out of metal. 
Hey. Ooh. Maybe this is how the Jedi fly, because they have the propeller hat on their heads, because the Sith have the spinning <laughs> lightsabers that can fly. Yeah, oh. that's true. Yeah, you can't lift yourself up with the Force until we learn that you can, but you can make that little propeller spin really Real quick with the Force, mm. which then lifts you upwards. It takes a lot of concentration <laughs> to spin that little propeller, but it takes you places. It takes you places. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the clone troopers oh, yes, come yes. in. Right era. I, I, that, that is so important to my criticism that I get that right. But they come in and they add this like After Effects wiggle <laughs> transition. Yeah, oh, the shot. Dude, yo, wait, wait. Go. Did you see that clone trooper on the left just like randomly shoot up into the ceiling to the left? Wait, no. Get up for this. Wait, what? No, this in DMs. <laughs> oh yeah, Jay's Have gonna we? slap you down, Rags. You better prepare for it. Yeah, so come in you, and they uh, add this like After Effects real wiggle closely. transition. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> so this is actually this. I'm gonna say I think this is actually good. Yeah, and I think yeah? I agree. Um, if you uh, watch it, if you watch close, just as he um, his he like pushes his gun wildly to the side, the Jedi push uh, like puts her hand out and like she's using the Force to push away his gun as he oh, flies. Oh, okay. After Effects okay. wiggle. Transition to yeah, oh, yeah, it, yeah, it lines yeah. up. Okay, all good. Okay, I nice. gotcha. Very neat. Not that she had to. He missed every other shot he fired <laughs> yeah, so far. It, but... <laughs> it's arguably more dangerous because if the clone is aiming at the ceiling, she's in more danger with how terrible their aim is. Yeah, yeah. yeah if he yeah. aims at the ceiling, he might hit. Yeah, to I would have just like knocked it... him over or. Mm pulled the gun i don't know it, it mm -hmm. i guess it's one of those things that if you're a jedi in that situation and you have the presence of mind to sort of kind of push his arm a little bit and use the force specifically for that i'm like man you should have like knocked him over or maybe she's pulled the gun you know, maybe away. she's got the precision but not the power maybe Was, that's something that i've always thought should be elaborated on more with the force and how he like how it's used is like what are the challenging aspects can you have like power without precision where you could just like yeet everything like in a vague direction but you can't you know you you wouldn't be able to do that with the gun or like what what is easy to learn can you have one without the other or when you get powerful in the force do you be, like get both it, it would be a really useful thing to understand to understand the stakes of the teens and what jedi were capable of might have been good if early on they did something along the lines of like it's to to physically manipulate a person is difficult with a force. It's some sort of a living thing, and the force is in yeah. all living things. So you could you could fuck with their armor or their clothes or their weapons, but to actually like take a person or a living thing and manipulate it, you can't really do. Which would add some really really good limitations to what you can do at any given time in terms of. Uh, just it fights and stuff. The, um, I mean, there are loads of places that you could put this. I mean, like, I'm not sure like this information would fit that well in the like Yoda training Luke, but it sh certainly should have been there in there by the prequels. I think you could have had a uh, Qui Gon training Obi Wan for ca for combat or something like that. Yeah, uh, this, this is a scene that probably did need to happen, dude. I've been and waiting for them to do just hasn't Sith training in live action. I want to see that. We never see it in live action. Yeah. Give us. I, I want to see that. And I don't want them to be like, being evil is so cool. Let me show you <laughs> this child. Kill it. They'd be like, I killed yeah, it. Like, yes. Evil. Yeah, but the Jedi tell you to repress these things, but they're a natural part of you. They want to keep you from exactly. your true potential that's locked inside. But you have to, you know, but, but being angry can make you do stupid things. But you, so you have to learn how to control your anger. But at the same time, like unleash it Channel in a controlled it. manner. You need to learn to act rationally while angry. Yes, you're it needs to be like a motivation that empowers you, not something that you're a slave to. It need you need to be you need to be able to use it. I wonder if like taking lots of coke would help you channel the dark side. I <laughs> maybe. Um maybe. you mean like like Pepsi or Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like sodas not are pe not Pepsi though. Yeah, it is too sweet. Pepsi's a Jedi drink. Um, something this, uh, I, I, I kind of just had a thought about. Imagine uh, you and I, Rags, were those two clone troopers and we were told to go and kill the Jedi. I feel like we should, especially if they have no idea what's going on, maybe... First of all, grenade, probably. I don't know. Because it's just like... Oh, that's not, that's not I, even what I, I... I thought you were going to go a different route. 
Well, so I, I got there's a couple of thoughts I'm having. I would want us to sit down and talk about this first Jim. because this is uh this is gonna be tough to say the least. It's a fucking Jedi. Yeah. So it's like, can we snipe them? Is my first question because I don't want to get anywhere near a fucking force using lightsaber wielding crazy person who uh, is protecting children. That's gonna that's gonna end with our heads coming off. I think so. No, mm. I, I I hope we get stabbed in the chest. Honestly, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Um, Preferably in only one of my stomachs. But yeah, like. Because if you said to me, like, well, no, we'll just open the doors and run in while shooting and hope, I'd be like, I don't know about that. That seems like a bad plan. And maybe we can take more than two guys, because I don't know if two guys is enough. Go I on. thought what you were going to say was, if, if those clone troopers were us, we just open the door calmly, our guns aren't even up, and we say, you know, uh, you know, Jedi Knight, there, there, so here's there's the a siege happening. We're, yeah? I was going to say that's a potential, but that's only present as a potential because of how stupid this scene is. They should already be aware the temple's under attack. Yeah, that, that is true. Yeah, obviously, like, the alarm should have been tripped ages ago. You should hear it. This is not the... You, yeah, you're not going to get yeah, all the I... way to the back and realize, oh, there's but they've been fighting for potentially what could be hours now. And you yeah, just as, haven't soon, as soon as they get outside, the temple is in fucking chaos. Yeah, it's like a whole war, and it's just like, oh, man, there's a war. Shit. <laughs> Oops. So yeah, if um if we that that's an interesting idea actually as an approach for Order sixty six, it's like get get all the clone troopers in there as a as a guise of like you need to be protected. There's apparently an attack coming on the Jedi Temple, and then you know all at once betray. Especially if Anakin's there and they don't know he's uh, yeah. evil man yet. Oh, be fucking like the, of course! Know, Someone in chat just said she should have felt it. It's like yeah, at least one Jedi is dead at this point, right, from the assault, and she would mm. feel that. She probably should have just heard it. From Maybe all she's of the like a really shit Jedi. Outside. <laughs> well, yeah, we talked about that. I'm saying that the feeling argument isn't on top of the hearing yeah. one. There's it a lot of ways that the scene could be better because it's a really <laughs> bad scene that doesn't make sense in a variety of ways. Yeah, and one of the are, the most dark so things, as Jay is pointing out here, Bauman, is that uh, the, the camera shake's hilarious. It looks like something that was done it is hilarious. either in post yeah. or with literally the guy standing there and taking it off the stand and just or wobbling it while it was on a stand. It looks so artificial. Um, and it does look very artificial, yes. Bad, and it made me laugh. So I posted on Twitter, I was like, this is funny. And then I got swarmed by people with stormtroopers as their avatar on Twitter. <laughs> Literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds Star of Star Wars... Came Came after you. Star Wars simp accounts came after me <laughs> to tell me I'm an idiot because I didn't. They didn't think I understood. Star Wars what fans the say point. weird things. Man, any of us? Uh, they yeah. also had. Uh... Yeah, any of us had any experience <laughs> with that? Like an army of people mm. telling one of us that our opinions are big poo poo. Jay. Uh, what? Nothing, Jay. Nothing at all. Jay forgot yeah, that in 1977. Some <laughs> random dude bumped his head on a set, which means that now Star Wars can never have a tone that isn't silliness. Yeah, after I saw that tweet. look to see how many quote tweets I'm up to. I was like, Jay, how did you forget that that had happened in A New Hope? How embarrassing. I think one yeah. of the best things about that moment is that a lot of people who watched the film would have been like, Wait, what? When did that happen? And it's like, yeah, <laughs> look, look in the back of the scene, you can see it, and you're like, oh, wow. And they compare oh, that to yeah, stuff like just, the trench coat walk, which is one of the most overtly stated and <laughs> needed plot points in the moment of the, the show. Like, oh, yes, these are the same level. Are you looking, Jay? Is it taking you long? Yes. You're scrolling through your millions of attacks on people online. Is that why it's I've, taking? Yeah, a I am. I've, I've got it's got one thousand and fifty-seven quote tweets. Nice. It's actually you see what you you just it's actually really okay and amazing and it's a wonderful scene and how dare you criticize Star Wars for doing something that makes everyone involved look like a fucking moron. I yeah. just w wish we were happily in a culture where everyone could have just gone. <laughs> yeah, it was dumb. And that was it. Yeah. That could have been it. I feel like it should have been it, to be honest. <laughs> Feels like that's the world we could have gotten yeah, in at like, some point, but apparently not. It's like, oh, that's kind of silly. All right, anyway. There are some people who shot. don't think that that scene is a complete joke. Or that or it's okay they... that it's a joke. Yeah, some people say it's a joke on purpose. Which is another weird but, one. You're just like, okay. Yeah, I'm getting cranked by joke. Star Wars for years now. A the perfect you. placement for a joke. Perfect placement for a joke is... um. Hey, you know that scene we're shooting that you know right in between the child attempted child torture and um, 
as like the uh, big fight scene between Obi Wan and Reva, um, I th and like you know when when he's trying to smuggle her out, I think that scene should be um, uh, tense. No, sorry, I mean a joke. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I misspoke before. One, no, yeah, that should be. <laughs> we should make a joke out of that scene about how stupid it is. Don't forget the child grave that we walked past on display. <laughs> that was a neat moment too. A comedy. Mm. Was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, no, the execution of the shot is bad. The cameraman got scared. <laughs> the cameraman it is, got scared. It's terrible. I, the I, after effects. Yeah. Yeah. Funny though. <laughs> it's the guy who added the, the plug in, he got scared. Obi Wan is a great mentor. So the, I left this in for a reason. I uh, I think we mentioned it when talking about it in, I think, our first episode coverage, but like, man, this was stanky to me. This, this, uh, this normal, like, almost generic trailer editing of the prequel events. Yeah, I, it was the music yeah. that really got me to go, wait Dun -dun. a second. This, Dun -dun. Yeah, it's super generic Dun -dun. trailer music that they put over the prequels, which are known for their amazing soundtrack. So... Really strange choice. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, really odd that you wouldn't, especially considering, like, tactically, if you're trying to get people to go, remember the prequels, remember the prequels, remember the prequels, you wouldn't use the music of the prequels to do that you'd think that you'd really want to play that up mm -hmm. it feels and, like a, it feels like a tribute that they could have just pulled off someone's youtube channel oh definitely well they made and, them when like it didn't even it didn't even have that much relevance to the events of the actual show it's just like hey here's the prequels like i remember seeing it was like a special feature on one of the dvds of something but um they created like a featurette special i think it could have been something to do with a new hope basically but it was like a summary of the first three films but it did have um well the prequels it, it, it did have a track from the prequels in it and it's just like i don't know why you wouldn't do that but you go right ahead and yeah it just creates this awkward like it feels so fucking weird to have those three movies crunched into like a very generic tv previously on um and you're right there probably is ones on youtube that are better wise is master yoda and as powerful as Master Window. I, I gotta say, just talking about the opening in general, though, their, their slick editing actually made the prequels seem a little bit meaningful and exciting. <laughs> don't understand. Slick editing? I don't understand how you can call that slick editing. They just cut. I was about to ask if he... I was about to ask if he was being, like, joking when he said slick editing, but I was like, I don't think he is joking. Because I guess you could say, in a sense, all editing is a more complicated version of just saying a cut, but like, what I'm trying to say is they are just hard cuts between parts of the prequels. Like, I don't understand why that would be considered slick. Uh, as opposed to like, putting lots of work in to maybe recontextualize, or even use things that, that can summarize things fast and stuff. I don't know. I, I'd love to know what he meant by slick, I guess. Because if it's just quick cuts, it's like, hmm, alright. <laughs> a little, a little previously, remember this? Yeah, 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 yeah. They edited the shit out of those boring ass movies. Oh, sure. I, I was like, this is a cheap uh, TV boring show. Boring ass movies, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's, we, we've talked about this before. Like, they're, they're, I, I get entertained by them, but other people find them boring. That's fine. Oh, yeah, and I yeah. like when TV shows are cheap. It's, it's a cheap... 25 so, million an episode, is that what you said, Mahler? So... Yeah, I guess we should probably just let that... That, that was a really weird comment. Let's play that again. Best movies. Oh, sure. I, I was like, this is a cheap TV show, and I like when ch TV shows are cheap. It's, it's a cheap... This show is very expensive. It's, uh, yeah, so 25 mil it's per episode as far as I'm aware. You can get per, it's about as expensive as a TV show gets. I actually. don't even, um... I don't know about any <laughs> other show. It's 25 million. That might actually be like the highest budget per episode of a television show. How do you make 25 million look like an episode. what it looks like? I don't understand. <laughs> and then it's uh, like, yeah. but I like that. You're like, what are you, what? What? I, that's an odd, it's weird. <laughs> I don't uh, understand. And yeah, so the, it's, it's, it doesn't compute with me so much. So I'm just like, please say more things because I don't know what to grasp on. Like, yeah. How did you turn that into a good I, thing, that they're terrible I with their the, money? I, had, I did a lot in their videos, like, oh, you said those things, okay, what, what, what do you mean? Oh, we, on the next thing, okay. Damn it. Movie? Yeah. It's a relatively expensive TV show. Because there are parts even, of the show even, that If it was a movie budget, it, like, 
25 million for six episodes. That's 150 million. That would be expensive that's a for a big movie. For yeah. film. That's an expensive movie. And it probably would line up to, uh, I don't know, the total runtime cutting out previous well, movies and stuff. Right now, it ain't that high. Really, that's yeah, because the, these aren't 40 minute episodes. Some of them are, it's like, not like they're jam packed with things happening. <laughs> Some of them are like over 40 minutes, but I think episode four was less than 40 minutes. It's it not could even the run time of like an average network TV, yeah. Someone 38 drama. or something, someone with a bit of talent with yeah. uh, editing software could turn this into a movie pretty easily, couldn't they? Probably impressive visually, yeah. And then there's other parts that look so cheap. Especially any of the action, which is so awkward. I see that to me yeah. isn't, isn't cheapness; it's incompetence. Yeah, I was yeah. I was uh, talking to Mahler before we started, and we were kind of discussing a little bit of Kenobi stuff. And I said, "There's nothing. What about the budget? Means that you have to have someone waddling behind a girl <laughs> to pretend like you can't catch her." What what part of the budget means you have to do that? You, you because I think we were saying earlier, you, just you would don't, assume that. Money would buy competence in choreography, at least. Would you? Yeah. Well, well, well unless, unless I think it was said about the scripted that they, like, the, this chase scene just cut it. You don't need uh, to have it. It doesn't need to exist. But I, I guess they had to fill time, so they had to make this goofy running sequence where she slides like an Apex Legend character under a twig, and these adults can't. Chase them because anything. they, they have don't have some waddling them. disorder. Well, and so I guess this is the reality of the logistics of this. They seem to be in a real place. They've got all the cameramen there and ready, and then they're like, start running. And then the person chasing Leia awkwardly waddles, and they don't think to say, maybe we should start further back, because if I run at full speed, I'm going to catch her easily. So we need to make a bigger gap, I think. And if someone's like, hey, she's running as fast as she can, be like, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. Well, I think she, she's doing fine, she's running. I just mean to make this look better. And to make me seem like more of a threat to the character that is Leia right now, to, to really enhance the fear factor, I need to be able to run with as much space and ferocity as I, I would if I were trying to kidnap a senator's daughter. You understand? Instead yeah. of looking like a clown. And then they would, that should iron out these problems. Instead of having the chase, maybe they should have instead filled the time oh, with wait. them knocking out a guard and, or killing a guard and taking his outfit. And then she sees the guard, and she's like, oh, hey, it's a guard for the palace or whatever. And they're like, haha, no, and we're here to kidnap you. And they just put a bag over her head, and it cuts or something. Mm -hmm. Just do yeah. anything besides this awkward-ass fight. Or not even fight. It's, it's, it's a fight against logic, but like this yeah. chase thing. But fortunately, they made, they we're so good in doing that scene. They did it twice, so there you go. Um, multiple yeah there are there are multiple awkward leia chasing yeah <laughs> we just can't there's just other cannot catch her parts that look so cheap especially any of the action which is so awkward i i i'm gonna defend this i think it i think the cheapness serves the action better just small more meaningful action scenes so that are no, better that's, say that's cheap that's the that's it's they're not connected when you say that's like that two different points yeah, parts, yeah. That's cheapness to do with being cheap. he's describing, the quality he's the describing a vision like or a, a scale yeah i think yeah. he's talking about well, scale well, like cheap, it's cheap, very cheap can often like uh result in something looking smaller in scale like if you're trying to for example depict like a massive battle with thousands on each side and you don't you don't have the budget for that it can absolutely diminish the well, the seeming scale of the conflict but, it's, it's all about creative well, choices though because return of the jedi would have had a big budget for the time and yet we still got an intense um small scale yeah. duel between luke and vader it's all about so, the narrative decisions it like when the show comes across as cheap, that's not a good thing. That's when we're talking about. Sorry, going to continue. I uh, I was just going to say it's that, that, that that's not a good thing. Like when you're watching something and go, this feels like you didn't have money or time or something. Especially when you know that they did have money and time. Well, we yeah. were saying that about Moon Knight too, where there was just a lot of. It felt really it looked had really a lot cheap. Of, uh, yeah, like and I think that, the CGI that was because there's that's... there's scenes in this where you're just like they're clearly in a CGI environment and it just doesn't even look any. Well, it's, it's, it's just becoming ugh. a big problem with Marvel stuff now. Is yeah. I don't know. Nowhere's like, real. Well, yeah. Well, it's it's and that wouldn't be as much of a problem if you spent three <laughs> years in post production like Avatar Two has, like three years of like working on 
visual effects, but Marvel films, like, they don't. And so now it's starting to fall apart a little bit in terms of these films looking can... like real places with real people in them as far as i don't even know if avatar will be good or not i, I have no clue but like i'm i can respect that it seems to be a man's vision that he wants vision, to bring to life yeah. and star wars is just a product on an assembly line yep pretty much um, we got, MCU, just disney really. we've got a couple people in chat saying you're not letting them finish so we got new people here today and that's wonderful Hi. welcome well, the it's, format. it's, it's, it's usually twofold. Either it's new people, or we're covering um, yeah. somebody who either hasn't been covered before, or they sent us in the plink Oh, well, yeah, we, it's just we've done that, but that wasn't live, so I feel like we're, we're much more likely to get new people in today, which is okay. It's all right. We're not going to let them finish uh, ever. We're going to stop the video right now, and, and then we're going to yeah. invent a bunch of points they didn't make because that's how evil we are. Welcome to the show. Uh, also, you you could have a sentence that has more than like one clause in it and you have different thoughts oh yeah there's so much to say because of... yeah funnily enough i actually think that what rich said was almost not addressing what jay said um but not but not like maliciously in any way i think he just because he interpreted what he was saying differently it would be like if i was uh i got the happy meal and i was like oh man this 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 ain't looking this looks kind of cheap and uh i think a reasonable person might assume like if i said that in that context you'd be like are you saying like it looks bad or like poorly made or whatever. And then if Rags was there and he just went, yeah, I prefer a smaller portion, I, I might look at him and be like, no, I, no, 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 I, I'm not talking about that. Like, Jay's not talking about how he's annoyed at how small scale the fights are as a result of it being cheap. He's saying that it must be cheap because of how poorly executed everything is. Um, but Rich has now said he prefers smaller scale battles, which is what you get well, when you have less money really to spend. Cool. It's getting a bit awkward though because it, look we got geonosis up here it's like you don't have to compare it to you know you know like if it, it's like yeah this is better than that prequel shit you don't have to like yeah defend against the prequels you know like it could you could just talk about it as its own thing yeah also yeah. i prefer the battle of geonosis to the fight between darth vader and obi-wan in this absolutely. show absolutely uh, easily absolutely. it's not even close easily. <laughs> There are a yeah, few fights that I... Good. Well, and, and you know what? Now I would advocate that we let uh, the point come in complete because people might not realize that is the point Rich is making, so we'll let him make it. Yes. I th I'm going to defend this. I think it. I think the cheapness serves the action better. Just small, more meaningful action scenes are better than 80,000 stormtroopers and CGI running around getting blown up and giant... Just, just three quick shots and you kill five. No, they showed this. No, that's better. That's the joke scene I thumbnail. We gotta make this clear. They are citing when she slapped a stormtrooper in the face to defeat him as a better, like a better alternative to the fight on Geonosis. For those who don't Which know, that's on on dog bites. I have the that's what I used for my for my thumbnail talking about episode four. That's what won out for me as the dumbest thing that the most ridiculous thing that I could show in a thumbnail is just her like slapping the storm. It, it, calling it a slap even is like a is bonk. kind of overstating it. It's like I'm gonna touch you with my open palm and I'm gonna turn around. And, uh, pro uh, like I said in the video, you got you guys should subscribe to Dog Bites. The props to these actors. They need to get Academy Awards. All of the extras in Stormtrooper <laughs> gear need to get Academy fucking awards for acting as if they've been horrifically incapacitated <laughs> by someone touching their armor with their hand. Like that, I can't use my limbs anymore. I'm so confused. I'm stunned. It's just a video oh, game, and I got bad RNG. That, that what we forget though is that stormtroopers are supposed to be incompetent in 19. Oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he right. bunked his head on the wall. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. This point does so, feel uh, like a non sequitur because the point that was raised was the show feels cheap, and then the point was I prefer meaningful small scale conflict to essentially if you were going hyper good faith big battles that don't really have anything. Uh, in terms of characters grounding you to the sequence, like that's a fair point, but I and then you'd have to explain how bring apples to oranges. I feel like, a, I, like yeah, why? Why are we comparing 
a massive battle sequence with so, thousands of nameless troopers on either side and using that to compare it to a purposefully intimate fight between two characters well, who have a, a personal fair, history with one another. A fair comparison would be, do you think that the battle between Darth Vader and Obi-Wan here is more meaningful than the battle between the two of them in Revenge of the Sith? More meaningful? Rather Which than, is a I resounding guess, no. Revenge mm, of the Sith yeah, I mean, easily this, runs away case. with it. Um, I would just like to show the people who have not seen the show the context for uh, what what action scene he is talking about, right? And, and I'm going to show them in the form of uh, the mini that is yet to release. I'll just show this. Oh yeah, show them. I'm going to use the loo real quick. Let All them right. know the the glory of Star Wars action sequences. It's really something special. They worked hard on this. I'll uh, hang on twenty two. Yeah, I'll roll it back to like 22. Yeah. So um just the quick context. This will be up on Moolah tomorrow. Don't don't you worry, folks. So um Sorry. the context is uh Obi-Wan's friend Ra Tala? Tala? Is that it? Or Rala? Sure. It's it's something it's A A A L A, but there's a letter before the A L A. I actually can't remember what it is. Um she is posing as a enemy captain. And um she, she uh, is held by two stormtroopers, and she's got to get out of there, all right? So, um, so this is this is what she does. It's him. What? How the fuck did that happen? Well, you know. Well, so she should, she's done. Oh! <laughs> what? What? <laughs> no. Man. This, Why did you throw? There was a third person in that room. So there you go. Sends him to horny jail. <laughs> That that got man. referenced positively. Uh, oh, oh man, I, I don't know what to say. Um, <laughs> you know, like, because funnily enough, on the point of uh, you know, do you prefer the smaller scale or grander scale fights? I'd just be like, oh well, I like them both. I just want them both done well, of course. Like, I don't, I don't have an yeah. issue with seeing uh, two armies clashing versus two people. I love it. Yeah, like what it, is it, the story it's all... about. Which of those would exactly, be... Exactly, yeah. <laughs> that was the best take, or at least they decided <laughs> it was. Did it's... they love... Did they really love Taylor beating those two... Or Tala beating those two uh, stormtroopers? I think so. Chat seemed pretty happy about it. Again, you'll yeah, get the full really thing. Yeah, it's really great. It's really good stuff. I full, like it because of how believable it is. Full episode tomorrow. Uh, you may have heard some dumb shit happens in episode four, and that's just one of the many. Um, but anyway... CGI running around getting blown up and giant just just also, three quick shots. Also, don't shit on CGI. Hmm. Don't shit on CGI in general. Oh. Yeah, like the yeah, like yeah. he always uses oh it's CGI so like it's bad as an idea is like oh man I don't because this was an just issue say with Balrog the, um, and then you can move on. They they always yeah, struggle with that one. Balrog. Like, yeah. Balrog. Okay, the Balrog though is different and you're like yeah it the is. Balrog. Is good. I will. I will <laughs> bite the bullet that the Balrog was not practical. <laughs> <laughs> Would have been fucking cool if it were. It's like that a, would have been hilarious if they just tried to build some mechanical thing that had like these flaming carapace that you could set alight, and it like clearly moved like a Disneyland, a crappy Disneyland puppet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they tried to use respect, like um, no, I was gonna say like something like Ray Harryhausen, but that stuff was kind of cool, so I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> what else was it? Uh, practical effects are better. Cope about it. Like uh, sometimes. Sometimes they're uh, not. Sometimes, yeah. except for the times that they're definitely not. I don't know that a practical Davy Jones would look better than to how Davy Jones looks. I don't think so. You need to, yeah, I think some of y'all need to go back and watch some old movies where they clearly try to do practical effects that are just beyond oh, their it. ability to do. Yeah. And then watch and sometimes it legit looks awful. Sometimes. Do you guys want to see practical Thanos? Oh, you guys, yeah, you that's want, a good You guys want to see that? Just like. A slightly tall guy with like some purple stuff glued to his chin. <laughs> Only his chin. Or, uh, what what does Rocket look like if he's just a little puppet? You know? He's just a. Oh, you. Oh, remember Fringy? He was in um. He was in uh, One Hundred One Dalmatians, the '90s movie. Remember they had the raccoon puppets oh, when yeah. they were tearing apart the car. <laughs> that's that's him. That's Rocket Raccoon. It's practical. Well, that's he, he look like Raccoonie. Yeah. Rakakuni! Rakakuni, yeah. yeah. <laughs> By the way, someone... Rakakuni is an instant practical someone, effects winning out of visual effects, okay. So, someone mentioned in chat that apparently the budget... I don't know if this is true, I'd have to check. Apparently the budget for everything ever all at once was 25 million. 
I think so. It was a fairly low budget film. Yeah. The same money that went and into I think that they film. Shot it all in a, went into the. They shot it in like a month too. So what would you rather? Holy another shit. one of them or an episode of Kenobi? I would rather have another one. Well, I don't want to color the audience with mm -hmm. my poisoning the well here, Rags. How, how I don't want to poison the well. But imagine all the alternate universes where I did poison the well and things were just fine. Oh, also Caesar from Planet of the Apes. Oh, uh, well, uh, yeah. Like, are we gonna? The, the problem is, C we were just CGI talking about is, Avatar. CGI is a tool. Just like yes. any other tool that you yes. can use to tell stories, it can be used well and it can be used poorly. Yeah. And you know, what's CGIs are that's, like that's light why, that's why, like, it's why I left when I heard someone saying CGI is just better than practical effects. It's like someone saying hammers are just better than spanners. Deal with it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right then. Cool. Well, yeah, because uh, and it sucks because the MCU is currently making everyone think CGI is bad, and it's like because because like, everything's on oh, crunch time well, basically comes out and people go like, oh, hey, because like Avatar 2 looks really cool. It looks uh, damn good. Way. The trailer looks really very good, impressive. Yeah. I'm going to go to the theater and see that shit because I just want to be amazed by visuals. Uh, I like video games, so it's it's very difficult Whoa. for me to not appreciate the sort of improvements that are made to the technology. Like when you play something. Absolutely. Like yeah. when you, I mean, yeah, look, all right, for all of its faults, Last of Us 2 had like really impressive animation. And, oh, um, yeah. They really have like legit stuff. proper actors and mocap and stuff like that who are doing oh, these scenes. That's the well, Naughty Dog way to do it, it, isn't it? They've been doing yeah. that for a lot of games yeah. for a long because Uncharted One they did that, but it's just that the technology keeps improving to mm -hmm. where you can. Red yeah. Dead Two, like... Lena Jurgens plays Sinua in a Hellblade, and it's a, it's so damn impressive just to see oh, yeah. that sort of come to life. It's so impressive that we should call it live action, right, Frankie? No, no, dude, Pride <laughs> Rock. No, no. <laughs> no. I, that, no. that is um, that is the fact. Oh, this should be called something else. It is literally computer generated <laughs> animation. It's CGI. It's Bizarre. animated. It's an animated film. No, like no. Action. If you paint an accurate enough painting, it becomes a photograph. <laughs> <from you. laughs> yeah. Go watch Do My Mess with Lion King video, everybody. I mean, Oh yeah, that's no, awesome. No, well, it's um, but like mention that like people will be shocked by just how much CGI they've seen in films without realizing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we've It'll, been over this before. Uh, like how many backgrounds are not actually there? Like you know, you know it's there in like effects blockbusters where the thing that you're seeing couldn't possibly have kept been captured in camera, and also that is some of the most ambitious CGI as well. So you can sort of just identify it by the way it looks. Mm -hmm. Um, however. For a lot of films, there will just be like, like you know, like you know what? There's not actually a Stark Tower. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, there what? is. Oh, well, like, I, I, I'd New to York. To, I'd go to something. I'd I'd give a. There are shows that you watch that are just set in the modern day and are very like, they're not speculative fiction where the backgrounds aren't there and they're green screens and they green screen in like New York or they green screen in the countryside. You but you don't you don't know. Because, like, I think Rocket Jump made a video where they were talking about, like, oh, why is visual effects so bad? It's like, that's not really, it's not really, like, when visual effects is working really well, you don't really think about it. Mm. It's kind of like But when you're design. watching Black Widow and you could tell they're not just in the woods and yeah, it's clearly CGI. I, I guess it's stuff like that that draws you out of it. When it's just, when it's done badly. Not that it is, but that it's done badly. I think something uh, James Cameron has talked about in terms of his interest in it is, uh, I think he talked about it with a leader. He said, like, if you can bring somebody into the story where, like, they look at this face and they're not really thinking about that it's a computer... Like, you might not... You know that it's not real, but you kind of buy into it for the for the story. You know, you're not thinking about yeah. it all the time consciously. You don't have to fight your brain real. about it, yeah. Yeah. Is it also true that... um, as, uh, I would imagine that a lot more often practical effects force the director to... um consider how it will be achieved beforehand because it has to be captured in camera whereas a poor director they work will simply limitations? film something and then go oh the cgi artists will you know they'll, they'll yeah, that, uh, yeah, that yeah without yeah. accommodating yeah, for how it's probably well, going to be used within the shot poor studio won't even give them the choice to like it'll be like well that over there is going to be something we don't know what it is yet it's probably going to be a giant tentacle monster but it could also be mm. just a guy but it might actually be a portal just look surprised. And it's like, okay. 
I think um, you know how they well, call mechanics like grease monkeys, right? They need to have like a like a pixel monkey, right? Those poor guys who are just slaving away in the CGI rooms, who just making all this stuff happen. There needs to be a name for them. Visual effects artists. <laughs> no, nah, it's too refined, and no, they, they, think, they, they um... need to be like they need to be like captured servants or something like prisoners. Something I'm thinking about right now is that um, that you know how like in the Thor trailer you can tell that the helmets are like CGI. They didn't even have the helmets they're wearing. Yeah, like it's pretty clearly plopped on. I'm pretty sure the reason why that's the case is because they don't figure out what these things are going to look like before they start filming. Although, or maybe they have, but they decided that they want to change it later on. Mm. Captain Marvel's costume in Endgame is CGI. It's not real because they hadn't finalized the design. So like yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> shit happens, yeah. Yeah. So like that, I mean, that's, and that's case in point, right? CGI is often um, a an, a filmmaker's just sort of uh, tip X. Like it, it's often just relied rain, upon, like a rain um, check when, for decisions. Yeah, for, that, for laziness, it, it's just they use it to accommodate for stuff. Um, yeah, for whereas practical effects have to be planned out properly. And you have you generally see the um, when you're watching a film, you see the results of planning. You see the yeah. We can't just throw an action scene here thought. because that would take like a lot of work for us right now to try and make a practical fight scene here. We yeah. just can't do it. We might have to change the story because it's it's an actual limitation of what we're able to accomplish on set. Um. So and this is this to me the problem is present in uh, a comment from from chat. No, CGI is terrible. It's why so many movies just feel uncanny nowadays. And then you find out later, half the Man. shots, the backgrounds, the props, time of day, etc. were all CG. So the problem is just badly executed CGI. It's not CGI as a whole. Look, one of the best yeah. uh, that examples... Listen to all of this and then say that. One of the best examples of the perfect marriage of like well-done CGI and well-done practical effects is the Lord of the Rings. The amount of CG in those films is insane. But a lot of it isn't necessarily that obvious because of how well it was done in execution. And it wasn't like Peter Jackson was like, oh, I'm feeling lazy today, we'll do CG for this shot. It's like, no, 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 he used it where it was needed. And uh, there's a the lot of films practical that... effects in Lord of the Rings is insane in terms of equipment and sets and extras and animals. Yeah, and, and we'll call out bad CGI when we see it, of course. Absolutely, I just, um, absolutely. I just think it's been pushed way too far in one direction now, and everyone's just like, yeah, fuck CGI. And it's like, guys, CGI creates some of the most amazing things ever. We know this, right? Like, come on. Yeah. But, well, you know what? Like, uh, the other day, a guy, like, uh, he went to, like, uh, outside my front door, and he, uh, he just, like, smashed up my door with a hammer. And the problem with that, right, is that hammers, they're just bad. Spanners are better. I, the I hammer was the wait, problem there. You say that the, the door just made me think back to remember our conversation about trying to think of an analogy for the stupid fence thing um like, Friggy, you came up with you can't go through the front door so you just destroy it by going in the back and then yeah. i was like oh no, yeah the with door. the fence yeah, right, yeah. No, I, in the front door is that yeah and, and then that, i that, is uh, that no that's not out yet i'll be out tomorrow i think i say uh, it's like the door is unlocked you just decide to destroy it and then jay says no it's yeah. the door is locked but there's no walls to your house and you decide to destroy the door to get in <laughs> <laughs> we're just trying yeah. to construct the perfect analogy, right? We get there. We're like, we're it's like a symphony. To construct an analogy. Then eighty thousand well. stormtroopers and CGI running around, getting blown up and giant. Just, just three quick shots, and you kill the five stormtroopers. That's a fun, quick action scene. What was fun about that uh, action scene when she slapped the storm? It was funny, I, I guess. Fun? Yeah, funny, yeah. I was, was about to say. <laughs> Funny. So we, we've, we've jumped between because it was first Meaningful's better and then it was a fun quick action scene. These are two different things. Yeah. A lot of, um, a lot of critics just use the word fun like as fun just, just thrown just around because they don't yeah. yeah and the problem with that is that fun is just a bad word. Fun is subjective. It's just a worse word than it's a bad word. Fun is very subjective. Fun things. It really, fun things it stays a bad word. Fun bad. Kind of the problem. Like I had fun. I didn't. You know, we've we've gotten nowhere. Yeah. Good conversation. See you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, the only way that like I would try to use fun while critiquing like a, a piece of media would be if it's like I guess um to just talk about the tone that they're trying to convey, right? You know, as opposed to solemn and serious. 
not in terms of just like this is why the scene is good because it's fun. Yeah, yeah, oh, I thought you I thought you said Solomon Sirius, not Solemn and Sirius. And I was thinking, who is that? Who's Solomon? That sounds Sirius? like a comic like book character, character from, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah like a it does like, sound like a comic book character. Solomon Sirius. I legitimately was trying to think. Do I know that character? Is he like a mutant or something? Oh wait. <laughs> So we're, gonna said, get, uh, we're gonna get one person drawing Solomon serious and sending Solomon it. Solomon serious. Someone said you keep trying to issue the correction in relation to the CGI, but the point is CGI correlates highly with crap. Have you ever heard the saying, correlation <laughs> does not equal causation? I've, also, I haven't been able to use that response forever. It's almost as if we literally just explained <laughs> why this happens, why CGI often ends up in in bad stuff looking bad. I bet most bad movies are pure practical. Well, uh, let's just start having fun with the logic and be like, most bad movies lately, there have been way more bad movies, it feels, in ratio compared to good ones now than ever. Maybe it's the existence of all the people in this stream who are here right now. That's it. That's what did it. Us being alive Damn is it. what's caused this to happen. So, I don't know. Whoops. We gotta, uh, Wait, hopefully we can fix like the, it. You're right. The Balrog ends this argument. It does. It's just done. It, it's over. It's a, it is a tool to be used for good or evil. <laughs> well, I, someone said, no, they captured a live Balrog, and I'm just like, oh, man, imagine that. Like, <laughs> Australia, there's just yeah, Balrogs running around. Yeah. The King Kong Looks like someone in chat's going to try bringing up CGI crime statistics. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The show is better off for it. It, it, sure. Mm, you're, see, you're approaching it from not like necessarily. a story. Yeah, so the show is better off for being. Well, but the thing is, I think his point in isolation works, but it doesn't with what was being said. He said like when a, the show is lower budget, it's forced to have lower scale fights, and he enjoys the meaning and funness of them or something. It's like, oh, but that wasn't what Jay was saying. Jay was saying it's crap, like it's incompetent crap, yeah. likely done because it was cheap. Um, no one criticizing the use of CGI has a problem with the Balrog being CGI. I'm pretty sure you were the person who just said that, like, CGI correlates with crap. So, that's why the Balrog wait. is an example. Kind of is like, well, wait a uh, minute, so what are you talking about when it comes to CGI being, like, inherently bad? Yeah. Uh, like, uh, wait, 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 I, 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 we can fix this. Poorly, then if all of the Marvel movies were forced to use practical effects where they would want to use CGI, all of the films would be so much worse, you have no idea. They would never be able to get it done in time, so everything would be unfinished. Like, the movies have to come out at the same date, they would be fucked. You get loads of, like, uh, really repurposed sort of sets, really awkward shots, loads of unfinished bits and bobs that they just hope you don't notice. CG, probably, right now, is being relied upon in the same way as, like, um... Like an overstaffed hospital. They're just getting all these customers in straight away to seal them up with, with CGI fixes when um, you need to give time. This is why we were saying about the tool thing. CG and practical effects both need time and space and talent to be able to work properly. You could, you, they need it. Both of them do because they're both tools. There's only so much you can do in an amount of time. And the amount of time that's being given to these visual effects studios to make this stuff is not suitable. It's, uh, I'm pretty sure it's being widely reported on that there's just like, there is, there is a backlog of films that are very visual effects intense, and there are only so many studios that can make them, but they all want to, um, the, the point in capitals, most CGI is bad, bad CGI is worse than bad practical, therefore, unless you're a master go with practical, well, that's not, is that your point, or is that RLM's point? That I don't think it's RLM's like point. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think like other viewpoints. Most CGI is bad. I would be curious to see like how you would qualify that. Bad CGI is worse than bad practicals. Like, oh, it depends. It would it's depend. All... It's always going to depend. Yeah. Even even if uh, most CGI is bad, even if we accept that, right? That doesn't mean that CGI is bad. It's it's bad. Like... No, it doesn't. It means that there's something because most doesn't describe something inherent to the um to the art form, yeah. and then there. Unless you're a master go with practical, what if you're not a master of practical or even competent? At... This is all assuming that what you said is correct. Do you take yourself for like making a lot of accurate good points? <laughs> what do you think you are correct? It's like uh, you know, it's like it's like let's say, uh, let, let's say most. I, I don't know. This might this might well be true. Most um, pencil life drawings are bad. It might be true, but like the reason for that would potentially be that that's a way that's often used to teach art students. 
So most people who are making those drawings are novices, right? Like that's not a problem with the art form. That's just a, a thing. Like that's just a a product of the world being the way it is and pushing a trend that causes these things to happen. It's 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 not the same as the art form being bad in and of itself. Um, mm -hmm. Someone said uh, clearly. Uh, guessing guessing Efab never watched the Spy Kids movies. I was like. Which I was in the theater when that movie released. It's uh, I was there. <laughs> like, yeah, the. How is that an argument you're making? I don't even know. I I just I just like the idea of thinking about Spy Kids. There's some I funny. I was there, movies. George. <laughs> <laughs> how how many people are going to try and counter this with? Yeah, but are you aware there's bad CGI? Like, like I don't after know. The um, fifth time someone says that, we're gonna be like, oh shit, I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> it's, uh, I think it's really intuitive right now and comfortable to just make fun of CG as a whole and we I've pushed back on this a million times on loads of different streams and I'll just keep doing it until yeah. I get a better argument to deal with because uh, as, as, as was said you just say Balrog and then it's over sure that's a, that's a question right? um, I guess I can't remember if I've asked I like to ask this to people but uh, J Metal Rags Fringy uh, what, is oh, be I... what is better in your humble opinion uh, the Rancor or the Balrog, in terms of execution of, a, of an effect? No, the Balrog. Balrog. Of course it's the Balrog. Jay? I don't really remember what the Balrog looks like, to be honest. God damn it, Jay! Let <laughs> me uh, <laughs> have a look. Um, yeah, I, I really like the Rancor, but I, I think, think the Balrog's The Rancor looks great, though. It does. That's kind of why I'm making the Pretty comparison. good. I think a lot of people think the the Rancor looks better, but I I would guess that more vote for the Balrog than the, the Rancor. Arcane is not CGI. It you know is what? I'd like to generate an image. Arcane, Arcane is live action. The CGI thing. You're just you're just counting <laughs> all the CGI. No, it's live action because of well, what I, this is what I mean. It feels like people don't realize that when you say CGI is bad, you're also including like all Pixar, all like every 3D animated. F that's that's CGI. It's computer generated imagery. 2D animated films that are done on a computer are technically computer generated imagery. Did you I mean, know well, to be to be fair, I don't. I, I'm not trying to be condescending, but CGI does stand for computer generated imagery. It's it's like some people might not even know that. I guess some people might not know that. They might right. think it's like a particular subset of something or something. I just really, it's just, yeah, most people probably it's don't very know what broad. Scuba stands for. Yeah, Bow looks pretty good, and to be honest, I don't know how you could have done that with practical effects. I don't know how you could have I don't know Gandalf either. fighting him. <laughs> I'll fall it you'd down. have to do some really, you'd have to do some Ray Harryhausen shit. Like, we're talking stop motion monsters, maybe, or. And not all of those look terrible. Uh, some of them look really neat. Mm -hmm. You probably have to capture the fire separately and like com yeah, it would, uh, com composite it. It would be incredibly difficult, and I don't know that you'll be able to beat out what the CGI did. I don't know. Uh, I don't think so. But maybe the most talented team of like uh, practical effects artists, they could create a Balrog that blows us all away even more so than the, the CG one. Maybe. Yeah, and, and then I. But then there's a matter of how much would it cost you, and how long would yeah. it take. Versus, are you even capable of getting the rest of the film done? Practic you know, practical stuff. It just has limitations, and sometimes those limitations are just too much. They're too much to overcome for what you want to portray. Well, the, the so limitation would be: you look at something like Avatar. Could you achieve the Navi without visual effects? It's like I guess you. You can try. Could. You you you. But just, I don't uh, think that you can. It's not one the, of the benefits. Of, not yeah. the way that they are. You need you need a bunch of people who are nine feet tall. Everybody would need to be nine feet tall. Well, you could do, no, they'll do the Hobbit thing, shift, right? Perspective, right? Um, there are, there are ways around it. Yeah. But then you also have to deal with the because they have longer limbs. They're not just taller. They're also longer. And then you also need perspective to, for those two. It, it's, I mean, we're going to create a lot of additional things we'd have to do for the in-camera sort of results as opposed to post or even and also CG and stuff. Pandora. Pandora looks a certain way. How do you do, like, the floating rocks in the sky? Forest perspective. Strings. Some, I, something I really I, like I, about, um, like about CGI is... is I just, um, w w if you need to uh, get the strings out of there, you got to, like, you know, 
get rid of them. No, it's just no, only thin and light. Very see-through thin strings so that we don't have to eat. And they're blue, uh, okay. they're the same color or, as the uh, I don't think guys. I don't think it necessarily can... I think you can do post, like, after, like you can do post-production. No, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if... I don't know if I'm going to let, let that fly. <laughs> if you we... do, um, okay, so, well, so Star Wars doesn't have any CGI in it. The only uh, computer-generated well, uh, sequence in Star Wars is the uh, wire mesh of the Death Star they show uh, in the... In the, I guess, in the, I guess it depends on how the pilots. Because like, all of the ships and everything are real, but then compositing, the compositing everything... Compositing, yeah. Depends. Composit yeah. Compositing wasn't done with computers, it was done with film. Well, um, okay. now it's done with uh, computers, but back then you're right. Yeah, but you, it was like, FGI. You, would, you wouldn't need to use CGI to do that. Okay, then you'd have That's to fair. deal with film then. Yeah, yeah like, that would be... I was gonna say, what, like, well, the thing is... One thing I really do appreciate about CGI is that, because um, as you were saying with the Navi, they just have longer limbs. Which, yeah. like, if you, were, if you were working within the limitations of practical effects, I think you would probably just have to scrap that idea. Like, I guess that's what I'm every saying. Navi is a puppet. But with yeah, CGI, a, like... That's a detail you can sacrifice, probably. If you are making, like, just a, an alien race and you're like, yeah, they're gonna be CGI, you, can, you have the limitation completely lifted of, okay, these don't have to be, like, we don't have to think about how will a human fit in this costume. Because in a, in a you know, TV show, like... Um, I think Star Trek actually really clearly shows the limitations of practical effects where oh, yeah. basically every alien they introduce has to be a person in a costume. So yeah. you can't really have different proportions easily. You can't mm -hmm. think you can't do any of that. Um makeup if it had been decided that every effect was gonna be CGI in Star Trek, it probably it would look worse in camera, but I think in universe it would make more sense. Um, you have a lot more diversity of alien like types. Yeah, not everyone that, would yeah, be a yeah, human. Exactly. And when comedy. CGI is done well, that's really enhance that really enhances that kind of thing. Exactly. Agreed. And also like how do you do because the T one thousand, there's definitely practical in there, but how how are you gonna achieve something like that? How how do you make the T one thousand without visual mm -hmm. effects? Because even you know, like a lot, um, of, a lot of how practical yeah. the, the Titanic was in, when James Cameron did it, I'm, I'm yeah. sure there are CGI touch-ups like. They would everywhere. never build a real Titanic, Mahler. No, <laughs> they did. Build they a, did. <laughs> they, they did build a real one. I. Yeah. Your joke doesn't it's work. The Titanic yeah. rags. It yes, it sunk. <laughs> yes, the real Titanic sunk. No, that's you're the, not that's what I'm away. saying. That you, they did build a Titanic. They built like. I a know. Replica. That's the Titanic joke. Too. Is that they did. And it sank. <laughs> I don't know that. I don't. I. Hmm. I mean, hmm. it was a tragedy. Obviously, it's not a joke that it sank. Just to be clear, it was a tragedy. But like the the thing I was referring to was the I was presenting it as outlandish that they would build a real Titanic when Titanic the movie is based off of them building a real ship called the Titanic that had a tragedy. It wasn't as bad as nine eleven, but it was still a real tragedy and a tragic loss of human life. They made a film about it. I don't know that we need to compare every tragedy to 9-11. This fucking stream's a tragedy, but it's not as bad as 9-11. <laughs> I just completely didn't understand what the joke is at all. I, I'm so lost, like... That's fine. Enough people did, it you, made it you worth it. But you mentioned 9-11, which means I get to post this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Oh, I Christ. know this image. Yes. <laughs> that's if I died in 9-11, that's how I'd want to be remembered. The Marriott giving away complimentary coffee. Not even full-sized muffins either. What the <laughs> fuck is muffins. this? Mini muffins. What would we like? In remembrance of those we lost on 9-11, the hotel will provide complimentary coffee and mini muffins from 8.45 to 9.15 a.m. How many Pentagons I, have to I'm get imagining... hit by planes for us to get regular sized muffins? I'm just imagining someone arriving down there at 9.16 going, oh, did I miss the 9.11 muffins? <laughs> <laughs> um, Damn it! Yeah, uh, so the point I was trying to make was that, that despite the fact that they made so, much, so many efforts with those practical elements of, of the Titanic sinking in the film, they would, of course, had a whole extra layer of CGI touch-ups that would have been super appreciated, like, the, of stuff they maybe missed or things that went wrong when doing all the uh, practical stuff. CGI is cool. He's a neat lad, and he helps out when he's Dude, needed. Sure but can. People abuse the fuck out of him, unfortunately. Yeah.
story perspective, and this is the same with the opening shot for me, where I'm thinking about the execution yeah. and how awkward it is. I, I'm, I'm, I agree with Rich. It's, it's, it's a better bridge. Like we all hated Rogue One because it was like did Star we? Wars porn on crack. Uh, yeah. I guess they did. Like, I guess they, they, they did. They did hate Rogue One. They even had to make um, a clarification <laughs> video <laughs> because uh, their audience did not like their coverage of Rogue One. Um, well, because Rogue think... One is the best. Disney Star Wars thing, probably. They well, in That's retrospect, I think sure, people I think are more so. so fine with it now because a lot of the criticism of Rogue One is reflective now. I would say of, of like Disney's approach with Star yeah. Wars being remember the obsession. This. With, yeah. Remember this. But the thing is, like, yeah. so to give you an example, because I I remember being a little confused back then with with their coverage. If you consider they were like, oh look, an AT AT. Oh look, an X wing. Oh look, Tie Fighters. It's like, well, the Rebels and the Empire are fighting in this era. They would necessarily be using these items like i don't know that yeah it's member berries to just have the vehicles they would use it's you know not a mean? hologram darth maul who uses his lightsaber for no reason at all <laughs> yeah for no reason other than to remind you that he has a lightsaber and it has two blades on it and it is very cool do not um, you remember that but i don't want to you know ignore the idea that yeah they definitely had moments like that in rogue one the, the best one i think is they bump into the two bar people who uh, Luke ends up, you know, like the, the 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 one that gets his hand chopped off. Like the two main characters in Rogue One bump into those two, and they almost like get into a little scuffle. And it's just like, why the fuck did you make this happen? And it's like, well, because you know those two from New Hope. Remember those two? He's like, yeah, okay. Yeah. And they're they're on I was Jakku. Wondering when we'd see them again. They're on Jakku like an hour before it gets blown up. It's just funny that it's like they must have been heading to the spaceport to head over to Boss Eisley. I guess I don't know. The you'll be dead guy. Yeah, yeah. Imagine so. learning that the planet you left from an hour ago got blowed up. Damn. That would be fucking terrifying. <laughs> like, fucking yeah. hell. Wow. Yeah. Jesus and then, Christ. When's and then, this Rex, one going to blow up? You get your hand chopped off right after that. Your whole, like, no, oh. your whole arm. Oh, right. Yeah, it is his whole arm. Um, I mean, your, your hand is included in that. Of maybe course, you would but... you'd be thankful. You'd be like, oh, thank God I only lost the arm if I was on that planet. Yeah, at least you know? I didn't get vaporized <laughs> yeah. entirely. And I live in the future where we can have robot prosthetics that are as well, good, it's probably better than the real thing. In my mind, I would say I would process those as, as separate events, you know. What if Luke like, explicitly would, would... said to you, no, sorry, Obi Wan, after doing that, explicitly said, I wouldn't have done this had you died on the planet. <laughs> Just because I survived the explosion of a planet doesn't mean that it's okay. I got my arm chopped off. I, I'm following you, yeah, Jay. That's, that's I, true. I'm, that's true. I'm like, picking like, up what you're laying down. I my whole point is, what if it was a direct causal both. link? What if it was it was that? Then you can feel this way, right? Like, of course, it's a direct causal link. Because if he didn't, like, if he died, then yeah, of course that wouldn't happen. No, he like... means like in the sense of they got accosted by a random stormtrooper who said, "Ah, oh, you're the one who got away from Jakku." Well, no one gets away from an exploding planet without consequences, and then cuts his arm off. That would be like a direct causal link. Uh, so, oh right, sorry. Yeah. Did I say Jakku? I meant Jeddah. Uh... I, you know what? I, I think I knew that you were wrong, but I just don't care. Is it was yeah it was it's fine. Um, funnily enough, though, a lot of people when talking about what they like about Rogue, I think he said Rogue Three because I was gonna say the third act hey, is what people like about Rogue One typically, and that was like the part that uh, Red Letter Media fucking hated because they considered it all, as they said, Star Wars porn, which um is a but little fine. How porn's not yeah. bad necessarily. Uh, yeah, it's it's just kind of like uh sure i guess i don't know it's kind of a weird take in terms of um do you just mean that a lot of the stuff we see because do you guys remember this um they intercut footage of the uh classic x-wing fighters yeah. from a new hope in this scene and i remember when i saw it, i was like you know what that feels that feels just about right and they do it respectfully and quickly to the point where i'm like that's that's neat i like that it feels like so they're it's respecting unused footage, yeah. right I think some of them may be repeated clips, so I remember some of the lines, but it could just be alternate takes of the same line, I don't know. But um, it makes sense that they would be there, and, you know, it's just like, yeah, that, that, that to me seemed like a nice way of doing it. But I could totally see someone being like, no, that's just key jangling or something, I'd be like, eh, alright, I guess, I don't know. It's, it's, it can be a little bit complicated. It can be contextualized in the story. Yeah, that's typically how we try and separate yeah. it out. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have a reason to exist in this story. Too much. Mm. And then this, like when Obi-Wan's running around the little hallway set, and there's like <laughs> four stormtroopers, and they're actual guys in costumes, and he's like, he's like, uh, uh. <laughs> and then, and then he, and as he sees, how, is, how is this not member berries then? 
not, I guess. Say that Obi -Wan, like, they bring back fucking Darth Vader to fight Obi Wan. Well, no, stormtroopers and costumes. Remember those? Well, like, uh, yeah. uh, to be fair, I think what he's trying to explain here is that it all feels a lot more uh, like he's watching tangible. Something. I was gonna. Say, I was Intimate? trying to go for a word that. I don't want to say more meaningful, because I don't want to put words in his mouth, but he just seems to be more engaged with it when it's uh, practical and small Mate. scale is kind of what he Relatable seems to be saying. Relatable stakes, I suppose. Intimate, perhaps. Yeah, he seems to be saying like he has much more fun with it when it's just hallways awkwardly doing things and there's people in costumes and that's what's happening instead of grand CGI battles. But then how can um, the criticism be that it's member berries and all the vehicles we recognize are showing up? Surely that's just... That's, that's something else going on then. I guess I would just say, I hope that we could draw a distinction between small scale but good and small scale and bad. <laughs> you know, like, I hope so, not, you think. not it simply being small scale is what makes it worthwhile. It isn't worthwhile. He's like old here, and no. he's out of time. He's like out of practice, right? But that, that works for and, what and they're doing with his character. Yeah. It, it just he's out right. of practice which um, works for his character it's like does that work for his character considering his only no. goal no i don't it think so work in the end and to he be fair be training all the time he does phenomenally well with his sword uh in episode four he's, Hell, um, he struggles yeah. to move a little lug nut across a table but he can hold back the ocean y yeah this is what i'm like how are we supposed to deal with this? Like, in terms of understanding what the fuck they're trying to tell us about him? I don't know. He's out of practice, but he's not out of practice at all yeah. in any way whatsoever, apparently. And also, he could, yeah, there's... Mm. The Force just yeah. comes flowing back in that episode, and I genuinely don't understand what's supposed to have made the difference. Yeah, and I think that the most I, intuitive I we can get only... with it is that well, he's under a high-pressure situation, but that doesn't yeah, work, because he's previously ah. been under high-pressure yeah. situation. <laughs> Nice one, Mahler. Yeah. It bridged it better, and it made, made it more feel more like that era than Rogue One. Rogue One. So now, this is a different argument, and one that I, I can, at least we could talk about, is like, does Rogue One or the Kenobi show feel like it fits in with the OT era better? Rogue and he's one. talking about the way it feels as though it was filmed, like, uh, we're talking oh, late um, 70s versus obviously a modern production, yeah, yeah. which feels yeah. like it fits in with... <sighs> Obi Wan is. Kenobi is clearly a modern production. Um, yeah. The, the, the issues with the well, I think that Rogue One, because like in Rogue One, something that's kind of interesting, I it feels like um, it looks a little bit like when they had all of the ships that they tried to make them look more like the practical props that they had used here. In the, uh, Fringy, I think I might be able to help out because I think what I, I think I get what you're saying. It, I think there are parts of Rogue One that feel like a really good HD upscale of Star Wars. Hmm. Yeah, like where they're almost trying to capture the <coughs> oh, pardon me, capture the feel of the miniatures that they used. Like that you they could went think... out of their way to make them look more like the miniatures. Because if you take some scenes from Rogue One, the ships and the moving around and stuff, if in your head you can imagine them at a lower resolution for a 1977 film, and maybe the effects not being quite as good, and what would they look like as actual? What would they look like as actual models, as opposed to you know like some CGI stuff and touch-ups and things? And you could kind of see it. Like I could see it in my head, and I don't think I have to stretch it too far. In a lot of these scenarios. Yeah. And um, yeah. To, I think um, some people in chat have been very critical of, of Mike's argument here. Like to defend him a little bit, I think this is actually okay to say. So to give you an example, if let's say Rag said Rogue One and Return of the Jedi are of I'm the same amount of quality to him writing wise, let's pretend that that was the case for a moment. But he said he prefers Return of the Jedi because he feels it fits way better in what he perceives to be the story, the, the OT story versus Rogue One that feels like a, a much more modern and stapled on thing. I'd be like, yeah, I could see that. I could see how that, that could be something you feel. Mike feels that about Kenobi when it, it to me, like, it's almost impossible to see it as anything other than like, oh, this is very modern. Uh, uh, it's definitely a modern production, but I guess in terms of the, the feeling that one fits in better than the other, I, I always refer to it, but it's such a good example. I don't believe that Han Solo dropped Cthulhu into a uh, into a black hole. Like I, I just don't believe that that happened. And that is and why you, you failed. I don't think any of us would have ever thought that was ever going to happen in that movie. I, I, nah. I guess what I'm getting at is, if someone's like, "Well, do you do you think Rogue One is canon?" Like it's like, well, like I treat it as canon. Like I don't find that 
uh, you know what I mean? Like it I doesn't offend me, and it seems like it sort of fits in without any breaks. Well, I guess my what memory. I would appeal to more is the sequels are canon in my head as much as I would prefer for them not to be that way because there's a sense of legitimacy that they have. Um, because of like you know, the Disney like, aspect. No, the thing is, the thing no, about because... that legitimacy though is that it was bought. Well, well, sure, but I, I guess I would say the same thing about, like, Terminator Dark Fate is like, oh, you've got, like, a bit of legitimacy, though. Like, Genesis I can easily ignore and pretend it doesn't exist. But, like, Dark Fate, they've got Linda Hamilton back as well. Why doesn't so I count as legitimacy? Uh, it does count as legitimacy in a sense, but I feel like when you like also it's a bring back that in, eventually tips the scale. Well, I'd be willing to agree with you if you're saying, well, this got Arnie and her in, and Dark that's kind of so. what I'm getting at. It's got it's got more. And hey, um, it's got John Connor too. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh. I guess that's what I'm saying is with Kenobi, I think I think it's Kenobi. it's very much teetering on the uh, on the edge of like, nah, this I don't I don't believe this happened. Like when I watch New Hope, I don't believe that this happened. Yeah. It's um, it's teetering, and I'm not sure what. I feel like that might just be just suspension of disbelief in a sense. And, uh, um, we've said this before, but all of us. When was the last time we watched Rogue One? For me, we're we're talking like twenty. It it's been a while years. when it yeah. came out. <laughs> I'm starting to think it might be as late as yeah. early as like 2019, 2018. Probably the last time I watched Rogue One. If then, I'm trying to think if that was even when I did. But so like my memory of it is so thin at this point. That um, yeah, I could it could turn out that I fucking hate the movie. I don't actually know anymore because it's yeah. It's I'm already from years points. old memory. I doubt it though. So, to clarify, I'm not saying that anybody needs to treat anything that as canon or whatever based on like you can treat whatever. I what I'm talking about is more so like subconsciously. What do I what do I perceive as being? the timeline, I guess, for these stories. And unfortunately, yeah, I get when at the end of Return of the Jedi, in my head, I'm like, oh, but you all failed. Like, then there is that yeah. in my head. I Whereas when I watch Han Solo, I, for whatever reason, I'm not like, oh, yeah, you dropped Cthulhu into a black hole. It just doesn't, <laughs> it just doesn't fit in. It doesn't slot so in. bizarre. Into, uh, thing yeah. In there. Yeah, and uh, the way I see it is like, so if someone said like, why are you covering all of Disney Star Wars movies instead of all fan film Star Wars movies that are probably better? And I'd be like, well, we want to cover what's quote unquote canon. canon. It's, it, and someone would be like, you consider this canon? canon? I'd be like, I don't want it to be canon, but by well, a meaningful definition is... of canon, I guess it is. By a meaningful mm -hmm. definition of canon, it's all ca it, all of this is canon. There's kind of no better way to define what is in continuity than how the people who own it define it. Yeah, like even uh, if uh, even if I don't like, you know, it, what I mean, even it, if, but I if someone says like, do you when you canon. think of the character of Luke Skywalker, do you consider all of what you saw in the sequel trilogy to be like a part of that story? And I'm like, not really. I don't think so. My brain sort of thinks of Luke. I, as I think this, so too. This, I'm I'm glad but, that I'm able to consume proper star wars without thinking about the sequels kind of ever pop it into my mind I'm, yeah and i think I over time I'm fortunate that i can just block it out and i don't think about it over time more and more me, so they will fade i think for so. me how can you yeah. treat somehow palpatine is back as canon it's like a car crash into the fourth roll. so like i i think those movies are bad i i hope that that to people like i feel like the point is pretty clear it's not really about like you can treat them as non-canonical if you want. You'll be better off that way, really. What yeah. I'm saying is I find it hard to pretend that they aren't, like, in real in the timeline. Um, I, for the whatever sequel. reason, I, I find it difficult to try and... I, I find it hard to watch Return of the Jedi and see um, them having their little party with the Ewoks and thinking, man, like, <laughs> Han Solo, you get killed by your son. Uh, Luke, you you fail spectacularly and then live out the rest of your days as a hermit. It's hard not to think about what comes afterward. Whereas I just yeah. nobody cares about Solo. You know, nobody thinks about Solo or treats it as canon. Yeah, I think it'd be a lot easier it, yeah. mentally to dismiss the sequels if they had cast different actors to play all of the I returning so. characters. Oh yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, and, um, well, in the same way, yeah, it would also be a lot easier to dismiss it if. Um, there was a, a viable alternative to think about, right? If there was a... Um, I way, imagine that's... it's probably pretty easy for EU fans to dismiss it. That's going to be why Rings of Power is going to be dismissed so fucking hardcore by all the Tolkien fans. There's nothing that's legitimate about it, really. Like, if they get any... You'd think they might get some actors <laughs> to get in there, but they've recast basically all the, all the roles, right? So, we shall so. see. Um, 
And, and uh, someone said, Molly, you're complaining there's no good Star Wars content and Disney's ruined everything, and yet there's a giant treasure trove of EU stuff you don't even engage with. Uh, I've never said there is no good Star Wars content in the context of everything everyone's made on planet Earth. That's not at oh, all you what I'm saying. said that. It was, yeah. It was I'm talking specifically said. about what Disney's doing. We focus pretty much entirely yeah. on uh, more mainstream examples of, like, storytelling. That's, that's what EFAP's goal is, but we do venture out here and there. And then, as for, like, consuming more fan-made stuff or EU stuff, it's just like, yeah, I've just not been that interested in uh, what Star Wars has got in there, but that's the same for, like, everything. I don't really, like... I haven't looked into all the additional Babylon 5 stuff outside of the main show. I haven't looked into that for Lord of the Rings. I haven't read the Silmarillion. Like, uh, not that that's, all of those are the same thing. They just, they, uh, I don't know exactly. I don't know where I draw the line, but I do somewhere. Um, I'm sure there's loads of great Star Wars stuff as third party in EU. To be fair, I've, I would say that there's loads of good stuff in Star Wars outside of the OT. Like, Video games. Yeah, sure. several Probably. of the games are pretty damn awesome, so. You know? It's, Star Wars is a world. You can do a lot, and it's. Yeah. Uh, not, that's not what's it's a shame all that. The people in charge make is crap. Something I find kind of interesting is that um, back, you know, 20 years ago, it seems like Star Wars was much more interested in making lots of video games. Now that video games are way more popular um, and more that accepted weird. in mainstream, Disney doesn't really have that much investment. There's only been mm -hmm. like three or four Star Wars games in the their tenure, whereas like while the prequels were coming out, how many games were there? Like 15? A bajillion. <laughs> Might have been more than that even. All of the games. Yeah, there's so many that games. That is strange. You'd think that Disney, with all of their 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 pursuit of digging too deeply and well, too greedily when it comes to this I franchise. Wonder, would... I think Disney, because uh, Disney had like an interactive studios, like little subdivision. I think because they got um they got Warren Spector to uh for like Epic Mickey, but then they just it never panned out, so they just gave up on video games, which feels like one of those uh. It feels odd. Like, that, did you uh, forget how in, how big video games are, Disney? I guess it's because yeah. they tried and it didn't really pan out. Whereas Warner Brothers seems to have. Well, I though I remember there was a rumor that Warner Brothers doesn't want their interactive stuff anymore. They don't want their video game studios that they were looking to sell them, like huh. Rocksteady oh. and stuff. So, which is surprising. Uh, maybe that's not true. That was that was a rumor. So, sorry, tangent over. Uh, seven late no. seventies Star Wars where Stormtrooper smacking his Stop head on the, uh, the Oh no! Stop. Let's let's get the full context for that because that is the fucking meme right now, and it looks like they're using it too. Right? But that that works for and, what and they're that's, doing that's with this character. Yeah. It it just it bridged it better, and it made made it more feel more like that era than Rogue One. Rogue One's like ah. ah. Seven late seventies no. Star Wars where Stormtrooper smacking his head on the uh, the top of the set. Yeah, and then you 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 were talking about. I don't the... get the point. He just so, said the thing. So so yeah, what Jay is saying, too. what Jay Bauman is saying, is the Kenobi feels like the way they've made it as a show feels like stuff like that head bonk is possible, where it's a, a ragtag sort of lower budget experiment where they're trying to make a thing. Meanwhile, mm. Rogue One is like this highly polished, high budget thing that'll have no mistakes in it because it's fundamentally made with two different ideas and eras and budgets in mind. He's saying like he likes Kenobi more because it feels more like the production of the OT. Uh, okay. Which, I mean, I disagree, but like. I do, yeah, I don't agree with that. It definitely feels like a modern production. Yeah. Like when I when we see what's her name put a hand on the stormtrooper's face, that doesn't come across to me as like a bonking head error. That's just and bad. it's just <laughs> like we don't know how to do anything involving characters yeah. just fighting or combat in general. I feel like um, it's 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 just like there are several things we could probably reference in Kenobi that feel like super high budget by comparison. And to be honest with you, most people don't even see that head bog. I'm not even kidding. Wow. Most people miss yeah. it. Most said hey head bonk in star wars they just look at you and it's so odd because it's not like in universe a stormtrooper could bonk their head yeah there's of course it, well i mean the reason why we know that it can happen is because it happened in real life <laughs> when they were filming star well that, yeah wars. that's that's probably the best because you remember they're, they're not some kind of elite fighting squad that um you know like a droids or whatever where they they can account for everything at every moment they're conscripted like men from different planets and stuff it's just it's a guy he's walking through the doorway he hits his head a little bit 
one Fine. example of any soldier ever in all of human history bonking their head on a door. You can imagine a knight just walking through. I mean, knights, you know, they were like, they were super important in societies. I'm sure yeah. a knight once bonked their head on a door. I'm like, oh, pardon me. I'm terribly sorry. Yeah. That is, yeah, that's uh, what the Darth, yeah. Darth Vader fight with Obi Wan. Yes, being before, awkward and looking like a fan film. Before watching the show, I saw that clip. It like showed that is kind of funny it. because you know that what is it the SC thirty eight one, like because that's a fan film, in terms of a fight between our Obi Wan and Darth Vader, which seems to have more focused choreography compared to what they did in this. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I, I guess to be clear, I I would not want that to be the fight that was actually in the film. Um, like that's that's a cool action scene, like a cool fight scene, but that's not what I would want in the film. Yeah. Oh, I don't uh, think but, it can suit that scene at all tonally, but like I, I understand what they were going for. I, I guess the reason why I'm bringing it up is because like that, I feel like that fight scene is more fun to watch than the fight between Obi Wan and Darth Vader in this show. Well, yeah, and I want to go further that it just it looked like it took more time and talent to create. Um, mm -hmm. Which Absolutely, it took can a go a long way. Like watching the different strikes versus watching this awkward sort of slappy thing happening. We were just like, mm -hmm. uh, "What's going on here?" Especially in a in a production now, and like you've got actors who are perfectly capable of performing basically anything you want. Um, that's what we ended up with. We, was, we uh, know we know what Ewan McGregor's capable of doing. We've seen, we've seen it. it. But weren't they like super high on just? Going like advertising is like, look, the training for all these things to get like epic. Sword well, we got one more fight like, to come, Ooh. Metal. Maybe that's the intense, I'm quick, like, amazing uh, one. Like, okay, okay, okay. Quite hard. It's just that they've been failed. So that they just uh, take the next some bums off the street to make the one, the first one between those two. Then I don't know what happened with that one. I wonder if they storyboarded so it at all. Like, yeah, I don't know. did they do storyboards for the prequels? I wouldn't be surprised if they did. Um. But this one, it just, it almost, it's almost like they showed up on set and they, they, we're going to have a fight in this quarry. We know that we're going to have a fight in this quarry, but as for like any specifics, we haven't really figured that out yet. So we'll figure it out now while we're here. That's kind of how it comes across. Looking like a fan. Yeah, Before it's, watching it's stuff. In the show, yeah. I saw that clip. It like showed up as recommended on YouTube or something. And I legitimately thought it was a fan film. Like that first where he runs away. Cause I was like, oh, that's a funny punchline. Oh, Darth yeah. Vader shows up. And they, he pulls out his lightsaber. It, it should be a funny punchline when they like, meet, right? A hill? Well, so I, 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 I was about to say, I, 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 hope that I, th I think he, he's made a good point that he saw this out of context and he assumed it was a, a joke yeah. scene made by fans. Where if yeah. these two ever yeah. met yeah. again, everyone would be like, oh, fuck, and run away. Oh, and it's like, no. oh, that's kind of funny. Oh, and we found it funny, funny. Uh, in the episode. But it also was not going for funny. I don't think they were going for funny, no. No. It was so funny well, the, to me. The awkward thing is he runs out behind it's like they use it's like they use the same location. Yeah, he runs out. I it looks like he's running back to yeah. Yeah. be in front yeah. of Vader. Yeah, it was he filmed wasn't. very poorly. So that's, I was gonna say we yeah. were just downright confused. I thought what it meant was that Vader was flying over and ahead so that he could surprise over but like how awkward would that look if you had like the I don't know, a wide view of the whole quarry? It's the cheapness of it has Vader like, bouncing around, like <laughs> trying to keep up with Obi Wan. Just climbs up to things like oh, oh, shit, shit, and get him. Like, did I, you picture Vader like peeking around the pile of sand, going, well, "Oh, I see you. Yeah. <laughs> you just went right over there." I could still Such see your feet. Shot. Um, yeah, it's it's just. It is. What can you what can you say that hasn't it's been said? Like the, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's like the camera does a one eighty, but it doesn't tell us, and it's in a location where there's no, there's just piles of dirt. And so when they swap the camera around to reverse the angle that you're looking at and Obi-Wan appears again, it looks like he just did, like he just came back to where he was. It, it's it's very poorly shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> Sith Lord, <laughs> you're just right <laughs> 10 feet over there. I can, I know where you're at. What? For me, the whole thing is this, this weird imbalance of things I like and things that are so cheap that they're kind of entertaining and then stuff that's just sort of boring. You can you can you can you can bitch about that encounter, but I like it better than the entire Mustafar battle. No, no, <laughs> you're wrong. Why? You're so wrong. Hey, he can oh, like no. it. Better. No, no, he that's, can't. That's okay. I... It's not possible. <laughs> it's not possible. The thing is, it can't be true. It comes that's across really weird for us because like that fight was so hilariously bad in like every possible element we could address in terms of production. This is Revenge of the Sith, which um, 
I think our biggest criticism for the Revenge of the Sith scene in totality is the dialogue. Uh, we weren't a fan of how overt Pretty and much. clunky it is. Um, as for My if someone's like, you didn't think Jedi it went on for too long? It's like, um... I don't know that that's going to be something I could give a really, really good argument for other than just saying, oh, it was a bit long. Like, uh, um, sure, it's long, but, like, I don't know that fight scenes have a specific time limit. Um, and then, of course, if someone said, don't you think it's absurdly grand and epic in, like, a almost like a negative way? It's just like, I don't know what to say to that, really. No, I, I don't feel that. Um, and then... And, and so much work and effort went into that. Well, and there's you some have to, impressive there's choreography. A level of in Absolutely, of there is. It's damn yeah. impressive. So, and the yeah. Vader fight in the dirt pile was just oh, like, so embarrassing. It was goofy, and it was it was embarrassing, is what it was. Yes, this is this is Obi Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader finally meeting up after ten years being apart, and that's what happened. How embarrassing. Of the that, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that 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 backflip porn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> backflip backflip porn. porn. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> All right. No, this it is isn't. Funny. If I if I was gonna look up <laughs> porn for backflipping, I would not look up that. I would look up some proper parkour slash Cirque du Soleil shit. I wouldn't be you looking have this up this. Nice little character moment at the end of that fight in in, in the series Obi Wan. Oh no! Here we where go. Oh, no. like Darth Vader, he's not trying to kill Obi Wan. Obi Wan's oh, old and out of shape. Darth Vader oh, can take him easily. No. He wants to make him suffer. <laughs> I love. They just accept this, and I hate it. They just, I hate it too. They just like, it. yeah, yeah. That he doesn't want to kill them. It's like, but what about all the other times where the stormtroopers shoot them, and people are clearly trying to kill Obi Wan? Well, hey, at least he's time, not arguing what the I, guy we covered did who said he didn't even want to capture him. Um, remember, oh. we, we covered someone who said that. Yeah, that's right. In the comments. No, it was the, yeah, it was the Reddit they, post. Don't worry, chat. You'll see us look at that tomorrow. Yeah, you'll see that, chat. Yeah. No worries. Consider been, this a yeah. teaser for stupidity to come. Um, but yes, uh, they, they liked that bit. We did not. <laughs> but he just like uses the force to just like spread all of this flammable material on the ground, and then he's just gonna literally rub Obi Wan's face in it <laughs> while he's on fire. That's that's what Darth Vader wants to do. Apparently, and it's perfect. It's no, not. It's not perfect. perfect. It's when perfect. when did Darth Vader ever just randomly start torturing people because he was just angry at them, and he just wants to? Like we we've gone into this cartoony villain territory that just seems. I don't know. And, 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 I'm not sure. I'm not sure that it's inconsistent with Anakin's characterization at the end of the prequels, but we're ten years into Darth Vader. I was more it's, so aiming for the cringe odd. of being like, "I'm gonna now with the tools available through luck recreate what you did to me, but to you, and it's not gonna do fuck all to you, really." But it's yeah. The, I, it feels like um, a writing 101, like how to create a meaningful payoff. And it's like, make thing happen that happened before, but again, but reverse. But reverse. Shitty. Yeah. Um, yeah, and shitty. And yeah, like it just uh, it felt kind of cringe, if I'm being completely honest. Yeah. It was very cringe. It, it really like people, was like baby's first writing. Like people make that argument, forget the scene that comes like right after when, when, when we have all these stormtroopers shooting into the fire. They're, where they, yeah. Obi Wan clearly is still lying or getting dragged from. Well, I suppose that the Vader's killer just argument looking. is just the fact that Vader says, "Bring him to me." Yeah, yeah. In terms of just the uh, Obi Wan ain't getting away, but then he does because, of course. And we and he tries to, to capture him. This the, the the rest of all the episodes that we have watched so far. Oh so. well, yeah. yeah he's episode he gets him away. Here. Episode five absolutely killed that Reddit post yeah. when you find out that he's pissed off at a. Uh, Wait, was it four? Sorry, episode four is yeah. It's the same episode oh. that we cover it, where he's, he's like pissed off that Obi Wan escapes, right? And it's like, wait, but I thought yeah, he wanted like, him yeah, to. Well, maybe to you should have let him escape, you fool. Because he's a stinky cave dweller, and now you got to make him a <laughs> good Jedi. Yeah. See, I like that moment. The actual fight. Again, that doesn't matter because you get the good character moments. No, it's not good. It's not good character. When has Darth Vader ever been like that? Ever? When has and, he ever um, done things like that? I don't know. What what are you are you talking about when he killed the Sam people? I I I do think that yeah, it's consistent with um, Anakin's prequel characterization. I just don't know that why that's what they're going for. Yeah, because technically he is 
uh, in years, one year closer to being OT character than he is to being prequel character. Um, oh, he's ten and years and away and from... More important here is that he is appealing specifically to Darth Vader, not Anakin. Yeah, I suppose that's a fair okay, point. Fr uh, well, fr Fringy. Mm -hmm. um, they, <laughs> they are the <laughs> same person. No, I, I know that, um, but I guess when we describe the entity that you're referring to, you know... Yeah, because to... even Yoda is able to tell Obi-Wan the distinction Consume. between the two. The Padawan you trained is gone. I would argue that, like, in Attack of the Clones, for example, right, if we, if we accept, like, uh, Yoda's uh, turn of phrase of gone Anakin Skywalker consumed by Darth Vader or whatever it is he says, um, then I would imagine that in the Attack of the Clones, that's just Darth Vader poking his head out. You know? I, I suppose I would. It, it, that is an common... element of his personality that will be well, exploited so, yeah. to create Darth Now Vader. we're getting into literally yeah. def defining the lines in the sand versus yeah. just talking about the character that is present in the prequels versus the character that is present in the OT. Right, sand. Mm -hmm. And oh, also, he's it... 10 years away from Anakin Skywalker. Well, he's. Well, so I think something that's worth considering is you think about. D uh, the timeline of Darth Vader specifically, like from becoming Darth Vader, getting in the suit, and then all the time that we, you know, passes, and then the OT. In that time, does it make more sense that a change in the way that he conducts himself occurs, like, gradually, or that it happened really early on in his life, and that Darth Vader then becomes fairly static for a while? Oh. Yeah, when I, you think I, mean, I agree that that makes sense. Like, I, I agree that it makes sense that he would not be like this anymore, considering that he's like this in the OT. I also think that, like, even if the change was gradual, he's like halfway in between. He's still very much Anakin. So I don't understand the decision at all, and I think it's dumb. Um, but I'm not sure that we could call it out of character. I think we can call it incongruent. Like, with... Like... I guess I think I think it's just dumb because like I, I suppose when could... I think about who Darth Vader is and what I find <laughs> into, like Darth Vader is intimidating because he's very cold, um, like he he will he will pretty ruthlessly get rid of people who he perceives as failing him. He doesn't like sure. Like, I um, I guess I um when you think about like in, in, in Rogue One, the scene with him, what's so scary about him is I mean, he's just like pressing forward, nobody's stopping him. He's just plowing through them. You know, it's like, like this, this unfeeling to... malice, this just silent, well, cold what's scary efficiency. About him is, yeah, th exactly. The cold like efficiency. Like a robot coming after you. It can't be reasoned I... with. It's not there to talk. It's not there to have a conversation. Yeah. It wants something and it's going to kill you if you're in the way. And you, you can think that. of examples like, I find your lack of faith disturbing. He didn't need to do that, and he was definitely not going to kill that guy. He just did it because he felt... Like, there's definitely elements of um of of Darth Vader toying with people and um exploiting his level of power over people. You know, like when he, perhaps you think you're being treated unfairly and stuff like that. He definitely has that streak. I just don't know that I believe that... I don't, I don't know see that how I that relates into what happens here in Kenobi. I, I just don't get the impression that that's something that he would do. Like, I think he would just kill Obi-Wan like he did in in um, in um uh, A New Hope. I think that's what he would do. He'd just kill yeah, him. Yeah, you'd think that I in mean, A just, New Hope. I do want to if... ask you the question, what do you think, Um, like, you know, uh, Revenge of the Sith Anakin Skywalker would do to Obi-Wan? Um, Wait, if... so... Uh... Uh, what do I think Revenge of the Sith Anakin would do to Obi Wan? Like, I imagine he'd get the kill shot as soon as he could. I think he would. Uh, I think he would. Yeah, because I think we'd see what we saw in that little recording when he was in the Jedi Temple in that film. He's just just going through killing everybody. Well, here's I, I don't a know. here's a reference when uh, Palpatine is describing what happened in the opening of Re Revenge of the Sith to Anakin. There's only naturally cut off your hand. You wanted revenge. Uh, he doesn't like mm -hmm. torture and torment Dooku. He defeats him and then executes him. It's not like, yeah. but that's at the same time. I don't want to imply that 
someone like Darth Vader is incapable of wanting to cause pain within someone to torture them to some degree. It's just this one felt odd. And he I has think a goal, if, he will. We've if anybody was that. having trouble feeling that this was in any way a strong argument against Vader's character, I'm assuming they would if they felt iffy on this one that they would concede what he does soon after is entirely out of character. The inability yeah, to use his force again, the reluctance to chase Obi-Wan because a loader droid is slowly dragging oh, him yeah. away. Like all of that it, shit. What? would damage that oh. moment significantly anyway. He let him go. He could have stopped him. Yeah, and that, that as we now know, confirmed by the following episode, that was actually out of character. He did not want him to get out. And so then you've got to think about the totality of the scene. He could have killed him, but he chose to put him in the fire and then let him escape because he just chose not to pursue him. Yeah. Even though he wanted to have him captured and killed. Um... Yeah, it's it doesn't it's out of character in in its totality. Um, whether or not, I guess it's more up for debate whether you think he would put him in the fire. I don't personally. Well, so uh, I think that I'm happy to sit at the ve the mo most I'll ever go is that I'll uh, have that back and forth talking about different elements and stuff. The fact that people have gone as far as saying it was perfect is like wow. Okay, uh, like yeah. you, they couldn't have like so uh, any any sense of them having a conversation is out of line because that would be less than perfect like it, it is crazy it there's it should be a very somber solemn i feel kind of moment where they meet not this i'm gonna drag you through some fire i happen to have here and that'll be that and now you're gone and they just don't they just don't talk they don't talk and i next feel like that's episode, what Ray. next episode they're gonna have uh, a chat I assume. Veda, Veda putting obi-wan in the fire i think is easily the least bad aspect of the scene I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of uh, well, all the think... aspects because I think they're all like bad. So I'm just trying to think of if, which which I would categorize the least I problematic. Um, I, I also don't think it's um, a violation of his character. It's just pushing it in every like in in every regard. It's pushing what Anakin might do. Well, I'm assuming and you it's still pushing that he's still like Anakin rather than like Vader at this point. I assume you're Although not including the results of the fire it's in just... this. Oh yeah, no, that's ridiculous. All right, good. As long as we, yeah. Um, right. So like, it's I don't have a problem. Like no, I do have a problem with Vader at ten years on being closer to Anakin than uh, that closer to he how he was in Revenge of the Sith than how he is in New Hope. However, I don't think it's an impossibility, and like, we could we could be leading into an event that totally explains his change in demeanor and this happened to him 10 years in. Um, and like, I think I would be fine with that if it was properly explored and then we, we saw where the change happened. I know that's not going to happen, All which right. is why we're if, on really thin ice with it, I think. If I've understood you correctly, your question to us should be, can you envision a good, like an excellent uh, encounter with those two? And the requirements are he does put Kenobi at least briefly into some form of a fire. Is that possible? And uh, I think I would say yes. I see yes, it's possible. Well, what's, what's the motivation mm. of revenge? Like, you know, you did this to me, I suppose. I think so, um, but I would really have to fucking work hard to not make it so yeah. goddamn, like, cartoony in terms of, like, ooh, some fire rocks. Like, it... It's like, yeah, well, yeah, because like, <laughs> if, if it was just, like, a practical thing of, like, this is the easiest attack he can deliver right now, then yeah, like it's pretty probably pretty easy to write that into a scene, and have it be fine. It's like Obi Wan standing near some fire, and Vader is, is some distance from him, and he pushes him into the fire. Like that's the easiest form of attack for him. Like yeah, that that works. And yeah, um, sorry as well. What what was just highlighted by Rich's comment that I really am not a fan of is he was like, who cares about the fight itself? We got a character moment, and to me yeah, it's just like that. that seems description of like i prefer the idea than caring about how it was executed like how we got everything in place how everything happened it's like who cares we got a character moment it seems almost uncharacteristic of them of saying that <laughs> Just... um i think uh, a consistent sort of part of their criticism of the prequels was that a lot of the fights are bad because they lack character moments and but they do have like spectacle and choreography whatever but so like i think they they do tend to care a lot more about what meaning they can draw out of 
character interactions and stuff, which I'm totally on board with. I just don't know why. Like, when I present to Rich I... a well-executed character scene with great choreography versus a well-executed character scene with shit choreography, I would hope that you would see the difference between the two. Yeah. And that you would prefer the one with good choreography. Yeah. You know, right. You get that good character moment. Yeah, no, with Darth Vader in this, when he first showed up at the little village and they have their showdown, I was thinking about their big fight at the end of Revenge of the Sith, which, say what you want about the prequels, there was, like, an attempt at doing something really dramatically heavy between the two of them. When Obi-Wan's like... Yeah, over so, this is like a moment of, all right, Jay, yeah, get in there. Say it. <laughs> say some stuff, because it sounds like that would go against uh, the current vibe of sitting with these two, which is totally fair. Just saying, his, yeah. his point being that there was clearly a story being told in the prequels. It's like, why would you bring that up if not to highlight there's not much of a story being told in uh, Ken Booby? Well, they overdid Maybe. it, sure. But that was the goal. And this felt so, like, light. Yeah, it's just like, oh, there's Darth Vader. It's like if you saw a guy in a Darth Vader costume at Disneyland or whatever. It's like you never really feel like you're watching an intimate... It's just a guy in a Darth Vader costume. You don't, you're saying you don't feel that? No, not with way. the show. I don't. I just feel like I'm watching, like I mentioned earlier, like a fan film. Uh, that's I the mean, best thing that. Um, I, it I doesn't mean, feel like. I, I sort of like get it. You know, I think I agree. Say, it's, you know, he's talked for a while, but. You know, yeah, tone, atmosphere, it. the way they film it, the uh, soundtrack, all these things are going to matter incredibly much <laughs> when it comes to creating <laughs> the feel of, of Vader arriving. And yeah, he kind of is pretty casual in this. And I think that's one of the things we noticed quite quickly. We were like, the vibe is off. I am not getting the feels. Yeah. Also, yeah, it's nice editing. Funny. Ah, all right. You're funny. That the show has going for it is the extreme lowered expectations. <laughs> this has come... <laughs> I mean, this in The Mandalorian Season 1 has come the closest to capturing that magic. Uh, say Rogue One. <laughs> no, is it this in Mandalorian season one? Oh, yeah. definitely not this. Definitely not this. This this shows a friggin' dumpster fire. Mandalorian episode one. No season or one. Season one. No, no season um, one. <laughs> yeah, season one. Yeah, I don't know. I just misspoke. Um. Uh. Uh. No, I just don't. I don't feel it. I certainly don't feel it. But it certainly sure as hell ain't Kenobi. This this shit sucks. <laughs> I just you know it's, it's basically EFAP's perspective that Mandalorian season one was shite as well. So uh, yeah, it's real yeah. bad. I think it was but, just sort of the first thing after the you know a lot of the disappointment that had come before it. And yeah. I the Mandalorian it fooled a lot of people. There are people who think that's legit really good. And it no rags. There are people who think it's okay. Can you believe that? There are Oh, oh, that's true. There are people who think that it's okay when it isn't okay. It's very bad. And season two is, ooh, uh, I, I think it's ooh, I don't know, because we, because I think isn't Mandalorian season two what got us to start like recording all of this Star Wars stuff? And um, that's a good question. I'm not even sure what made us sort of test out recording because we did I actually do a test run of a uh, EFAP mini for Mando season one, but it didn't work out. We were we were mostly just listening. Um, but that, in retrospect, I is probably because our good faith was like way over the over the limits. I think because we were just like really hope we we were so on the Mandalorian side. We were like, please, 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 I think we tested it and it just worked. It worked really well because there was so much dumb shit, even in the first episode. Yeah. But, EFAP chat, I'm looking at you. Some people were quite angry with us for our take on, uh, on the first episode, but once a few of them came out, it became clear that a lot of other people were like, wait a minute, season two of Mando's not as good. And then we were like, no, it's oh. about as good as <laughs> season one, don't worry about it. Yeah. For some reason, it it's kind of like the first uh, Amazing Spider-Man movie, where it kind of it's really, really, really bad, and it sort of just slips under the radar. Maybe because all of its problems aren't as it's it's not as openly cringe, or the issues aren't as obnoxious. But season two of Mandalorian is, I think, it's more obviously bad. Remember the Boba um, Fett episode? Fucking hell. Jesus. 
Christ. Amazing. Um, also, don't worry. I don't think... I'm not saying all of you. Loads of people are like, I thought it was trash from the beginning. <laughs> and it's like, that's oh, you, okay. You there who said that just now? You're a liar. I, <gasps> I, I know you're lying. Liar! Fight, fight. Get, 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 fight, get fight. called out. Fight, 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 fight. I'm gonna fight you with my cock. Oh, oh no. Oh no! <laughs> well, all of wait, metal. All of your fights are with your cock. Yeah. Do you do you do you like have a place you set it down someplace before a fight so it doesn't oh. get damaged? Then when you're done, we were you just earlier talking about how it fell off. Yeah. I'm not sure if that was before or after the stream started, but we were talking about how metal's cock fell off. Yeah, my dick fell off. Uh... Was that before um, the stream? Oh, no, I think so. at the beginning. We've uh, uh, I just spot a super chat. We'll probably read ahead of time because it's relevant. Oh my goodness! Oh my got, god! Vader tortured the dude for info at the beginning of episode four, and he was about to torture Leia with the droid. These are points in favor that uh, Vader tortures. So that actually no, is uh, it's not. So, hang on. So that that's actually something that we've already gone over. We're talking about the pragmatic reasons he does things, right? And so you, in your comment, you said Vader tortured the dude for info at the beginning of episode four. And then he was about to torture Leia for the, with the droid. If you remember, he's torturing her for information, too. So, the only one I think you can cite is probably Han Solo. Um, in, in Bespin. But at that point, it seems that he's torturing... Uh, or I can't remember who's in the room at that point. I think it's him and several stormtroopers. I don't even know what's going on. But, like, uh, Han Solo at that point is like a, a pretty frustrating thorn in the side of the Empire, especially because he fucking helped. He's the reason the Death Star got destroyed, in a sense. Him and Luke put together, right? But um, yeah. And they've been chasing them throughout that movie. So that's probably the best reference you have, but the others don't work in terms of what point we're trying to make. They go on to say, Ben has been forced dead for 10 years to avoid detection. So, is it ever stated in the show that that's what he did? Because I thought it was against his will that he couldn't use the Force. Obi-Wan? Yeah, because he keeps trying to access it, but he okay. can't. Yeah, what is, is that very... stated? I don't, I don't remember the show saying... That's on purpose. I don't remember Obi-Wan saying, I've stopped using the Force to avoid being detected. I don't remember him saying that. If, well, remember the first that, two it episodes... it makes it a lot worse. We assume... All the way, like, until he stops Leia when she jumps off the building because she's very smart. Oh, shit. We assume, we the, assume the, the, that wait, he uh, can, right? Talk about learning new things about a movie I fucking adore. Several people have just said he was torturing Han to lure Luke, which does, I'm pretty sure, work. I was about to say that, yeah, because Luke is like, my friends are in danger. I sense their pain or something like that. Huh. Like, it's a trap to get Luke, because it is part of his plan to lure Luke there, and I guess that's that's how he was doing it, he was torturing Han. That's, uh, yeah, I should, I should, I should have known that already, but nice. Thanks, chat. <laughs> I knew there was a reason job, we chat. kept you guys around. <laughs> uh, but sorry, what were we, so we were talking about the, the, uh, Obi-Wan being locked off from the Force. We... I think when we were watching episodes one and two, we assumed that he just wasn't using it when he should have been because the writing is crap. But it turns out that he had to like really try to save her from jumping off the building. Right. Because like, because we were confused. Yeah. If I'm look, as good faith as I can, it seemed to me that with what Tala it is Tala, right? What she says in yeah. episode four to Kenobi when he's trying to move the, the, the little bit of metal. He says that not all wounds that need to be healed are physical, some are mental. And she basically implies to him that um, he can't get the... Because she's watching him do that. And she's like, you need to, you know, get at peace with yourself before you'll be able to get back with the Force. In episode 5, she says, almost in response to his response in episode 4, because he says to her in episode 4 something like, um, some, some failures or some issues or some regrets uh, you can't forget, or something like that. And then she says something to reflect in episode 5. She gives him the inspiration in episode 5 to help clear his mind and get the Force back. Um, but he's already got it back anyway at that point because he was fucking holding mm -hmm. the whole ocean. So, uh, what I'm trying to say is, as far as I was aware, the show was saying he lost the ability to use the Force against his consent, if you will. He did not want to lose the ability to use the Force, but he did because he was very um, sad. And then he's gotten it back now. Which is a thing. Yeah, I, I guess. you know, like, I guess that's a thing. So that's um, why we didn't assume that was even possible because we didn't think that was. You can't get so sad you don't use the force, or you can't use the force. I think and if that's the case, how come Star he used Wars. it just fine in Episode Three at the end, after the Order sixty six happens and? 
So yeah, I don't know of any line. I've and I've watched all of these episodes without any cover, like like just in the editing bay style sort of thing. I haven't heard Obi Wan say that uh, he's stopped using the Force for ten years to avoid being detected. I didn't catch that line, but if it exists, then fair enough. Uh, and this super chat ends with saying the fight was perfect. Which fight between? I'm assuming they're talking about the fight we're talking about right now, which is this. Oh fight. no, it was it was fu it was a joke. It was a fucking joke. It's oh, like they uh, literally yeah. had no choreography, and they just told two people to hit sticks together, and we'll make them lightsabers and post or whatever. That it it was super awkward. It was it. There is no way you could tell me that that was Darth Vader, especially in a in a post Mustafar fight. Absolutely not. What a joke of a fight. Have you seen everybody making fun of the um the way Reaver and Darth Vader fight in Episode Five, the uh, the Dark Souls portion of it? When she's rolling around. Yeah, we, we rolling, yeah. Yeah, we were talking about how that looked really awkward and they weird were like, when she was doing that weird rolling around stuff. Like, what are you doing? It's what, gotten what, so um, what? superficial for praise for me that I would be like, well, at least he beat her. Yeah. <laughs> like, kind of, yeah. Oh, thank fuck. Yeah, at least there was that. that concern that she'd beat his ass. Though after that fight in the dirt pile, maybe she would beat him, I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, I should be careful actually, because we're live. <laughs> yeah, that's why I started talking over it, to be honest. <laughs> well, actually, I can just. I'm fine with oh, that entire go. encounter. I do like that moment in the second. I hate it. Through fine with through. that entire encounter. I hate it. Through I mean, and through. Like, there's so many things wrong with it. I would just like to ask him some questions about the, the encounter as well. <laughs> I mean, especially the escape on Kenobi's part. Like, really? Come on. Yeah. How does he get away? How does he go away? He's right Episode there. Episode when Reva like. I think Reva is the one that tells him that Anakin's still alive. And it's like, oh yeah, he wouldn't even know that. Why wouldn't I he know uh, that? He would. Wouldn't... Uh, you left him alive. The last time you saw him was alive. He if, was alive when you left him. So, this would be it. He knows that Anakin is Darth Vader. Correct. He knows that. So, he would have to not know that Darth Vader exists, which I don't think... We have I to call that a pretty that incredible contrivance, if not just a hole, because either it would get like, around. if we if we run with a scenario, which nobody here, including everyone on the cast and fucking chat, believe that for an entire decade, Darth Vader has done nothing that would make him known to the world in any way, shape or form. He has just been in his little house on Mustafar doing his knitting or whatever. You have to have that happen. And you also have to have him be someone who isn't known to anybody on the Senate either. Which uh, the the like in the 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 inner council of whatever the higher ups of the Senate are, because Bail Organa would tell Obi Wan about this instantly. Yeah. So of it, course he would. It doesn't work. Uh, Obi Wan should have found out way earlier than this. You'd have to be living under a rock on some planet with no internet or any. Yeah, it's. Uh, and if you have, you would have to thing... make sure you have to go out of your way to make a scenario where you didn't know about Darth Vader. One of the most potentially, like, you know, uh, Force Unleashed went with this, right? Like, the, the basis of it is that Darth Vader is Jedi hunting, basically. I mm -hmm. figure most of his Jedi hunting, like, he's going to be the top Jedi killer in the, the Empire at, at that portion of time. When is he going to be doing most of that work? It's like, in the latter portion of the 20-year gap? Or the former? And it's like, I, th I think it's going to be the first few years he's killing most Jedi. Because that's going to be where the main amount of... Jedi escaping the temple or on different missions is going to have happened. He probably yeah. has gotten around For and killed a bunch of all the bad hiders get caught. Um, so yeah, I, th I think it doesn't make any fucking sense that Kenobi didn't know. And I think it's just lame. The I can't remember who said this anymore. I don't know if it was one of us or somebody on... Um, I think it might have been Az on Real BBC, but... It stinks to me that the writers of this show wanted to be able to say, we wrote the scene where Obi-Wan found out that Anakin was alive. How fucking cool yeah. is that? And it's like, uh huh. Good for you. It's just someone yelling, Anakin is alive! And, and he, he goes, makes Woo! a face. <laughs> oh, man. It's like, that's kind of neat. Yeah. I wish I would have, like, I don't know, dwelled on it a little bit more. It feels like it introduces these things, these kind of character beats, but then just sort of keeps moving along and doesn't focus on them quite as much as it should. I, I, I agree with Rich. I was happy with, with the encounter. Yeah. Where does he, where I feel bad for Jay. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. What is this supposed to do? It's one of those like you have. Are you so lacking in any imaginative qualities that yeah. you can't imagine anything else that they could have? Like, what is he supposed to do? Hmm. Like, what, you couldn't think of a few I... things. I would not write this <laughs> shitty story. Like, like, really? I would have been happy if he didn't meet him at all until like maybe the end of this. Oh, base J. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. That's that's that's. I mean, I would be happy if they never met at all. But yeah, <laughs> until, yeah. until a new hope. But yeah, season or something. Well, yeah, I know. was happy with it's, that until like a, you know like, the series was announced. Sorry, I want I want to hear that last. Can we rewind it back a little five seconds? I just want to hear yeah. the response with the encounter. Yeah. What is he supposed to do? <laughs> yeah. Like, like really? I would have been happy uh... if he didn't meet him at all until like maybe the end of the season or something. Yeah, I know. It, it's it's a like, what do you do kind of. Well, that's mentality. like, like what, what do you do? I don't, I don't, what, what do you do? do? Well, that's the, your fucking I, job as a writer to figure out if you want to do a show about Obi Wan. I, I don't really. I'm I'm a little oh, no. confused. I guess right. about um, like, would this be what do you do? You don't need to make the show. You don't need to write it with Darth Vader in it. You don't have I, to. I guess I'm just, it also can be as bare bones. As Obi Wan in his cave, that could have been the whole season. Yeah, it could have been. Um, and someone and might be like, "That's absurd. That would never like... sell." And it's like, I think we could make that well, sell. I think it's I possible. I think you could make it sell, but also I don't Obi -Wan. think. That, I don't think that appealing to that is meaningful in terms of countering criticism of the narrative. Well, you know what? It, you know what it could have been. I just this is a thought that occurred to me the other day. As let's say um, a Force ghost. Qui Gon or um, Mace Windu comes and finds Obi Wan um, and gives him. And you find Obi Wan, and he's like he's beating himself up over what happened. He's blaming himself. He blames. And, he blames uh, Qui Gon. No, he, he he blames himself. I think he. I think there's definitely a part of him that would if he if he's oh, if we've got a season. Here. I think we could do both. I don't know why we wouldn't. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'm just I'm just imagining a a series where um, you have Obi Wan in his cave blaming himself, and then Force Ghost pops up. Maybe he doesn't introduce himself necessarily, like Hey Obi Wan, but just gives him a little vision using the Force. Um, from Obi Wan's perspective, he wakes up and he's back in like Revenge of the Sith era Star Wars. You know, people cream over that. It's like, oh my god, it's the prequels again. Uh, I mean, they loved his 10 minute scene of it, right? Um, to have minutes. Obi Wan with now waking up thinking, okay, I've woken up, was, um, I think his immediate assumption would be, have I just had like a, a wildly crazy premonition? Have I had a, because Jedi, you know, they can have those, but uh, I think I might have just had a premonition more powerful and more intense than any Jedi has ever had before. Uh, and he goes with all of his foreknowledge and he tries to, uh, to stop, uh, at, you know, Palpatine's success and, and, and rise. Um, and he finds that either he can't, or that um, what he would have to do would be so, like, you know, drastic that it would not have been a viable solution for him, particularly without the foreknowledge. And the conclusion would be, hey, uh, this Force Ghost is... Maybe this is just, like, a one-episode thing, but, like, a Force Ghost being like, hey, uh, don't... You couldn't, you couldn't have stopped it. You're like, one guy. I just wish we we could go that experimental with the whole season. I mean, let's say it's six episodes, and each episode, mm -hmm. it's like the first one he just talks to vague pieces of Qui Gon audio. It's not like coming through very clearly. Jawa visits, and um, maybe he spies on Luke a little bit, and that is it. Other than uh, maybe he gets some nightmares going in his sleep, and then intercut that. Like episode two, we get more of Qui Gon's coming through clearer. Maybe we see his day job. And then um, the nightmare gets stronger and we start to see what he focuses on entirely. Episode 3, a full episode of flashback to Clone Wars, just one where it's focused entirely on telling us something about what he trained Anakin to do. Episode 4, Qui-Gon can come in as a full voice, have a really big breakdown, like uh, they have a whole argument that actually ends really badly or something. Um, mm -hmm. And then episode 5, they bring in like that initial idea that they were going to have or something with... Um, uh, Tusken Raiders attacking in some way, shape, or form where Luke lives, and uh, you know Obi Wan has to make a decision: how much does he, what does he want to use to defend them, if anything? And maybe that event can heal the relationship, but maybe Rocky with Owen. And then Episode Six, you could even make Episode Six the one where he finds out about um, Darth Vader. I'm not sure we would place that in the timeline, but um, we can make that pretty early. 
you know, like he only just got to Tatooine, maybe this is a year after that or something, and that Darth Vader has been announced as the right hand of of the Emperor, and Bale contacts him to tell him that, and that's how the season ends. Something like that? I don't know. Yeah. It sounds really to lame to a lot of people, I guess, but like to me, that's like, oh god, do we get 40 minutes for each one of those? We can do so much. Yeah. Absolutely. I think, I say as well, like, I think we had pretty good suggestions in the start of our we did. Like, yes. mini. We did. It was like, hey, a Jawa steals his lightsaber and tries to like ask for a bribe to get it back. Like, or uh, hey, I'll I'll rat you out as a Jedi to the Inquisitors. That'd be a really good story. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah, it could like be a, a show that has levity in it, but you could have a there's a lot you can do. It's just not this. Not what they did. <laughs> what they did was a mistake. It should yeah. not have happened. And film. You gotta have What do what do you do with an Obi Wan Kenobi TV show? Right. Well this, we answer that question. In this, 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 this genuinely like, depresses me. Like, there are so many millions yeah. of options. No, this is the only thing they could have done. I mean, sorry, what else actually, could you have done? What are they going to say about that? Oh, right. Uh, let me roll them back a little bit as well. Yeah. Yes, there was, the, the answer was, I didn't even think of like the, the, the Leia connection, which I think is oh, probably yeah, I think the way to do it. On. I, no. I think, I think they're moving on. Um, yeah. Damn. Well, Rich just said the Leia thing is the way to do it. And I'm like, damn. I was about to say, I'm going to roll it back again because uh, I, I really wish that wasn't it. I think of like, the, the Leia connection, which I think is probably the way to do it. Because obviously, Leia knows who the fuck Obi Wan Kenobi is. Not well, obvious. Well, I don't obviously. think not you can here. make that claim. <laughs> yeah, if I was yeah, Bale, by this point. I'm, I'm not telling my 10 year old Leia. That about Obi Wan Kenobi. I'm like, keeping her. I'm, I'm keeping her away from all of that. I'm not telling her about I all this. I think what stuff. he's saying is, we know that by a New Hope, she knows who Obi Wan is. Sure, yeah. but at this point, sure, yeah. But uh, well, and, I, yeah, I, people, I, I think, no, no, no. So I think what he, I think what he's saying is, we know that in a New Hope, she knows who Obi Wan is. So we can have a story that will connect her to Obi Wan in some way, as opposed to Luke, that would who. No, that would still be bad. Ben because... Kenobi up on the well, yeah, I but but I think that's what he's trying to say. Well, I mean, I'm I'm fine. I'm fine with it. Um, so long as it's not like well, because we like we have a lot of contrived stuff to get him hanging out with Leia. But uh, I think in terms of what we see in A New Hope, it's fine. They've never to, met. Uh, a, a, no, I, I, I for you when we watched it, like there is there is one thing that suggests that they've never met. Um, yeah, but that's right. like pretty. So that... That's Insig the thing that, like it's it's not significant compared to the like reaction that she has when she finds out that he's there, which I think actually flows very well with them having met before. Okay, so I don't think I agree. The fact that she says what? Ben Kenobi does not mean that she knows him. It's just a fucking shock that her message must have gotten through to him and that he is here. Not like no, I I, mean, I agree. I don't think that means that she knows him. But I think if you watch that scene, thinking okay, these characters have met before. I think it's like, yeah, that is how she would react. The, I guess the thing is, well, but we have to... in the recording, she says, you knew... Uh, she, she references Barrel, right, in the... In the uh, you served my, alongside my yeah, father actually, in the Clone Wars. Yeah. So what, that's, that's that's message, that what I want to clip and clarify, really right, is yeah. when you look at these references, Remember. and this is specifically for Jay, when you have one that could go both ways and one that goes one way, that means we conclude one way. No, but I, I don't I don't see um, the other one as only going one way either. I see um, you serve my father the in the Clone Wars. That that's how she addresses him. You think that's something, something a friend a would couple, say? Something a couple of people mentioned. I see that as a well. Um, hmm? well, just something a couple of people mentioned in chat, which I think I mentioned. Like when uh, when he dies, she's much more interested in comforting Luke than being sad herself no, about no, it. We, we had this conversation for you. I no, won't get I, to all of these. But for right, me, we okay. had this conversation where no, when I, she comforts Luke, it comes straight after a scene like where she is very clearly in, like, uh, she's in the rebel base. She's very, like, competent there. She's given, like, she's given orders. She's talking about stuff, and she's clearly very used to it. Um, she seems like the kind of person who would be much more used to, okay, yeah, that person died. I have to move on and do, like, my work. I have to do I have to I'm a, like I'm involved in the military this happens uh, whereas Luke this is his like first day I I think it makes sense that Leia would comfort Luke well um, so the re the reason why I'm bringing this up is because if this show exists now 
it makes less sense for this one to not upset her. You know? Like, it makes it makes less sense if he rescued her back when she was a kid um, from, like, certain death or just any number of horrible things happening and, and saved her life. Like, I think that if he dies, like, when he dies in A New Hope, it would make... It, it, it now makes less sense to me that she isn't more upset. You know? I mean, could she could she not just be dealing with it well? Um, I mean, she could, but I I I'd say that it's it's also more believable to me that she could deal with it well while also being more sad about it than she is in that story. Yeah, let's put it this way, Jay. If she said in her greeting originally, "You uh, saved my life as a child," and we went on, but she just yeah. names the events of this. Then, when she has her reaction of "Are you okay, Luke?" sort of thing, I think we would all agree. It's like we should probably see her I'm reaction right, to Ben's yeah. death. I, no, I think that would be like, okay, that would be interesting for her in terms of character of like, oh, okay, she's more concerned about Luke being okay than she is about like taking care of like her own grief. I'm going to be honest with you. I would assume that that would mean that she is used to losing people in battle and that she's learned to deal with it. And get One of the only the things I actually really like in The Force Awakens is her reaction to Han's death. It's not something she deals with well. She takes a moment. Right, but like they've spent a lifetime together. I think I think it would um, make more sense now, it, like in a new hope, if they were like grieving together rather than what it comes across as, which is that Luke is grieving. It and, like, clearly creates him, some you know? weird incongruity it, that you wouldn't expect. But here's the thing: it's, it's not a new it's not a new hope's fault because yeah, a new it's, hope I has just an don't, explanation. I just way. don't agree with this. I think it's that it's so bizarre. It's not that incongruent him. that she doesn't that she doesn't grieve because so the characterization so that we're getting for her in that scene is showing her as this like very focused on what she has got to achieve and she's but like she's got scene, other stuff on her plate so what i would say is it's not impossible that she would react that way i just think it's less likely that she would react in that way compared to also herself being upset it's like, with um, Han, that's visibly. someone that she spent, like, years of her life in love with. And plus, with Obi-Wan, that's someone that she, you know, formed a bond with once, but hasn't seen for nine years. A deeply meaningful person um, to her life. I don't know that you can just draw that line arbitrarily. Like, oh, well, she cared about, more about Han. And what Obi-Wan, well, like, what about I, Obi-Wan's reaction I, to going to save her? I didn't say she didn't care more about Han. I'm saying you're using that as an excuse to say she doesn't seem to give a shit about Obi-Wan. No, it's not, no, it's not that she doesn't give a shit, it's that she is effect, like, she's effective at dealing with grief, she's not, she's not taking this as a hard hit that's going to have her, like, have to sit down and take a moment, she is much more focused on what she has to achieve. I can, I can see her being more focused on what she has to achieve compared to Luke, but I would still, if... If now, canonically, she got saved by Obi-Wan as a child, and then he died on the Death Star, I would expect more of a reaction now like, than what, what is in the film. And if it was some kind um, of active battle situation, I would give you more credit, but this is when they think everything's chill, so I don't see why she's not grieving. They're, they're, prepping, they're prepping to blow up the no, Death Star. No, not yet. No, wait. No, not yet. They're we'll escaping. that then. She, when she first does the agreement with Luke, it's just that they're, they're driving away. That's after they've left, and then it's like, all right, we're not out of the woods yet, and then that's when the, the, yeah, the like, fight happens. Jay, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna call you insane uh, to well, think anything other than the fact that this is clearly Luke's loss, and that this character, it's, it's, Leia, is uh, just trying um, to be okay with it. Like, oh, it sucks that you've lost this guy who meant a lot to you. And not only so that, will, but we've been no, focusing so, on no, Leia's shut reaction. Up, shut, shut, no, shut no, up, shut up. No, no, no. Kenobi, his reaction to learning about them having to save Leia and everything is also something that has to be taken into consideration as well. So what I was, what I was picturing this whole time, right, while we were talking about Leia cutting Luke, is when they are praying for the Death Star run, and Luke says something about O1, and Leia, like, gives him a kiss on the cheek. Oh, I was That's talking about the scene I got on screen. This whole time. Wait, what? I, I'm not looking at the stream. <laughs> I thought we were talking about on, on the Millennium Falcon. No, like, well, yeah, that's what apparently, that's what everyone has, was definitely thinking about except me. Wait, I understand what, now why everyone, no, why this happened. Wait, oh, oh, you're, t <laughs> wait, are you talking about the scene when he's about to go get prepped, get in his X-Wing and fly off to the jet, uh, Death Star? Yeah. Why would we want to oh, well, focus on that area that's, for that's morning later. Ben Ken that's Kenobi? Yeah, that seems like an odd place for it to happen.
Well, I so guess. You... Um, so no, I will come full disclosure here. When we rewatched New Hope like the other day, Fringy, I guess I just missed the part where she comforts him on the Millennium Falcon because I I'd heard people talking about. I'd heard I people think... talking about it. I was ready on the lookout for it, taking notes for my video, and I got to the end of the film thinking that the the thing that people were referencing was the scene um, when they're prepping for the Death Star run. I thought that's actually fine. People are wrong to criticize it uh, for this. And I, so I must have just, we, maybe we were talking over it when it happened in the Falcon. I, I didn't remember I, it. I, and I haven't seen I the thought we did. before that. I thought we did, but okay. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Um, nevertheless, I don't, yeah, I, I think, uh, I think this show has now created uh, a problem which didn't exist before. Yeah, because I just Absolutely. thought that they were distant. She knew him, she respected him, but she didn't really feel much for him. But she respects the fact that Luke had a strong connection to him. Luke yeah, because she uses him. his connection with Bail Organa as a, as their instant connection. Not but now it doesn't work other. because the reality well, is now these two have as much of a strong connection with when, Obi-Wan. When Luke is breaking up, as he says, I can't believe he's gone. That's like the invitation for Leia to join him in that feeling, to be like, he was a great man, or he, he, he fucking, like, me and him go way back, he was, he was an incredible guy, yeah. like, but instead Luke she should, says, like, don't blame yourself, sort of thing. Luke should have said, I can't believe he's gone at the end of the first episode of Kenobi. Oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> also, there, there is, like I said, the, the element of when they're on the Death Star, having if, if all of this really was canon all along a, a lack of ben realizing that leia the person he saved 10 years ago needs to be rescued here from darth vader like again mm. like hmm, <laughs> it's a bit funny that's kind of that's kind of a thing yeah you know what you're right but that's another thing he doesn't mention at all at any point the the reality that this has all happened before but like even in a jo joking way like not even necessarily for inf information but just yeah, man, this is a fucking deja vu, isn't it? But no, no reward is worth this. Don't worry, I'll. Sw we'll, we should just swim into the Death Star. Um. All right, here we go. Anyway, a little Leia, a little orphan Leia. She's precocious. You think being like him will make people frightened of you? But really, you're- God, this fucking scene. This isn't something- <laughs> this isn't things ten-year-olds say. Like, it's just- it just isn't things that a ten-year-old says. You're the one who's it's so, scared. I can't believe you it. You've never made one decision for yourself in your entire life, and you never will. Yeah, she's go back to like Caladan. She's all grown up. You know what that reminds <laughs> me of, that uh, scene? That hmm? reminds me of the- that scene reminds me of the little girl in Airplane, whose entire, like, who the entire joke is that she's acting like an adult, and it's really funny. Yeah, kind of. You're the one um, who likes black men? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the little girl who says, uh, I, I like my man like I like my coffee. Black. <laughs> I, I just, uh, it's like, I'm starting to look back on the show and be like, man, that seems almost absurd on its own, isn't it? Because there's not much else. There's, there's only what she says to Obi-Wan about the whole, by hiding your traits, you're revealing them or whatever. Um, it was, there's that, and then there's this, and they haven't really done more Leia is insightful randomly to people. Though they did have her do the whole engineering thing, so... She bypassed the compressor. She did, because the Skywalkers are like gods, you see. Oh... Oh, that's a great quote. I can't remember where it's from now. But yes. I can't where remember either. From? I, I don't know, it's just... Is that something... I... Oh, I remember. <laughs> it's <Star Wars> theory. <laughs> That was offline as well, that we watched ah, that. Ah, yes, we saw it. Yes. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> uh, see, and she doesn't take shit from anybody. I like some of the writing of her character. Uh, that actress is in a different show. That's all you gotta say. I was about to say, let him elaborate, and then he said the actress is in a different show, and I'm like, now nah, I'm very yeah, I confused. Like, I, don't, I still don't know what you might try to say. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna attack the child actor. She's fine, but not for this. She feels like she's on like a like a like a Disney Junior no, no, Fuller House. Same. Yeah, yeah, something. You remember the scenes? <laughs> Do, you remember? Do you remember the scenes? Do you remember the scenes? Do you remember when Obi Wan hit her uh, under his, his his trench coat? That was ridiculous. It was a little silly looking, huh? A little silly. Again, that's on another show. That's a kiddie show. No. Stand in 1977, a stormtrooper bonked his fucking head. 
God. I, I can tell that that the scars haven't quite healed <laughs> over yet from uh the, the <laughs> the, the some scars never heal. I was about to say, yeah, like yeah. Oh, yeah, some scars never heal. Oh. That's why they're called scars. And That's not, why they're like, called scars, wounds. right? Wow. Yeah. They're all just ripping into you, Fringy. I think you should fuck them up, punch them. Give them a little punch. Uh look, or I'm just I'm just I'm just I'm chill. Alright. I'm all right. Just like I mean, the Leia chase from the first episode, where she's running from Flea. I'm I'm okay with that, but once again, <laughs> in the forest. Yeah, that was really bad. That, that was, was really badly done. Yeah, that was not but, a good setup for the series. Lowered lowered expectations. No, it's bad, so Rich. No, Don't give it a pass because other I just, things are also bad. I really wish this I could bad. just be in the room for that moment and be like, "Yeah, man, I thought Picard was like fun because my expectations have been so lowered by Rise of Skywalker and some other stuff." I just want to see what they'd say. Discovery, yeah, yeah, that would be interesting to see. Yeah, Maybe but Star Trek they care about. Yeah, so that's that's the thing that I've been hearing from a lot of people, which is that you guys don't understand. They just don't care about Star Wars. They're just like so. I mean, but yeah, they're but still making they did arguments. They care at some point, didn't they? And they do. They do talk about what they liked about the show at some points. Yeah, you know, they do care about some of this. It's just yeah. I don't know. That's unfortunate. But it is. It's so cheap. I'm happy with it. <laughs> yeah, I don't it's understand. So cheap, I'm happy with it. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know I, what that really just, means. I'm not sure what why like you you kind of pointing out things that you know suck, but then you're just like, but I'm fine with it. It's pointing really out things odd. You know suck. Well, it's all couched in the kind of like this is cheap, this is stupid or ridiculous or silly, and it's like because they never say life. we like it because it's so intimate. Because it's it's smaller scale. They, that's is, not what they're saying. There, there is a sub. There is a subtext of this show is pretty bad, though. Kind of like seeping through this entire discussion. But then yeah. on top of it, it's like, but I like it though. Or, but no, I think that works though. But it's all like it's seeping from all of the orifices. Like it's bad though. It's just getting out. I think it's just, just like trying yeah, to shove it back in. They don't like, like the no. statement in isolation. They want to add caveats like, yeah, but that's good though. Yeah. Yeah. And it feels that way. I know, and that's what's so great about it. It's it's so cheap. I'm happy with it. <laughs> I, you know I what I mean? In a, in a this, weird it's way. It's a thing where it's like it's freeing. It's freeing because I don't care. It's freeing. So it's, it's like freeing so that because has I don't nothing to do with the show, though. No, that has nothing you don't to do with care, the show. So it's... Yeah, that, that, you're right. That's, that's him, you, not you the show. You don't care. That's totally fine if you don't care. But that, but but if if you do care, then how does that affect you know how you feel about the show? <sighs> it's like eh, if it's kind of funny, that's fine. I, I, I'm not like, <laughs> like what what has happened here? <laughs> like, I, I don't know. If the show's yeah. kind of funny and cheap, it's fine. It's just like, oh no. I'm not like <laughs> angry that it's not. You know, I think some people maybe would want this to be like the the quality good. of a feature film, and it looks like it's not. It, it, no, it's, just the quality of something of good quality. Yeah, because the they're bad feature films. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know what? The quality of like I don't know in terms of production of of some Mando episodes. Oh, you know what? We should like, say to that when he says they want the quality of a feature film. We're like, yeah, like Rise of Skywalker. I'm looking for that sort ah, of content yeah. quality. Yes. Pedi pedigree of the Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> Everyone knows. Everybody's Cheap favorite show. show. <laughs> yeah, it's because like one. that's fine. It At looks, this point, it doesn't matter anymore. It looks like an expensive. People TV think show it that does. Cut corners wherever it could. Well, that's probably the best summary I've, I've heard, actually. An expensive TV show that cut corners whenever it could. Kind of, yeah. Because you, you, you never don't corners. see the quality, but you also see where the, the cheapness is. Hmm. <sighs> Try and be a motion picture. They spent all their money on the obelisk. They cheaped out on the, the, the laser gate across the road. Oh, that, yeah. That, that <laughs> Obi-Wan and Leia didn't, because they didn't just walk around it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty bad, eh? And see, like, so for this oh, one moment, laugh. it's like, guys, there's like a thousand of these examples in these episodes. <laughs> I'd love to listen to you laugh this at is... how stupid loads of it is, but I don't know why. I mean, why is again, this one this... worth mentioning, but the others aren't, you know? Exactly. Remember, this is the scene where he takes an innocent person as a meat shield so that the stormtroopers don't yeah. hit him and the meat shield dies instead of him. That's this the hope, is the yeah. scene where he does that. And they just Wait, no the meat one... shield dies? I thought he No, so I'm saying the purpose of the oh, meat sorry. shield is so that the Yeah, he's the, saying the purpose. Yeah, they die instead of Kenobi when he takes him hostage essentially. This this innocent person. <laughs> no, Rags. He he liked the Empire, so he's a fascism. 
Okay. Makes <laughs> you wonder what this it. place was before. <laughs> Pressing like, the button. Like, oh my god, he just, he literally, he could have just like stepped over it if he really <laughs> wanted to. <laughs> and they get in the back and they're riding along with stormtroopers. I loved it. It's very like. Uh, you loved it? Like, how stupid the stormtroopers were? Can't we talk about the dialogue? <laughs> That's like. Kenobi literally no, no. calls Leia, Leia, and the stormtroopers oh, like, what did you say? I, I Person who looks like Kenobi. Oh, I just met my wife with Leia. Sometimes I just could say the wrong things and I'm not a Jedi. So much of this conversation has been seen. I liked it. Seen. I liked it. It was cheap, but I liked it. Um, thing. Yeah, I liked it. There's not much substantiating of any of these points. It's kind not of like really you not. explain what it is, and in a way you explain things that are wrong with it, but then you follow it up with, but I like it. And so there's not much to latch on to here. Allusions to World War II. Yes, uh, yes. Well, that's what got the, Star Wars Yeah, they got the flag on the back of the truck. Right. I, okay, I, I, I'm glad that's what like, you had the commentary on uh, in that feels like whole a... scene. <laughs> I was gonna, well, this is so this, it's weird for us because we're just like, hey, what about the writing though? Because like we yeah, talk about, about the writing all the time, so it's like, I don't know. Guilty pleasure, like it's not good, and I, I but I love it. It's not guilty. It's just a pleasure, but it's not. This show is guilty super of amazing. Sucking. It's not super amazing, is one way to put it. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> we've ruled out super so, amazing. All right, that's good. All right, okay, we can we're temper our super expectations. Okay part, I think. I like, I like someone said, this isn't a serious in-depth critique, guys. So what I said was I hope they talk Good about the that. writing. Just the writing in the story that they're addressing right now. Yeah. I was hoping that would happen. Because they, 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 they normally do that most of the times. So That's what I love about, about him, so... Yeah, it's super interesting to listen to, but he's just like this whole... It's like those three different weird perspectives. Like, Mike is good doing it like, oh, this is like a guilty pleasure, and I think it's bad, but I kind of like it, and then... Rich Jay is like, says, it ain't bad. Yeah, Rich is like, oh, it ain't bad, it's super okay, I think we're gonna hear here in a second. And, uh, yeah, and, and, and Jay is thinking, like, oh, it looks cheap, and I don't think he likes it at all, is what I feel like. <laughs> I don't he know. seems reserved in this. Yeah. Um, he's... So, yeah. This is a total tangent, so if you if you have a point you want to make oh, about this observation, fine. go for it. Um, this is pretty cool. Nintendo has announced, or it was announced at LegoCon, which I never I didn't even know existed. Apparently, like a um, Lego Mario sets, they've now added Shy Guy, Hammer Bros, Nabbit. That's really cool. I might get a Shy Guy little Lego set. Hey, put where can I buy their store. old games again? I want to. I want a Lego Sorry, shy guy. Couldn't right? help himself. <laughs> I just. I want, I want a Lego shy guy. You know, when you bring up a really... tangent topic, the idea is that at least one other person cares. I, I, I figured that that was something worth sharing with the world. That there's their shy guy Lego sets. Uh, I think there's a lot of people in chat who would be like, "Yeah, shy guy Lego sets." Unironically, shy guy. There's definitely a lot oh, of people in chat who are going, yeah, shy guy Lego you set. You don't know who shy guy you, is? You already really? knew that Jay did not know what a shy guy was. <laughs> Jay, Jay probably oh, that's knows. Right, Jay doesn't, they just doesn't, I, that's right, Jay told me the other day. So, I, I think Jay probably Mario knows. Shy guy. He just doesn't I, know that so, the character is called This is shy that. guy. Shy guy is wonderful. He is joy and love and life. I think I saw a tweet or something Where is he from? the other day. <laughs> he's he's not, Christ, Jay. I tried to help he's, you. He's, okay. He's he's from Mario. <laughs> oh, that game that that game that we discussed the other day of No, I know. Of I know that you haven't that, that you I haven't, haven't played, played any. Had any experience with. But, then you, <laughs> now now I, I'm I want to float I want to float this cuz we talked about this um cuz I was genuinely baffled um that Jay had not played any like Mario games or at least like any mainline Mario. So oh. This is kind of. Do you think that there is any game in the world that, that it would be more that it would be more <laughs> surprising that you hadn't played at least one game for? I have played one Mario game. Well, I, I, but you haven't played I any have. of the uh, mainline Mario games. I no, think I is haven't. what you said. Yes, yeah, so you haven't um, played. Any of the I have Super played Mario, Mario and Sports. Sonic at the Olympic Games. Oh my god! Fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> Uh, so to make me want to fist on the fan. moon. Just so to be clear, is... uh, just to be clear, chat. That's also my only Sonic game. 
Well, <laughs> Man, that's, I've, that's, I've only played that's, one Sonic game. That's funny, actually. Well, the original. I, I would say that I would think that if somebody told me they hadn't played any Sonic games, it would be like, and this was somebody who's actually played a decent amount of video games, I'd be a little bit surprised. I think it's I understandable, considering yeah, their uh, reputation a lot of the times for more newish games in uh, particular. And um, it, it was the same with uh, because I because one of the ones that I brought up to Jay, I think, I, or I think you counted with like Call of Duty, but I wouldn't be surprised if I met somebody who never played Call I mean, of I Duty. Didn't, I didn't say that like that was definitely more. That would definitely be more surprising. I think I, uh, the games. What well, Fringy, would this count? What about the old like um, like the old Atari arcade games? Would those count as like a sort of set? Right, uh, the Pong's and Pac Man. Never played Tetris. And, yeah, have you? God, I wasn't about to ask that. No, I have played yeah. Tetris a lot. Thank God. Oh, okay. I think it was so. I think I think it's because um the reason why I can accept that somebody wouldn't have played Call of Duty even though it sold like two hundred million copies is because if you don't like first person shooters, I can yeah, understand not, not going to play them or military games or violent games. But like Mario is so universal. I might go uh, Call of Duty. Can we played count Call of Duty? Can we count chess? Uh... I think chess counts. If you haven't played chess, I would be surprised. Like that might be my number played. one because that applies to oh, so many I generations. Mean, okay, as well. so like at this point, though, we're talking about different, um, like a different standard to what I've done with Mario because I have played, um, like some mainline Mario games. They've just I've just never owned a copy. Like I've been to like friends' houses and we've played some like whatever Mario game. Like I've played a lot of Mario Kart at like other people's homes. What about Legend uh, of Zelda? I played, I, um, oh, this is, you know what, this is just going to be, this, this answer is going to be just as fun. The only Legend of Zelda game I have played is Twilight Princess. <laughs> oh, so I think that Zelda is a much more acceptable one that people haven't played. I, I, that doesn't surprise me at acceptable. all. Acceptable. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah, a little bit. I think Mario is one of those, like, cultural, it's so significant that it's genuinely Take a surprise. Oh, I, I guess, like, no. I, huh. So, to explain <laughs> why I've never played it, is just because, like, um, externally, I don't get much, like, appeal from the aesthetic, right? Just from the outside looking in, I, there's not really much that's like, oh, that seems super cool, I'd love to, like, ex explore that world or experience that. It's like, I don't really get that from Mario. Here's the thing. I don't know if it's because I'm so used to Mario and all of its characters, but to me it is, like, entirely cohesive, even though I know that it's a lot of disparate elements well, coming together. Like This, this was the conversation we were having yesterday, but, like, I, I, I don't even mean, like, it's just in terms of cohesion. Just, like, I don't really... When you had yesterday? Sorry, I... Because someone said Zelda is almost as popular. Isn't... Hasn't Mario sold, like, 500 million copies? When I look up the best-selling games of all time, am I going to see Zelda having sold as many copies as that? Sorry, I, I need to know. Absolutely no clue. I'm, I'm pretty sure that Mario is, like, far and away the best-selling video game series. Like, not even close. I would assume uh, More than so. Minecraft? Uh, yeah, so Mario, Mario is number one. The total sales for the Mario franchise, including all of the spinoffs, is 760 million copies. Um, let's scroll down the list. Where is, uh, where is Legend of Zelda? Uh, Legend of Zelda, 126. So it's a very successful game, but, mm -hmm. like, it ain't even close to, like, how yeah. many copies Mario has sold. Yeah, I feel like most people who owned, like, a NES, SNES, they probably owned a Mario game at some point. Uh, oh, yeah. no way it's better than Mar Minecraft, I'm pretty sure, is the best-selling individual. Yeah, M Minecraft is the best-selling individual video game of all time. 238 the, million. The other reason uh, I've never really played Mario stuff is I've never owned a Nintendo console except a Wii. Uh, that wasn't fake typing. That was real typing. I'm looking at the Wikipedia right now for the list of best-selling <laughs> gonna... Oh, let me look Type. that up right now. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand why your typing still comes through on Discord. Hang on, let me just jam the fuck out of my keys real quick. I yeah, nothing. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, just like hitting him so hard. I have been curious for a while where Fringy places his microphone because a lot of weird sounds manage to get through where other people's don't. What, well, like the scroll? Mean, a lot of weird sounds come through Jay's. Yeah, like to get a mouse scroll wheel sound coming out Wait, is got to really? be tough. So my my so, microphone is hovering above my it's above my keyboard and my mouse so that might explain I've, it. I've now pointed my microphone at my keyboard and there's like an inch, <laughs> it's like an inch away and I'm gonna just jam all of the keys. Awesome, please do. 
Uh, Fringy has no mic. Yes, nothing. Oh, oh, yeah, you can hear me clipping my nails occasionally. They're clipped ahead of time, so you don't have to worry for a little while. You pre-clip your nails before. I don't understand why that stuff comes through. I didn't pre-cut it. I, just, I don't know, clumps. maybe the noise filter is too low or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, like, but anyway, back yeah. to sh back to Shy Guy. So like, back why, to Kenobi. Why? Oh, Shy Guy, of course, yes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I think, um, I think the... I would be surprised if someone hasn't played Pokemon as well. I think that Pokemon would be was going to be my first kind of guess, yeah. but well, then I was like, I don't know. Like I, f um, it's maybe I think Grand Theft Auto was another one. Oh no. Wait, what are you? What, what, what are you asking? What? I've not played Pokemon. That's surprising. That I, surprising. I've it's never really appealed to me. What does appeal uh, to you? Yeah, to be, well, so, so what Going I was outside. saying... That, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. They made one for that. It's called Pokemon it. Go. I, yeah. Well, to be fair, I have played that one. You um, played it at the oh, light again. I just, I just didn't mention it because I thought that would make things worse. Yeah, loads <laughs> of Zoom these days that have never owned a Nintendo console. Isn't Nintendo Switch sold like 100 million units? Nintendo Switch is like a hugely successful... Yeah, like, so it's not really a counter. The, the Switch is the only console from Nintendo that I've ever really been tempted uh, to buy for myself. And... I, I'm, I'm not that like it's, I'm it's not, not that a, with a console at the moment. You're right, Rags. It's not a direct counter. I guess it's just that when someone says a lot of people haven't played a Nintendo, haven't owned a Nintendo console, it's like, I mean, more so than like an Xbox at least. Like, there's Nintendo consoles typically sell better than like Xboxes, and I feel Definitely like sell well, yeah. price, like a lot of people. You know what I mean? I, I guess a lot um, of the things we've been saying are Nintendo products, whether they're Zelda, Mario, you know, that kind of thing. Well, it's just um, they. I the, think it's because when I think about it, it's that the longevity of the appeal. So you think about Pokemon, and that's like a, a game you grow up with, yes. and it persists to yeah. this day. Mario's a game you grow up with, and it it predates exactly. some of y'all, um, and it's still around exactly. so it the period of time it has to exist and it, it's it's so extensive that you're like it's always there it's not like you know th there's only a couple of these games and a couple of these games and they were on specific consoles like there's always a way to play a mario game or a pokemon game you know like, or an arcade game there's just always a way to play them i think oh, yeah, that's this, so like go for it my, my equivalent for these games for like what the 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 place that they hold in most people's lives i'm pretty sure my equivalent is going to be jack and dexter right which is not as long lived as a series there are four installments that count um here's the thing though because those games like ratchet and clank crash bandicoot and the like they're really important to me as well but i still played mario a lot i just uh, never did really like the, the nintendo thing I, I guess that's because I guess it's because Nintendo was so synonymous with video games. Like a lot of people, a lot of people would still think of video games like, oh yeah, you're playing on your Nintendo. Not as many as like 20 years ago, but like that's your Nintendo. Or when you think of video games, you think of Mario more so than you would think of a lot of other characters. Um, I guess it's just that 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 awareness of of like the series makes it surprising to me that anybody wouldn't have played it. Like, you would imagine that even somebody who doesn't play video games at all, like, ever, and only plays games on their phone, might have at least played, like, Mario Kart, you know? So this is reminding me of a copypasta, actually. Hang on. Like, this is- I feel like I'm living this copypasta. <laughs> uh, um, I was just gonna say, it's funny that both times you've tried to start a topic about Shy Guy, it hasn't happened. Yeah, I was waiting for Shy Guy too. <laughs> oh, I, I the reason why I said back to Shy Guy is because I thought it would be amusing, but I wanted to talk about Shy Guy's Jay very play meta. Mario. I mean, I'm finding this copy pasta real quick. Give me. This was not the the. It wasn't a vehicle to interrogate Jay. I genuinely think that these Lego just happens Shy Guys naturally. <laughs> It's I uh, just I like that that you can have a little hammer bro like you got shy guy hammer bro I guess you can have nabbit if you like a little thief rabbit um there's a toad here as well it's it's, it's cool it's it's exciting times Not who nabbit nabbit is like um I think he got introduced in the the Wii U one he's like a little rabbit that wears one of those uh, he wears like what's it called the the little you know, like when you put the little handkerchief thing on your face as like a mask, bandana. Like a, 
oh well yeah then it, yeah like he wears a little bandana and he's a little rabbit who steals things i do not recognize his character so this is from after yeah it's I, just, newer, uh, I think yeah yeah he it's must be i just character. i don't recognize his character oh so this, is, I, this I mean, is the this yeah. is the thing that i feel like i'm living it's, to... it's, it's coming it's, it should be here by now stop coming one of my favorite one of my favorite Mario characters was was always Hill. Oh, was he Mario sixty four? Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? Is it normal that I don't want to watch Pirates of the Caribbean? I've never seen Pirates of the Caribbean. Seriously, I'm the only person I know who's never seen it. At college, one of my classmates refused to believe me when I told him I'd never seen it. That was ten years ago. Honestly, it doesn't look like a movie I'd be interested in watching. And I've been deliberately reading the negative reviews about it on IMDb <laughs> rather than the positive ones. So yeah, I don't really want to watch it. Um, <laughs> alright. <laughs> really had to get that off his chest. I would just go yeah. as far as say, like, why do you feel it would be abnormal to not want to see a film? And then whatever his requirements are, I'd be like, this probably applies, like, to the requirements for not being normal. Uh, I think I'd just say, this is a good movie, go watch it. Whoa, yeah, Pirates of the Caribbean 1, super cool. Uh, it, was that it for Shy Guy, or was there more? Um, yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'm just, I'll probably be grabbing the little Lego Shy Guy. I, I saw a post about Shy Guy where someone says, Man, how come, how, how comes they never changed his, his, his looks ever? And someone just said, it's because oh, Shy yeah. Guy is perfect. <laughs> yeah. he, is, he is perfect. He doesn't need any further revisions. They nailed it. They got it right the first time around. That's true. That's the best Funny. His voice is perfectly suited to the character as well. It's it's just mwah, beautiful. Like you you nailed it. You did a great job. Not guilty. It's just a pleasure, but it's not super amazing. It's unlike Shy it's Guy. Super yes. okay. But it's like super no, okay, no, not just no, okay. No. <laughs> so the problem with saying it's no. super okay is like saying it's a super five out of ten, where you're like super five out of ten. If you could just help it's me out, what's the plus. difference between a five out of ten and a super five out of ten? Uh, it's like a 5.2. Is that what it's, it means? Or does it mean it's it's firmly <laughs> in the okay camp? There's no way it's moving yeah. out of it. Yeah. I can't figure yeah. out which of those he means either. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, it kind of fucks with your head a little. <laughs> Obi-Wan like, Kenobi, it's super okay! It's weird to see Ewan McGregor back as Obi-Wan. It's weird to see him, like, fighting, like, like, uh, uh, original trilogy stormtroopers. It's mm. like, Ah, this is the bridge. Shouldn't these be like very bad looking CGI clone troopers? <laughs> Stop right? it! Shouldn't this all look like a terrible green screen? Like, the clone troopers did look bad. They do, but I guess I'm just like, why is everything getting compared to like, because he's saying he's fighting stormtroopers now rather than the CGI clones. It's like, what? <laughs> it's just kind of a weird comment. I mean, a lot of it just gets compared back to the prequels, and it's a weird baseline to take compared to literally anything else uh i don't know can't we just judge it for how good it is but um yeah real set and i'm like See, that's so why, it's, to, oh. to me it's weird that he's on it just because he's ewan mcgregor and he's like a big actor and this show is so sort of like cheap and funky yeah. what it's so weird it's, to say this when it's 25 mil an episode and it's like the height yeah. of a temple launch yeah. from disney like it be like what's this big name actor doing in here and it's like we've been in the era of shoving big name big name actors into tv shows for ages even smaller what is tv a big shows name actor doing in a star wars multi-million dollar television show it seems so strange to say i don't get it Especially when we know that he's expressed desire for a long time to play the role again. Yeah. Right, that it feels mm. like... Oh, and, and don't get me wrong, yeah, it is trash. Like, it looks like trash all the time too, <laughs> but like, it shouldn't. But it does, considering all of its, you know, resources. Oh, it feels like this should be like a cheaper actor. This is the new Obi Wan, yeah. but they actually got you and McGregor. Oh, this is the it's the new Kenobi. So it's why not? It sounds like he's saying <laughs> you Ewan's too good for this, which uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we agree for different reasons. Maybe <laughs> amazing futuristic city they're walking around in, and then they got a gunfight in a roof where he's like hiding behind like a bucket. Yeah. 
<laughs> it was not good <laughs> shit, by the way. That shootout was borderline comical. Reva starts doing parkour, but it's yeah, also... That was pretty crazy. I agree, but, like, it's weird yeah. to agree with some of these workings, but not the conclusion, you know? Yeah. Slow like when you and get awkward. a math problem yeah. correct, but the way that you just guessed, or you know, something it's like that. Different. Like the working is correct, but then the answer is wrong. Yeah, I was gonna say it's yeah. the reverse That's of what we weird. usually get. Yeah. It's the we both agree two plus two. Well, two is one plus one, but we didn't agree on two plus two is four for some reason. But but it's super okay, and I'm fine with no, it. No, it's not. That was super right. Okay. Any, all the any yeah. of the action is so, so slow and awkward. That's my least favorite stuff on the show. No, I I prefer slow and awkward action. But why? Why? Uh, why? So and look do you know? Do you? Point. If we can, if, if we just take a second, right? You have the void in okay. your brain, and then you put one item in, slow and awkward, and it's like, ain't that <laughs> not something we want? And then someone goes, yeah, but look over there at the other side of the void, and you you turn your head. And there's super fast, super excessive, and everyone hates it. It's way better than that, though, isn't it? It's like, well, I wasn't talking and about that. The only options yeah, like why? Because I, I, I have a feeling that's where we're going, right? But, but I'm just sitting well, there like, no, can we just talk about how slow and trash and awkward it is in this? Uh, are mm -hmm. they going to say, like, yeah, look at this fight in the prequels. It's so fast, and that's bad. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to see another, just <laughs> again, talking about prequels of shit. And then, yeah, I wonder. You know, Really, why is that always the comparison? Why why can it never be compared to like the why can't it be compared to a New Hope or Empire or even Return of the Jedi? Why is the then we'd have to because then this show would be really really shit. For some like if someone said slow and awkward and they categorize a lot of the fights in the Kenobi show and then Mike says yeah but I like slow and awkward and he thinks to himself like Empire and Bespin fight or something I'd be like whoa not awkward not awkward not awkward. <laughs> Happy to call yes. it intimate and even slow to an extent, but this is this is this is the key difference. Jay is trying to criticize these fights, and it's like, no, I prefer slow and awkward. And it's like, no, 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 no. We're not talking about a, di a false dichotomy. Stop. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Rather than the over the top shit, yeah, well, I, uh, I, yeah, I, I, that's I over the top. I prefer this stuff, like especially in that second mm -hmm. episode. They're like, over the top, like a, a moon sized space station that can destroy entire planets. Like, they're that obviously the top, talking or... about Mustafar again. I know, I know, but it's like, it's over the top, is because I don't, I just don't. What about the fight mm. with Dark Hole, then? Or do they, I think they think they... that's excessive, too. I wasn't over the top, that was through the middle. I think that I mean, in his videos yeah. on the Phantom Menace, he says, like, the reason why that fight fails is because there's just nothing really to be caring about, character wise, is mm -hmm. how he feels about it. Uh, Okay, but I mean that's that would be different to like any that's sort different, of thing. Yeah, that's because they're about characters, not its speed or its. Awkwardness. Yeah, and and to be fair, I don't think I agree entirely. I think there's enough to care in that fight about the livelihood of the two Jedi, as well as um, if you really want to dig, the fate of Anakin being trained by Qui Gon is is at risk. A duel of the fates, right? But then also, I mean, the much simpler one when Qui Gon gets killed. Like, of course, Obi-Wan jumping into the fight. It's like, okay, now we've ratcheted it up a little bit in terms of... It's it's very fine character stuff, but a it's really fine fight. Yeah, um, the fight is very neat. The setting is neat. The music is fantastic. Does, does oh, anybody yeah. act really disagree that, like, the, the little 10 seconds when the, the, the shield, like, opens and then Obi-Wan charges in and fights Darth Maul, that that might be, like, the single coolest sequence? Like of of lightsaber fight of the whole the fight, whole, of oh, the whole series. I, I would happily put it in the running for coolest. Yeah, that was really cool. It's cool. Ooh. Like, I don't, Ooh, it's yeah, a, um, the one when he charges in and then they they do the the very quick like um strike. I could hear the one. yeah, I could hear the sound of the lightsabers yeah, in my head without even having to think about it. Yeah, that's like the it's I um still, really go, cool. Kind of bounce off of each other. Yeah, like there's... Around, like, yeah, it's great. I guess the I alley. just... Look, all right, Proof was got a lot of problems. <laughs> okay. but, they do, but they do some things good. There are some well, good things in there. There really are. It's in the face of, like, this show, it's a little bit... Um, it, a, a show that just is dealing so much damage to the world and the characters. Like This show I, I is definitely we're... infectious. This is, a, this is a show that needs a lot of quarantine. It's like the sequels. They need to be quarantined so that they don't infect things around them. Temporal infection, like the things that were made before, it just it rubs off and damages characters that way. It's no good. All 
it's no good. I mm-hmm. I prefer okay. this stuff, like, especially in that second episode, they're, like, going around, like, the alleys, and it's very kind of, like, grimy. Like, I like that stuff. Like, I wouldn't need any action. I think Dexter she's Jetster was grimy, but you, you don't, don't like him. Action. I agree. Yeah, I mean, I was oh, going to say, I, I think I agree with the sentiment, but uh, mm-hmm. that's not at all what was being discussed at first there, and then it turned into something else entirely. It was... keeps shifting so much. Like, they can't stay on a, a, a core point for too long. It keeps just jumping around. Stuff. It's very like, freeform, but action. without a lot of. Yeah. What well, it I'm needs is what it is, really. Yeah, it's it's. But so is this. So well, no, I guess we're following a video, but I mean that, the, the whole shy guy thing. Well, again, to uh, make it to compare, because I know some people would be like, "Wow, you're judging them for having a casual conversation." It's like, no, no, no. So what we're talking about is like if we're all sitting at that table at McDonald's, and then I go, "Man, my food isn't very hot when it just delivers," and then Rags goes, "Well, yeah, but it's it, you know." Big portions of a great, as if to imply a bigger portion means it would have to be cold. And then Fringy says, "Like I've never liked big portions in KFC." And then it's like, "Wait, what does that have to do with?" And then Jay says, "I like it when food is cheap and awkward." Yeah, exactly, and it's just like the four of us really aren't listening to each other. <laughs> like, we're all just sort of yeah, talking about our own yeah. subjects. And waiting for it. it's it's almost like nobody is holding down the conversation. They'll let it shift to something else without going. Yeah. Wait, no. Like, no, you don't. The no, topic is on. a leaf in the wind. A little bit. A little bit. I think she's done. I was looking at IMDb, and she's only listed as being in two episodes. So I think she's out of the Spoiler show. Spoiler alert. Character. She's well, in she, that, three. She's in three. three. Yeah. I, well, and whatever. That, it doesn't matter. Episode five. Yeah. Oh, chat. You're going to love her role in episode five. It's, it's very heartfelt. So good. Very good. She's a real hero. Oh. Yeah, they could only afford her for a couple days of the shoot. I don't know. I'm sure they could She's afford her best, for the whole uh, series. I'm sure they could afford this actress. If I they think a lot afford, of they've got Ewan McGregor money. I think a lot of them, Christian the actors movie. involved, fucking want to be here. The Star Wars name until they become disenfranchised is something to pull actors in with. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Re- if you say if Re- I'm Re- an Oscar aspiring Isaac. actor and Disney <laughs> calls me. Disenfranchised after having. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like he fought to stay into the franchise, and then he fucking left, swinging the door back and yeah. forth as he fucking ran out of there. Become Moon Knight. Become Moon Knight, and that that was a great choice. <laughs> I mean, it certainly it certainly showed off his acting chops. Well, yeah, it did. Yeah, he was the best part about that show. Thank God he was he in that was show, or we'd be miserable. He was definitely the best part of that show. Yeah, easily. Couple days of the shoot. I don't know. She's one of the best uh, act performances yeah, like, on the show. She's good. That scene when she has to sure. like. Well, there's a couple scenes when she's like, "Oh shit, I gotta like." Is there a problem? Uh, up my spine. No. Game here. The, oh. the, to be fair, he's talking about the acting alone. She's she's fine. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess he's not yeah, talking about the writing, <laughs> which was dumb as fuck. Of course, they don't talk about the writing. <laughs> she was in Luther. Mm. That's right. She was in Game of Where's Thrones, that? which a lot of people are not. Fond of Luther remembering, Rizzo. she was one of the oh, worst characters the in Game of Thrones. Oh, was she the wizard lady? Well, so in, in, in what? In Game of Thrones, I, I imagine she might be a wizard lady, but uh, in Luther, she's not a wizard lady. In, okay. No, she's not a wizard lady in Game of Thrones. She's just she's just a normal oh, okay, lady. Okay. But she uh she does something oh, in that show that pisses fans off indefinitely, um, as a character. But eventually, she dies. So it's all good. Yay! Luther that, is like. It is 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 uh I like I like the the documentary person. about the Protestant Reformation. No, it's no, it's not about the Luther <laughs> Lutheran. It's Luther. It's Idris Elba detective. Go I don't think the, I've heard of this show. You, I, I is it good? It be, I I like it. Um, but I haven't seen it in a long time. I like the first season a lot. The the other ones are a bit hazier. Yeah, it was an attempt to launch. Uh, Lex Can without connecting him to Superman, basically. No! You're mixing him up. I think it was a pretty good Lex. attempt. It was Brian Cranston. It was why everyone wants him to be fan cast. Go watch Luther, everybody. Okay. You may get surprised at what you end up with, but <laughs> considering <laughs> the descriptions here today, but that's okay. The snotty security guard's like, 
the Wah. snotty. He's not snotty. He's doing his job. He's a security guard on a, a secure <laughs> fortress for the military. Dude, I think it's a classic example snotty. of a vibe that is given. But when you look at the scene literally, he is doing his job and he's doing it well. And everyone chastises yeah. him for it. it. The audience and the, the character included. It's so <laughs> weird. It's like, you have just tried to pass a security gate. You don't have the clearance to get in. She's like, fuck you. He's like, all right then. <laughs> Off you go, higher ranking really classified works. person. Man, imagine he had said, like, let's let's just clarify your um your classification verification with my superior or something like that. And she's yeah, like, but, you know, that's I feel like that's what he would say. She's like, let me get my superior to deal with this, I suppose. Like yeah. yeah. And then when they come down, they're like, We have no uh classified personnel entering the base today, so where are you coming from? Or what is your well, verification you number, you know? There's a lot of problems with that scene. Kind of rewatching it, there's a lot of things like she. Um, first off, someone comes in, you let him in. Okay, already a problem. But also the fact that the security security guard should say after the fact, like, "Hey, I, I just let someone in. They tried to pull rank and everything on me. Just so you know that they're here. You might want to keep an eye on them. I'm just letting you know that they've arrived." Doesn't do that. And also, she says, "I'm going to tell the Grand Inquisitor if you don't let me in." It's like, like he's dead. Well, well, Why would you say that? I guess he's not dead, right? Well, that's the thing. But it's it was a surprise to Riva. True. Uh, I so guess if, so. That would mean that nobody on this base has yet been told the Grand Inquisitor's dead. Which is weird because this is the Grand Inquisitor's base. Well, yeah, it's the Inquisitor's base. You're right. Uh, I <laughs> I got nothing. That's a good point. You're really you weird that. He really weird that she'd be like, I will tell the Grand Inquisitor. Like, That's what I mean, it's opportunities you? to have some cool writing flourishes put in, but instead it's just a series of embarrassments and we're all just like, eh. and then we have people being like, well no, the scene was neat because it was tension filled and it was good acting. Right. Okay. She thought she could just walk in the front door. Yeah, which is weird considering she should be so familiar with how everything works here. Um, or maybe she shouldn't also be. Also that they let her land at all. Some there's a lot of to... there's a lot of weird things about yeah. her entire entrance plan. It's it's just the it's just lazy writing all over, top to bottom. Okay, Mister, I'm, I'm a <laughs> you know she, she's supposed to pull rank and um, but then that guy says, "Come on into my office. You don't belong at the station." Mm -hmm. And it's like this big room, and and then she's like she goes into a room, and then they cut this like right, body, you, you... and he, she, he's like. He's having difficulty okay. remembering the scene, clearly. No, but I, 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 I asked, that wasn't a room, right? <laughs> he's gonna get he's there. Right he's right this is pretty stupid, though, how nobody you, you, heard that. That's the thing I find interesting about this part, is that we're taking a decent chunk of time to explain how dumb a thing is in the writing. Okay? Yep. Storytelling. And I wish they would do that more in this discussion, but they don't really. Like, hidden behind a, b a box, in clear view of everyone else, and she's like, <laughs> It's like, I had a problem, but I took care of it. <laughs> and then uh, there's like people just like working and people coming and going, but <laughs> she beat him up and did then we, dragged him back. You're going to see our reaction to that tomorrow. Yeah. Into the room that it's she's great. currently in with other people or beat okay. him up in the room and, no, and the people sitting at the consoles 10 feet away didn't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> it was really weird. It was, it was really weird. Obi-Wan, you just yeah. say it's bad. Oh, okay. cool. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it spits I in mean, the face of you get in there, but... continuity in any way. Uh, yeah. Helped my father. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Served my father so, yeah. in the Clone Wars. She talks okay. about it as if she does not know him, has never yes. met him. But... Ooh, okay, let's we'll have to see what's happening here. I don't know. Oh my goodness gracious. Now, oh, I guess they went on a little adventure together. I've seen... It, but again, none I've of it matters seen, uh, anymore. On the internet, I've seen <laughs> Star Wars nerds scramble to make sense of that. Okay. And I've seen some conversations where they say... Princess Leia in uh, 1977 intentionally made it seem like she didn't know who Obi-Wan was or didn't have a close affiliation with him in case the message happened to get intercepted by the Empire. She talks about the that Rebel Alliance work. and her no, father's involvement in it. I don't think it makes any difference no. at all. It doesn't, it doesn't work anymore oh, yeah, because right. now it's known that Leia has a connection with Obi-Wan because of this adventure. 
Well, no, yeah, let's, yeah. let's, let's, well, let's, let, no, let's exactly ignore all of that. I'm going to use only references from that exact scene. She describes the Rebel Alliance that oh, helped yeah, the right, right, Bail Organa. Okay, yeah. It wouldn't matter how friendly she is with Obi-Wan. He's a connection to her that's official, that's required to support the Rebel Alliance. They're done. It's over. Like, the well, idea that if the Empire captured this message, that they wouldn't want to know that... If she were like, my friend, Obi-Wan, help me, that's not going to change anything in terms of their approach. It's Obi Wan is her only hope at this point. This is this is a last ditch effort. That you is know, what I would call it. a uh, an attempt to cope, and it did not work. And don't worry, that's yeah. not Mike's oh, argument. No. He's saying he read it online. He read it, yeah. T he talking to him in, in a way where you would think that she's never met. Like him you're before. calling your your great uncle that you've never met. Yeah. Y mm -hmm. Your great uncle knew your father years ago. I'll I'll you... ha I'll have to rewatch this. This sounds. This doesn't sound like enough of a discrepancy to get Ben out of shape. Over. Well, no, it, it doesn't. It's it not. I mean, it's a little bit fucking annoying because it changes the nature of the relationship between two main characters in that film. I don't know. It's a little bit annoying. It's, it's, not, worth, it's later not worth and... getting bent out of shape over. I, yeah, I, I don't agree with that. These are important is. characters, and this is an important that. relationship if if this show exists in canon, you know, like, and it's true. Feel like one could make that argument in response to a lot of the things they've already said. Like, uh, when he says, so, like, he, he's make... beating up that god too close to some other gods, I'd be like, eh, it's not enough to get Ben out of shape over, they just didn't hear it. Yeah, don't worry, uh, it's fine. It's not worth getting Ben out of shape because, uh, when they're in Mustafar, they did the spinning with the lightsabers behind their backs. <laughs> or a backflip. Worth... This is, this is just, it's, a just um... it's not worth getting Ben out of shape that they fought on the floating thing in the lava while swinging from the, the things. It's not worth getting Ben up. This is just discussing people's emotional responses, though. They agree that it's an issue. They're just like, yeah, but don't get mad about it. I, um, I don't I mean, get that impression. I think he's talking, he, think, he described it as a, enough of a discrepancy. Like, uh, he's, so yeah, he's saying your emotional reaction should be congruent with the amount of a discrepancy it represents, which is a lot of one, as far as I'm concerned. It's not minor. I just, when, uh, we when may things... disagree, like, he and I might disagree on how much of a significant breach it is, I guess. But that was kind of my point with the, uh, the other examples. I think I could easily argue that the ones they brought up so far are minor discrepancies that they shouldn't even be mentioning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you don't know where the line is. And this is the thing, there doesn't I... seem to be any level of consistency here. I like to entertain the conversation about whatever you want to talk about in terms of the, the commentary on this, and that's why I love listening to them talk about the Picard show. It's fun as fuck to hear them talk about, like, did you see that one of the aliens didn't have, like, their three belt buckles when that represents the, like, amount of time in war when he's been in war for way longer? Something like that. I, I like, I, I, I think it's fine. Talk about whatever you want. I don't care but it's one of those it. things where it's like <laughs> this show existing is just like uh now it's a thing that is introduced that doesn't quite line up with the original movies but again this he's is fighting Duncan, so doesn't. hard to like make sure that these points get brought up yeah he's, he's also you can tell he's being a little careful he doesn't want to come across as the uh, one that really cares yeah which is fine because <laughs> well, that was that was what i was about to say is i get the impression that he just cares more about uh about this at this point doesn't matter anymore. Can't, this is what Star Wars is now. Can't you say that about the entire franchise, though? I mean, nah, there's no point. Come on. No, no okay, not the entire we need franchise. We've got to hear that it. quote in totality so everyone can appreciate it. But again, this is cheap junk and it doesn't matter anymore. Can't, this is what Star Wars is now. Can't you say that about the entire franchise, though? I mean, there's no point for any of it. Yeah. They told the story. What? And... what? There's no point <sighs> for any of it. Nope. Pardon me. I mean, at that point, why talk about any of it? Anything? I don't understand. Why talk about anything? Yeah, why talk about Star Trek? <laughs> <laughs> Star Trek now. It doesn't matter. And so, yeah, you, I'm just surprised you'd roll that out as an argument. I'd just be like, why would you want to pull that card? That's the card. Like, everyone can pull this card whenever they want, but everyone else just looks at you weird, like, oh, thanks, bro, for introducing that element. <laughs> it's like... How much does this show matter, really? And it's like, I don't know, man. How much do your fucking shoelaces matter? Well, I mean, you're talking about it. You made a video <laughs> about it, so it was worth enough to talk about it. If you're gonna, if you're gonna make a video talking about a subject, you might as well like entertain these discussions. I figure that's what they're there to do. So, you know. Well, that's the point of the show. Yeah. They're not wrong. I mean, technically, sure, but I don't know I why do any of us talk about anything, really.
I just noticed that your edit is titled "But Why." <laughs> <laughs> I, just I was, I was that. waiting for someone to pick that up. <laughs> just can't die. And you gotta keep making Star Wars. Everybody's free. But it could, but it could be good though. What about it that? Could be good. It could feel good. This is a really yeah. cool universe. It's worth always remembering that. There's a reason yeah. why people want more Star Wars. It's a really cool world. Is it an amber for future use? <laughs> well, if you think about it, the <laughs> how, like when Obi Wan and Darth Vader meet on the Death Star okay. in A New Hope, it's sort of just like like. Oh, they met again. He's like, uh, yeah. Uh, I was once the learner, but now I am the master. Even right. more so than the last time we fought. Yeah. Ten years ago. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it's been awkward, isn't it? But that's okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah. It's yeah. Steam, they're going to shoot on something again. Steam, they're going to shoot on something again where Vader... Like, He's going to lose, like, It was yeah. a meme before the show started, but I think they're actually going to have a line in it, like, um... You see, Vader, I beat you, so you you still have much to learn, and I am the master. Oh god, could you imagine like, if he sorry. says something like, you're you know, still not a Jedi master, or something, like, to you reference? Know, you know, what would actually be better than that would be if he had a, a gun with an adamantium bullet, and he shot Darth <laughs> Vader in the head. <laughs> And so when he woke up, he had no memories of any of this. I want to. I want to know, J. Mal and Rags. Do all three of you know Yo. what Friggy's referencing there? I'm sorry. I I had to step out for a moment, and I just got back. What did, What was he, What was the reference? Well, before sorry. before you repeat it, uh, Mal and J. Did you know? The the adamantium no. bullet. I didn't put some... adamantium bullet shot in the head. So oh, when he gets damn. up, he doesn't remember anything. For some, for some reason, there was. I was Wait, gonna yeah, say, yeah, I had metal. a feeling for you that me and you were the only ones who would even know what that is. What metal? I want you to conclude that thought. I, I, I was really thinking of Batwoman for some reason. Oh! Definitely no, not Batwoman. Okay, so it's, it's, it's because it's, because it's, of the... You should know this. Because of this choice oh, I, I would have thought everyone would know this, because it was such a fucking meme of a I, film, but that's okay. I feel like I do know... Is this... Hang on, is this like X-Men Origins Wolverine or something? Yes! You or you it. get shot in the head with a, the adamantium bullet? Adamantium bullet. bullet. Oh, Rags knew the reference then. I Maybe. here's the thing. I remember like bits. Of, it's kind of like all of the pirates movies after the first. I remember like certain parts, but wi where they go and what movie they were in, it's all kind of a blur to me at this point. <clears throat> well, so the things I remember are the adamantium bullet. I remember him in front of the mirror with the claws because they look awful. I remember him lighting a thing on fire and then walking away from the explosion and not looking at it because that's what cool guys do. Mm -hmm. And I remember Deadpool with no mouth. The Merc with the mouth, with no mouth. A really good idea that was. That's actually a regularly popular viral tweet, where they just, that, that's it. That's, the, that's well, exactly just... what you said. Uh, another one is, I'm assuming you've seen this one as well, everyone typically does, but the uh, Darwin, the character who can't be killed, is killed. That's another viral tweet oh, that always happens. Yeah, well, Darwin was cool. That was really lame. I don't know why they got rid of Darwin instead of somebody else on that team. Agreed. Like, you... You present Darwin as, I adapt. It's like, that seems really interesting in terms of what you can do with this character compared to, I project, I don't know, I, I scream and that helps me fly. <laughs> you know, Was that the one? I like, like, no, I like the idea of the X-Men whose power is, I project. It's like, uh, you know, my, my emotions, I think, like everything else, everyone else is doing what I, like, just, I project my emotions on fucking everything. That's the X-Men. That's the power. I think, Which um, one of the X Men movies was where there was like a teleporty guy? Oh, that and... was uh. Well, it depends which one. Blue, Blue or Nightcrawler? Or, or, uh, no, or not Red. not Nightcrawler. He gets like his that spine was grabbed. Oh, oh, that was uh, that's that like... was in X Men Origins. Yeah, that was Will I Am, right? He played. He was, yeah, and he was I teleport. fucking hated the way that he died. It was bullshit. Yeah, yeah I remember that. I remember that's really stupid. It so is, it is like dumb as fuck. Yeah. You know what? We're gonna talk about that very briefly because I'm actually you made me angry because you rem I reminded me of why I hate that fucking <laughs> yeah. scene. I actually liked that character. I thought he was kind of chill and charming, and uh, uh, his power is awesome, and he has really great control over it. He tried to defeat fucking Sabretooth in a fight by punching him over. Over and over again. What are you Can't doing? Do, do you know who Sabretooth is? Uh, do you know what his powers are? Fucking idiot. And then he gets killed. <laughs> <laughs> as I'm just sitting here, as I'm thinking about like Nightcrawl and stuff, X Men is awesome. Like as a core idea, I I, I really like X Men as a uh, and and the the variety of characters that you get with them. 
I've said it so many times, but I think the the sort of in universe that mutants have some sort of stigma against them, I think has influenced the writing to always have like heroes that have some sort of big caveat to whatever ability they have, except for Storm. Hers is just she's got a really good one. Um, but like there's always some sort of caveat to like, yeah, Nightcrawler can teleport, and that's really cool, but he's a blue guy with a big tail. He can't really, like... And he's got, like, that religious world. component to him. Like, mm. he's very, he's religious. Nightcrawler's awesome. Nightcrawler is super cool. Um, he, like, Mystique's yeah. Mystique's really he, cool as well. And he had Wolverine, rules, too. Obviously. There was... One of the things I remember about Nightcrawler is there's some scene where he has to teleport him and someone else to a place it's that X-Men he hasn't too. seen. So he mm-hmm. has to, like, guess, and he prays. Yeah, it's like a meter and forward from him, and they have to describe the room, sort of, or something, and he's like, yeah, because he's never teleported to somewhere that he hasn't seen previously. That Just was the, oh, that was the rules for, um, was it, there was, like, a teleport movie where that where Samuel L. Jackson plays the weird religious Jumper. guy trying to hunt down. Jumper. Jumper. <laughs> that was the rules. <laughs> Anakin's in there. Hey, Christian Citizen. Yeah, Jumper. It's all comes together. Oh, my See? goodness. We thought, He's got the thought wall. The, dude, Jumper is chat. a... You thought, that's an EFAM movie right were there. Tan- <laughs> you thought these were tangents, but they were all leading somewhere. It all brought <laughs> us back to <laughs> tangent. Yes. That's how it works. We tangent Never until we get back. Us. So anyway... Uh, like, uh, it wasn't like... Like Obi Wan was like, oh, dun, dun, dun. Anakin, yo, you right. recognize the reason discrepancy. He's... You you see it. You know. No, it's he's there. he's Just... highlighting the reverse. He's saying, in A New Hope, we didn't see Va- uh, Obi Wan go, oh, Anakin. It wasn't a shock to him. And Rich oh, is about no. to say, well, yeah, because they've encountered each other before. He's not freaking out in A New mm. Hope. It's because he's getting his freak out out of the way now. <laughs> no, exactly. Why does he need to freak out? Why would he need to freak out? That's, yeah, yeah Obi- is- like Ben Kenobi has accepted that this is what Darth Vader is. He's explicit he, about that. He doesn't believe this absolutely. person is any He's longer the person the he knew. Side, yeah. yeah. Damn. Like you don't have to freak out. That's not how people react to seeing uh. other people all the time. Ben someone, is someone said, not uh, that character who freaks out. Someone said they're joking. In that case, we're joking. So it's all good. Yep, we are joking. This is a meme. We were just uh, memeing around. It's all right. It's all good. We were. We were having a good. I really time. don't care anymore. It's all fine. It's all fine. That's the key. It's just it doesn't matter anymore. It has a loyal fan base that just eat it up. Yeah. I'm sure there are people who think this Obi Wan show is the worst thing ever, and people. I can't imagine why that there. clip just made its way in there. I don't know. That must, that must have been a glitch. I don't know. Mm. There may be something to be said that if you don't care be. at all about how any of it goes and you enjoy it. That could be considered a similar approach to someone who maybe says all of it's good and doesn't care about the writing quality. Maybe. There's some similarities there. Yeah. I'm sure there are people who think this Obi-Wan show is the worst thing ever, and people who think it's the greatest thing ever. And no, It's bad, all right? Worst it, thing ever. So no, wait, so bad. That, uh, that, that headline, so there was a hotel that was Star Wars themed and it failed. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. How yeah. could that possibly fail? It's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> is that like the, 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 Have you seen the one it? That costs like six grand a day. Or yeah, something? wasn't it hyper expensive? Oh, for... how much it cost? Yeah, but right. it, it, it was, was so super high. expensive. And uh, I saw someone do a tour of the room on YouTube, and he like posted all the stuff, really all over the place in terms of quality and design of what they're trying to do. But yeah, this thing, this whole, this big Star Wars themed hotel, because the idea is the hotel's like a ship, and you're staying on the ship. Yeah. So and okay. if I bombed and it's hmm, super yeah, expensive. Six K for two nights. So, yeah, so Jesus the expense Christ. is not helping it out. Um, <laughs> but I would imagine in terms of theming, you could do a lot of cool. Imagine if each floor was themed after a different like planet or locale. Mm-hmm. So you had like a Tatooine themed, uh like a desert themed um hotel room, and then if you went to Coruscant or something, they had Those like the cheap tickets. Little, yeah, well, I mean, you could tear it if you wanted to be like that. So the most expensive one is like this opulent Naboo Palace. Like, uh, it, like lean into all of these because it seemed like in that picture there, what they had gone for was kind of the Star Wars aesthetic, like it's kind just of the, generic. The the yeah, like the the sort of the vague Star Wars aesthetic of like what it looks like on an Empire ship or like a, a, a or yeah, like what it looks like on a on a ship. Um, instead of leaning into the variety of Star Wars. Uh, then again, I don't know. I guess I'm just surprised that you could ever make a themed Star Wars hotel, and then it fails. But if you charge people $6,000 yeah, for two nights, I might explain it. 
pretty. The more you charge, the more money you'll make. Hey. Oh. Simple Smart. economics right there. That's true. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Whatever. We'll just discuss it. It has its flaws, and it has some great you things about that. it. Name three. To me, it's a guilty pleasure. Name three. It's fun, and it's bad at the same time. It's cheesy. Okay. Yeah, so now it's like, oh. I guess so, yeah. Bad. I guess I agree. Yeah, like, bad. Yeah. Because I've had fun with it. Some parts are more uh, frustrated than I am just laughing my ass off, but there's been plenty of laugh your ass off moments. Absolutely. So, yeah, I don't know. Okay. I think George Lucas would be proud of it. <laughs> oh, man. I don't I know. know. I'm, not, I'm not overwhelmed. So. Uh, I'm not overjoyed, but. Who knows? So please. <laughs> Honestly, okay. That he made I he think... made Attack of the Clones and Phantom Menace. Who knows what he would be proud of? So he wouldn't want he you did. fucking with Vader. He wouldn't want you he... fucking with Obi Wan. Well, then again, he did he did have Vader scream no to the heavens. So that's nothing. That's <laughs> nothing compared with. No, I, I know. I here. know. I know. But he did that. <laughs> sure. I, guess I, I find it just curious because really all Disney's done is at least partially vindicate uh, George Lucas. There's I a know. lot. There's because when it got sold, there was so much like, oh, yeah, yay. Like, it's not going to be George Lucas anymore. Whereas now, there's kind of this sentiment of, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I don't know if it's that strong. It's just more so like, perhaps I, I treated that. you too harshly, you know? Like, yeah, yeah <laughs> that's more the vibe. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely well, um, that. I think it's a, uh, if we got G George's true thoughts from the tab about this show, I honestly think one of the first things he'd say is, like, what do you mean Kenobi left Tatooine? That's... He never left Tatooine. Why would it's he insane. leave Tatooine? Why would you say that? And then it's like, <laughs> George, you weren't explicit enough in the movies, so he did. <laughs> I feel like, oh, yeah. okay. I thought he also the, lost his powers. Thought, Wait, why? I, people, I, I don't know. <laughs> what people didn't like about the prequels was that I was explicit in what every character thought and felt. You're telling me I needed to be more explicit? people are crazy, George. These <laughs> they, they won't stop, George. They're gonna keep like George really happy. If George had Obi-Wan specifically saying, I stayed on Tatooine this whole time, Disney would just say he's lying and have him yeah, go yeah, on his yeah. planet trotting adventure anyway. You see, he told, they don't give a fuck. he told Luke that, that he'd been there the whole time because he wanted Luke to feel as though he'd been watching over him the whole time. Why would he want him to say, you know, oh, I haven't been here sometimes? That would make him feel unsafe. It makes sense. It totally makes sense. Yeah, idiot. That's why it's shocking to me that this Obi-Wan show only has two episodes left. Because I feel like not a whole lot has happened. Yes! <laughs> that, that's... Correct. We've got oh, two episodes right. left. Yeah, fuck all... points, well, we got, man. We've got one, one episode, episode left. left. Yeah. You're fighting to get him in. But you Good make boy. Him. <laughs> Keep going. My only real, like, big complaint. I love the fact that the show looks cheap. I love the oh, fact that we'll I feel bad for it. watching it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm doing something wrong. And I feel, and I feel bad for enjoying it. I feel bad. I, like what he's I don't know what to say though. to that. If someone says I feel bad for yeah. enjoying it, I'd be like, you don't, you don't, you don't, yeah, don't need to. Okay? You don't need <laughs> you don't to feel need bad to. for enjoying Maybe it. Maybe you should, though. but you don't need to. Oh. It's fine. No, you don't need it's to. It's, you like what it's you like. Fine. You know. And... Like, yeah, it's fine if you like this. Shame. I just, I just like how he says, like, I don't feel bad for enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> Who's in the gutter now? I think the cheapness does work to the show's benefit. I think when you talk about I... like this pacing issues you have with streaming shows, I think this this type of format is relatively new with streaming services and we don't need ads. What the hell does this have to do with anything? I'm sorry. I just I don't, Yeah. Oh sorry. god, it's like we're pretending there are no good streaming shows out. Really interesting to say relatively new because ne hasn't Netflix been producing originals since like 2013 at this point? Unless he's okay. talking about like comparing it like to the. Scale. Well, yeah. I, I think he's I talking about on a scale like look at the film theology. industry. Does, you know right. how long that? It's like okay, fine, yeah, it's not been going as long, but there was. I just I'll let him finish. I, I, I think quality is going to go up over time. There's that anticipation well, that the next I, that, episode... That is an odd know. thing to say, considering that I think there was a point when, like, streaming had, like, a really high pedigree in terms of there was a lot of good stuff coming out. And now it's starting to kind of deteriorate <laughs> a bit. I mean, what, 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 I think these guys liked Squid Game. So... Would they, yeah, con what, would they consider was, the good ones... Problem then, would they consider the, the, the good the ones to just be anomalies? And of course, you have like Haunting of Hill House and Bly Manor and whatnot, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the, this one, I just don't quite understand this lot. Like, 
it, why, what else can I conclude? When, when someone makes the point, it's cheap, and I feel bad for liking it, and his response is, well, this is streaming services and TV shows have just started up, so, you know, it'll get better in future. It's like... I mean, I don't know, like, Daredevil, you know, wasn't struggling to have interesting things happen and work with no ad breaks. Yeah, if anything, I, no ad breaks means you have a lot more freedom to structure your story without having to think about these breaks that will be forced in. You have maybe you don't have to make your show that long if you can't some people with stuff. Some people say like they haven't watched any of these shows. Like though that their recommendation to Hill House is why I watched it. They've done a review of Bly Manor. I'm pretty sure they've done a review yeah. of Stranger Things. Season one. Um I'm pretty sure have they talked about Squid Game? I can't remember. I am oh, sure that they are oh. as media guys, I am sure that they are reasonably well versed in the streaming world. Yeah, I'd, 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 I'd assume so, yeah. Things will yes. really get going. Yes, it's a it's a con. In some cases, it's really not a con. But if... <laughs> Troy, this is the most disjointed video ever. Because I'm just like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree with you actually. Yeah, because Rich was saying it's um yeah like they're they're still trying to find their feet in terms of figuring out the format and it would get better. And then Mike's like, it's a con. What? What is that? <laughs> like, what? what? Like, what? I agree. Wait, this this conversation just took a turn. Yeah, like most... I feel like. That sentence has nothing to do with that other sentence. Cases it is. I I I think I think we're in the early days of. We gotta have a streaming service. Well, that's the thing. Is like we're in the early days. Of that. We're, we're in the uh. We're definitely in like the middle days now. Streaming uh, is the yeah. We're there now. I think. It doesn't feel like the early I, days I, at I mean, all, does it? Let's, like, let's find out how long this goes on. Well, I suppose it depends Netflix. on how he. It would depend on how he's defining the ages, if you will. Um. Uh. It feels like we are firmly in the era of this is normal streaming services and content. Well, I, feel, I feel like yeah, because I would have gone as far as saying we're in the streaming era. Like it was, yeah, it was jump not jump started, but like I guess jump started to its Netflix main chunk by the pandemic. Off. I think. I think Disney Plus was the mark of when it was really the streaming era. It's like, oh, sure. Yeah. I guess I'm talking about like and the, the pandemic, obsession yeah, with really. making shit tons of content would have been. Um, enhanced by the the lockdown absolutely yeah definitely. and how much we have plenty of experience in how to make tv shows anyway how much do you have exactly. to change them to be a streaming tv show really All yeah. i mean you have, not have, have less break. restriction exactly you have, you have less restriction you don't have to incorporate uh app breaks and you don't have to make it to a set uh time and remember, no. like you can have less episodes. chernobyl is only five episodes it's only yeah. five well, that's it you've always You've always been able to have as many episodes really as you want, but on streaming, yeah, it feels like the uh, the limits are... I mean, isn't Stranger yeah. Things season four, like, isn't the finale just a movie? Like, they're just making a film, essentially? For, like, I, got feature, like, I got a little bit confused like, with that. Episodes. So, I was curious, because I've actually seen the first, quote-unquote, half, and I looked on IMDb to see the release dates for the second half, and it's like, oh, it's um, July 1st. And I was like, oh, sweet, I don't actually have to wait that long. Um, but it's two episodes, and so I think they are both just two movies that are coming out, essentially. Oh. But they're categorized as TV show episodes, and it's just like, okay. And that's the thing, streaming I mean, affords you a lot more freedom to do stuff like that, because on oh, TV, yeah. even if you want, like, a two-hour finale, you know, you still gotta think about what other shows are gonna be airing. You gotta think about when it's airing. And, of course, your production timeline's a bit different for TV shows, because TV but shows But does that just start. replace... Does that just replace the stuff you'd have to deal with with a cinema? Trying to get screens and showtimes and stuff like well, that? Well, because with streaming, one thing that's not a factor either. Because it's all direct. It's uh, on demand, essentially. Like, yeah, you don't have to think about... There's a lot less restrictions with streaming than there are with a lot of other formats. Um, which is why I don't understand... Yeah, of, it's yeah, not no, an excuse it's, it's, for nothing happening in your show. Right things to happen. That's your mm -hmm. fucking job. You fuck around and you piddle and fart doing this and that and the other thing. And just, you don't have, no one talks to each other. You don't have conversations or any meaningful exploration of things and events. It's just, how can it simultaneously be all plot and just nothing happens? That was a it's that, the, oh, go ahead. It's like Red Letter Media said this about, um, the Survivor, when they covered it on Best of the Worst, they said it's one of those awful movies where things, oh no, maybe it was uh, Prototype X29A, where they said it's one of those horrible movies where things are constantly happening and nothing happens. That's, that's kind of like Kenobi. 
it's so much plot and you just feel like nothing is being accomplished or really done with your time. There's no real progression. It's not, I, I, I just brought it up a second ago. Chernobyl is a great example of, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a very clear and serious progression of what the stakes are and the events happening and where we are during this crisis and what's being done to do it. There's a huge difference between episode one and episode three. <laughs> And that's not even the end of it, because you can tell that there's just things have happened and people do things. Stuff is occurring, events taking place. Yeah. Time isn't and, wasted. And, and back to the whole ad things. It's not only that you don't have to play ads. You don't have to adhere to the rules of the ad givers or the, the sponsors or whatever. It's like, oh, you can't say fuck two times or something. That's why, you, that's why there's on Netflix, you have all these more... I guess like more spicy comedy specials or whatever, or just more spicy stuff in general that goes a bit more out there. You couldn't do this on like cable television because the advertisers would just flip their shit. So it's just to so the point where there's more uh, more freedom you you can have for that. So when, so when a chat is, they're a little behind. They said, Rags doesn't know that they built an actual replica of a Titanic to film Titanic. <laughs> Missed the joke. That's okay. I still don't think that joke makes any sense. It does. I don't think it does. There's no joke. It really does. It is. Yes. So a joke that would work, IMO, and, and this is what I think you were trying to go for, but it didn't pan out, is like if the story was about a poorly made thing, uh, from history, and then you said like, and the, the commentary was about how poorly made it is, and you go, yeah, it, it's hard to believe anybody would actually make something like that. Joking that, of course, it, it's based on a true story. But with Titanic, it's like, oh no, that doesn't really make sense. It's just a boat that was, it was a good boat, it's just they like, crashed to a fucking iceberg. So I mean, well, like, it, it doesn't, it doesn't the have any, of the boat. The doesn't have any punch to the joke, it's just it. strange. The joke can be strange, it's fine, it works. Well, hey, uh, What's funny the about joke it? Works. Just do me because I'm clearly not getting it. So what, what's the funny? The funny is that there actually was a real Titanic that was built that sunk. A real a Titanic was built, and I was like, oh, they'd never do that, but they clearly they did. Hmm. <laughs> right. I fucking love the silence. I thought I was missing a that's, layer to see, it. That's, that's all. See, see, that was funny. Look, the people who liked it, and there are many of them, it, they, they love it. They love it. That's cool. That's all right. Yeah, because uh, it was a good joke. You're entitled to that perspective, Rags. Yeah, yeah you're allowed okay. to find things, no, certain things funny. The, Remember, you found the Batcave joke in. funny. It's all pouring in. You know, what, one it's might it. say that it's indicative of a level of confidence in the joke to not have to tell people how confident you are in the joke. I did, if Mahler didn't get it, he didn't get it, and that's fine. That's all right. Oh, no, sorry. Let me Let me clarify. I did get it. I thought I'd missed something. But I was wrong. No, no, no. That's that's okay. <laughs> Not every joke's for everybody. But uh, it was a good joke. Quality stuff. Good stuff. I'm glad enjoyment came from it. Yeah, a lot of it, a lot of enjoyment did from all kinds of places and people. I've enjoyed the results of the lack of enjoyment coming from it. So there's that. <laughs> no, there there was the results were lots of laughter from all kinds of people around the world. I agree, and for many different reasons. Lots of people loved the Titanic joke. Mm. Someone said the Batcave joke was cringe, right? No. No, it wasn't. It was great. <laughs> oh, no. Here we go again. It was incredible. It was so good. Like, Let's watch this video. Rags We're in the is, early uh, days of... Wait, Ezra watching, Miller is no, Rags' is hero, okay? So you'll hear no disparaging uh, against his... It's, wait, you said I'm his hero? No. He's your hero. No. Isn't he like some weird yeah. word that I can't say <laughs> streaming? He's gone nuts. He's crazy. He's this crazy, insane he's evading the law. weirdo who's on, he's like on the run from the police and everything. <laughs> Ironically, the Flash is on the run from justice. It's great. Oh no, I thought he was a fan. Think, was it meme that said he's like, he's become reverse Flash, like basically in real life? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's become a slow criminal instead of a quick hero. No, I mean reverse Flash the character, because like... That's not a great name. Yeah, because if anybody didn't know Reverse Flash is the name of a bad guy, you'd just it be like, like, do you mean oh, the Reverse that's of a Flash? Person is, yeah, that's, the, that's the a villain name. The villain's name is Reverse yeah, it's Flash. Villain. I d yeah. It's the meme oh. where they just take the thing and do the meme <laughs> version of it. I don't know. Reverse Flash. That's, that's worse than just taking the letters and flipping them backwards. A Flash? Would that be his... Alf. Let me... Let me <laughs> Elf. Hisself. Hisself. 
Ah, Grandmaster Hasalf. Hasalf. That, that could work. He is very quick. He's very quick. He has to We're walk. He has early... to run backwards, though. <laughs> the days of we gotta have a streaming service. Well, that's the thing. Is like everybody. We need a, we need a product. We need product. That was gonna be a movie. Ah, we'll make it long and put it on a TV show now. I just don't feel like they're panicking. I just don't think they're good at making shows. Um. Well, also, I find it. Because everyone watches them. I guess I'm fascinated because I don't even I, I I guess I don't disagree with the idea that Kenobi looks like something that was smaller and it was stretched out and he's he's kind of saying like we've got to make it long and I'm like but why the fuck did that happen how is it so hard to put content into this thing like what well because it was going to be a film first and now they and then they later it, decided to make it a show but nevertheless you would there's still story to tell I think that we could cut this thing down to being a two and a half hour film that just doesn't have a lot happening in it though you know I th yeah. it, it does seem like pe 24 episodes was common for television show seasons mm -hmm. six is short it's very short thank god we only have to watch six of these <laughs> 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 Oh, no. I remember this, yeah. You gotta show him. Chewie, no, what have they done to you? What have they done to you, Chewie? Look at their mess, I can't my body. He just goes, I'm gonna get you. Oh. Oh, man. We need 12 shows to appeal to keep the Star Wars fans subscribed to Disney Plus. <laughs> they, 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 they're 38% I mean, of our subscribers. Yeah. Holy shit. So the problem with this portion, I just feel like you get that you're helping it out by being like, this is fun stuff. I like it, this. <laughs> but it's like shit. And you've also said it's shit. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, what do you mean? But you're, that's, that's, you're the component that's required for this all to function. I don't understand. Subscribers, I think others. when they said 38% of our subscribers are Star Wars, I don't, that's probably not true, it's probably more so Marvel, but I, uh, I oh, was yeah. just struck by the thought of, man, Disney don't, like, make a lot of original things anymore. No. Like, that really. just really kind of hit me there. It's just like, they really have, do not make many original, the animation studios do, but even then, like, Lightyear, the fifth <laughs> Toy Story film, yeah. Like, if? man, wh what? Why is it that Disney? You never have Disney just make a brand new, totally new drama. Like that, that's something that they just haven't done in a long time. Have they? Uh, yeah, it's just they are. They just make a. They love their IPs in terms of how much money they can make them. That's such a big part of their business. 62 where people want to watch kid shit. They made me care about the most boring character in all of Star Wars. I, oh I in all God. of Star Wars. <laughs> it's a major in achievement. All of Star Wars. Oh no. It's just gonna Okay. That's his perspective. Hey, he finds Obi-Wan Kenobi to be the most boring character in Star Wars. Before yeah, this show. Gonna... This show is what made that a, not the truth anymore. Like, I just Alright. This was a celebration of Obi-Wan Kenobi, this definitely didn't turn him into a horrific, terrible, stupid loser mm. who takes innocent people as meat shields. I don't even... I like, really want to know why he finds him so super boring. I just... I need something. Maybe just the delivery, maybe? You McGregor's delivery? Yeah, maybe it's the scenes where he's just talking to people and he finds the delivery boring. Uh, the most boring character in all of Star Wars. I, I applaud this show. It's, an, it's a major achievement. What are you talking oh. about? Qui-Gon hasn't shown up yet. Uh, Obi-Wan was worse. Nah, <laughs> I, Qui-Gon was more boring, I think. But I think, I think that might be because... I think Qui-Gon doesn't have enough time to, uh, to say that like Obi-Wan's got so much time. Look, this is difficult for me because I just don't find the films boring, uh, really. So I can't give an opinion on like oh who's more boring uh, out of those two because I, I kind of enjoy them both so i just you know it's very subjective when you say something's boring it's just like yeah maybe for you i guess sorry th this is a bit of a tangent because someone said light year is bombing in chat so i looked it up apparently light year was originally projected to grow 70 to 85 million with some estimates as high as 105 million. However, after making just 20.7 million on its first day, estimates Man. were lower to 51 to 55 million. And well, hmm. it's the movie that <clears throat> everybody wanted. Well, it's funny because this is the first one that they've released in theaters since like onward. 
that because they everything else has gone um, straight did straight. onward make money because i i heard uh, of it, no like, well but... i'm pretty sure that it didn't because it came out like right when the pandemic was sort of when well, all that stuff was starting up so like it got moved straight to i think it moved to disney plus like a week later uh so whatever money it was going to make at the box office just pff, like well, took a bit. smoke be completely honest with you if, if you had told me it's actually made 200 million i'd have been like oh i don't know i don't know yeah, if people want to see this thing i don't know i legit didn't know if you were going to say it made way more or way less than projected i was just i was hanging I, on every uh, word for the news well it's an interesting one because it is toys it is toy story adjacent, adjacent and toy story yeah. makes mm -hmm. a lot of money it's the reason why this film exists is because well story they should have just really called profitable. it star wars light year and it would have made a whole lot of money and well, I think they figured. I guess they fi they figured that this one would do. They figured that this one would do well. I imagine I again so, they yeah. because they they put Turning Red on Disney Plus when it was originally going to be theatrical, and they kept this one theatrical, which would indicate that they thought this one would do better. Um, and it doesn't seem to be doing that well. Mm. What what are they making next? What's what's next up for them? elemental oh that's right i remember seeing it's like a world where elements are alive and it had like a fire person and a water person and that was really lame it's like man I feel like you're that uh, does sound lame i have not no fully in capturing not fully capturing the nature of uh the elements you know in terms of what you could do and uh, maybe we'll be good i can't remember the last i uh, yeah yeah still electricity hating. or well i don't know i just yeah I don't know. Heart? <laughs> well, like Captain I, I Planet. Heart. What about, what about surprise? What like uh, the element of surprise? Oh, 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 oh. It took me a while to get there, but once I got there, I was pleasantly surprised with the destination. Yay! All right, back to the video. You think? Yeah. Maybe I just like you and McGregor. Obi Wan was more. a. Yeah, Ewan McGregor is a fine actor. Obi Wan was a terrible character. Ooh. Oh, okay, uh -oh. so that's even that's that's a lot hotter oh. of a take than what we got before. Oh dear, Obi Wan is a terrible character. You're just wrong. I, I don't know terrible. what to do with that. I, yeah, I, I I don't think he's terrible at all. Uh, I I, what else can disagree. you do with this? Thing? <laughs> yeah, we don't get anything to specify, unfortunately. So can't really. I, the Say fact anything. that it's said so casually, though, Obi Wan is oh, yeah, a terrible character. Casually, you'd think he'd realize, like, oh boy, I'm probably gonna have to exploit myself for this one. <laughs> who didn't? Who had no personality for what? three movies? Oh, he was very oh boy! <laughs> I don't know. Hopper, that he, was his personality. He trait. was best friends with Anakin. No, he they wasn't. Were best did friends. you watch those movies? They, they never went on got all along. sorts of adventures they together friends. that we never. Saw. They did get if along his, his... at the beginning so of what, Revenge of the Sith. They the, get along. The the apt criticism would be that their relationship is thin. Um, That's not a counter not... to him not having a personality, though. I suppose it's no, a counter it's, to it's, what Jay it's, says, though. It's kind of a non sequitur. Oh, right, because he was saying, yeah, that he has a relationship with a uh, yeah. Wow, Jay fully. <laughs> Well, that's, just, you know, that's just my thumbnail format, you know? You can't... Stop hating. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm hilarious. How dare you? You know, since that, since that last joke, I've started to question that. <laughs> it was great. Just because you didn't oh, get it no. and everyone else did. That's fine. Just because you did. I thought you meant me. And How many people didn't get it? I don't know. Two. Wait, um, have you shown the chat the thumbnail? Oh, have you right. shown them? You it's a <laughs> It's a lie. <laughs> what other lies have the Jedi told you? <laughs> so anyway, you look you look so <laughs> mildly distraught with the revelation. Me? Now I know it's untrue. Right. I have nothing to worry about. Of course, because I know that these are lies. God, I hate this movie so fucking much. <laughs> By the way, uh, you were talking about the prequels there, and I just, like, yeah. it feels like it's fueled his perspective on Kenobi to some degree. Um, mm. Which is okay, yeah. Absolutely they have. I just, uh... Because, like, yeah, I'll just I'll say it's like, Kenobi's worse than the prequels. Simple as that, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. Yep. Yeah. You just wish it was done differently, right? 
Like Obi Wan could have been a great character. He could have been, yeah. I mean, in well, that's that's why I was interested in this show because I I think they had the right actor in what could have been the right part, and it was like a wasted opportunity. This show was a chance to do more with him, and they've kind of done that. They have done more with it. They're not. They've definitely they done more with him. him. They, uh, yeah, they've, they've definitely they've added. More with him, yeah. They have, but it, they uh, have given him additional I, traits, uh, for sure. All good ones, right? Oh, totally. Suitable ones. <laughs> meaningful ones. Smart. They're doing terribly much, but they've done a lot more with it. Yeah, I like I like the restraint. It's, where... it's, it's... They restrained for five Not... minutes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they restrained themselves for five minutes, yes. Mm. He's, he's, he's out of touch with being a Jedi, Why? he's trying to move like a little tiny thing. He, he, he never, he doesn't take his lightsaber out for three episodes. He doesn't, he doesn't do the Oh, so that's what we're saying is restraint, I see. Um, but what he, about when it doesn't make any fucking sense? Like, does that present any issues? Like, yeah, it's really, nah. it's a really weird form of restraint and like, holding off on his lightsaber when he should have been taking it out. Mm -hmm. It's like, just, it's like having him hold off on speaking the whole time. It's like, okay, How okay. restrained. I mean, why? <laughs> It's like failing a math test and telling your teacher that I was just being very restrained. Dude, it was, was so really, fucking restrained. really holding myself it was, back. Really it was so myself. restrained. They didn't even show Obi Wan wearing clothes until Episode Five. <laughs> nice. It was a risky move, but they pulled it off. Force mind trick on the stormtroopers on the bus. You know, mm. like yeah, that was he, was the, uh, he probably knows he can't yet. He's lost because he knows he can't yet. But why? Okay. Because why? he's sad. How, why have you said this so confidently? Why have we all know. just we, decided think... it totally makes sense that he just can't use the force? When did this happen? I don't know. The, the way I, I remember, Obi-Wan is like incredibly powerful Jedi. So I, I don't believe yeah. he just forgets all of his fucking force powers. Let's not forget, he's he is refused insane. from accessing them by something. Until he isn't. Yeah. Yeah, there's no reason. The oh, it's so annoying. Truly, tis. You know, mm. like he was in the. He probably knows he can't yet. He's those lost aren't his, the droids you're looking for. He's no. lost his mojo. Well, yeah, maybe he can't even Why? do it, and then so, or he's he's so hesitant to use any force power ever for, to set on a red flag. It feels that that could have been part of the reasoning, but it's not in the show, as far as I know. It's not the reasoning in the show. Mm -hmm. Would have been cool if they explored that, because him not using the force seems like a really big deal. That oh yeah, they we explain. We talked about how it would be cool. To not not have him use the force, but to make it so that he can only ever use it very subtly. Uh, and, yeah, and he has in to stay ways. under the radar. Yes, mm. he can be it's doing like things, but his use of the force needs to be clever and subtle. But a both. Right, right, and then so that's that's some interestingness going yes! on. I mean, I, again, the bar is so low in television. I'm, so low. I'm just scrambling for anything. No, all that stuff is genuinely interesting. Yeah. That's what's weird, though, is it's the it? contrast. Like, uh, what's the fact that he's not able to use the Force and the fact that... That's just genuinely interesting? Uh, and you I can't even, you don't even know why? I don't think you could say that it is innately interesting. You would have mm. to, there would have to be more than that to it. And at that point, you wouldn't even be describing the idea itself. You'd be describing the execution of the idea. You can make an interesting story, of course, about an Obi Wan who cannot use the Force, yeah, because of whatever Absolutely reason. Absolutely, you could. You would have to really explain why this is the case and why this. We don't makes really any spend any time change. on it. We no, spend very because we got plot. We got planets to we do go have after, plot, and... which is crazy when the plot feels like so little has happened. It's, we got it's planets so to odd. go to and Leia's to get, and things that happen, but nothing really happens between that and the like awkward cheapness the awkward cheapness <laughs> is great <laughs> it, it, it. it's it's a it's a right, it's a benefit right. it's a positive because it's not watching them fight on mustafar for because there's nothing minutes. else there's why do we keep doing that why do we keep going back to the mustafar fight so weird why did why are these our only two choices mm -hmm. well he like he said earlier what else can you do with there's an obi-wan show this is this is all you could have done the only thing they could have done is what, what they did on do, or a six-episode oh, no. ah. six season that is just Mustafar fight. I mean, our first episode watching Kenobi definitely didn't end with us talking about potential alternatives for 20 minutes off the top of our heads. That definitely didn't happen. No, what else could they have done? 
oh, spectacular what a, show. I was thinking about that when I was watching The Northman. Uh, I was going to bring this up. I think oh, I mentioned in, in my review of the Revenge of the Sith where it's like, all we need is 30 seconds of them fighting on the lava planet. And the end of the North Men, yeah. it's like perfect. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, he shows up and he's like, Bleh. I don't understand what like, the perfect amount of time for a fight is. I don't know that that's the thing. Yeah, I, I think that's just, you guys have a preference and that's totally fine. A lot of people would have a preference, so that's totally fine. I, I don't know that... Well because because I get th there is a conversation to be had about how long like how how to I guess effectively do action in a story and I think um there's something to be said about when action is almost hitting the break like that when action is when action is advancing character at the same time you're doing a really good job and when action is just action it's like time that's passing but it's kind of just spectacle. There's, there's not really much going on narratively. But at the same time, I don't know that you can say that that's necessarily a bad thing. Rather, it's an inefficient usage of time. I wonder if they think that the... Uh, do they think the Achilles and Hector fight was too long? Well, what about uh, the two girls that fight in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon? That's quite a long fight. But I'm pretty sure well, everyone it thinks that fight's amazing, so... Well, exactly, because usually people will, if the fight's really cool, I mean, when Daredevil's fighting in the hallway, that's like a good three minutes of just him fighting guys. Would it be better if it, we only had 30 seconds? It's like, well, if you do that, you lose him getting tired, which is one of the fun parts of that fight, is that he's getting hurt, he's getting tired. This isn't easy. Um, or like, again, in season three, when it's like a 12 minute long sequence of him getting out of the jail. You're advancing character. I mean, of course, you are advancing character while that's happening anyway, but you could be like, well, you could always cut it down. It's like, I guess you could, but why, though? you got to give me some some reason to cut down yeah. on cool. Hmm. I like mm -hmm. cool yeah. fights, you know? I like, yeah. I like oh, yeah. It's good to have a really well-choreographed mm -hmm. spectacle that, you know, really establishes the power level of characters and what they can do and how much punishment they can handle. That's it's fun to watch. The Vega people, Luke fight is pretty long, isn't it? Yeah, I've seen some people referencing that in chat. The Bespin fight for them two is quite long. Yeah. Now, they are talking to each other, but again, they do what? talk to each talking. other on Mustafar as well. So, you can't... <laughs> it's not great dialogue by any stretch of the imagination. They sort but of like, say things that they should be saying. Well, they of, say yeah. exactly what they mean. That's the problem. Everybody says exactly what they mean in the prequels. My point of view, the Jedi are evil. That is such a bad line. <laughs> you have done that <laughs> yourself. Mm-hmm. The other guy's like, Brr! and then they, they clang swords for like a minute and a half. And then there's some stabbings and yeah. beheadings, and then it ends. <laughs> Anakin wasn't nude when they were fighting, though. No, they so weren't. that was a little they, different. They didn't but... strip down their nude, nudies. <laughs> they should have been. And, but, yeah. but. They didn't have to flip around on giant things yeah, melting in lava falling. Just, like, what else can you conclude? They just keep being like, yeah, it's not the prequels, though. It's like, what does that have to do with it? All right. Off. Surfing on hovers. Oh, yeah, they jump on those. It was so stupid. Oh, God. It was, it was, and so when, when Vader and Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan's like, oh, my God, what? Vader's here? Well, he, he probably doesn't even know what his suit looks like. He's saying, probably sensed yeah, no, that it was he... Anakin. He's like, oh my god, you look like a robot monster. <laughs> and then uh, Obi-Wan just is like, oh my god. And then they, they, they hit, hit the swords. And like you said, Vader's, he doesn't, he, he was fighting one-handed. Yeah. I noticed that. And he, he did that in Empire. Yeah. He fought Vader always one fights one-handed. What does that got to do with anything? <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? It, it is cool. Um, he fights with one hand because he's that good at it. Because he it's wasn't cool. trying to kill Luke. So he's just like, eh. Mm, uh, I mean, killing Luke awesome. was definitely no, a like real a, possibility um, also in that fight. Fighting one-handed well, isn't like a more skillful thing or anything. Um, I, I, well, you I have more strength just, than you kind of of hit with two, or at least you can you can uh, hold well, more I mean, strength with two hands. That makes perfect right? sense to him, because, you know, he's got them robot arms. Well, actually, is this right arm the robot one, or is it the left? Both. I think, uh, aren't they all robot arms yes. by the end? No, I think I he has yeah, one, one remaining. He has one real yeah. arm. No, 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 no he doesn't. What are you guys talking in about? The, uh, in in oh, the, uh, no, because he gets oh, one Oh, yeah, because in Attack, Attack of the Clones. Of the clones. I am, yeah, yeah, I am yeah. distraught. Yeah, right. yeah, they're not <laughs> true Star Wars nerds. Why, why are you distraught? I agreed with you. Why would you include yourself in the they that... Alright, okay. 
It's right, obviously not you. So, okay, so Jay, so in Attack of the Clones, he gets one arm chopped off, and then in yes. Revenge of the Sith, the other three limbs get chopped off. His right. robot arm is there. He doesn't chop off his robot arm. Yeah, there's a scene of the robot arm like pulling through the dirt to crawl. Apparently, to I said they become lava. all arms. Is that what I said? <laughs> <or> all <laughs> arms. <laughs> they they just put, instead arms. of giving him robot feet, they just attach robot arms <laughs> arm. to the bottom. Yeah. I'm more arms. robot ape than man now. I, uh, but it's okay. Now everyone knows. That's good. We're, we're, we're all cool. Yeah. So how many arms does he have now? I'm confused. Seven. He has four. Oh, okay, arms, that's fair. Not Six. four. All of them. Like, arms. I, you can't stop me. And he was doing the same thing with Obi Wan. Not and Obi Wan's like, oh my god. He doesn't feel like he has to put any effort into fighting yeah, him. Yeah, because he's Darth Vader. He really didn't. And he's gonna fucking lose to him in the next episode. So yeah. that's gonna loss. Yeah, not a comment. Be, so I guess they'll hate that, or or they'll or they'll love it. I don't know. I, I don't um, really know. To be honest with you, I don't know what but we're gonna think of it when we see it. Because I, as if you would ask me without any meta knowledge of anything else while watching this show, I'd be like, if they're gonna fight again, how the fuck is Vader gonna lose? This guy is so powerful, and he's like dominated well, yeah, he could Obi Wan. Yeah, just use the Force to rip the hulls from spaceships apart. He's like, like he cannot it, lose anymore. And Obi Wan is That's this like shitty Jedi. Like like Vader's gonna have no problem with him, but somehow he's got to lose to him. That's what we're gonna get. And he wasn't really trying to kill Obi Wan, but um, and so yeah, that I'm just wasn't trying that. to kill him, but he fucking threw him into. I just hate the fact that everybody has fucking agreed apparently that being put into flames just doesn't really do much to you at all. Like, it's like a fucking mass hysteria by now. You know, oh, it's yeah, getting it weird because like <laughs> putting you in a in a fucking barbecue as if as though like I'll pop you here for about twenty seconds. That should annoy you. It's like <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, you correct. That does annoy me. It'll annoy me. Just fighting for a minute and then him running away. I was like, that's great. I don't know. I kind of love it. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you, Mike. This is this is a triumph. It's a triumph for Star Wars. <laughs> it's a triumph for Star Wars. It's not... hmm. Stop. Okay. You're breaking my heart. <laughs> Give it through. It's, it's a beat. Beat. Actually, no, no, <laughs> God. Considering all of the the horse shit that Star Wars has been this since the nineties. I don't no, know why, why you, there. this is horseshit too. What do you mean? This is horseshit. Yeah. It is, it is, it is equine droppings. Why have you separated out Kenobi from all the other horseshit examples? Like, why, why is it any better than Rise of Skywalker exactly? And I imagine they'd say like, well, that movie was fucking dumb. Palpatine came back and I'll just be like, Grand Inquisitor? I don't know, that's still pretty dumb, wasn't it? There's going to be like compa comparisons you can make, but I don't, I don't get it why the line was drawn. Yeah. This is a triumph! I, I would say that the Mandalorian is a much better example of what you could do uh, in this universe. Uh, with... He's gonna... <laughs> uh, what are you about to say, uh, actually? And... A better example of what you can do in this universe in with... This kind of budget. Hang on. That's a genuinely... Oh. The first season of that show is genuinely good. Yeah. No, Th it's this terrible. Oh, no, oh, no. no. <laughs> Because I, I was about to say, you know what? You might have a point that, like, in terms of scope, Mandalorian is smaller, uh, you know, maybe. And then, but then he said it was good. <laughs> we, we don't have spaceships be being fair, ripped apart by the Force. We have a very unpopular take that season one of Mando's bad. But we're that's correct, right. Mahler. I believe, I think it's just as badly written as anything else people would say is badly written. So I agree with you, Rex. But I, I just, I don't know. I was... <sighs> Because I like bad. that he specified it, because everyone seems to agree that season two is bad, and it's like, season one has all the same fucking writing problems, I don't know what we're really doing does. to separate them, but okay. show is, is, is crap, and it's sporadically entertaining. Uh, but but it, it is going back to the roots a little, and you could say that it's Ooh. rehashing. Going back to the roots. I don't... I don't know what you mean, but that's okay. <laughs> Uh, but but it, it is going back to the roots a little, and you could say that it's rehashing because that's your big complaint with Star Wars is that it's uh, creatively bankrupt, and yeah. this is proof that that's true, because the the only thing they could think of to do is we're hunting down Obi Wan, and uh, we got to rescue little Leia from a space you prison, say that was which the is the only thing you could have done. Yeah, didn't they say that? What else are you gonna do? Yeah. And I, wait, didn't Rich say that that was like the way to go? Yeah, that's the way to go with Leia. Yeah. 
the fucking New Hope, essentially. Yeah. And it's the well, same yeah, thing. Well, yeah, that episode four is basically them yeah. on the Death Star. Wherever, yeah. Or them on, yeah, the Death Star. So it's, uh, but... Like, there's, a, there's a couple of differences I would point out, but I understand what you're saying. Like, that's what it is. But I'm entertained, and I'm not sitting there miserable. It's, that, it's that's different That's another benefit enough. to the first Definitely season of The Mandalorian, me. though, is that it's not... I, I was going to say, what if someone was like, I was entertained by Picard? How would they react to that? Just be like, well, that's... I'm sure they'd say, like, well, that's fine. That's fine. And just be like, okay, cool, I guess. That's that. Yeah, I mean, good for I mean, it's you, still a storm, or still a Boba Fett looking character, but it's new characters. Right. It's just set in that world. But yeah. now he's we're sort back, of a character, so. and he's new, yeah. but he's terrible. It's just mm. funny because the he's opening episodes bad. were the most of him being a character, I guess, because it's just gone by the time mm -hmm. he hit season two. Well, earlier, obviously, but still. I feel sorry for people who like Mandalorians because the show makes them look like a bunch of fucking loser weirdos. You know, right, right, baby right. Leia and all that. Oh, so. season one of The Mandalorian was better than this. Yes, uh, but if they... I don't know if I'm ready to. I don't know. Wait. I probably maybe. maybe the fact that we're only five episodes into this and I'm seriously thinking about it may mean something, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure. I'm I don't really know. not sure. Yeah, I, I think gun to my head, I would say Mando season one's better, but I think play. so. Just because it didn't I destroy Obi Wan, I guess. <laughs> tentatively. It didn't destroy yeah, a bunch of legacy really characters. Yeah, it, it didn't have too much of a. I mean, it was, yeah, it was Boba Fett that continued to ruin Luke Skywalker. Mm -hmm. If they do a season two, then uh, it's going to be a member berry uh, nightmare world of Darth Mauls and. I don't, I don't understand how this isn't already that. This member berries. Because when there's like no meaning behind all the references they throw in, it's just like. What what are you here for exactly? It's like well, Ewan McGregor's Obi Wan. That's cool. Uh, Empire. He he was commenting on how he likes the stormtroopers just being there in practical armor, and it's like okay, nice. Just like nineteen seventy seven. Yeah. Everything coming back, and uh, it'll be they'll fuck it up. Is what I'm trying to say. So enjoy this. You just did you say it was terrible already? <laughs> like, say that it's a guilty pleasure, but that they'll fuck it up. I don't understand. Yeah, first I'm little confused. chunk of Obi-Wan fun and move on with your life. If you like Obi-Wan, <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. hate this show. This show craps all over Obi-Wan. Well, they, they, they want to change him because they thought he was crap. Or at least Rich thought Obi-Wan was crap as he stood with uh, the prequels. I guess if you can recontextualize everything as your superpower, then you could say, no, this show's totally great for Obi-Wan. This is just really awesome what they did for Obi-Wan and his character. It's really good, guys, actually. <laughs> That's what you know. They'll 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 screw something up. Thumbs up, I guess. <laughs> thumbs up. No thumbs down. All the way down. Rich, the, in this know, video. the Roman Emperor. <laughs> That's true. When it comes to Star Wars stuff, you're you're the most cynical and removed from it. So. Well, here's the thing: the things I li tend to like with Star Wars, all the Star Wars fans hate. Star Wars. <laughs> well. <laughs> You think, I mean, do you think this is, show's good? Yes, this or, one counts, like, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's true. And when Star Wars fans hate something... That's like everybody hated uh, I love uh, what they did with Luke in The Last Jedi, yeah. even though it was the most interesting thing in the movie. Is things can be interesting in shit, Jay. I, why is this so hard why to explain? Why do you explain? think that interesting just equals good? <laughs> like, well, it's interesting. That was good because it's... In interesting can be shit. You can have things that are safe and predictable, but they could be executed really well. Interesting doesn't, sub it's like subverting expectations doesn't equal good. It would be interesting for the rebels to make use of the locals on a planet to subvert the Empire. Now, mm -hmm. the way that they do it in Return of the Jedi isn't exactly what you might consider well executed, but it was an interesting idea. It was interesting. Lots of interesting ideas out there. I'm sure the baseline fucking idea for Jurassic World Dominion is interesting, but uh, can't imagine the film was well executed. That's just my uh, my theory. Movie uh, everybody was upset about that. So yeah. I think there's complaints bad? about this show too, kind of doing to Obi Wan what they did to Luke and Yep, 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 <laughs> Last Jedi, mm. where he's like a loser. It's like, well, you gotta have somewhere for him to go. Oh but Jesus no, Christ! I, this was, this <laughs> is. You know, Mahler told me before uh, we started that I needed to watch this to be familiar with the material. 
All right. And I well, this is one of the things that I wrote down on my little notepad that Jay implies you have to make characters losers so they have a place to grow. Oh, yeah. I hate it so much. It. He I mean, guess it. he did. He just said, said it. it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't do that. I, uh... Uh, I hate it so much. You just have to make characters losers if you want them to grow. Well, where else could he go? The will's your oyster know. with a character like that. You can take him all kinds of directions. We even said you might be able to get away with some of the broader stuff like he doesn't engage with the Jedi Order or he, he secludes himself. We could maybe try and write that, but that was on the outskirts of your options. You have a bazillion other options and ones that are much more likely to take place that you could engage with first that give him new challenges and make him grow Absolutely. in different ways. Why is it... a practically uncountable amount of options. What he said is as baffling to me as someone being like, wait, Raimi's making a Spider-Man 4? Well, I hope he doesn't fucking care about the whole responsibility line. We've done that three films now. It's time he, he needs to go somewhere else. He needs to learn different yeah. things. If you want Peter to grow, the only way to do that is to tear him down in the most ridiculous way possible and turn him into a loser. It's like, why so grow, in the you know? world would you think that this is the way to do it? And, and that's the justification. I just don't get it. People can grow in just like sort of a um, like a gentle curve of character. Like not everything they learn has to because it has to be because you've torn them down through some tragedy or you've made them completely incompetent and worthless. They could just here's a new perspective. Huh. I hadn't considered that. Interesting. Yeah. I'll take that into uh, consideration as I move forward. No, none of that. Well, you know what? Not just I actually rip them um, away from everything. Like, oh, just get rid of all of his powers so we can get them back. Have him start for no reason. Shields or like, like we didn't, we, we didn't need someone new for him to go. We needed him to be in between New Hope and yeah, return like Revenge of the Sith. We we knew where he was. Like we could have had some pretty good guesses of where it would be. And and let's be honest, it's been ten years. He could have already resolved that. He could already be like, super close to the Ben from episode four at this point. You have a lot of freedom. It would have been it would it would be yeah. nice to see him resolve that. You know, it would be really nice to see him really well. You could, well, yeah, yeah. I think from, like, I assume what Rags is saying though is that you have all these different options. You can pick whatever timeline yeah, you really yeah. want. And Absolutely, I mean, yeah. I, yeah. I wasn't disagreeing with that. No, yeah. yeah well, so, well, you you said like we don't have to do that. That's implicit in Rags' statement. You fucking noob. Whoa, gonna, okay, calm down. I'm gonna violate yeah, TOS. Metal. Oh no! Oh no, just do it! Uh, though, I guess what, what I can't help but uh, think about is how much I do actually agree with Jay. Uh, the, the Jay from the video. And I was thinking about how oh, that would be great wow. to do to someone like uh, Jean-Luc Picard, you know? There's nowhere really for him to go at the end Absolutely. of TNG. Yeah. We need to bring yeah. him down. Yeah. We need him to understand that he was actually wrong about a whole bunch of things. He's gone on some journeys, some lessons. I think that there's this neat little show out there, a lot of people don't know about it, called Picard, that actually explores oh. a lot of this. And a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to see Picard being, like, overt or violent or weird or out of care. It's like, he's an old man, okay? He's old. <laughs> and I need you to understand that there was nowhere else they could take him while progressing yes. the character and having him grow. I think that was the way to go with Picard, actually. Mm -hmm. So you know how painful that is now. Yeah. <laughs> the Jedi have to grow throughout the the season. All have or creepy you don't cult have personalities. To. Yeah. And oh yeah, that's the that's the the fucking thing of just like why the hell did, did what if we had a season where he wasn't growing? Does that mean everyone just dies? Can we not actually watch that show? Is that an impossibility? What if, yeah. What if he's just like most people who are kind of static? And yeah. it's about the challenges they face and how they overcome them with their current tool set like the current mindset the current everything about them is what they have to use to their in i know it's typical in a story that at the end they go what did the character learn but by gum i think we can actually make a show where what they learn doesn't change them fundamentally yeah <sighs> you need to do something to make them interesting and having them fallen that's interesting and yeah. that's oh god maybe you know having or them stalwart not. in the face of Don't harsh adversity is also interesting that's such a basic ass take. Like it really is. Not necessarily. It's like it. You know what? That, you know what that reminds me of. Like you know what would be really uh, interesting and subversive is if we made like a Superman character, but he was a dick. Hmm. 
Ooh, wow. Really Aren't you clever? Wow, yeah. Ooh, look at wow. You that does no one thought of this before? You know what's funny, oh. especially considering the visual they're using here, is that if he said to me, like, while we're talking, it's like, I'd say that the fallen hero is fundamentally interesting and it's always going to be something that will be enjoyable to watch or something like that. I would probably cite this as the key example of that being untrue. People did not like this. This was the mo this is the single most damaging thing that ever happened to Star Wars. This right here. <laughs> this Luke move. character they had in TLJ. I Rags? Yeah. I think it might be the prequels actually. Just because no, heavy dis yeah? Like, there was a reason, right? Okay. Um, not because I think they are, in terms of story, anywhere near as bad as other things that have happened since, but because they made it so that half of uh, Star Wars didn't really um, adhere to the same standards as the originals, or well, more than half if we include stuff from Return of the Jedi, which means that um, now a lot of the Star Wars fandom expects stuff that just is on par with the prequels. They they expect it to be shit. Like it's the since then a lot of Star Wars media has been shit. So fans just expect shit and they like it when it's shit. I think that the I understand what you're saying, but I I feel like the Clone War or it's not the Clone Wars the um, the prequel that the, those movies spawned an entire era and renewed interest in Star Wars. That was nothing but blanket not only... pretty much. Not only Good is that true, franchise. but a lot of people who hate the sequels are people who are like, yeah, the prequels are actually good, though. Yeah. There's a lot of people who think that the prequels uh, no, are way better I think, than they actually are. I think a lot of those people, though, are then going to, like, are then going, like, Mandalorian, though, Kenobi, Book of Boba Fett, now they're getting it right. Um, I think that's fair to a degree, though. So you think in the alternate universe where the prequels never happened and we went straight to the sequels and the Disney shows and stuff that all... Because I think there's a good well, chance that they would have hated the sequels still, but then they may have liked something like Mandalorian anyway. Even more than that, um, an alternate universe where the prequels are, like, the same as the OT in terms of quality. And in I, terms of, like, style as well. They look at the, the, the CGI fests. I, th I actually thought the biggest component for people liking The Mandalorian wasn't because the prequels had put the bar low or anything, it's because the sequels were so hideously bad that something that resembles, like, mediocrity was actually a breath of fresh air and people loved it for that alone. Like, it was the sequels that set the stage for something crappy to make it into almost god tier. Maybe. I, I totally know, I just, understand your so point, much. Jay. Yeah. I, I see the line of reasoning, but I still think that the... And I plus, guess... in comparing single thing to single thing, I don't know if the prequels can be considered a single thing compared to the treatment of a character in a film. The, but... well, the place this um, this comes from is having had like two consecutive days of people saying, actually, Kenobi is good. It's very similar to the prequels, which is why it's good. I'm like, no. Well, okay. Yeah, it's, it's funny like, to me because... It's definitely worse than the prequels, but yeah. like... Uh, well, even then, like, yeah. it being... It being because the most common ones are like people saying stuff from a fat menace, Phantom Menace, and Attack of the Clones. Still fat menace. Specifically, <laughs> no fat <Batman> Specifically, <laughs> I had people say like it's goofy, and Star Wars has had loads of goofy stuff in action scenes before, and oh, then cite like the fucking um, head not bonk. not the stormtrooper head bonk. Ah, oh, damn it. Um, they cited C three PO getting his head switched with a battle droid in the uh, Attack of the Clones Jedi battle. Remember how great that scene is, gang? I don't understand. I remember why... how much everyone loves it. And every, and then people also cited a lot. People cited the um, scene of Jar Jar fumbling around on the battlefield and accidentally destroying loads of battle mm. droids in that in the okay. in the Gungan battle droid battle. No, like, so they just bring up a bunch of Star, Star Gun... Wars has always been like this. <laughs> This is what we expect from these. See, these now I completely now. understand your perspective because, yeah, like the OT, they run out of references real fucking quick, especially if they're not allowed access to Return of the Jedi. But, um, so what happens with the OT is they go like they have like two joke references, right? You refute them because it's probably like the one of Han saying, like, How are you? and you like bring up the points. That's like that actually still works as a scene, though, it doesn't compromise the scene. Because mm -hmm. the Empire responds as they should respond, and that sounds yeah. like something Han Solo would say in that situation. And he clearly knows that he exactly. fucked up once he says it. it. It's it's humorous and it fits everything in the world. Like it, it's no one's ruined. Hooray! Um, 
and then after that they'll just bring up like bad writing like just like hey um it's isn't it bad how like you know um or like just even perceived bad writing so they're like isn't it bad how luke is able to pilot an x-wing expertly on his first go even though there are several references to him being a successful like a, a, an experienced pilot in the film but like they they don't they ignore those right Oh, course, isn't it isn't it stupid like that that happens how come that's not the same and like okay so it isn't. You, before, just before now you were defending like humor like star wars has always been goofy and silly and it doesn't need to take itself like that seriously how is that like goofy and silly rather than just like something not being written that well it's because it, it's, it's not it's oh, not goofy and silly you? it's just poor writing and why are if, you if they were right something that you think would be silly or not good to prove the point when i thought the whole point yeah. was that it's okay for it to be silly and funny or the, the point like, the point is that by that point they've taken it to a place of like they've they've revealed their true colors and saying that oh, bastards. then they're not uh they're not arguing that like it's okay for star wars to like um just be goofy and silly like that's the point of star wars it's not a serious thing it's just goofy and dumb They've 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 moved beyond that to just saying okay Working I don't mind bad writing things. that's the point at that point mm. I don't mind when there are problems in it and that's fine but just like admit that well, there's still problems yeah because people sure yeah. as hell they don't bring up like, all the dark moments and serious moments no. tonally in Star Wars well, no because like, cause like in no way is like a um, a writing issue I really wish I had a better like because there was a Another example I remember being brought up that was like, that's a great concrete example of like, that clearly is not like goofy in tone. It doesn't improve the story in any way. You have just highlighted a problem with the writing. And it's like, you're just going, I don't care that it's bad. I don't care that this is an issue. It's like, there's no way that anyone believes that that problem made the film better. They're just saying that they don't care, which is fine. Yeah. But shut up, like yeah, just admit it. <laughs> if there's been problems in the past, then fuck it. It's all on the table. It's all okay. Everything's fine. That's why Ryan Johnson stole my idea <laughs> and didn't give me any credit for it. But it's also what all the Star Wars fans seem to hate. Yeah. So I get the bitching about it. <laughs> Yeah, I think they're finding a common ground here. Where yeah, common ground. Uh, Damn it. Common ground. <laughs> or, you know, Luke Skywalker never fought with a lightsaber in The Last Jedi. In the, in the, the okay. sequel trilogy. Yeah. yeah. His, just a projection. Uh, you can have a whole movie where Luke Skywalker doesn't fight with a lightsaber and it's still be good, okay? That's not the fucking problem. A projection of him did. Yeah, have you heard <laughs> of so A that, New yeah. Hope? A New Hope didn't become... Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good point. Yeah, that's where... So Obi-Wan is both fallen and uh, kind of pathetic, but at the same time, he's still swinging his saber around and chopping up stormtroopers. He's so. trying to get his... I don't... I don't even know what... Okay. At least he's chopping down stormtroopers, everybody. Yeah. Okay. Oh, um, I thought that was... Is Jay going to push back on that? Because oh, I thought that would be they're, something they're, Jay wouldn't like. Obi-Wan got his mojo back. <laughs> so that would be a better episode, name for the, 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 the series. Yeah. How Obi-Wan got his mojo back. Yeah, it's great. so, so they're, they're, they, they found that line. They're like, fans want to see Luke Skywalker chop up stormtroopers and <laughs> save the day, not be a ghost. <laughs> the, but he, the, he can't be a just boring, die. emotionless motherfucker either. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I don't have any Who? specific predictions. Oh, I guess he thinks that that's what Obi Wan is. Also, well, a is boring, it, emotionless motherfucker. I think he's saying that that's actually something he enjoyed about Luke. That the fans are upset they didn't see Luke destroying things, and so now we've got a compromise where Obi Wan is the sad, annoying piece of shit loser, but also he's still chopping up some stuff. So that means everyone's pleased now, except us. Except <laughs> yeah. us. On a we... little island of sanity. Yeah. Normally, I there's so little story Luke to the show that I don't really care. Sense. That's why I mean, this is that's kind of why it works in a way. It's just it's just simple it fun. Works because it doesn't it's not, have a story. It's not trying what? to do too much. It's not trying it's to do succeeding. too much. I would say it's trying to do a lot. It yeah, thinks like it's it very weighty and hefty. Like what was mm -hmm. that video that was on the EFAP suggestion that it's a masterclass in trauma? Oh God. <laughs>
Like, Obi-Wan well, because you got to remember, people will simultaneously bomb. defend Star Wars any problem you point out with bonk on the head, but these people will turn around and praise any perceived effort by Star Wars to get really deep. And exactly. you can't have it both ways. You got to pick one. Are we going to take it seriously, or are we going to be goofing and gaffing? And we're um, just sitting here saying it can have and both. In the case tones, of this show, you can absolutely are. have both of them. It's a balance. But in this case, yeah. I would say that Obi Wan's object. Deborah Chow said that it was going to be like Joker and Logan. Um, <laughs> uh, like, what I the hell? Or, Looking back on that, so, uh, holy fuck. It's, yeah, it's worth noting, because the, the context of the quote is, oh yeah, no, it's like those in that you're focusing in on one character and expanding and giving them the time they need. That reads to me like a real attempt to do an introspective story. If this, uh, like, what it seems like is that these, um, the impression the Rich has come away with is, oh yeah, it's meant to be like some goofy bullshit. When I bet you that's not what they intended. Like, oh, you are absolutely that, right. Like all exactly, of the quote unquote yes. praise in terms of their enjoyment on an emotional level that they've given. I think the writers would be distraught hearing this. I think they would be. I think it's um. I I kind of like to think about that when people well, defend something by saying it's shit, dumb, you know, sludge. Well, yeah, not the writers sludge, are standing there. Going, hey. The writers are standing there in the corner. No, it's it's the uh, it's the in Simpsons, the Native American man. He turns around and the tear goes down. <laughs> oh yeah, like the commercial. <laughs> cheek. Yeah. That is, that is assuming that they care. Like the, the writers. I think care they about care. This. I, I think they, they care. care. I do think I they, know, care. I think they I care. I just don't too. think they're very good at their job. <laughs> like, yeah. that's, that's well, and I think it's. I do think they care though. I I would actually go as far as saying I think they're excellent at their job when they care about the actual uh like IP being destroyed. Mechanic. Oh, okay. Because their logic here is that Star Wars is done, but the weird part is like, <laughs> yeah, but Star Trek is done, and you're still going on that, so. It must be like this difference in approach of there are a lot of Star Wars fans who were waiting for them to rip apart Kenobi the same way they rip apart Picard. And that's why this video had so many requests for coverage, because it's just like this came out of fucking nowhere. But for Red Letter Media, mm. this didn't come out of nowhere at all. They were just like, yeah, Star Wars is kind of shit. Let's check this show out. Oh, I enjoy like practical sets and lightsabers cutting down some stormtroopers. This is OK. And then they comment on all the stupid shit and they're like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's, it's a weird one. <laughs> it's just like, like they uh. like it, but they don't like it. And they seem to be vaguely aware of some of the uh, the canon breaks. And to be fair, I've cut a lot out of the supercut. Doesn't include a lot of the complaints they had that we all share. But the thing yeah, is, yeah. those are taken into consideration. Then he says, you know, the show is super okay. It's a triumph, which is so odd. But there we are. Triumph. So yeah, to clarify, I don't think they care about Star Wars as much as they do Star Trek, but I do think they would Trek. care about the writers hearing that they thought their show was good because of how stupid and fun it is. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I think the writers would be like, oh. oh <laughs> yeah. Wait, did you say stupid? Oh, okay. Stupid? <laughs> yeah, uh, no, that's not, no, oh. Whatever you it's do, fun. don't turn around. Doesn't make it very, uh... uh... uh Engaging, to, like oh, I wonder what's gonna happen next. I don't really care. I'll continue watching it. It's watchable. Yeah. It's super but, okay. Yeah, it's super yeah. bad. Check it out, everybody. It's super <laughs> oh, no. okay. I don't know for whatever reason. I'm just. I just. I'm not. I, I don't know. That that's. I certainly don't think that's what Jay thinks. Um, well, you just. How can you not say like he just feels awkward in this one because he's clearly if I he was that, um, if he was with two people who absolutely shat on this show he would be slightly pulling away likely. from that perspective. He would be like, yeah, it is terrible, but like it's not the worst thing ever. That's probably what he would be saying. Yeah. Um. No, it's just a matter of trying to provide some level of balance, but I just don't think he wanted to go as far as pushing too far away from the what was the current vibe, which was that it was okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's it's just he is outnumbered in terms of his perspective <laughs> on this one, and I think uh, if you want to maintain a sort of um the tone of the show, well, yeah, and um, I think a lot of people would have expected that Rich and Mike would have hated it more than Jay. Um, so it's even mm -hmm. more bizarre when you think about it that way. Jay yeah. probably was surprised with their takes on it. That's weird. Hmm? This is weird. Yeah, I could see yeah. that. Yeah, that makes sense. J J he, c he comes just to the... To the <laughs> in the so office. Yeah, um, like, Man, that was shit, right? It's like, what are you talking about? I've seen a lot of people saying, oh, like... Okay. 
oh my god, like, why why would I ever watch these guys? And it's like, it's just it's just the one-off, okay? RLM are fun. They've, they yeah, are like legitimately great. very entertaining. I really love Best to the Worst, and some of the reviews oh, yeah. that they do I mean, are really there's, neat there's, to listen to. Like, the Plinkett reviews, they're, like, really good. <laughs> it's worth, it's, worth yeah, remembering We covered that. one for EFAP, and it was... Well, I mean, that was, was definitely, half, that was definitely know? one of the better... Uh, yeah. videos that we got to easily talk about on the offensive, yeah. easily. And he got things right and wrong, so that was uh, quite something. I find the way they talk about movies to be super interesting a lot of the time. I find them really funny. Mm -hmm. Best of the Worst is still pretty much flawless. I don't think there's ever been a bad Best of the Worst. Uh, no, I think they're always entertaining. And then, um, I was just thinking about it, and it's like, it's even way more than a decade, right? Like, how long have they been entertaining me? It's like, I think it has been, because 20, when did Prometheus come out? That was 10 years ago, right? 2012, yeah. So it was yeah, because it was ago. their Prometheus review that I remember, so it must have been before then. I don't know how long ago it was that uh, they released the prequel reviews, but I, I, was, I was watching them when they came out, so. Yeah, I don't know, they've, uh, they're an entertaining lot. I just think that they, they clearly just didn't give enough of a fuck about this. I, yeah, I, yeah that's, 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 that would you be... The impression is that how much do they really care about Star Wars now, you know? Weird. And like their comment Which section. Fine. If you don't care, that's totally fine. It's just yeah. Their comment section is filled with people basically saying like it's so clear that they are essentially nihilistic about media now and that they're enjoying shit that's <laughs> terrible because of Picard. It's like yeah, it seems like everybody understands that <laughs> my card broke them. <laughs> yeah, like and, and they everyone seems to understand. Kenobi is shit. It's weird that they've said what they've said, but that we can account for it with uh, their coverage of Picard. And it's like okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like yeah. this is one of the top comments. I feel like Rich's main argument in favor of the show can be condensed down to compared to a rancid puddle of diarrhea, it's really not that bad. <laughs> 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 yeah. Which I guess sums it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I suppose. Um, but yeah, that's it. We've covered we covered Red Letter Media Ooh. for the second time. Hooray! I, it. I did for the first time. Liar. Feels like the very yeah, same. It was the first time. time for me. Wow. Yeah, Theo was on the you, first one. Run around on the. It was our Avengers of the Sith coverage. You you popped your Red Letter Media apricot. And it, oh, it took us almost exactly five hours. Nice. Wow. Woo! Damn. Son. All right. Well, what's uh, what's the next video we're covering? Uh, I don't know. They call it I... Super Chats. That's the name of the yeah, video. Yeah. Super Chats. Is that the channel or? I think it's Chats. the channel and the video, and it's basically what? like it washed together. It's just totally broken. I'm gonna have to read out what it says. It's a text video. Man. Oh, okay. oh watch to get. Oh, okay. It's completely well, it seems broken. For me, I guess it's on your end. Yeah, just that's me. Okay, yeah. I suppose oh, well. weird stuff happens. You know, that's okay. Stranger things have indeed happened. Oh, that's like the show. <gasps> oh yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I I would like to give an opportunity just in case. Um, Jay Metal, if either of you would like to run away, I I, I think now is a perfect opportunity too because it's. You know, it's been it's been a long time. I wouldn't I wouldn't blame you. I wouldn't say horrible things about you once you leave or anything. Why not? Why not? What changed? I have no answer for that. <laughs> no, I don't want to wait for like two minutes and then come back. Um, if, if, no, anyone that's, that's leaves, one of the if anyone leaves a super chat, say about like how how amazing I am. Uh, they won't. Uh, you don't need to save it for me because you know I get those all the time. Uh, oh yeah, uh, of course. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, people tell me a lot about uh, my jokes are funny all the time. They say, hey, it was a really good joke. Yeah, the Titanic one was awesome. It was really good. Yeah. It's really it's good. Titanic failure. <laughs> Whoa. No! <laughs> you said you were oh, gone. except it wasn't. It was great. Well, yeah, if I, if I was gone when I said I was gone, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have heard me. Oh, man. You could have yelled I'm, it. I'm upset. I'm playing chess and I made a big mistake. I'm not happy about it. I told you not to do that. Mm -hmm. Make that mistakes or play chess. I told you not to make mistakes. Ah, Christ. It was the one, one thing Fringy didn't want that to one, do. That one, that one makes me, uh, that, that, was a, that was a blunder, that one. Oh, a blunder. Even. Oh, Damn, man. blunder, yeah. A blunder? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, what blunder, blunder, I, blunder, I've, blunder uh, ball. I feel like I should be a lot better at chess. I, I, I remember I played it um, at school. And I wasn't particularly great at it. I remember there was a tournament. 
it was a little chess tournament, but there were five people on our team and there were only four trophies. Uh, I was the worst performer on the team, so I didn't get a trophy when we won. Well, um, in a similar note, when I was in Boy Scouts, I attended a statewide chess tournament and I got fourth place, which hmm. is neat. That's that's really cool. I, I guess that's a similar story, but it's... Okay. It's a story of triumph. It's a story of triumph and failure, really. Honestly, <laughs> I have the played origin chess of quite... a super villain. <laughs> <laughs> Fringy becomes a chess themed villain. <laughs> chess -themed. <laughs> Why do you need a trophy? Well, I don't need a trophy. I guess it's more so that um, it's kind of funny that there would be five of us competing. Um, but if we won, the person who did the worst on the team wouldn't get a trophy. Why would you bring five people? Why wouldn't you just bring? Why would you just bring four? If that's a real probably, possibility, probably to fucking keep people on their toes. Like you might be the only one leaving here. Oh yeah, right. That's shit, a good incentive. So you better, that's you better really... perform. You don't want to be the one loser who go home goes home without a trophy. That's that's a fair point, honestly. <laughs> Oh, a, I don't want that to be a, me. I'm gonna study chess. Bringing childhood life. depression. I've mostly gotten over it. Mostly, mostly. It's not <laughs> all the way there yet. Destroy the it's gonna become, you'll become the castler or something like that, and you'll be a. Well, what about <laughs> the bishop? And the <laughs> like whole idea the is that he expects well, people to come bishop. at him from like different <laughs> dev devious different plans from the side. But then the yeah. the heroes realize at the end, if we just go at him head on, he'll never expect it. Well, unfortunately, mm. Mahler, uh, the bishop is already taken. That's a Monty Python sketch. You remember the bishop? You can get away with another one. I suppose <laughs> it's obscure now. You can have two bishops. Oh, that could be his name, two bishops, because each each side has two bishops. And you would have to, like, the, the he's about to win. For him, he's, he's, like, seconds away, and he says, like, checkmate. And then someone else says, oh, it's just check, sorry. and shoots him. Uh, Plague Creation <laughs> said, gay Fringy a check had passed. Oh, no, oh, that's that's pretty good. These Fringy stories are terrible. Again, wow, I think they're incredible. Fringy, Fringy can be put in this memes like this is where I would put my chess trophy if I would have got one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a per it's a permanently empty space, and the yeah. best part is that I dust it. I make sure that it's nice and clean always perpetually this never just <laughs> in that case one trophy day that i finally on claim way, the trophy yeah. I, w I have a dream when I, I i wake up and then i just look and the trophy's there and then it's like Burr! Oh, it's a nightmare <laughs> you know like you got all the sweat <laughs> going down the lightning outside and you just start crying <laughs> <laughs> bringing us to trophies I what obi-wan should have been to like the jedi something like that like the force i don't like i don't follow to, he needs to have like you're constantly chasing the trophy and so it consumes kind of your life and you fall into deep depression about uh, it i say and so obi-wan yeah. he's like lost his connection to the force or something we still haven't quite figured it out and <laughs> so he's focused and like he has nightmares about like anakin and the force and stuff and then instead of Qui-Gon coming to him in episode six, it is just like the king that you lost. It is specifically the king that got checkmated in that <laughs> game. And he's like, it's not your fault. Well, it was. It was entirely your fault. But <laughs> it's okay. Some You win a few, you lose a few. But to quote Gordon Gecko, you keep on fighting. Well, to quote him in totality, you win a few, you lose a few, but you keep on fighting. And then he says, it's okay. Don't hate yourself. You can get a trophy one day. Just practice. And then he disappears. Speaking of which, I've beaten this person by default. They just stopped playing. So I guess nice. I win. You win. See? Yeah. Never give up. The other person might quit. Well, to not only... Because there's a resign <laughs> button right there if you really want to get out. <laughs> like, <laughs> to... You know? Maybe he was oh. watching EFAP. And, and he was, he just, was like, oh my goodness. he heard my story. <laughs> <laughs> he heard my story and he decided to grant me this mercy. Yeah. I can't, I can't give you a trophy, but I, I can give you this win. I can yeah. give you this, this W. It's yeah. yours. Uh, so, shall I yeah, read so out the, the first one? Yeah. Very well. Here I go. Um, Do it. Digimon of the day is Diaboromon. Diaboromon? 
Hey, is this is this Let fun, lad? Diaboromon. Oh my goodness! Oh, oh I remember that one. What is that doing in a kid show? Why does he have a penis? I think that's a tail. Oh no! Is it? You're allowed to have a penis and be in a kid's show. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, Most people don't in show kids it to the probably kids. do have penis. That's true. That's us. <laughs> that's where we're going. Like, dude, well, Barney has a, or no, he's got a cloaca, right? Because he's a dinosaur. So you wouldn't really see it. Unless he got excited, I suppose. Oh, like, surely children. that's one of those things that we don't know about dinosaurs, because there's not, like, like no, I think fossilized you probably... dino cock. Well, there's, there's not... <laughs> well, I don't... First off, I don't know how hard those get. Second off, you could probably... You could probably come to some pretty educated conclusions based off of, like, evolutionary history and the pathways of a lot of genetic material. I mean, sure, and... but it is all still, like, speculation rather than stuff we know. Yeah, I'm. I'm sure there. There's probably it is. It is not a a, a a for certainty, but I have a feeling that there's probably a lot of good research and knowledge that goes into some of this kind of stuff. Like maybe they were this color, and this is what their diet probably was, and here's how tall they were. Like you could learn. You'd learn a lot about critters from, you know, the stuff they leave behind. The, the thing that's just like making me say this is like the feathers or no feathers controversy. Like, is that a controversy? Is, is it? it a controversy? I thought it was pretty established that they did, to settled. some degree, have essentially proto feathers. Yeah, which led into the evolution of the smaller ones eventually becoming birds. Maybe, or you say maybe that like the pterosaurs had feathers and some of the dinosaurs didn't, or because I'm pretty sure that a lot of them kind of did. They they had like beakish mouths and. Some feathery stuff. And... I think they look cooler with feathers. Is that controversial? I think that uh, I think that the Velociraptors yeah, with feathers look way cooler than the than the Jurassic Park. Ones. I think it I think depends the on the arrangement of cool, feathers. But... Yeah, they're, they're cool as as the the classical depiction is pretty cool and neat, but I think that it depends on how the feathers are arranged because you can make yeah, things sure. adorable and cute with feathers, but also you could make like an Archaeopteryx looking motherfucker, and he's he's just got all these. Like I'm gonna swoop in and get you, or, or like maybe the, yeah. I I feel like feathers can go either way in terms of intimidation, because there are um, like yeah, eagles sure. and things today that are very intimidating and they're covered with feathers. Oh yeah, eagles, eagles, fun are, uh, birds. eagles are cool as fuck. Eagles, eagles are very hawks, cool. birds of prey are awesome. Not the film. Vultures uh, are like uh, massive. What? What? You didn't like birds of prey? The fantabulous you know emancipation like, of one Harley Quinn. I didn't like birds of prey and the fantabulous uh, emancipation of one Harley. Quinn. Oh my goodness. <laughs> One day, our EFAP movies on that will come out. Mm -hmm. One day. <laughs> One day. <laughs> Castaway is cool. I'm yeah. sorry. Castaway is awesome. Um, I, uh, they're, they're super cool little <laughs> critics. Didn't RGB urinal? <laughs> Razor, Razor Gaming. Game. <laughs> RGP. Oh, you sneaky horsey. I see what you're trying to do. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to read the next one. Yep, go Oh, yeah, it. that's right. Let's get to the second to Super Chat. <laughs> First live EFAP since 160. I've missed catching these live. Hi, Rags. Oh, hello there. Thanks hello. for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed it. 160, that's only, what, like 35 times 4 ago? <laughs> I hope they didn't Wait. leave. Yeah, because they that's... hated 160 and they came back to this one just to see if we were <laughs> just to give us we a had chance. changed our ways. Yeah, and they ended up hating this one too. I don't even know what I was trying to figure prize. out with those numbers. It's been a while. That's all. How that's long like... ago it's been? Yeah, I don't know what metric I was actually trying to use. I think my brain ran away. But uh... one a week maybe is what you would have guessed. Times four. I don't think that would have been one a week, would it? No, wait, one a month. That'll be per month. No, wait. Too many numbers. They've clashed what together and they've all melted. Yeah. What were you using? I guess I'll never know, because I don't have the strange, answer. Strange, 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 uh, strange. Just pretend they were sheep and then count them. Yes. Today's animal of the day is the mandrill. I think people have asked us about this one before. The mandrill? Oh. The that mandrill? Sounds... Oh, these boys. Yeah, let me get you a picture here. You've seen these before. Let me get you an image here of a mandrill. Ah, oh, those guys. Well, bring it. We need animal. Oh, one of those. 
Look at him. <laughs> He's, uh, it's, I, I think I think they're cool. Yeah. This Wait, is I wouldn't mind having a chat with him. Just so we're clear, this is their this is their good side. I mean, just imagine oh, they having have a the big ass, ass, right? Oh, they 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 got, Christ, they, got yes. they got the the butt, yeah. Buttocks. All the better to sit down with. <laughs> yeah, I, I just look at look. I'm going through pick. What the fuck is happening here? My God! What the hell? I don't even. I like, I like how he's turning around to look at me. Yeah, he's like, "What are you looking at?" He's like, "I don't know. What am I looking at? What's happening back his, there?" His tail looks like Bad Dragon made it. Kind of. So anyway, finally like watched the new Harry Potter movie, and it was terrible. Matt Mickelson was good as always, and Dan Fogler too, but everything else was bad. Bad. I like how they said the new Harry Potter movie. That's the, <laughs> um... Fantastic. That's, is that the Dumbledore one? Like, the secrets of Dumbledore? Uh, yeah. So, um, Dumb were the first two any good? Yeah. Did anyone watch them? I'm pretty sure don't people know. don't like them very much. I, I, don't I, I, I tried to watch the first one and I fell asleep halfway through. Are you sure somebody didn't place a spell on you to make you sleep? That's, Maybe that's because... happened to me with three movies. Um, the other two Ooh. were Black Widow and Black Panther. Wow. Oh, no. You don't like black people. <laughs> no. Minority-led movies relevant. make you sleep. Speaking of Black Widow, I wonder what the latest Medea movie is. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, the next one says, Sup, Ra here. This is the first time I've caught one of these live since Joker came out. I'm so old now. Mm. Ra sent that? I always wonder if, if there's Ra impersonators. I'll never know if it's the true Ra. If you are the I true Ra, I don't we feel... miss you. I that doesn't feel sound like something uh, raw would say. I was gonna say this. I don't this... feel like I don't. I don't believe that Ra could compose a <laughs> sentence that hinged. I was gonna he say it's very hinged. Yellow... Yeah. Yeah. Ra has not mellowed out, nor will he ever. Wait, but that sounds like Ra here just got back from rehab. That I would believe. If he... it would require rehab for me to believe that he's kind of comes across as a normal person. If you're a raw, if you want to be a raw impersonator, beginning with "I just got back from rehab," probably a good strategy hmm. to get us to believe. It. <laughs> although, although not now that we've said that, we'll cotton on to you because we're um we're a smart we're a smart lot, you know. Um, you want to think of something equivalent that has the same effect, or just be like unhinged. Those are the two ways to go. Mel, you got your uh your Pokedex googling skills ready. Oh shit, hang on. Let me I've sit up mine here. ready. Oh boy. Oh, okay. Oh, I feel if Metal's here, we should let him do it. It's his favorite oh, thing. It's the only oh, thing shit. I have, Rags. Come on, man. <laughs> oh, because I, I always thought I was the one who did it on the account of me being always the one who does it. I didn't no, know you had an Rags, interest. Rags, if you remember, actually, know. Metal was the first one to do it, and then whenever he's not here, you were doing it. Uh, Your memory is okay. shit, but that's okay, because I'm here. I make up okay, for it. yeah, definitely. With your enormous brain, look at your brain. Look, know, at, right? look at your brain. It's, it's so big. Mm -hmm. Maybe you it's mostly like fear, though. I don't destroy know. all humans, but with red eyes. I think they uh, destroy all humans uh, too. Crypto remake was Superman's dog, right? No, no, no. Crypto with a C. Crypto is uh, ah. not to be confused with crypto, cryptocurrency. Crypto is 137. Okay, that's what Boogie invested in, and he lost his money. Well, look, all right, if you invested <laughs> in anything right now, you're probably not doing great. Man, I feel... Like human was lost I that was a cool game. I haven't visited, like, crypto subreddits, but I imagine it's just chaos in terms uh, of... Uh, well, because I'm pretty sure that, uh, I think Bitcoin is at, like, a 50... Yeah, so Bitcoin... Jesus Christ. <laughs> wait, so crypt... wait, is Bitcoin a cryptocurrency? Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency, yes. Okay, because like I just mean cryptocurrency. I just don't. I know so little so, about crypto. Well, yeah. So stuff. Bitcoin is the biggest one by market capitalization, and then Ethereum is second, and then I forget after that. Um, and yeah, every 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 
because right now, uh, year to date, uh, uh, Bitcoin is down 58%. Um, Ouch. Now, hey, to be it, fair, the mm. S&P, I think, year to date is down about 25%. But 52 is a much bigger think. number than 25%. Yeah. Well, it's it's worse than that. It's just that everybody's oh, no. losing money. <laughs> so Misery you know, loves company. Misery does love company. That's why yeah. we watch Kenobi together. <laughs> well, I would watch mm. Kenobi alone. Oh my god. <laughs> Hell no, I would uh, not dude, watch I this said, shit alone. I said that's a show that I would totally have watched, like, if there was nothing... Even if there was no one to talk to and no, like, internet culture to sort of keep track of... I don't know how long I would have lasted, though. I think I would have to. Yeah. I think I would Episodes. have to contrive. I think I would need to contrive like an imaginary friend to help me get through it. I need to get a little Hobbs, mm. and then pretend that he's real. No, he is real, actually. I'll get Hobbs. He can watch it with me and make many astute observations about uh. I just about um. To answer your question, Mahler, episodes three, three or four. You would have watched two episodes and then quit. <laughs> There's a good the first chance. First episode would have been like, eh, and the second, you know, second episode you'd be like. Fuck this, I'm out. I wonder if my curiosity for what they're doing with him would actually uh, oh, yeah, overcome true. it, though. I don't know. But I think wow. I would start getting more and more frustrated. I need, I'd be like, I gotta talk to somebody about this. This is absurd. What about Felix? Felix is alive. Hobbs is imaginary. <laughs> but he's alive to Calvin. So. I don't know. Fair enough. Uh, I, I do like uh, what Bill Watterson, I, I'm pretty sure I talked about this like two days ago, but he presented it as, uh, people would ask him, so is Hobbes real? Um, like, is he actually real? And uh, I think the answer that he always gave is he's real to Calvin. Um, like, how Calvin yeah. sees him is how he sees him, and how everybody else sees Hobbes is how they see him. It's such a great example of... um. I mean, yeah, because, I mean, of course, they're both fictional characters, but even in their own world, Calvin, like, Hobbes doesn't, Hobbes is imaginary, but he feels so real. I mean, he's so real to Calvin and is meaningful to Calvin. He might as well be real for all the, you know, the influence that people have on other people. Um, I, I, again, your obligatory Calvin and Hobbes is fantastic. I, Calvin and Hobbes is such a good comic. Mm-hmm. I have no um, idea what the fuck is going on. Do you yeah, not, it's because you, you don't know references to anything. <laughs> Do you know have Calvin you never read Hobbes Calvin is? and Hobbes? Is? No, not really. <laughs> okay, oh, so, man, Jay. okay. I'll just I'll just post a little picture of Calvin and Hobbes, and maybe maybe you'll recognize them from having seen them in a in a in a newspaper. Right. You know, Jay. This when they say touch grass, the they don't mean urinal. they don't mean only touch grass. Like there are nerdier things you can oh, do. I in think life. I recognize that. You don't. Okay, so did you ever you read comics in like I said newspaper. I do recognize I that. Oh, you do, right? Yeah. But also, no, I've never read a comic in a newspaper on Sunday or any you, other day. Like, you had? Did they have newspapers sorry, when you were I didn't a kid? Hear that correct. <laughs> did you? Did you well, did or you didn't? I didn't. I've never touched a newspaper. So, Are you serious? Did you so live in a cave? The... <laughs> so, um, <laughs> the thing with me was, I don't know how it was, I don't know how it works over in America or in the UK, but, uh, one thing they had in the Sunday newspaper that the had, funnies. like, a little, a little, well, so, they did have the funnies in, like, all of the, uh, every week, but there was this little, um, it was, like, a four to six page, uh, one that was specifically, like, yeah, this is for the kids to read, and it would have, like, Simpsons ones, Calvin and Hobbes, the far side, a whole bunch of like comic strips. So that would be the one that I would read on Sunday. That we was the only thing I had read in the newspaper. I would also We did something similar. Uh every day there would be like a like a two pages of comics in a particular section and they'd be in black and white. But yeah, on yeah, Sunday we... there was yeah. the dedicated yeah. color all of the comics that you could yeah. read through if you longer. Yeah. yeah. As well as other little games and, and yeah, puzzles. yeah, I would yeah, look like forward to the crossword to... puzzle was there and the horoscopes and all that weird shit. All that stuff. I would also like to see the updated list of movies in the theater, and then as long as I can make a good argument, we'd be going that that week. That means. Oh right. yeah, yeah movie have, listings like, were on the back for, of that uh, same section during the work day. Yeah, for for like oh yeah, because you would look at the fucking newspaper to find out what the show times movie were. Movie times were absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you'd see right now. Jay like is like, how old around. are you guys? <laughs> Yeah, like, <laughs> or well, not, my, this my is dad, recent memory. Yeah. My dad bought newspapers for like the first, like, until I was probably like five or six. And it never occurred to me to be like, oh man, I wonder if there's anything fun in there for me. The thing and is, he is, is I just knew. Struck me, he's like, 
that's reading that or touching that seems like the epitome of boredom. I knew that there was fun <laughs> stuff in there because I was aware of the fun comics and little puzzles. I and and man, Sunday was fun when like, you would get to read those. I have my own like little children's magazines and stuff with like kids comics highlights? in them. I don't yeah, think like I ever highlights? read those as much. I think I uh I occasionally got like oh. actual flat out video game magazines. Because the, I, like, um... the, like the Hot Wheels magazine and it would come <laughs> with like, a little free car on the front of it. I remember there was one that I got, uh, and I'm pretty sure I still have it somewhere where it was, um, it was like a little booklet that was just Nintendo Wii, all of the fun stuff coming to like Nintendo Wii during the first two years of its life. And I remember like reading about Super Smash Brothers Brawl. I got really hyped for Brawl. That was a really hype game for mm -hmm. me. I'd be like looking at trailers on early pro like 2006 7 youtube oh dude me and a friend of mine find out what's happening we're obsessed with melee to the point where we would like play it pretty much all the time if we had like sleepovers and Likewise. stuff and so when brawl came out we were both just like can we be ready for something like this what is this gonna do i, I don't know what is it gonna do <laughs> well, i uh i i i think i got it a month after it came out but because i was like i was super duper because i i didn't used to buy games at launch i'd get them as, as early as reasonable back then which could often mean like a couple of weeks or a month or even like a year did you later. never go like, to midnight releases did you have those uh, well, well, well later on i did but like yeah. when i was younger you didn't okay. really pay as much attention to release dates um i remember grand theft auto 5 i went to the grand theft auto 5 midnight launch um and i went to the fuck me this one's a little bit regretful i went to the destiny midnight launch i bought the 200 special edition version of that game with the little ghost figure i went to that that was the last one i went to yeah um, good i picture. got burnt hard by destiny <laughs> that game that game burned me um that that put me off of like pre-orders and that kind of stuff in general grand theft auto 5 was cool as fuck i remember because um i i bought it and then i stayed up all night and played it and I'm pretty sure I, yeah, I, 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 um, I, I basically, I played that for like every waking hour that was available to me for like the next week and a half. Grand Theft Auto V is a cool game. I know that like in the 10 years afterward with so much saturation of Grand Theft yeah. Auto V, mm -hmm. like that game was fucking hype. I remember I everybody enjoyed was so playing excited the story for Grand Theft Auto V. I was like, this is fun. I really like this. Wasn't it's it like Skyrim and drive my car and... is the other one that got that kind of reputation where it's saturation across multiple generations and uh, consoles? And then maybe further down the tier list is something like Resident Evil 4, where it's like that keeps getting re-released as well across like all different well, consoles. Well, the... the the thing is now, because Skyrim is uh, like 11 years old now, Grand Theft Auto V next year will be 10 years old. This is mm. far and away the longest gap between Grand Theft Auto games. Because we got Red Dead Redemption 2, but that was nearly five... That was four years ago nearly. That came out in 2018. Um, they just don't... They don't need to... They probably will make Grand Theft Auto 6, but they, they don't need to. GTA Online makes them so much money. Which is unfortunate because I don't really care for GTA Online. I like GTA Four I never Online. Gave a shit. Yeah. Um, because oh man, that was one of my that that was a vivid memory. I remember when I finally got like Wi-Fi and online set up for my PlayStation Three, and I think the first game that I played for that was uh, because I played Xbox Live through friends and stuff. But then when I got it set up on PS Three with Grand Theft Auto Five, uh, Grand Theft Auto Four, it was Rockets on um Rockets on the Airport. That was such a fun experience. That, God damn, I remember that vividly. How cool it was playing online, blowing everybody up with rocket launches, mm -hmm. like in uh in Liberty City, and then in Free Roam when you just encounter people and get into fights. Grand Theft Auto Four had really fun online, um, and unlike Grand Theft Auto Five, it wasn't super monetized so heavily that it was um. Yeah, I don't know. I only played GTA Online like for five for maybe a week or two through massive connectivity issues. Um and then it just I don't know, the appeal never stuck for me. It just wasn't, yeah. I've always been kind of bitter at Grand Theft Auto Online for five because after beating five and I realized that there's just not in game content, like there it just doesn't it's not there. You just you kind of just Go around and you could do a few things, but you could still play, and that was it. That was end game. Once you're done with a story mission in yeah. five, it's like you need to go to online and pay us money. I think um I think it's interesting you say that because 
an observation that a lot of people make is Grand Theft Auto Five or Grand Theft Grand Theft Auto um Four. There's lots of ways to make money, but there's not a lot of things to spend it on. Uh, Grand Theft Auto Five has a lot of things that you things can buy, but them. not a lot of ways to make money. I'm pretty sure that now I someone could correct me. Correct me. Yeah, I think you know what I'm talking about. Um, there's a property in the game that I think costs 150 million dollars. It's like a tennis court or something. It's it's the biggest property you can get in the game. I'm pretty sure that it's basically feasibly impossible to make that much money unless before doing the Leicester missions, you knew where to put your money in the game stock market uh, to make maximize your earnings when you did the assassination missions for uh, Leicester. I think if when you I... knew ahead of time, you could make that money. But if you didn't, then <laughs> yeah. good luck. There is, a, yeah. there is a point in the game that you have the opportunity to invest in like stock markets and stuff. And if you don't do it, then you're just, you can't make that money ever again. And you kind of no, need that money gone. in order to progress meaningfully through the end game. And all of the guy, I went through the online guides also cheat codes. Pff, no, no cheat codes because that's like content. That's really fun and everything. Pay us shit instead, asshole. Uh, so you don't get the cheat codes like you have before grand theft auto five. But like all the guides on how to make money, they were always like, yeah, before this mission, you need to do this. Because if you don't, you're just basically screwed. Yeah. And I mean, San Andreas, because I don't, my favorite uh, Grand Theft Auto game is San Andreas. Um, I think one of the things that helps that game a lot is just there's so many things to spend your money on and do. There's so many side activities. Like there was property, you could buy tons of different properties all across the place. And I remember in that game, it felt like there was a lot of utility to buying those properties because it used the old save system where you need to go back to your house and save. And um, it was a genuine drive to get from like one side of Los Santos to the other or um, or like to travel between a whole bunch of different cities. And so like there was a lot of incentive to buy property and there were a lot of ways to make money. And there was a lot of the side activities like going to the gym and exercising because if you exercised and got super healthy... It would give you advantages in the gameplay, like in the shootouts and in um, chases and stuff. San Andreas, those man, Grand Theft Auto is a cool series. <laughs> I do like it. it. Like in the face of its massive popularity and kind of where it's at now, like damn, those were some good games. The PlayStation Two ones, Grand Theft Auto Four, I really like. I like Five. Sorry, tangent over. <laughs> Super chat. Please read the Pokedex entries for Mimi Q. Q, Q. Mimi Q. Oh boy, what horrors okay. await in this. <laughs> uh, oh, hang on. Okay, here's the the Pokemon. There it is. That's that's Mimi um, Q. Hmm. Uh looks oh. looks uh, slightly disturbing, I would say. Ah. Uh, so there's a couple of the po uh, Pokédex entries. Uh, so just going to start with this one. Its actual appearance is unknown. A scholar who saw what was under its rag was overwhelmed <laughs> by terror and died from the shock. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> he uh... melted, like, the Ark of the Covenant under there. <laughs> just... <laughs> Wait, is the implication not... that it's drawing on like a cloth it has over itself? Well, because those were its eyes there, down on the the, the torso, the, yeah. the fake torso. It's like a Super Mario Hill. A little yeah. bit, yeah. Uh, the, the, the the hills have eyes, so to speak. Oh god! Uh, a gust of wind revealed what hides under this Pokemon's <laughs> rag to a passing trainer who went home and died painfully that very night. Oh very god! Cool. Very are nice. these official? Are these like the official actual uh, Pokedex entries? I I would think so. Uh, and then we have yeah. There's a website that it's probably what he's using. It has all of the entries for all the different versions. All the for games, the yeah. Yeah. Bulbapedia wow. or something. Yeah. Uh, after going to all the effort of disguising itself, its neck was broken. Whatever is inside is probably unharmed, but it's still feeling sad. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'd be man. sad about that. Yeah. Maybe he just wanted to die uh, and it broke its neck, but it didn't I like kill how it. it couldn't draw like it had to do the squiggly crazy eyes instead of just yeah. drawing <laughs> like the eyes properly. And then it's uh this last one. Uh it stands in front of a mirror trying to fix its broken neck as if it's life dependent on it. I mean it probably oh does. God. Uh it has a hard time getting it right, so it's crying inside. Aww. Oh no. It's such a tragedy. A miserable existence, especially. It's crying if the whole... and everybody 
people dying from looking at it thing yeah. has nothing to do like it doesn't want that at what all. What is that doing for his self-esteem? Yeah. <laughs> when people I look at me, they very die little. literally. I would I would honestly be a hit on my self-esteem if someone saw me and then fucking died. How about you replug <laughs> your microphone? <laughs> Don't tell what you're gonna Wait, say. Really? Yeah. You might you're echoing. You, Maybe you they sound like heard really you and they away. fucking died. Uh, I was gonna say, do you want me to I'm shout, Jay? I don't know if you can hear me from all the way over there. <laughs> <laughs> you want to join the rest of us in the Discord room? Yeah, there you go, Mimikyu. Very fun. Beautiful. Um, any plans to get Mike Stoklaza on EFAP? If he wants to, he'd be welcome. If Mike Stoklaza wants to come on EFAP, he is more than welcome. Oh, yeah. yeah, Red Letter Media have a weird blind spot for TV shows and Marvel. They like The Boys Season 2, for fuck's sake. Plenty of people like The Boys Season 2. Plenty of people like The Boys Season 2. We were told we were crazy for a while. Like... Yeah, <laughs> it was only until Episode 7 when it should have been Episode 2, I think, which one we realized we were just... yeah, yeah. probably one. I think there was a lot of red flags yeah, we... of one, but then by two. Yeah, we, we lost, like, and then three went fucking nuts. Um, <laughs> that, I'm sure season three is a dramatic improvement. I haven't seen it yet, and I don't know if I'm really interested in watching it. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hi, that Jay. Sounds a bit better. Oh uh, wait, no, no, it shouldn't. No, I was gonna say that doesn't sound better. better. <laughs> okay, yeah. Now that you speak more. Um. So, um, my microphone just isn't working. So that's, that's not good. Fun. Try to restart or something. Hear, what you're currently hearing through is the microphone on my webcam. Yeah, I'll restart. Okay, bye. Alrighty. <laughs> bye. Oh, you know, you want to make sure that Jay feels... Yeah, uh, glad we started that out. ...welcomed in the exit. Um, okay, well, next up, we got... Um, Here's a fun animal, the reef triggerfish, otherwise known the as the humi hu, hu, humu 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 nu kao pao. Uh, okay. My goodness, what uh, a lovely name. I just name. looked them up. It's an interesting looking, it's got some interesting stripes and whatnot. Um, yeah. Wow. A triggerfish, yeah. Oh, you've already got it up. Uh, where, where is the reef triggerfish found? In Hawaii. Mm. Oh, no, found in the reefs of the Indo-Pacific and is the state fish of Hawaii, so it's probably got a decent amount of... I wonder if I saw that at the aquarium. Doesn't ring a bell. Uh, maybe. Um... <laughs> uh... The farts weren't explored enough for what it was supposed to be. It's definitely wasted potential. Or and then they reference what it is, which is partially a spoiler. I know what they meant to say. I just love the idea that they their phone corrected them to farts. Um, I agree yeah, with this you. This is what they really meant. Uh, I agree. Me, me and Fringy have mentioned when in ability to spoil some things about a certain TV show that we feel that way about that thing. Uh, You're not yes, alone on that one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the meme request was honored. <laughs> trophy. Trophy. If I had one, that's such a great beam on its own. Oh, it's a good meme. You guys want oh, fun? Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, Do I sound good and nice and crisp? Nope. No. No. <laughs> nope. Wait, really? Yeah, yes, I'm not really. lying. <laughs> do, I, do I sound better or, at all? You sound no. about the same. <clears throat> yep. Hey, Mola, did you check out the latest Supermassive game? It's their gamiest so far. They put in a movie mode so you don't even have to play this one. Oh my god. Yeah, that's uh, the quarry. Wait, what? You that's get an achievement wow, really? for selecting that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, they have like a, yeah, they have a mode where you don't even have to play. You can just set it to where like you, everybody lives or dies, or like you can give them custom traits and then just watch it. You will find. Can't wait to play that one. Myself and Metal playing that uh, around <laughs> Halloween time, I suppose. Oh no! As is custom. Well, I think you need to double up because they've they've got another one that's coming out this year. Their their anthology one and this, so that's oh. two games. In that case, oh me and Metal can play one of them like halfway through Halloween, maybe, and then 
the next one on Halloween. Oh boy, double dose. I like how I say halfway through event. Halloween as if October itself <laughs> is just Halloween, but that's how I feel. <laughs> well, no, it could be halfway through Halloween, halfway through the day. True, it could be that. Although I don't know if we can handle a double dose of Supermassive. <laughs> like, it's, uh... um, I've got to get I do... really drunk for that one. <laughs> I, I, I sit there and it's like, a movie mode. It's like, I guess you can add that option and that's fine. But like, you know? <laughs> I guess what I will say is it's the game it makes the most sense for because it's so little in terms of mechanics. It's like, it's almost like they were pretending the whole time and then someone went, you don't need to pretend. It's fine. We'll be okay with you being a movie. And they're like, really? And they're like, yeah, just be a movie. Fuck I it. I suppose um, it's just, it's, I, video games, man, they're really cool in terms of the, the things that you can try to do to, um, to entire story into gameplay, making conscious choices about what kind of gameplay mechanics you're going to have, depending on the story you want to tell or achieving things that, are. Uh, I was thinking a bit about, um, I've been thinking about Metal Gear Rising because I've been listening to the music and I was thinking about, yes. so what is it that makes like the Armstrong fight so cool? Why is it so memorable? And one of the things that is the case is just, it was different. Nano Machine Sun. challenge. Well, Nano Machine certainly <laughs> helped, but I, it was difficult. It was, it was challenging. Yeah, it was when, tough. when you fight a boss that says, when first of all, they put you in a lot of, uh, in leading up to it, um, states where you can't beat him, where like, you know, if you attack him, you've got like, every attack you do takes like 0.1 of his health. To have all mm -hmm. that happen, and then the boss fight begins, and it says 200 health, unlike yeah. every other boss you fought in the game, and then you fight him and win, and he's really challenging, there's an emotional, there's something you get out of that that's not replicatable in a non-interactive medium. Um, the, the, the challenge feeds into the satisfaction of the narrative. It's um, it's one of those unique strengths of video. It's one of the reasons why I get annoyed when people say all games should have an easy mode. It, it feels like you're ignoring an aspect of video games that is, in some sense, inextricable if we consider fail states to be like a, a, a sort of necessary, a defining aspect of a video game. I guess we can have a conversation about that. But the leveraging the interactive nature to enhance the storytelling uh, or at least to give people the feelings that you want to give them. It's not because someone said dopamine. It's not dopamine. It's um, because like dopamine is not going to, that's not going to explain me looking back on it fondly now. Like that memory of that, of that, uh, that fight scene and that whole sequence. It's satisfying at the time, but the fact that it's so memorable, I think stems from that challenge. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just something this something to think about in the face of a game that has an option to have zero interactivity, <laughs> you know? Um, Mike Flanagan's Absentia isn't half bad. Funny thing, on Prime, cast info for Absentia incorrectly as info for Friday the 13th Part 2. Or the sequel, sorry. Um, well, they better fix that, I guess. So, be right back. Presumably that can be, like, flagged up by users and stuff, I don't know. But, uh, neat. What's um, your opinions on The Boys, if you've watched it, and if you haven't, I really like it, you should watch it, high rags. Hi there! Like, all what of it, or season one, two, three? Well, boys. let's just answer that broadly, quickly. <laughs> season one, we like it, thumbs up. Season two, ooh, stinky. Season three, nobody's watched any of it yet. Out of us. Mm -hmm. Nope. We found season two was so stinky it put me off the boys as a whole. Um, and I've been too busy to even give a chance to the boys season three. And nobody is... So this is kind of interesting, I guess, and it's relevant to point it out now. Like, I mentioned it already in this stream, so I imagine some people will be like, wait, why did you watch the latest season of Strange Things? And I'd be like, pretty much just because a couple people that I trust recommended it. Um, meanwhile, the boys season three, I don't think anybody that I know has told me that it's good yet. Um, I know some people have watched it, but, um, I, I, I haven't got anybody saying, like, oh, you gotta check out The Boys Season 3. Um, meanwhile, they, they had for Stranger Things. So I was like, fine, I'll go have a look-see. I may have a look-see at, uh, The Boys Season 3 if I hear enough people say I should see it. Kind of how it works at this point, you know? I just get peer pressured. Next they'll say smoking. I should do smoking. I hope I don't give in. I hope I don't watch the TV show Smoking. Smoking. 
A show so bad it'll give you cancer. <gasps> Ignore Absentia's terrible DVD art. That's not a problem. Don't judge a book by its cover, eh? Eh? Even yeah. though everybody does, hence why the quote exists. <laughs> Vader was so cool when he did a Starkiller. As if Starkiller isn't Ray levels of Gary Stu BS. He's the Shadow the Hedgehog of Star Wars. I hate him. Oh my god. Um, I think the reason why it goes over better with Star Wars fans, like Starkiller story, is because he suffers greatly. Uh, he does. Goes yeah. through a lot of shit. So it's like, it just feels a little bit more... like. Um, and game. maybe there's also... Again, when we think about storytelling, aligning the player with, you know, the fact that he's the playable character. Yeah. That's something I've been thinking about a bit, too, on that subject, is uh, the nature of aligning the interests of... I've been thinking about a bit with Halo, kind of prompted it, um, that that uh, something that can cause a serious disconnect in a video game is when your interests are fundamentally not aligned with the character you're playing. Last Abby in The Last of Us 2 is the... Sh yeah, nobody wants to, in that boss fight, nobody really wants to fight Ellie. And so you're in a situation where a lot of players just don't want to engage with the game as mm -hmm. presented. Conversely, when you're playing Halo, there's no point when you're like, I maybe we should sit down and talk with the Covenant, talk <laughs> with uh, the Flood and sort this out. Like, your interests are entirely aligned with um with the character. There is no disconnect. Like, I think ludonarrative yeah. dissonance is the disconnect, in a sense, it you know? Sluts. It can vary... Like, with different results, but I think you are, Absolutely. like, that is... I think that might be the ultimate example uh, when they force you to play as Abby and battle uh, Ellie and try and defeat her. That's the kind of thing where you're just like, why the yeah. fuck would I want to do this? I imagine the conversation they had is, this is an interesting dilemma to put the player in, where the character that they're controlling has to fight somebody that they, um... That, that they like, but I guess the reason why... It's not I think... really a dilemma if you can only well, do one thing. I that's right. So that's kind of like, and look, Injustice Two's got problems. But like when you when you at the end of the, I guess this is spoilers. At the end of the game, you get to choose whether you want to fight as Batman or Superman. That determines the ending. It's like if you give the player the choice, that can be really interesting in having them come into conflict with a character that they've played as. I know, I know that uh, I remember this. Um, I think it was a rant that Angry Joe had about Halo Five and how disappointing it was. And something he suggested is, could you imagine if you had to play as Locke in a boss battle against Master Chief? That would have been awesome. And it's like, that would have been awesome. That's that's like a really cool idea to have you play as somebody who then gets pitted against the protagonist you've been with for a long time. Mm. That can be like really cool gameplay-wise to be up against somebody who you know what they can do because you played as them. Um, I, I guess as I think about examples of that working well, though, the, the Ellie Abbey one is like not that because nobody's, nobody's engaging with that. I think, I think it is a matter of how immersed are you getting people in the experience to where they can engage with that properly rather than them recognizing what this is, which is, this is a boss battle and I can't progress unless I engage with the mechanics, but I don't want to. Something's gone wrong. Ultimately, something has gone wrong. And someone could say, well, that's someone's subjective experience with the game. And it's like, I guess that's true. But if that's happening to a lot, a lot of people, people have that subjective experience, yeah, it seems. I, well, if that's happening to a lot of people and you're thinking about, I guess, really the kind of subjective nature of how people choose to engage with the gameplay. You know, why is it that, um, I don't know, when when Mola was playing uh, Resident Evil Village, that he's like fucking around to see what will break. If he's <laughs> oh, yeah, like, it's hard not to push adopt it. that attitude. It really well, is hard not to just it's, um, kind of do that. Yeah, it's it's uncharted. The way that that works is hopefully you are having enough fun doing what the game wants you to do that you won't realize that you can't do much more than what the game wants you to. Um, the second that you realize that, it can cause a lot of problems. Oh, I can't go over there. Why can't I go over here? Why can't I do this? Oh, I can't go back now? As opposed to a game like uh, Metroid where you can go wherever you want. Um, you know, within the bounds of whatever um, abilities that you have. It's a it's a delicate balance, I think, the uh, aligning the interest of the player with the protagonist while also having the protagonist be a character. It's really easy when it's someone like Master Chief. It's a lot harder when they're a well-defined hero. Um, and then I on guess your the, option there is, yeah? On your point about the uh, presenting that choice being so much more interesting... Um, I guess it's it's mostly related, but I was just gonna say like, 
I will forever be bitter that they didn't let the players choose whether or not to execute Abby at the end of The Last of Us 2 after all the points the game believes it's making about violence and sort of to what choice you should make. Uh, the option, yeah, yeah, because I think it would then you could present it in a very cold manner at the end of the credits. It would say, you know, a number comes up and it says the players who chose to end Abby's life and the players who didn't, you know, and it would just be like... Because it would be 90% wanting to kill well, Abby. I'm not, even, yeah. I'm not even gunning for the comedy side of it, of which that's very true. I would more so be gunning for, like, is this not an incredibly an fascinating social experiment to see what happened as a result of what you gave us in terms of a narrative and what players chose to do? What does it say about humanity? Well, that everyone decided to fucking kill Abby? <laughs> like, what, what does I that think mean? That would be... I think that's the problem. They didn't think that would be the case. They no. thought that by the end of it, people would see both sides and then understand that it's complicated, but they failed. Didn't they and see so, the zebra? Mm. Well, they wanted to kill Abby. I guess it's, it's, I think that that is indicative of an attitude that probably isn't conducive to making good video games, which is, no, this is our story. Like, no, we're not giving anything to you. This is our, like... We're not going to put anything in your hands in terms of any decisions or conclusions you come to. This is our story. Rather than creating a game that can be interpreted in different ways depending on how the player engages with it, has multiple endings, none of which are necessarily more canonical than the other. Um, and I don't... I, I think that there's a... Look, the, the, the binary morality system is like, you know, I, I think it's got serious it limitations. It can but go away. When? Um, well, I mean... In hard to, I uh, yeah. I mean, hell, like I even I think Mass Effect in a lot of ways really did it poorly. Um, I think so because there's too many mechanics that tie into um being paragon like, or renegade that it makes a yeah. lot more sense to play it one encourages way. Encourages you to go fully one way or the other. But this is what I would say: I Infamous does the same thing. Um, but I think that Infamous doesn't really. I think that. I think that when you play Infamous, there is an understanding that once you pick one track, you're going to be going that direction. And what I like, I because I adore Infamous, I really, really like that game. And one of the things I like about it so much is that it does the thing that I think should often be done when it comes to morality, which is make the good path harder, make it more challenging, make it more uh, testing. Yeah, the, yeah. the easy way is the path is like the way where you, because you'll often be presented with choices like, man, I could like disable this thing without poisoning people, but then I'm going to get fucked and I'm going to lose my abilities for a little while and it's going to be harder. Or I could just not care and just do it the most efficient way possible. I still achieve my objectives, but a lot of other people get hurt in the process. And the game judges you very harshly for the negative choices. Like, it makes things easier, but there are negative storytelling consequences. Here's your for that easy part. mode. Be evil. But, there, here's your easy mode. Well, what I what I like about that game so much is that the ending is um in the evil ending basically Cole is like yeah I'm I'm like in charge of this city I have all the power um you know in in like the this the lore of the jungle and no one's more powerful than me so in a sense like he's pretty content with this as an ending but if you pick the good path um all it is is just Cole talking about how like I'm alone I, like there's nobody here I can't trust anybody everybody's and, and yeah, the people in this city love me, but what happens the first time they expect me to be there for them I'm, and I'm not? It's like, damn, like that's an interesting thought that like you've taken the path of the hero and yeah, people like you for now, but you can't save everybody. So what's going to happen when you start failing? What's going to happen? You, you, nobody, you can't trust anybody. Everybody's manipulating you. Infamous is really cool. I should remaster that instead of The Last of Us fucking one. <laughs> All right. <sighs> At least we hopefully have a good Dead Space remake. Uh, I guess remaster remake is a remake mm -hmm. or remaster. It's a remake. They've remade okay. that game. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Um, hopefully that'll be good. Are you ready for the Last of Us Part One to come in and make changes to try and fail to make Part Two and Abby a whole look uh, as a whole look better and Joel look worse? Yes, I'm ready. So, is it confirmed that they're changing I... anything about the narrative? They're changing the gameplay, but I'm pretty sure, based on what they showed in that trailer, that the cutscenes are one to one. Like right. whatever but, they've but done, we know they that haven't... they lie about cutscenes, unfortunately. So the what I mean by that is, if I were like looking, Final Fantasy VII is remake is very clearly not the original game. Yeah. Very clearly. Um, where uh, and same with 
Resident Evil remake versus well Resident Evil 2 remake versus Resident Evil 2. Um in this case, it looks like they are the cutscenes with the original recordings for like the motion capture and everything. And they've just done whatever magic with uh like the engine to make it look better. Okay. Um so it looks like it's gonna be one to one, and I guess the gameplay mechanics are probably gonna be like they are in two. So not great <laughs> is what that means. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Uh Pig is one hundred percent unbridled praiseworthy. That's the Nicolas Cage Pig movie. Yeah. Uh I'll probably do a flotch on that one day. That movie Nicholas like Cage movie. pig movie. I've got a pig. A pig. Kenobi is the only Star Wars show I've seen and I hate it. The only upside is you guys covering it. What are you guys' favorite artists slash styles in history? My Rex. Hello. Artist fan Wait, sorry, Art you mean Deco Deco and... What? Okay. What was the question again? Sorry, in full. What are your favorite artists slash styles in history? Okay. Is that is that mm. artists in history? I um, would say so. So you could go really far back with that. I imagine. Jay, look, Jay's already one. far back enough in the room. Okay, can't can't come push you further. <laughs> yeah. Wait, am I, uh, am I still on the room mic? Was that? No, you you. We can hear you. Don't worry. <laughs> they're, you. they're fucking you with you. To? They're tricking you. Uh, right to left, then rags. You said Art Deco expand. I really like a lot of the imagery, a lot of the very, um, a lot of the focus it has on things tapering to points and the, 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 the human iconography that you have with statues and things, the references to mythologies. I like a lot of the, the clear defined lines and the shapes as they, you know, they sort of meet together, that, that Chrysler building kind of um, look. I really enjoy it, like Rapture. Is a really mm -hmm. excellent sort of example of how that style can be, you know, explored. That um, was awesome. Yeah, I really, really enjoy that look, um, especially because you can apply it to so many things. It's not just a, a like like a poster or an advertisement. It can be an entire style of architecture. You can build cities that are Art Deco. Good luck building a surrealist city. As much as I like the art style, there is. Uh, do you have a favorite Art Deco like architect or? Not really. I'm, I don't know architects much. I just recognize some of the styles. Um, so, hmm. metal. Yeah, it's me. Uh, I don't know. I never really thought about that. But if we could let go of a style, I've always really like enjoyed like basically all the art styles in like the Warhammer universe. I think that's just just cool as shit. Like, doesn't even matter if it's like the fantasy one or the the Space Marines ones. I just really like those looks. It's like really, really mm -hmm. nice. I don't know the names for them. I don't know, but that's like the style I would probably say first. Someone chat says Gothic. It's like yeah, I guess it ch checks out. Yeah. Gothic's yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Mubes. I was gonna go with gothic because I don't have anything else, like like any particular preferences. I like stuff from all over the place. I don't think I've ever thought of a one style as a sort of like oh that's 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 me right there. But what I like about gothic when it shows up is that it seems so um, almost complicated, huge, grand, and and uh, just crazy prestigious. It always comes across to me, um, and it's like perfect for fantasy settings as well as um, I love it when it's thrown into horror. These uh these buildings seem great for, as villain layers and stuff, but um I don't know. There's there's a there's a vibe that comes with a lot of gothic architecture. As for particular artists, and, and, and is this is broad enough to cover like you know all of art because much of human expression really. Um, I guess other than the stuff everyone already knows in terms of just people I like, their stuff a lot. You know, the writing or, or whatever. Uh, particular artist. I don't. Yeah, I, I don't know that I have any particular preference from any particular artist. The person I keep my eye on the most recently, and when it comes to storytelling, is probably Mike Flanagan, if that um, counts as an answer. Mm. Um, Jay, oh sorry. Well, I was just gonna <laughs> ask: Are there other artists you guys keep track of to that degree where you're just waiting for the next thing? No. Um. So, I don't think so. my my reading of the question I'm was actually. What's that? 
I was going to say like only musical or I guess like writing as well, but like that's um, it. That was so, second. I think so. My guess would be that the question was actually your favorite artistic styles. I mean, like Baroque or surrealism or um or futurism or something like that. And th and then a favorite artist would be a specific individual, like and uh, like a like an art artist, uh, visual art. I mean, like um like I guess we want to be really generic, like Leonardo da Vinci or something. Um, that's my impression in terms of like artists that I um I really like what Chuck Jones did with Looney Tunes. Um I think that I think that uh I really like the style of those golden age um American animations. Um that's something I, I think is Barack. No Barack. <laughs> Not Barack. <laughs> um and uh I but I guess in terms of specific artists, there's like a lot of artists I'll follow on Twitter, just pay attention to what they're doing. There's certain comic book artists that I think are really cool, like Greg Capullo, I like his art style. David Finch is really uh good. I like uh I mean um uh David Mazzicelli, but I don't know if he does anything anymore. Um And in terms of writers, I I'd probably have to think about that a bit. I guess Flanagan would count for sure john watts but he's not a writer he's a director isn't he well yeah i mean directors are artists right counts yeah um yeah uh in terms of like a favorite style though of architecture in keeping with what everybody <laughs> else's answers are it probably is art deco i uh i really adore that style um there's something i like about the it's it it's um it's simultaneously extravagant while also being restrained in a sense um because that's kind of the nature of the style the origin of the style in like the roaring 20s was a level of extravagance beyond pure utilitarianism yet at the same time there are these clear bounds um to what you would do with that style that it has a level of simplicity to it, even though it's not that. It's an interesting fusion. And I mean, I like I like uh like what the the Chrysler building looks like. I, I like that kind of style. Jay's the only one left now, right? Yes. Yeah. Jay, have I you like ever seen a building realism. before? <laughs> no. Um not from the outside. Uh, uh. I like sur I like surrealism a lot. Um I don't in terms of indiv in, like individual artists, I I wouldn't be able to really name any. I get like well, I know like who Salvador Dali is, but like I don't really know enough artists by name to like, pick out a favorite, right? You know. But um... there's a lot of great artists, really. That's that's I you you're all probably in the same boat as me. There's so many great artists, like visual artists, that it's um. That picking like one or even a well, handful feels like you're always like, going to be leaving yeah, out people. Yeah, like, 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 Paulo. I don't spend yeah. enough time thinking about um, the creation of art, I guess, the um, the metadata of art to actually just like remember people's names who made it. Um, I just I just look at it and I'm like, yeah, I really like that. And that's the end of my experience with an artwork. Um, maybe I'll um, think about what it means or whatever, but like... I guess it depends on what you're because you said music, uh, like you're much more versed in musicians because like that's something that you're more well, yeah, interested like, in doing yourself creatively, which well, I think spurs yeah. that. Yeah, and and as, as well with music is um, it tends to be if like I, I'm looking at if I'm looking at a surrealist painting, um, I feel like the chances are the person who painted it's probably been long dead. Uh, um, and what do you, do you think that's a bit of a barrier to least, like being more well like. Or at least, um, I don't, I, no, I guess I just don't get the same drive to be like, oh, I want to see the other work that this person did, right? Um, I think, um, with, I understand with that. Music, I, I tend to be I, like, I want to listen to like all this person's songs. Um, I, I, I get what you mean in that the artists that I listed who I liked, all their art is paired with narrative, um, like Chuck Jones and David Mazzuchelli and stuff. So, like, all of their artwork is really great as art, but it's all paired with stories that I like. Um, and so that might be the thing. Like, that's... I think that's... Ah, uh, no, I don't want to say something stupid like I was about to, because all art is essentially storytelling, if you want to break it down in some sense. You're trying to convey some sort of uh, 
some that's sort of a story like a, a feel, um, like if you're just going to convey like an atmosphere or a mood that's not necessarily a story i guess the thing is is when you look at something like starry night you could say that there's a story there even though it is like a still image it's not technically a sequence but the sequence can be inferred based on um like your perception of it I, your reading there's of a, it. a lot of um a lot of art that i think infers a sequence but i don't think it's necessarily always there uh, yeah, for sure. Maybe, maybe what I'm saying is too broad. I guess it's more so that you could look at a, um, you could look at a painting that is, uh, I don't know, it's like a mountainscape. I went to a art gallery last week, and while I was there, I saw this really beautiful, um, painting of, it was like meant to be, yeah, it was, um, it was, it was like, I don't think there are any people in it. It was just like a mountainscape in the background, like soaked in sort of like a warm pink hue from the sunlight or the sunset. There's there's not really, there's no characters here. Um, and I guess you could say that the atmosphere is really the sense that's palpable in that. I guess it's just that, yeah, may, maybe I am being too too uh too specific if I say that there's a story there. It might just be the atmosphere, but I, I guess it would be that the goal is always to convey something, um, some sort of um, not necessarily a sequence, I suppose. Uh, um, yeah, I, I, hmm, yeah, I'm not sure actually. I need to think about that a bit more. Like, just like surrealist paintings. I like, I like. I like the ones that feel very liminal. Um, mm. What does liminal show. mean, Jay? The, <clears throat> well, okay. So I like um, liminal spaces a lot. Um, and I like surrealist paintings for the same reason that a lot of them um, seem to capture the atmosphere of like a long time, a long time degraded memory. So you, you, you remember something from long ago, like maybe a place or an environment and all of the details of that place have faded away in your mind and you're just stuck with this um, very oh. basic perception of this place you once were long ago uh, and maybe some feelings that go along with it. And looking at uh, anything that captures that like sort of in the moment. So a, a liminal space would be, you know, something that looks like the the place that you remember but you only remember the place in that way because your memory is lacking detail and a place that looks like that currently almost feels forbidden like you're not supposed to be looking at it like that's supposed to be in your long distant memories um and i, I just really like that experience um i, I don't know I, it's an experience that really i like there's no other really way to put it no, I, I get it, because I, I looked up Surrealism and there's a lot of cool imagery here. Though now it's prompted a thought in me, because I will never forget about that. It was either a blank canvas or it was, like, just red, and it was in, like, an art gallery and it baffled me. Um, oh, yeah. A lot of that uh, stuff is money laundering. I, uh, how, uh, like, art and ex expression, because when I look at a Baroque painting, it's always just, man, like, this is really cool that you made this. This is an incredibly well-wrought image that you created with with uh with paint and it's super duper impressive in terms of art and it uh, uh like expression and capability um whereas i guess i'm not sure how i feel about expression but not that much by way of like any technical skill in realizing it i uh i'm not sure how i square that away I'm not even sure that it's clear what I mean by that. <laughs> I um, like you. You don't. It, it's a lot harder for me to appreciate a piece of modern art when it's just a red square. When I can look at a Hieron Hieronymus Bosch three panel set and be like, "Holy shit! You put a lot of work into this." Jesus Christ! Look at all this stuff. Well, yeah, because because the the Baroque painting isn't devoid of artistic expression. The artistic expression is there in all of the choices that you made of what's on there how it's uh how it's colored how it's light the lighting the composition framing all of that has gone into it but it's paired with the capacity to realize something that most people can't do that like that's an element of what's impressive about art and in something where it's just splashing paint on a canvas you've expressed something sure but there's no there's no um there's there's either less there's less skill involved in realizing that like i could do that 
Um, and so I, it's expression, sure, uh, and there can be value in that expression, but I guess I, I wonder how much the talent factors into, or maybe not the talent, but more so just the, the skill that would be required to realize this is, um, factors into an assessment of its quality. It feels like two modes when you, uh, appreciating the construction of it versus appreciating, like, meaning of it. I was just thinking about how if you had someone who took an apple and then opened like a padlock and just put it through it and then closed the padlock so and then put that on a on a you know stool that's the piece it's a padlocked apple and you look at it and you're like huh and then you think about what that could mean versus someone who draws a photorealistic version of that where it's like on one on one it's like that must have taken you like a couple maybe a minute to get that right and the other one it's like whoa and you get yeah. so it's like this, the one on the stool, it's like, I, I could I could see myself ended up staring at it for a little bit to think about what I think it might mean. But the one that was done photorealistic drawing, I would be staring at it not only for its meaning, but also being like, man, this is a fucking good drawing. That's, yeah, it's, it's just the recognition of the amount of work that would have gone into that um, factors into how impressive I find it. I, I can't not look at this really incredible painting of a landscape that and especially when, because it's something that uh, I guess becomes a lot clearer when you're looking at these paintings in person is when you, when you you know, take a few steps back the way that it looks from there. But then when you also come closer to it and you can see all the paint strokes and the brush strokes and how you chose to use these strokes de uh, deliberately and, yeah, intentionally to create this image. And then the texture of all the paint on the canvas as well like how it can glisten under the right lighting conditions, depending on what type of paint, you, you know, that you used. Um, I I think that I personally find that there's more to appreciate there than in something where it's a bunch of paint splashed on a canvas. I guess the problem is I don't want to be too dismissive of that because maybe there's a really compelling argument for that, the, 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 the mind-blowing value of that. I just don't see it. I want to so, give a yeah. special honorable know. mention. To, go ahead. No, no, go for it. I want to give an honorable mention to retrofuturism. Yes. I was thinking about saying that. Retrofuturism is such a cool style. Retrofuturism is, it's generally known, but if you, if you look up Google images of it, you'll probably find 1950s, 60s oh style yeah. spaceships. Yeah, yeah. And I love it. Cyborgs and laser guns, oh, but it's kind of an umbrella term. Love yeah. all of this. This is thank yeah, you for introducing me to this. Ret well, retrofuturism was the direct inspiration for like the style of Futurama. It's definitely in uh, that vein. Mm. I like how optimistic it is. It's um, it's kind of like Art Deco in the same way. I feel it has that because Art Deco is big on like you like man is you know it's 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 kind of the, the Andrew Ryan thing. No gods are kings, only man. It's very humanity focused and struggle work go for it go at it you have the ability you have to you have to keep on going it's an optimistic sort of look at you have what it takes but you just gonna have to work hard for it and retro futurism is it's sort of an umbrella term for diesel punk and steampunk and that sort of stuff because it's an think, it's an envisioning uh, yeah i think i'd push it it's it's not quite i think that those are adjacent uh, to to it, I I think I think diesel punk and, and and steampunk are adjacent to retrofuturism, but I think what would characterize retrofuturism is very bright colors, very sleek um, designs and aesthetics. But there's like a texture behind it because it, it it is like paper, right? It's 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 that kind of seeps through because you can see it if you look it up on Google, like every single one. And even the Iron Giant tries to emulate it too, as like the texture of the paper. Um, it's it's it is these futuristic worlds and settings, but it's almost like the texture of it grounds it in. Yes, but this is an old perception of the future. Um, well, it, it's any it's any envisionment of it is primarily from the late forties when rocketry started yeah. becoming to I would, I'd say early seventies uh, sort of. You could but push it you to would, the early seventies, sure. It's like an envisionment of a future made from a particular point in the past. And it's a mixture yeah. of an idealized version of what technology could be. Um, not necessarily optimistic, but often so. 
and architecturally it's very it has very surrealist architecture a lot of the times which is generally not something you get with art deco which might make it an odd pairing for why i mentioned it earlier because i really like art deco architecture but a lot of the buildings in retro futuristic art they're very very bizarrely shaped and odd and they're not utility focused they're very much just strange and unusual and I, I think kind that of contrast with the sort of semi-grounded nature of like the, the technology. Like you, you look at a robot in that style or a ray gun in that style, and they're not like it, there's not utility in it. Like you, you look at look at all the ray guns you've seen in art and in video games. Like you, and then you compare that with a real gun and how guns really are made. And it's just there's mm -hmm. they're nothing. Maybe there, a way to a lot describe more... it would be um, it is an envisioning of the future with absolutely no regard for the feasibility of any of this technology. Um, Maybe, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's not about uh, going for a realistic perception of the future. Based kind on, of, yeah. on your appreciation of all of this, these styles, by the way, I think I have um, a graphic novel adaptation, which is... And it, like, it's a story, but it's also just like a, a, a book that's just there to appreciate the artwork. Mm -hmm. Um it's told it's also it's interesting to me because it's one of the few stories i know told with absolutely no dialogue it's about a guy going to a place um where he doesn't speak the language at all so um all of the dialogue that's in it is completely like non-understandable to you as okay. like the pov mm -hmm. um it's called the arrival if you want to and if you want to have a look you can have a look yeah, at some of the that. artwork by just googling it i'm not the sure arrival hand, comic yeah. book It's, no, it's not the same thing in terms. Of it's not. It's not retrofuturism, but like there are oh, there are definitely N. similarities within the artwork. I will keep that in mind. Okay, I'll pull it up here. Yeah. You know, you mentioned By uh, Sean Tan. Futurama has a level of inspiration on that. I always felt that about like yeah, um, yeah. the little. They have like little shoulder. Um, yeah, things. on their sleeves that are unnecessary, but they're like little of, blades, yeah. yeah. And this is it, it comes well, across as the very toy. Jetsons, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I think um someone said it's the op is it the opposite of cyberpunk? And I wouldn't say that. The uh, cyberpunk is high I think it's high tech low society is like the the briefest sentence that describes what cyberpunk is. It's like kind of it it's in the nearest future as opposed to retrofuturism is often pretty far flung in the future um and there's much less of a focus on the uh, yeah potentially for sure it's just that cyberpunk is generally pretty close to the modern day and there's much more of a focus on the influence of technology on individuals within a broader society um whereas i think the scope of retrofuturism is usually a bit bigger um it's usually yeah because there's a big emphasis on it's because like in in the late 40s post world war ii is done and over and technology wise you know, rockets are starting to become a thing the concept of going to space is like we're on the cusp of sort of doing that kind of thing and we start really looking outwards towards space and other planets and oftentimes in retro futurism you will see depictions of the world and the city more familiar places obviously in a totally different style but it's very optimistic. They're gleaming cities, beautiful Whereas... clothing and people, but the 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 space out there is full of monsters and strange creatures and totally bizarre worlds. And those are adventures to be sought after and I imagine that's where the uh... The, travel the my mysteries is definitely a big part of it i i would imagine though that the, the reason why it seems like cyberpunk might be an opposite is because cyberpunk is very pessimistic about the future yeah. and um and retrofuturism is very optimistic about the future um but i think i think cyberpunk is a really fucking cool genre oh yeah absolutely love cyberpunk anyway i hope you got your money's worth on that. yeah <laughs> are there genres you think are uncool ringy I don't know that there's a genre that I would find uncool. Anime. I... <laughs> anime is not a genre. It's a um, it's uh, it's animation. I guess it's a subcategory of animation. I, I, I think it's well. Without getting into it, I think there's a decent argument that could be made that, especially at this point, anime is is a there's a huge portion of it that is a kind of a genre and a style with the sort of cultural tropes and. 
consistencies that you can see in it. But of course, there's a lot of there's a huge amount of variety. I say I say it jokingly, even though I don't really like anime. Don't worry, and um, I'm just like three lines, I'll trigger all of chat for a good hour, okay? As a type of animation, anime is an art form that comprises many genres found in other mediums. It is sometimes mistakenly classified as a genre itself. In Japanese, the term anime is used to refer to all animated works, regardless of style or origin. Interesting. Where are you reading that from? The Simpsons is an anime. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now go be triggered. Anyway. Sparkle! Um, that's... That would be a fun TV show, wouldn't it? The Adventures of Mr. Sparkle. Yeah, I'd watch the that. The fact that the reason why Mr. Sparkle exists is a fusion between a fish and a light bulb, and that's Homer. <laughs> Mr. Sparkle! <laughs> I have a feeling that Rags Mel just think we're saying nonsense bullshit right now. They're, oh, they're the protagonists in The Arrival. And they dude, I heard so happen. many weird art names today. It's all bullshit to me. <laughs> hey, did you catch that, Jay? I included you in the potential Mr. Sparkle understanding. Yeah, I do understand that, because I've seen, like, all of Golden Age Simpsons. I know, that's what I did. I, yeah. I believe there are some things you have seen, but you really did take the whole touch grass comment too seriously, didn't you? You just never touched media again. Did you... You know when you said... I looked at the newspaper and realized there's nothing, well, you figured there was nothing fun for you in there. Do you have that same thought when you saw the box set for Lord of the Rings? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, got him. Um, Disgusting. Yeah. Uh oh. Oh. So anyway, I'll admit Episode 5 surprised me. I was expecting Reva to beat Vader effortlessly. Was pleasantly surprised to see him beat her effortlessly. Was expecting Disney Star Wars would cause me to expect character assassination now. Uh, they still did. He didn't kill her. Yeah, they still... Again, they fucking retarded. before and after they damage him. They're gonna regret yeah. that. Vader's pretty heavily damaged by this episode. It's kind of sad. He does a lot of weird stuff. Um, yeah. You'll see that. Eventually. I can't promise a release date for that one. That is still very much in the editing process. But the next one's out tomorrow. Woohoo! Yay. EFAP 189 Super Chats when? They put daddy on the end, oh my. Well, we got- When daddy? So, it's kind of weird. I'm trying to like, they're all ready to go. I just didn't want to flood Moolah with them. So, I'm trying, I was gonna put them, try and put them out one per week and then I was like, oh, I'm putting out minis for, uh, for Kenobi. Does that count as too many minis at once? I, I don't know, I guess it shouldn't because they're different things. They, they're on their way out. I'll put them out. Um, though, I guess I could show it now. There's no reason not to. We managed no, to get that new bit of artwork done. So once Kenobi's over and we start up a new... Well, to oh, be honest yeah, with you, it looks great. Any kind of uh, coverage on TV shows, which we do have <gasps> lots of plans in the future, it will look like this. Ain't that neat, everybody? Ooh. Wow! You ain't what seen happened this in before. Here? Whoa. Yeah. Oh, wow. so regal. Look at that. Beautiful. I've seen it. Wow. Well, you could, if you wanted to, see it now. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I like it. I really like it. It's a good. It's a good shade. A good tone. A good. I hue. do like me a purple. Um, purple is pretty like neat. It. Yeah, you'll end up seeing a lot of the purple boy if we end up doing lots of different plans we have. Um, but yeah, boy. so this will mean Minnie's no longer have TV shows put into it, it'll go back to just being uh, trailers and Super Chat catch-ups and I guess whatever else that's small that we end up throwing in. Who knows? Can you, know, be? you know what you should do is you should retroactively go back and renumber mm. all of the minis and remove the TV episodes and relabel them as EFAP TV. You know, I just wasn't tempted to do that. As weird as it sounds. You can do it, Jay. You're the manager. Yeah. As the manager, I don't do menial work. Oh. Then hire someone to do it for you. Yeah, that's what you guys are. Oh my god. Oh my goodness gracious. Get wrecked. You're gonna have to double what you pay us if you want us to do that. Fine. Um, you can have a second dollar. Aw. <laughs> Damn. This Good. one. That'll buy me an extra sip of gasoline. 
<laughs> this one says Kenobi brought the magic. Yes. No, it won't. Yes, Grandpa now sleep. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> oh. Kenobi brought the magic. Uh, welcome Kenobi. back. Welcome back, Dumbos. Get Sola Sands on for some Star Wars stuff. His droid vid was pretty cool. Also, he referenced Steve Happen a vid he did two years ago. <laughs> Not sure Solar exactly Sands? who that is, but uh, maybe. I'm familiar with that person's videos. They're, they're browsing DeviantArt videos. Mm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Read Disney Letter Media. Okay, look. Don't need to jump. They've they've shat on Disney quite a bit, all right? They're not, they ain't Disney. Yes, they have. They just they just uh, have a really bad take on Kenobi. Strange take. One that is hard Kenobi. to understand exactly. Mola, would it be cool if you said this? Um, and I used it in a video. Yeah, you can use this in a video. So the line is, Billy, I'm going to turn you into a lizard. I guess I'll see that one way, one, one, one day. I don't. It implies so much tension because we don't know if he's going to be able to turn Billy into a lizard or if mm -hmm. this is what Billy wants. Hopefully so it's many what mysteries. he wants. Not sure how to prove I'm me, at least not without making tons of cringe rooftop jokes, which I don't want to do because I've mellowed out a lot since I was last here, so I hope people just believe me. Hmm. Yeah, I actually kind of do believe you based on that. <laughs> I like how Jay told us to be the super skeptical ones <laughs> on these raw impersonators, and literally the first super chat that comes after it is claiming to be raw. Jay's like, yeah, I, I got you. I believe this it. is him, guys. <laughs> mm. Um... Perfect timing on the stream, by the way. This is uh, from New Ra, potentially. Uh, I watched all the Mando Boba streams, RLM <laughs> hack frauds, at a point where they like being miserable. Of course they praise this and refuse to watch stuff like Maverick. Huh? Um, Wait, did they refuse to watch Top Gun? I don't know if they ref... I thought they refused to watch Batman. I don't know if they refused to watch Maverick. Why wouldn't they want to watch Top Gun? Out of curiosity, if anybody... Well, like I said, I've been watching the videos. I don't remember them saying they refused to watch that. Yeah, I don't I missed that. It. They mentioned the Batman in their video on uh, Kenobi. Well, it's just a meme, Briefly. right? They keep mentioning how they're not oh, going to talk it about meme? it. Yeah, yeah, oh, so okay. Oh, okay. Okay. they said, okay, the first time they mentioned it, they were like, if, the, if, a, li if a comment about us liking Batman or whatever gets 100,000 likes, we'll watch it and review it. And then it did. And the, but it was clear in the video that they were like joking, and then they you they can't started, joke about that kind of thing. I think they started a couple of videos saying like, "Oh, I just saw the Batman. I can't wait to talk about it." But first, and then they talk about something else. They did this with um, Dune a couple of times, if you remember. They wouldn't talk about Dune for ages, and then they finally did. I think it was Jay and uh, one of his one of their friends. It wasn't one of the Canadian friends. It was I Colin. I think so. Yeah. Um, you know they, they can really they can review whatever it, they want, but like. Yeah. It does come across as strange to like, I'll watch the new Disney Star Wars show when I'm almost certain it'll be terrible instead of the movie that everybody's been recommending, you know? Like, if you're gonna pick something to watch, I don't know, but I, I don't know why you'd rule out something like the Batman. Especially if you say, if this comment gets 100,000 likes, we'll watch a movie. And it's like, if you, it's one thing if you say, if like, if you, this comment gets 100,000 likes, I'll cut off my left pinky or something like that. Obviously, don't do that. But if it's watching a movie for 100,000 likes, that's a coordinated effort by your community that shows that they really want to, first off, that they take you seriously, which is generally good, but also that they really want you to see this. And you, and it's just watching a movie, you know, it's not like a, even if you, even if your thoughts were, you talk about it for 20 seconds. That's something. We saw it. We thought it was okay. Uh, and it was neat. And the acting was fine. And it had the style. And the music was all right. Now, on to the video. Like, that'd be something. I think that they were, the whole thing was a meme, though. I think they were def definitely trying to make it come across as just a joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Because I remember that as well. Mm hmm Sad. No, I say you... don't let him get away with it. Yeah, and, and as James Moore just said, they do say watching the Batman is not guaranteed, like a, as a as like a disclaimer oh, meme okay. at the end of. The All right. Table. Well, if if there is a disclaimer, I guess that uh, it's like basically a bit. <laughs> Boo. Also, get Abby Simmons on for something related to the MCU. Her Captain Marvel and Captain America vids are neat. Oh yeah, play DDLC too. 
Abby Simmons. Abby Simmons. I do not know that. I do not name know either. this person. No. Oh. Abby Simmons, Captain Marvel. Let me take a look here in a second. Abby Simmons. Abby Simmons, Captain Marvel. Um, it says here, uh, it's confirmed in Disney canon that Yoda and Kenobi left a child to die at the temple. What the fuck is this trash? If you're talking about Kenobi as a show, I think most of those kids were killed during Order 66, where Yoda and Kenobi were both fighting clones and stuff. Um, if you're talking about something else, like something that happened as they were at the temple and they ditched like a kid or something, like, I don't know, but that would suck if it's true. Shakespeare insult of the day. Um, oh, I just said uh, he her her is her video is how to write a strong female character who isn't toxic and annoying. And the the the, the thumbnail is a picture of Captain Marvel with an arrow pointing at her. Why I hate strong female characters. So I guess she doesn't like Captain Marvel. Wow. And which is weird because she's a whammon and those I, characters I also are for hate them. Women. I do I also, too. Yeah. That's why we. That's why you're here. We um. We needed more women hate. We collect. We needed more. Like Pokemon. Kenobi. Anyway, the Shakespeare in Soliday is out. You mad-headed ape! A weasel hath no such a deal of spleen as you are tossed with. That's from Henry the the fourth. Okay. Mm. Quite the insult. I would be perplexed. I heard that Henry the Fourth was only half the man Henry the Eighth was. Nice. Mm. Laying on my bed right oh, now good. with thirty-eight degrees fever. Um, oh, that's not good. Had to miss newest Jurassic World with my buddy. I hope I can recover through anger at those bad takes. Great Obi Wan <laughs> vids rags. Oh, thank you very much. I'm glad you like those little things. Hope you get better, sir. This fever. Yeah. Yeah. Get yourself an ice pack. Yeah. Fevers are no fun. No. Mo Boo. I hope it isn't the... Uh, what's the new thing? Monkey pox? I hope it isn't the monkey pox. Hmm. Disco fever. I always thought that was just an alternate name for AIDS. I would actually say that the prequels somewhat bolstered Obi-Wan into the character we know from the OT. His loss and failure are what drive him into the man he was. Too bad Kenobi the show sucks. Um, I, I think so. I think that I am more than happy to take the prequels when thinking about Obi-Wan and the OT than not have them. Um, thinking about that whole environment that he was in and grew up in and was trained in, all getting torn down, I think that informs a decent amount of um, his sort of resolve in, in what we see in the OT. Again, though, that doesn't mean that I think that the prequels are in any way perfect. Just, uh, there are some things I like to pull from them that I think assist the OT. Conflicting tone. When you show a dead Jedi trophy room in the same episode as a trench coat scene... Yeah, we, we, we talked about... I mean, one of the more direct ones is the fact that Leia is screaming as she's about to get tortured, and then they're like, Oh, get ready for the funny scene. Like, wait, what? I, don't, I still don't think it's supposed to be a funny scene. I no, think I don't just think so. Defense of it. Which is weird yeah. because I laughed more at the little girl about to be tortured than I ever did at the very strange reveal afterwards of the coat. That's not true. Though. That's not true at all, you liar. Yeah, <laughs> We've got you, it on record. When you, see, when you see episode four come out, I'm, I'm laughing maniacally like a hyena. Also, Lightyear was, was like, okay. Big problems, though. Okay. Big problems, but it was okay. <laughs> I mean, All right. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know if anybody here really has any interest in watching that film. Uh, no. No, I think the only way I'd watch I it not. is if someone I trust watched it and told me it's absolutely horrible or amazing. And then I'd be like, all right. <laughs> right, whereas the much more likely answer is it's going to be, it's... Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I came well, to this channel. Dog, so no, hyenas are more closely related to cats. They're closer to Felidae than they are Canidae. Uh, they are their own it's little thing, long. though. Hyenas are kind of doing their own thing over there, but they're closer to dogs than, or cats than dogs. I came to this Ain't channel. Nothing like a hyena. 
I came to this channel for unbiased ah! movie coverage, but then I got Jeb pilled. Also, hi Rags. Hello, Jeb pilled. It's the best. Take pill. that, Jeb pill. There was Please another. Swallow. Um, there was another thread about how we're awful, awful people for covering Jenny's video on Joker. Um, yes. And I was scrolling through the top comments, and one of them was like, "How the fuck do they spend an hour talking about Jeb Bush?" Like, and I was just like, <laughs> "I love this. I actually love this." <laughs> <laughs> how how couldn't you i'm surprised it was oh, only an hour we only, only an spent hour. an hour talking about jeb bush that was the stream where we discovered his name was john ellis bush bush i'm still i'm still so disappointed by that that was funny as fuck. And yeah, um, it's just, whenever you get people who actually watch it, because they just don't believe the reality, and then they find out it's so disappointing to them, because they, they're so ready to hate, and then they're like, Oh, what? <laughs> oh, they're talking about Jeb Bush for an hour, what is this? <laughs> they're abusing poor Jeb. No, celebrating is the truth. Jeb Squad. Please, collab. Unfurl. Was doing research into who is writing Kenobi, and it turns out the lead writer has only three writing credits to his name. The first got 24% on Rotten Tomatoes, the second lost 150 million, and the third was Army of the Dead. Yeah, he was the- he did the screenplay for Army of the Dead. That's one of those- It's crazy, isn't it? Like, how did you- who- who did you suck to get this job? You know, like how what if we looked do? at someone's uh, history of writing and there was like five credits and let's say there was one bad, two okay, and then one good and one that's like we haven't seen or something. We'd be like, okay, you know, see what happens. Okay. But if someone had five and it was like great, 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 great Army of the Dead I, and it was the newest one was Army of the Dead, I'd be like, uh, nah. <laughs> like, yeah, nah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that movie's so bad what happened. To... Are you that, okay? That one's such a well, I mean, blight. At that point, I might, I might have assumed like something happened with the studio. Something must have gone catastrophically wrong. <laughs> yeah. So, like maybe you know maybe they were working. Maybe Zach was telling them exactly what they needed to do. Oh, in this universe, I'm saying that like they're they're the writer director. I say. Okay, and, and we know there's not studio interference then. I suppose yeah. if we did know that, then yeah, that would be one of them blights that's just like, that's like Wonder Woman 84 levels where you're just like, Patty, what the fuck? To be fair, I'm agreeing with all this, but I also, I haven't seen Army of the Dead. I just, it's terrible. I just trust you on this. Let's put it yeah, this way, Jay. It's a film that I would even recommend watching for laughs. There's a good reason Jay shouldn't watch it, and that is because I wouldn't want to interrupt your current projects. Because you'd be like, this is so hideously bad, I want to make a video. And I'd be like, no, 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 Jay, stop. You got other Jay, if you Why ever you believe want, us about anything, ever believe us that this bad. Because Why it's... Why don't you want my Army of the Dead video? I want your other videos. But also Army of the Dead. If you can make them both, go ahead. If you, if you, honestly, if you made an Army of the Dead video, I'd be, I'd be kind of curious what you have to say about it. Because, boy, that film... It is an <laughs> uncomfortable film to watch. Not emotionally. Physically. Physically. Mm -hmm. Downright. Really? It's, actually it's legitimately yes legitimately nauseating yeah no it gave gave me a full-on headache um which is, is, is very is rare that, for films uh, to do that to me ever we're not memeing or, or some kind of like weird no 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 it's 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 the way that they shoot that film it is very blurry a, mm -hmm. a lot of the time yeah just look up screenshots of army of the dead and you'll find it in every one I don't know what camera they used. I don't know if that was like a, a post production thing, but it is a very blurry film. Hey, Jay, did you know I that there came was a, close. a dead pixel in the movie? Wait, there was a dead pixel in the movie. Yep. I was, I was almost about to tell Jay that about halfway through they finally fix it, but then I realized no, no, no. That's just when I got used to it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think they updated like the streamable versions to not have the dead pixel anymore, did. but. Uh, yeah, it was because if I remember correctly, Zach got particular lenses he loved from like eBay or something from somebody, and then the ones he used had like one of them had a dead pixel in it. Yeah. Awkward, but it's great reality, I suppose. Insert shocked that, me. That's almost that, that's almost something you can't blame them for, I guess. But like, they could have noticed it and fixed Checked? it. I, no, yeah. I was gonna say, isn't that like the whole point of? Quality control is to notice these things. Yeah, yeah. Quality control. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, you, the, the point of quality control the is movie. to notice Army <laughs> of the Dead. Wow. You guys are being mean. Zach's made so many good movies. Yeah, this, um, 
This, I mean, these shots, they the don't look so. good. And then also, just expand that out to two the, hours. Two and a half, I think. What the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying you're not baby. excited by this image? No. That means that Zack Snyder is Can I, I mean, you guys will hear the say all of this if you ever get the Army of the Dead. EFAP movies. It does exist. I hope so. <laughs> um, it does exist. We have seen what a it. fucking... It. What an easy win for a story. Mercenaries sent into steel from Vegas while zombies are covered all over it. Easy. That is like the easiest fucking thing to make interesting ever. And you screwed it all up to the point where nobody talks about uh, this movie. Boo. Boo, Zach. Boo. Anyway, insert shocked meme reaction. I have watched a lot of Rags dog bites videos and only now I noticed what's on the far left side of his desk. Dog toys. <laughs> a Halo 3 mm. poster. Yeah, exactly. A whiteboard. A fridge. A frit, damn it. Dildos. Oh, damn. Yeah, some of those. What Allegedly, day... if that's what they are. I don't even know if that's what they are, but. What day is the first of the week? What time zone? Sunday? Monday is the first day of the week. Well, it's between Sunday and Monday. Well, it I don't know what it means for it to be the weekend if one of the days of the week is literally the beginning of the week. I thought that weeks officially began with Sunday, but... Um, I guess I don't really get that as a thing. I, I think, I mean, a lot of places will count Sunday as the beginning of the week. It's just that Monday makes more sense to me as the beginning of the week. It's the beginning of the work week, and the the Sunday is part of the weekend, you know? But a lot of people in chat are saying Sunday. Well, uh, it says here, Sunday is the first day of the week, whereas Monday is the first day of the working week. Internationally, Monday, or the Monday, has now been connoted as the first day of the week. <laughs> Okay, I just looked at Google no. Calendar and Sunday is the is uh the the first day that they put in. Yeah, I mean I've always known this to be a thing that Sunday is counted as the first day of the week. Funnily enough, like um certain, you know, like uh I don't know what they're called, but you know when you have like a scheduled uh like pills like medications, yeah. they'll they'll mm -hmm. oftentimes in their boxes go Sunday to Saturday. Oh, okay. Like, uh, you know, it crosses in a line, so... Yeah, uh, well, I'm... I just put a calendar in here on Sunday is the first day on it, too. I just don't think that makes much sense, that's all. It probably does when we go back through history and figure out why it was oh, that way, but yeah. Um, intuitively, probably. we think of Monday as the beginning of the week. Of the week, think, yeah. Well, like, yeah. It, it makes sense to be around there, because, like, Sunday is the mandated day off, right? And it just is beyond the that, mandated day off, uh, so I guess, it, in Christianity. It makes sense so, yeah. For it to be Sunday it's, or Monday. No, the Sabbath is Saturday. It's the Sabbath. Right, but it's Sunday now, isn't it, really? Mm -hmm. Or I guess it depends on what denomination you are. Typically, yeah, in Christianity, generally, like you go to, you know, Sunday morning, time to go to church. Fringy thinks that 2021 is the beginning of the decade. No, it's 2020, what? because <laughs> 20 would be the beginning of 20. How is that even remotely analogous? You should be embarrassed that you even said that. that. Oh no! I think I think also I, 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 um, I, also yeah. it kind of is. It, um, no, it's not it, because two thousand well, started no, because we, so no because we started uh, we started with the year one. So if if you start from no, there, we started with we? the year zero, didn't we? I'm pretty sure we started with the year one. Wouldn't there be a we zero AD? Someone call see. up Justin. I'm pretty sure there isn't, because my dad talks all the time about how there isn't a year zero AD, and if, if there is, he's been lying to me. Hold on. Wait, I need to know. Is that true? Is there... Is there Let me Google... There... Just a second. Let me Google what was the first year. <laughs> <laughs> what was the first year? <laughs> What's the... It says... It says 81. No. Or Zero one C eighty one period that never actually existed. In the usual calendar, one goes from one BC to one AD and skips zero. Okay, and Damn, wait, bring then... BTF owed by Google. Jesus Christ! Yeah. Well, what do you mean? Jesus just took a shit on your chest. <laughs> so what? 
so when we think about so you're saying that 2000 was the last year of the 90s no i'm not saying that because that's fucking but, okay i'm just <laughs> saying that you count it in that way <laughs> but right but well, then like, someone in chat like, said well, oh uh, no 2021 actually is the first year of the decade and that just sounds like some bullshit to me I don't see well, how like, that makes any sense at all. Fair, the if, 20th if count... century is not the same um, classification as the 90s. The 90s refers to the 90s, while the 20th so, yeah, yeah, century yeah. The is 90, the... The 90s well, were yeah, the yeah, 20th yeah. century. Um, so, if you want, if you want like, um, 1 BC to, like, 10 BC to be a decade, and you want 1 AD to, um... Hang on, I'm confused now. <laughs> I'm. I think I'm. I'm not I'm, too me, upset me too. about the middle I, of about eighty on having an AD zero, and that's like the dividing line between AD and BC. Like I'm fine with that being a special thing. I guess it's just um. You, you, that's it. So there was just this one decade that is actually not a decade. It's nine years technically. Well, which which one? Well, is unless it? you want to I include guess... one BC in that decade. But w w 1 BC would be part of the preceding one, right? Wait, 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 wait. No, hold on. No, yeah, Let me that's Google right, what is the shortest be, decade. Because it would be... <laughs> if you have 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, that's... It would be 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2... Oh, you're wait. Counting on your, I can hear you counting on your fingers. I'm not actually. I was about to start, though. I've got my, th I've got my thumb <laughs> wrapped in my hand as I'm working backward. Okay. So you have 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That would be a whole decade if there's no zero bc or ad damn yeah. that's like a well if hmm. you want that to be a decade then you include one like if you want the decade to have 10 fucking years in it you will include one bc and then if you include and everything before that as a decade then you've got the decade starting at 2 bc or like ending at 2 bc and then starting so, at like think... 11 bc the conclusion from this would have to be that there is one decade in our calendar that is an incomplete decade because definitely the decades work now is like have you considered that it is to 99 would be uh, well mm -hmm. it is complete and it's incompleteness in because it is it is part of the complete timeline of of this calendar that probably isn't great in terms of reflecting the totality of human existence Wow. Well, like, we also um, didn't have uh, leap years until like the 1400s, I'm pretty sure. So okay. if we'd been accounting for leap years the whole time, the date would be significantly different. I think it's oh, a it's year and 30 days different. Sorry, someone's right. It would be two decades because no, it, the BC would be 9876543211. So even if there was a year at zero, one has to lose out in order for this to work. There has to be at least one decade that is incomplete. But in this case, it's two. It's I think they're all the dead, so they don't mind that much. I'm sure they don't mind. I guess I'm just wondering why they would leave behind the system. I think, <laughs> I think it's special enough of a dividing point that having technically one decade only being nine years at the very beginning and having all of them being just fine after that is Yeah, fine. I guess you accept that as the trade-off. Nevertheless, yeah, yeah. the, ch the chapter said zero that because is I odd, Sunday I was the, the... I didn't agree with that. Your point is still not apt. Um, what super chat are we currently responding to? No, what I can't remember what the super chat was. It was just asking whether it was Sunday or Monday. What's your opinion well, on years? I think was the they, super they said chat. what day is the first day of the week and what time zone? What time zone? I guess it'd be uh the UTC is the first time zone, isn't it? The check. week chosen. What is the first time zone? Or is the first time zone? Or is the UTC both the first and last? Because that's like the dividing line. GMT. Well, GMT is the one that they all are based around, but like it's not the first one chronologically in our time that we've decided. UTC is. Uh, or have I. No, UTC. Or is UTC the one at the very right. end? Um, Because it says it's 52. That's what it is right now, Sunday. It is 52, 0, 1252. Wait, no. No, that's not what the clock... Yeah, 1253 is what it is now. UTC plus 12. Is that the first one then? Okay. Damn, just give me a lot. Give me the map. Where is the map? Uh. Okay, so UTC 0 is... uh. That's Greenwich Mean Time. 
time time and so it'd be uh utc 12 would be the first one you could put it in your drinks it could be green witch mean teen green witch mean time in greenwich green no, witch I... wait rags were you is that how you think it's pronounced i don't even know what it is <laughs> i thought you were memeing <laughs> it's like it's greenwich was... mean time Grenit, G R E N N I C H. Don't no, play credulous with me, Arkansas man. G -R -E -N -N -I -N -I no, I, no, I, no, I legit, no, I, if you're I'm gonna not complain doubting about you. This. I just don't know about this word. <laughs> I, no, I'm not complaining. I, I legit just don't know about Greenwich Mean Time. Yes, you do. You must have heard I, that, I, right? I, it's in I know of, I know of, I've heard of GMT, just, but if you asked yeah. me what GMT stood for, I don't, th I don't think I would have said really? Greenwich. Really? Because I heard Greenwich Mean Time before GMT. Same. Oh like, well, I shit! You discovered me. Well, I guess I'm just curious because yeah, I, nah, I knew what Greenwich Mean Time was never. at the time. I knew of GMT. Huh. That's what you guys used to for like EFAP and stuff, but I never knew. Well, no, well, well it's uh, what uh, Mola uses. In Britain, I use it because. That's Britain's like neutral time. time is GMT plus zero, if you will. But then when we get into summertime, is plus one or BST British summertime. No, no it's BST. We, it's, it's important Bullshit to clarify. Time. <laughs> British time is GMT, which is UTC plus zero, and BST is your summertime. Just to be wait, what did I say that was wrong? I think you said GMT plus zero, which Why is, is that, kind of like that's not wrong. Redundant. It's well, called it's plus zero. Kind of, it's, it's, it's kind of redundant because GMT is that is that is UTC plus yeah, zero. Yeah, well, but I use it specifically to say that it becomes plus one in British summertime. Oh, because uh, we we I've yeah, used we, British I've used GMT plus one before, so I didn't want to confuse oh, by okay, saying it's okay, GMT right. not mentioning Fair the enough. plus one. Fair enough. Um, we all learned something. I learned that there's no year zero, which I'm pretty sure I did know. I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure that was something I did know. Momentarily escaped. Lamest have you tangent seen, in EFAP history. Uh, wow. No, right were, were you about Literally to say Rags, in this you... tangent. Like, we talked about how we won't spend an hour talking about Jeb, Jeb Bush. Yeah, that's awesome. I guess all it's right, so the, the best tangent. <laughs> also... Were you about to ask, have I seen the film Year One starring Jack Black? No, I was about to ask if you guys have seen 10,000 BC, the one where the I, mammoths no, build the pyramids. I haven't. That's Roland Emmerich. No. I've not. Is that going to be in our Roland Emmerich? Arc I'd be on board with that. I also want to watch Apocalypto BC. again. I would love to see Apocalypto again because the first time I saw it, I liked it quite a bit, and I wonder if it holds up. I remember up. liking it a whole bunch. I think well, the, the best proof of that BC would be the, the, the crew that never fucking gets together, that crew. 1001 BC? <laughs> or I guess 9,999 BC? I wasn't alive then, I couldn't see it. <laughs> you were. Shut up. So There's, anyway. Yeah, we need to, yeah, yeah, 10,000 BC for EFAP movies, we'll do it. Well, we'll do it for the 10,000th EFAP movie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. BC. We'll see you all in 2157. We'll get there. On like two weeks. That's It'll actually optimistic. be way, no, that is optimistic, it's probably more like 2,500. <laughs> In what sentence would you use both Kenobi and good? And they've given an example. Want to watch Kenobi? Nah, I'm good. I was about to say Kenobi. What about, what about uh, Kenobi is not good? Whoa. Oh, yeah. wow. That's, I, I like that one. Oh, damn. Wow. That one, yeah. Perfect. That one. Yes, that one. Perfect. How about Kenobi? Good? No. What about like you're watching you're like you're like halfway through watching Kenobi and you go, Good, I've gone blind. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good <laughs> meme. <laughs> Question Mauler. Oh, I... Did you ever find out what a Disney fanatical Star Wars movie was? If not, <laughs> do you think what do you think he meant? I think what the point he was trying to make there was that it's Disney's take now. The, the continuity of the prior, like, universe being, I guess we'd call it George Lucas's, is no longer what, isn't what Disney adhere to, because it's Disney's, like, fanatical Star Wars universe. They get to do what they want to do with their movies. Which isn't even a good argument, if that's what he meant, because they what? contradict their own rules all the fucking time anyway. So, yeah, that's it. Um, Buchu Man versus the Banana Savior. 
The banana what savior. I, I, I don't know what any of that is, but I like the idea of like a superhero who saves I, bananas. I was supposed to freeze like banana savior. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> no, I said banana savior with an upward inflection. Yeah, he was I'm asking who he was. That's why I said I don't know who he is. I do like the idea that the metal interpreted that as you saying the banana savior wins, <laughs> hands like, down. Yeah, I was like, yeah, that's no, the one. For sure. Metal, I am I am as perplexed as you are. I got hey, listen, no idea. My brain is shutting down now. Yours coming up now. So All right, fine. Yeah, it is. I, <laughs> I agree with Fringy. I'm putting my money on the banana savior too. He wins. I mean, I, I, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> sorry, I missed. Funny. Sorry, I missed quite a few of these. So today I have two neat animals. The pygmy jerboa is the first one. Wow, this already sounds interesting. Man, I've heard of them. Whoa! Like, not talked about them. They're like, I think they're the smallest mammal. They have to. They uh, their heartbeat is super duper fast, and they got to eat a lot of food every hour. Damn. You're saying. What? Yeah, More they're in a they're in a Kurskazak video. Look, I would, at him. Well, look at that little fella. Dude, this this seems like the kind of critter that would be a really wise character in an animal animated thing. Because it's so small. <laughs> There's little whiskers too, that's suitable. He'd be he would have all the knowledge. Sorry, what was it called? Knowledge. Uh it is called the Pygmy Jerboa. Hmm. And... What was the second one? Oh my god, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I think it's the smallest mammal. Uh, I think that's what it is. I, I just wasn't. I just wasn't ready to be for, confronted by this image. Is this? It's not. No way is this real. It's only four point <laughs> four centimeters. <laughs> that one is. Funny. Hang on, I'll put that on the screen now. <laughs> that one is funnier than the ones I've I. Seen. I think I have a problem with the title of that headline. Meet Baluchistan Pygmy Jerboa, the only rodent you will find cute. Um, fuck you. That's not true. First There's off, a ton of cute rodents. Rodents yeah, are like, very cute. Most rodents are cute. What a ridiculous yeah. headline actually, from the India Today. I I'm actually with Jay now. Is this one real or is this like a little doll or something? No, this... Hmm, this one got, in particular. It looks like it's got really big feet. <laughs> he looks, yeah, he looks really. like he's... I, it, he really looks like he's in a stop motion fantastical thing. I think that one's real. I, I just, I don't know. If you look at all of these pictures, I'm still not convinced it's a real species. These are like... If, if an alien species came across a chicken nugget and was asked to reconstruct it, <laughs> this is what they think it they was. They were told it was living. <laughs> so like, like, oh, I guess we just, this is... Yeah, we just killed it, cut off the tail and the ears and the legs and threw it in the fryer and it's a chicken. Maybe the, the tail is because there was a french fry next to it, and so they thought that was his tail. And they were like, oh my god, they separated it out. It's horrifying. Um, the second was the longhorned orb... The longhorned orb weaver spider. Holy fuck. Oh, let's have a look at this. I think we've been shown this before, but at the same time, I'm, I'm surprised enough that I don't know. <laughs> that one looks like a bug. That would be is... quite a spooky weird. thing to see. <laughs> so thinking about it, if the horns are like strong enough, you could just hold the horn and it's fucked, right? I guess so. Not that we don't have massive control over spiders anyway, but like, you know, this one in This particular. is just icing on the cake. This is just humiliation. <laughs> yeah, because you just hold one of the horns and it's like, oh, fuck you. <laughs> like, you got me by my horn. Like, you, you dick. Oh, very clever. No one has ever done that one before. Now let me down. <laughs> you, the name, you know, it's accurate. Well, I, it, the long horn part is accurate. I don't know that it weaves orbs. How do you know that? that? I, I said I don't know that. I literally just said I don't know that it weaves weaves off. <laughs> it weaves <laughs> off. What does it mean to Elf. weave a thing? I don't want to know. It's probably nasty. But um... I'm, I'm, I'm looking at stuff it has woved, and it's not orbs. It's webs. It's webs. Oops. Web orbs. Whipples. No, they're not. They're not orbs. Though. They're just. They're just flat. I'm pondering I my web orb. Think. More people are waking up to the Disney shows being bad. Mando, Deboba, to now Obi-Wan, I've seen more people get soured on it. Maybe wishful thinking. 
To be fair, I think Boba is still the worst out of the three. Oh, maybe Obi-Wan. Well, I mean, I dislike Obi-Wan more. I know, I, I yeah, I agree with you, but... embarrassing. Yeah, Boba was really fucking... Boba was pretty darn embarrassing. <laughs> God, what were they doing? It seems like oh, we're all on board with the idea that Mando Season 1 is probably the best out of the lot, but it's just not something that needs highlighting, because it's also shit. Um, Rags, you remember how early on when we were talking about crypto stuff, you were like, yeah, I wonder how people are holding up. So apparently, like, on r slash Bitcoin... Oh, wait, no, that's tweets from, like, 2021. In any case, there was some post on some crypto forum where it was just, if you need help, and it had this... It had the, uh... The, the suicide hotline on there. Jesus Christ. That's... Yeah. Don't kill yourself, please. No, well, it's just... It's... <sighs> crippling financial losses. Oh, yeah. Uh, scary thing. Um... So yeah, as the whole... Do they... Uh, uh, people coming around on realizing the shows are bad. <laughs> I would probably go as far as saying uh, it's probably gonna. It, it's the same kind of cycle we've been dealing with, where as soon as the new one is announced, they'll get super hyped. Like Andor, I'm sure Andor's first episode will be considered amazing. Um, who knows if that show will actually end up being better than these ones? You know, I'm, I'm actually. I think I have a level of curiosity with Andor now, just because the production seems so different than the ones we've seen so far. Uh, this one looks. What like do you mean? Because I don't know anything about Andor. The uh, there was um, a behind the scenes feature at. I think it came out with the 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 Star Wars convention-y thing, or, or one of them that was announcing all of the shows, and the amount of like work that looks like it's gone into Andor. And then if you look at the trailer, it looks much more like a movie in, that got put into a TV show than. Something like Boba Fett or even Kenobi, which still blows my mind that Kenobi wasn't given better treatment in terms of. Uh, You'd think the Kenobi show would get instead Andor, of Andor. I feel like um, Boba Fett was made in the same way that Kenobi and Mando have been, but had like the least amount of spending money. Uh, but they've all been kind it of made in the same sort of the way. Cheapest. And or I'm curious if it's been made in a different way, and thus maybe it could have a chance of being better. Because it wasn't and or the TV show one of the like earliest ones we were aware of, and it's just taken a while to come out. Yeah, they've been working on it for a while. So yeah, I'm curious about that one. Um, but yeah, I just same for Marvel, same for Star Wars. I think that the hype is a cycle, and people may turn on the TV shows faster. I guess as time goes on. That's about all you can hope for. When they just bad. let me know when Frick is out. I will. Babu Frick, yeah, that's that's what we're all excited to see. Ironic, but yes. Did RLM edit? I want to out... see. I want to see Frick and Jar Jar. I want to see Jar Jar, but I also don't want to see yeah. Jar Jar because it'll be Disney. Disney. Yeah, they'll would, ruin Jar Jar. Unironically, they'll ruin Jar Jar. Oh my God, could you imagine <laughs> them ruining Jar Jar? Um, did RLM edit out their discussion of Reva? I don't remember them talking about Reva, so... Oh, just to be clear, know. what we watched wasn't the full yeah. video. Well, yeah, maybe that's, they, so they're they asking if that. RLM edited it out, because they don't talk about Reva really in their video. No, but they do talk about how tall Darth Vader is for 12 minutes. So uh, I think what they're asking us is, do you but think they may have talked about her and then they edited it out? Oh, um, I get it. I don't... I mean, maybe she came up, but maybe. I don't know. I don't know. They had a very unstructured uh, discussion, and I don't really, I don't know. Which normally is totally fine, but it was just bizarre, as you guys saw. Like, uh, the, the, what we showed you in terms of that supercut was still linear, like, in terms of the timeline of their video, and it's just a lot of, uh, it still feels very unfocused. In a sense, like, probably would have been a way better discussion if they had more time to think on what they think of the show, I guess. Because uh, it seemed like they were trying to discover positions as they were explaining them. It's so weird to think about that Mike would go as far as saying, like, it is kind of trash, he's guilty of enjoying it when he shouldn't be, and blah 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 blah, but then also being like, he reckons there's a chance that it's going to get ruined with the second season. Mm -hmm. Like, those statements yeah. just give off very different vibes. Lord Longbong of Mewslington Abbey. Is there any good yeah. chance? of a Kong fab, of Peter Jackson's yeah. Long Kong. 
When Ooh. is less going on? It'll be a movie fab for the ages. Yes. Hello, Wagsies. Scritches for the good boy. Hello. Super chat before. <laughs> no, that's a new one. Uh, yeah, we 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 all we have some interest in doing a bit of a long kong sometime. Yeah. We probably will. Yeah, I'm on board with that. Someday we'll have. Hi, rags. That is all. Hello. Oh, all right. No. Yeah. Hello to you. I'm gonna leave you guys alone now. I'm getting very sleepy. Okay, battle. You just sleep right, well now. You. Okay. I will <laughs> certainly try. Uh, you right. will try. Nah. The sound he makes. Nah. You don't know that. I do know that because I made that sound. Oh my god, damn it. Bum, bum, bum. Are you Anakin? I'll say a new Metal's Forge tomorrow at some point. What's it about? Uh, what are you talking about? It's, uh, show was it? Uh, Crisis on Two Earths, DC Ooh. animated with a repository. Mm. I don't know when yet. I asked him, but he's not online right now. So, yeah, it's going to be tomorrow. Uh, Bag. Cool. Okay, that's it. G goodbye. It was goodbye. Fun. Bye, bye, bye. 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 I'm gonna do the same. I think actually. What have you got? What Metal's Forge are you releasing? Um, I'm releasing Metal's Forge on every Star Trek TNG episode for the next three years. That's true. That is. Metal true. and I are doing that. Um, for, for the next three years, we will be doing every Star Trek TNG episode one per week. So if you are in wow. in the EFAP yeah. audience, you were thinking, it would be so cool to hear two people from the EFAP verse go through every episode of TNG and talk about it. You're in luck. This is on the Lord you of Milk channel. Oh, yeah? it's just Metal and Jay. Oh, yeah. you could just, If you YouTube Metal and Jay and TNG, you'll find... How many are out? Is it yeah. four? It's called um, Me uh, Jay and Metal's Star Trek podcast so just search that and you'll is find that what it it's really called? yes that's what we called it i talked to him about Jeez. it rags i'm sorry i couldn't convince him did you really talk to him about it yeah i tried they just wouldn't what what, what, what do you have metal podcast. yeah there are currently five episodes out so it's not too late to change the title is what you're saying uh yeah what, what's wrong what's do you have do you have a complaint it just seems so uninspired. Because it that's, is. Um, that's, the, that's the joke. self aware grid. Yes. Anyway, I'm very sleepy, so I'm going to go to bed. All right. You fuckers. sleep well. Oh. Thanks for joining us. Check out Jay's channel. You make videos about how things are gay. Yeah. Like Dog Bites isn't? No, Dog Bites is great. Dog Bites is legit good. That's a good name. I do appreciate the joke, though, of calling it Jane Metal Star Trek Podcast. All right. Bye. Bye, boy. Yeah. Can't believe Metal allowed the show to be called Jay and Metal's Jay and Podcast, Metals. not Metal and Jay. Gosh, Metal, you got to well, stand up for yourself. Just like Adam and Sitch all over again. Well, ironically, I thought it was called Adam and Sitch. When when I went to look up the podcast when I was on it, I went Adam and Sitch because it just rolls off the tongue better and it's alphabetical. Oh, dude. I kept saying it without, like, real Like, it wasn't a conscious decision to do it wrong, but then I just started enjoying it. And then I was like, you know what? It is better as Adam and Sitch. <laughs> it is better. Everyone feels this way. One day Adam will get justice. Yeah, because because if we did it, it'd be well. There's three of us, and that starts to get a little wordy. But mm. yeah, and uh, well, because yeah. people have asked us like Moller and Rags or Rags and Moller. I don't know. Moller and Rags, like Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah, it does the, the two syllable one syllable like it. And it, is, it is alphabetical. Yeah, and ra you, you end it in a, and Rags. It it's really nice, nice and neat. Moller and Rags. I think so, but we were we that, we yeah. were very clever, and we had our audience come up with a really good name. And they came up with every fap. Uh, what what are we called? Every pod, every f up. Any 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 pause a frame. Hmm. 
any any I'm positive not just thinking about that two syllables and one that's that's actually a pretty common thing Starsky and Hutch, Ratchet and Clank. Well, except for Jack and Daxter, I guess that's oh, uh, the other way around. Is it Tucker and Dale. Tucker and Dale. Oh yeah. Um, what else? That's a that good be? movie. Everyone should see Tucker and Dale. Yeah, first. Cool it's movie. really. Good. It's. I do. I do quite love that movie. Uh, just for what it does. Some of them fucking jokes are great. <laughs> really good. I I thoroughly enjoyed watching. That's it. an easy fat movies. I think as well. You have to get some people who haven't seen it before. Uh, what was the out of 10 score for Everything Everywhere All at Once movie you didn't say? Hmm. I don't know. I think it gets to, it gets into a weird place because the, the nature of the jumping bodies and the power levels, it's just kind of odd. I, I'm not really, I really, really love it, but I'm honestly kind of not sure. I think I tried to, I remember talking to Fringy about some of the things I was trying to find was digging into the script in terms of inconsistencies and coincidences there's a couple i would probably like knee-jerk reaction of said eight out of ten it's probably like seven um but i would easily say like uh in terms of feels it's like easy 11 out of 10 for me i fucking love that movie it is high up on the feels chart yep. definitely um, um. I would have been happy if this had been a six-episode limited series of Ben on Tatooine dealing with PTSD post-Revenge of the Sith and talking with Qui-Gon Jinn's ghost and having visions of Anakin. Yep. Uh, I guess they're too afraid of the idea that people wouldn't be interested in that, I guess. Yeah. yeah. That's all it is. For whatever reason, yeah, don't get it. RLM, the Jedi are boring because they talk like robots. Also, RLM, we love Spock because he's smart and talks slowly. Love Spock, by the way. Play MGR, Mola. I'm sure they would say in response to that that Spock has a very particular, like, upbringing and, and the the species has a style that involves, like, and that they, they think he does come up with, like, interesting, logical things to say while they would consider all of the dialogue from the Jedi to be boring and, un, like, unmeaningful and whatever. The, when they say the West? Jedi talk like robots, they're saying that as criticism of it's incongruent with who they are supposed to be people. This is a bad acting thing. While Spock is like, that is how he's characterized. I'm pretty sure that's how they would argue it. Uh, I find Darth Maul to be a seriously interesting character, especially considering his background by, background by clone TV show. Do you mean Clone Wars? I'm guessing so. Um, if he loses his hatred for Kenobi, he physically dies. Repercussions of the dark side. What? That does not sound interesting to me. That If he stops hating Kenobi, he dies? Sounds weird, but um, okay. I don't know, like... I'm I'm fine with the idea, like on a base level, of being so fucking angry that you can keep yourself going. Like it's an adrenaline boost. It's like there there are, there's some physiological stuff to that, but I feel like they drag it out just to shadow the hedgehoggy eventually with this stuff, where it's like your hatred has consumed you, and thus it keeps you alive now. And if you stop hating me, you, I don't know, your blood stops pumping or something. It's just like okay. Turns out hatred is not a vegan. Thoughts on Top Gun, Maverick, Jurassic World, Dominion, and Stranger Things Season 4. So, it'll have to go Fringy, none of us, and then me. Oh, right, a Top Gun. Um, I think the third act seriously hurts that film. I think the third act's kind of a bit nonsense, really. Um, and so much so that... Or maybe not so much so, but more so that um, I don't know that the character work is fine. There are some parts of it that are good, but none of it is so like mind blowing that I think it overrides how absurd the uh the last like thirty minutes are. Um, I like it though. It's mm. a fun movie. There's some cool action. It's just that that third act, man, <laughs> like um, coincidence or convenience, I suppose. I'd still recommend it though. I think I think it's 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 fun. Fair enough. 
uh, yeah, I haven't seen it. I wouldn't mind seeing it at some point. I just don't know where I'm going to fit it in. And uh, Have you seen the original Top Gun, Rex? No, I have not. I haven't either. Actually. Maybe someday we can make that a double bill. Or something. I don't know. Yeah, uh, Jurassic World Dominion, none of us three have seen that. Uh, there would I likely get... be something of a plan in some way, shape, or form at some point to, to cover it. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Like um, all the Jurassic Park movies? Yeah, I would, I would like to do that. It's too, I would like to do that, yeah. It's too much of an opportunity to not take advantage of Ark being in the title, you know? It'd be, an, it'd be an EFAP movies for the ages. As for Stranger Things Season 4, um, famously, I have said on EFAP several times, Season 1, I like it a whole bunch, to the point where I was even tempted when I first saw it to make some kind of video on it, talking about what I thought was really well done about it. Maybe that'll happen one day, who knows? Uh, season 2, I was super excited, and uh, as soon as we found out when it was coming out, myself, I think even Metal at this point, he, I, if you were here I'd ask, I, I, I can't remember if he remembers, but uh, Smiler, Fortier, <clears throat> and a fifth guy, I think, we were all in a Discord call, and we were all watching it together, and I believe it was halfway through either the second or third episode that Smiler uh, dipped out and said this is too shit to continue, he can't do it. Um, which was really sad, but we kept on going, and I think it was halfway through the season that we all said, this is kind of funny to compare, right? So, we all said, we will continue it, um, after we've gone to sleep, basically, and it was like, okay, bye, everybody. Um, do you guys remember Bly Manor, when we were watching that, and we were, like, actually getting frustrated that we may not be able to watch all of it in the one night? Yes, I do remember. We were all mm -hmm. so fucking invested in seeing what happened next. Um, so, yeah, uh, basically, Stranger Things Season 2, we finished it up then, and we were just like, yep, so that was horrible. Um, and then I got re-tempted to make a video, because I was like, Stranger Things Season 2 is so awful compared to the first season, I'd love to explain why. And I never did. Season 3 comes out, I ignored it, and then Fortier was like, I want to watch it with someone, please. And I was like, fine. And it was even worse than Season 2, and... Oh, what, no. what was neat this time around is that a lot of people in the world were like, yeah, that was bad. That was really bad. And I was like, yay. This isn't, I don't have to deal with everyone saying season three is great. <clears throat> and then everyone says season four was announced after a couple of years. And I was like, that's hilarious. I'm not watching it. And then it came out and I saw some people saying like, it is pretty good though. I was like, yeah. And then some people I actually trust for their opinions were like, it isn't terrible. I was like, isn't terrible? What the fuck? And so um, I had some free time in the last week that were between doing different things here and there while editing as well, and I was like, I'll throw it on. Uh, first episode was quite interesting because to give you a brief understanding without spoilers, they've kind of reset their show a little bit. It really comes across as though they've had this moment of like, okay, season three was a fucking disaster. We need to stop and think about what our story even is. Because one of the big things that uh, Smiler pointed out back in the day was that Season 1 is contained. You don't need to go any further. But of course they will, because Stranger Things was super popular. And it has a cliffhanger, so there you go. Um, but Season 2 was like a terrible copy of Season 1. And it was just like, uh-oh, they don't have a plan. They didn't have a story to tell beyond Season 1. We're in trouble. And then Season 3 is this embarrassing mess that clearly came as a result of like, we got to get a story out, go, go, go. Season 4 feels like they sat down and thought about all the different things they should actually try and build toward. We've got new characters that are pretty interesting. We've got a new, I say new villain. They've contextualized him to try and account for prior continuity. But he's definitely a new guy in terms of, like, I remember when I saw the trailer of Season 4, he's, like, commentating or narrating it, I think, being like, uh, it's time and... You know, they, they'll never escape me. Just generic sort of villainy lines. I was just like, who the fuck is this guy? Um, and then uh, I watched the first episode, and for anybody in chat who has seen this, the first episode's ending? Yeah, I was like, um, okay. I'll keep watching this. I'm just curious where this goes. And um, I think I watched episode four, and I was quite impressed. I really enjoyed the story that happens in episode four. Uh, again, trying to remain spoiler-free while also giving enough clues to people who have seen it to know what I'm talking about. 
I found the story of that character going through that thing to be quite compelling. I thought she did a really good job. And uh, I actually finished the season, or the half season, today. And um, I'm happy with it. Uh, I was asked by a friend already, he's like, is it better than season one? I was like, I don't think so. I guess I'd have to rewatch season one. Um, but I enjoyed it enough. Around, though, by the sound of it. Well, so funnily enough, it's kind of slow, it, depending on how they finish out with these next two episodes, um, it's like right behind Angel Season 5 for one of the best examples of trying to repair your story when it's okay. gone so fucking awry. Um, interesting. Yeah, there's loads of choices they've made in Season 4 that I find so interesting in terms of getting your narrative back on track where it was falling apart to the point where they have genuinely, like, they've reset the origin story, let's put it, for the good guys, powers, and the bad guys world slash uh, operations. They've taken what we all knew and moved pieces around and reset the story just so that they can definitely facilitate whatever ending they're going with next. Because um, apparently it's ending with season 5, and it seems to me that yeah, what they did okay. was stop and then write out a story with purpose for 4 and 5, probably, and then made it. Which is, I swear to god, if that's what they did, it's just like, thank you. All you need to do is take more time with writing, and you'll end up with something mm -hmm. so much better. Yeah. So, um... I liked it. Uh, how good it is, is I would hesitate to say without maybe giving it a rewatch. There's a couple of contrivances, and I would happily agree there's a couple of one-dimensional characters that literally only exist to have the reactions they require for a character to have in the situations to facilitate certain results. It's like, oh great, that's the character that ended up here, because if it were anyone else, they'd probably do this reasonably, but because it's them, they're gonna do that, and then they do, and you're like, yeah, yeah, there you go. But I think that the, um, let's say the, 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 the main characters, they have a lot of good stuff going on. So, um... Yeah, I don't know. I'll be interested to see how they end the story. And as for would I recommend it, uh, for someone who's maybe watched the first three seasons, uh, yes, if you got through season three, you'll definitely be able to l like this. Would I recommend it as someone to just jump into season four without seeing season one, two, and three? Interestingly enough, I think you can. They provide you enough context to understand it. They give you flashbacks and then lines to sort of contextualize what you're missing. Um, you could, and... I guess it's, it's, it's one way to start up the show if you wanted to. One of the complaints I've seen from a lot of people is that a lot of nothing happens. Uh, they're like an hour and a half at long episodes. Well, some of them are, I think, maybe, but... I don't know what to say about that. I can't, I can't disagree necessarily because I was editing while watching some of this. It was only by episode four that the show earned uh, Monitor 1 privileges. So, you know. It was... Uh, you have to see how it goes for for for, for uh, those who watch it. I don't know. That, I am here. That is my spoiler-free assessment. There you go. Two things. Hey there, Molar. I just finished Soma, and it was the most Ooh. profound gaming experience ever. Without you, I would never have heard about it. Hi, Rags. I just finished a bunch of your videos. Love your stuff. Hello. I really do appreciate that. Thank you. Just. God damn it, Jay just boosted. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jay, damn it. He posted a picture. <laughs> Am I allowed to show that on stream? Probably not. Yeah, it's I it's mean, censored, the... but it's probably... No, I actually didn't mean for that. It's I only meant... the... You can show the Justice League on... Well... The, the reason... Oh, like, like he hasn't sent it yet? He yeah, like it's an unsent tweet. Yet. Jay, you have to... <laughs> <laughs> Jay, why do you do this to yourself? Why? Why, Jay? This, <laughs> it gives you energy. I Because, like, just in case. I'll show it the second Jay approves, okay? Come on, Jay. Fucking say oh, yes. Goodness. Say yes. Because this is, like, the perfect tweet for, I would say, the EFAP fandom. <laughs> well, I guess while we wait, 
that's a. Uh... <laughs> you have to spell. You have Whoa, to spell okay. the name correct for the tweet, just to be clear. No, I don't even. I love the fact that it's not capitalized and spelled wrong. <laughs> that's fucking great. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> um. All right. Well, until Jay approves, I will. I will say. Uh, it's great to hear more people play Soma, and super glad you uh, apparently enjoyed the fuck out of it. Good stuff. Absolutely, very glad that you enjoyed that game. Uh, what was the most realistic action slash fight scene you've ever watched in a movie? Disregard boxing or MMA movies. Hmm. Realistic action or fight scene that you've ever seen in a movie. Hmm. Um. Gosh, there's probably a lot, but I have to like think. I have to sift through all of the action scenes I've seen. It's gonna have to be uh, Clark against Zod in Man of Steel. That was my easy pick. You, you think it would be something like something from Saving Private Ryan, or I wonder if the uh, with the spirit of the question, they'd feel that should be disqualified as well, because it's a very. Uh, I wonder if they what they want probably is for us to select something like um, Hector and Achilles, so it's like still kind of. Fantasy-ish, but or Lord of the Rings, right? Like like Aragorn and um, Lutz. Yeah, but there's like some sort of realistic choreography, but not a fully grounded fight scene between. Mm. Like I don't like you wouldn't you wouldn't think of like the, in Saving Private Ryan as a fight scene, you know? Like it's it is a fight and it's happening in a scene, but you don't really think of it that way, I guess. Yeah, like you, uh, where you would call Aragorn and Lutz a boss fight, you wouldn't say that about any of the fights in Saving Private Ryan. I don't think it feels yeah, wrong, doesn't it? No it feels way. off. It does. Um, Let me see. But are are there some in early Game of Thrones that you might pull? The problem is, I feel like I'm ill-equipped to say. That's got to be like I would so want to defer to Shad because. Um, there are fights that I like more than others, and and you know when they like have the cavalry charge in alone, I can tell when stuff like that is unrealistic. But when you have like people clanging swords together in different strikes and moves, sometimes I can't tell if that's a you know legit move or not, or a legit defense or not. So um, there are f like uh, for those who would know, uh, Bron versus um, uh, what's his name? Um, so, Savadas, I think it was. Braun versus Savadas. That was a, a pretty cool fight. I wonder how Shad would feel about that one. Um, but yeah, I, you know, to be fair, when, I put it in my head now, so maybe that's why I want to pick it, but like, Aragorn versus Lawrence, Lawrence? What, what, did, what even? Lurtz was, uh, I remember that one feeling particularly uh, raw in, compared to a lot of Lord of the Rings fights, and I think it's because of the fact that both of them get really bloodied when, when doing that fight. Um, and the punches feel really hard. Uh, seem to be really hard, anyway. I it mean, the guy, he did... It. Hey, the, a real knife was thrown, so... Hmm. Hound vs. the Mountain? <laughs> Fuck no. You have received permission to show the meme. This was the meme, people of the <laughs> chat. <laughs> I feel like I don't even need to read it out. That's just something you appreciate if you can see it visually. <laughs> it's it's such a spicy tweet. <laughs> you know, what? somehow it's saying uh, the Wikipedia link is just it makes it even funnier again. I like makes it funnier. If it was just the picture, it's one thing, but then <laughs> not Wikipedia and .org there. It gives it this, <laughs> uh, this official kind of, you know, nature. Jay is literally for shit posting. That's true, yeah. I like it. Did Jay tweet it out after or no? I don't know, man. Well, I guess it doesn't matter now. It's It exists. We can only Given hope. Given his blessing. Uh, sorry, yeah, but any other answers for that question? Or are we, uh, we running out? We're on the fumes segment of, of EFAB right now. Yeah, I'm... <laughs> yep. Sorry, I, yeah, I just don't really know of a lot that come to mind that are, like, It's, it's sort less of to do with... Fights. Yeah, I don't it's, know it's, it's not to do with me running out of uh, fights to be able to reference. It's more so, like, 
It filters down. Know, sifting like, through all the fights in your mind. Because you know, off, like Kill Bill. Then... I don't think any of those fights are realistic. I don't really know. Um, because a lot of them are very fantastical, like like and stylistic. So I guess they wouldn't be considered. I don't know. Would would the raid fights be considered realistic? Or are they a bit too fantastic? You know, like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I don't think anyone's calling those realistic, right? Well, they used to fight like that, but they just don't anymore. It's uh, fallen out of style. Gosh darn. But yeah, I think uh, I would probably just want to um, uh, sort of kill Bill's all nonsense. Yeah, awesome, but not realistic. Yeah, that's so that's kind of where I'm at. I'm just like, I feel like I... I'm struggling to give good examples of what I would consider to be the greatest realistic fights. The Black Knight fight from Monty Python. Maybe there's maybe there's one or is what about Do you think Kingdom of Heaven might have one? Right. Maybe so, when How would I remember that movie? I I'm having trouble remembering it myself because that movie is so fucking dull. But I was curious, that's why I asked, like, maybe I just need help kind of remembering. It probably was a fight in that movie, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think, I think there, thing, I think yeah. things happened in that film at some point, I think. There was probably some stuff that happened. That film did have a plot. I oh, Mission Impossible Fallout bathroom fight scene, that was pretty cool. I don't know I if, like that. I don't know how it scores on the realism chart, but yeah. John Wick? Uh, maybe. Maybe the first one is some... Um, like in his house? I'd have to watch them again. Yeah, I'd have to watch them again. The fish Last slap dance. I'd have some... Monty Python. <laughs> the fish slap dance was... <laughs> that's probably what would happen, yes. Uh, that's one of those jokes where if someone watches it and just goes, I don't get it, I'd be like, and you never go to. Cause that's just that's just how it works. Well, oh, bus fight from nobody. Ooh. I saw that fight I on seen YouTube. That. that um I haven't seen the movie, I just saw that fight on YouTube as a clip for a promotion for it, and I think that might be up there. I'd have to rewatch it again just to make sure, but I remember watching it and I was like, ooh, that's that's not good. <laughs> like that. Wow, that's very unpleasant. I, people kept uh, recommending nobody, and then I finally watched it. And that bus scene—I ain't forgetting that anytime soon. That was uh, satisfying as hell to watch. I think they're making it a second nobody, though. I'm already like, oh no. Nobody too. E. Nobody else, maybe. But all right, that's the best we could do. Uh. Who other than Obi and Annie could beat Grievous? According to Clone Wars, the Gungans can. Uh, yeah, we uh, we saw throw the booba at the <laughs> alien uh, robot man. To be fair, they don't have a booba. They, Here, they, take if, this. If they threw like a thousand boobas at, uh, at <laughs> Grievous, he probably would struggle with that. <laughs> oh my god! They just load those things into a cannon like grape shots. <laughs> <laughs> it's just. <laughs> Dude, I'm picturing a starship that's <laughs> from Naboo, like, but Gungan starship just firing a laser worth of blue balls. Uh, char chars on the side. We still have the blue ball. <laughs> just a just massive shotgun pellet spray of boobas. Oh. You could intercut, like, the people on Return of the Jedi just screaming as the Star Destroyer is just blown up by the boobas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he literally starts and ends the Clone Wars. Yeah, the, the thing about like, uh, it, 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 like, what effect does Obi Wan really have on the plot line? It's like, let's not, let's never ask that question, please. If you like war movies and are fine with subtitles, I'd recommend Unknown Soldier from 2017. It's a very good Finnish war movie. Mm hmm. Fair enough. Alrighty. Uh, younglings and Jedi initi initiates have practiced lightsabers that are low powered to where it creates minor cuts and burns. They create their FP1 later. I just, why not go all the way and just say they don't do any damage at all except they're, they're like little batons, all right? Because I can believe that it exists in universe, 
little shocky sticks essentially that yeah. take the place of lightsabers. But I really wish there was like a a line where they either show it in the background, one of them getting hit, and he just goes like, you know, that kind of thing. Or they one of them hits it against their hand just to you know test the strength of it before that something like it would have been it would have been a really cool instead of him instead of a lot of things that happened in those damn movies a scene where we watch some Jedi training actually taking place that between Anakin and Obi Wan and they're they're sparring right and Obi Wan keeps he he keeps hitting Anakin because he's teaching him and they're learning and then eventually Anakin gets a hit on Obi Wan and. That's kind of like the payoff at the end is like, he's learning, he's getting better, and we could see the you know, lightsabers in action or something. And maybe they're like obnoxiously orange colored and the, at the hilt, or there's a particular color that they mm. put out so that you know it's a safety one. Something like that. There's there's things it could have done that would have been neat. Would have been neat. That would be great for the conversation about inference versus writing for the writers, right? Because I could easily see someone being like, no, those are legit lightsabers, and it's fucking stupid, uh, because they don't tell us anything different, so we shouldn't assume anything different, and uh, it's indicative of, like, how idiotic the Jedi blah 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 is. And someone else could be like, why would you assume that, instead of the, the idea that they're obviously safety lightsabers, and why do they have to explain that? It should be obvious. You know, it's like, where's the line on that one? And I'd just be like, I, uh, I'm, hmm. They, I mean, they seem to, it's not something that you have to go out of your way to explain. Maybe it's one of the reasons why it would be so easy to show it. It would just be an incidental part of the training sequences you see between a relationship that you really need to be building up as important and meaningful. Um, I think... Even in Aragon, the, the novel that I read ages ago, there was a spell that they would cast on swords to dull them so that when they were sparring, they didn't kill each other, which is pretty important. You don't want all your soldiers and warriors dying in training before they can fight. That would be... That'd be no Yeah, good. which is, in a sense, where the inference comes from, right? It'd be like, it would be too absurd if those were real lightsabers. Just way too absurd. Yeah, so you can't absurd. assume... That's, that's like a bad faith assumption. And I think that's kind of how you have to categorize it. Though I think I I can't do anything but conclude exactly what you said, which is like, there should be one reference. Just something. And it can be subtle, too. Just, come on, give us give us a chance here just to, just to be able to go, see, it's that. Done. Yeah, um, even if they were a special color you never saw in any other lightsaber that only the younglings used, that's enough for my, my, my mind to go... Um, yep, these are training lightsabers. And if the handles were like an obnoxious orange or yellow color, or they had just little things like that would be nice to see. Yeah. Uh, do, do, do. Kenobi sucked from episode one. A young Jedi goes to him asking for help and closure. Instead of telling hide and wait for the fight, he tells him to go bury his lightsaber. The fight is over. Not the Jedi code I know. Um, yeah, in retrospect, I'm not sure how I feel about that scene. I had lots of thoughts at once when I first saw it. Because it's like, what would Obi-Wan do with that guy? And it's like, well, if we can lay out all of the concerns he would have... Like, one, he doesn't want to be found as a result of this guy being found, because it compromises Luke. It's like, I can understand that, yeah. But he is Obi-Wan Kenobi, and this is a Jedi who's on the run, and probably a good person. So it's like, so he's gonna want to help him, right? Yeah. This is a moment that you use to explore the kind of person he's become after 10 years hiding. Mm -hmm. Would he legitimately send this Jedi? Is it possible that after 10 years, he might legit send this Jedi knowingly to his death if, it were, if he knew that it would take the scent off of Tatooine and therefore Luke? I think I, um, if we were writing it and, uh, you know, one of us said, yeah, it should be that he sends this Jedi off to essentially, you know, like, he just doesn't care about it, his fate. I think we would have to be like, I don't think we can do that, can we? Nobody should be That invested. would have to be something that you really justify hard, and I think that would be tough, and I wouldn't go that route. It would, now, I can absolutely believe a reluctance to get involved because of the stakes and what might happen, but ultimately a concession that this is a Jedi... They are in a similar situation to me. I can't just leave them. Um, 
I have a bit of hope with Andor, as it's a side project being written by Tony Gilroy and other Academy Award winning writers. Hopefully that will make the plot functional. Hi, Rags. Hello! Listen, I, I, I'm more than on board with giving it a shot for those reasons, and, uh, you know, we shall see. Y'all don't understand. Order 66 not only forces the clones to execute the Jedi, it also gives them the brain-eating disease. What? What brain-eating disease? How are they supposed to kill the Jedi if their brains get et? Is it a slow-acting disease, I assume? Is it... Is that like... It, is it like an insurance policy where once the, like the deed is done, the they all get killed so that they don't spread the word or something? Yeah, help me out. What's the brain-eating disease? I... Is it the, the Kuru? Do they give them the Kuru? Uh, maybe it's a joke. I can't tell with Star Wars anymore, which is ultimately no, I know. the problem. Oh, I was, I was yeah, legit going to say, I can't tell because it's the Clone Wars, and I've heard some weird fucking shit about what happens in the Clone Wars. Yeah. I think they just mean Stormtroopers are dumb. Okay, all right, we all good. We all good. Okay, all right. That right, clears things up. That clears things up. See, there's an in-universe explanation for everything. Uh, when I'm in a dick riding contest, I think, um, and I'm up against a Star Wars Twitter account. That's all it says. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, uh, did you have like a strategy that you employ to ride the dick the best, or make mm. I don't know? Like, is it the is it the amount of dicks that you ride, or the quality of riding particular dicks, or I don't know how one would judge the the winner of that kind of a contest? You think I would, but I actually don't. Uh, kick Princess J Ragbo wagons. Ragbo wagon. Jay has been kicked. All good. Everything Jay's is at peace. Jay is gone. Jay's no more. He's absconded with his Snyder meme. Uh, this is why the younglings had to wear helmets for Tai Chi. Being tapped on the head is extremely dangerous. Jedi take OSHA seriously. Apparently. Uh. Yep. It was the Force Touch from Hidden Dragon. Oh, the, uh, the, the blast is getting moved, I think is what they're saying. Slaps are more dangerous than touch. lightsabers in Disney. Probably, yeah. Well, if you're a stormtrooper, yeah, they're friggin' t completely incapacitating. Dude, that... I was already thinking to myself, like... That scene where she does that, it's like, well, what are our options? I guess you'd just be like, well, what if... She accounted for this. She knew ahead of time that she very likely would be potentially arrested. And so she's got something in her hand ready, maybe some kind of flashbang that she brought with her. Something like that. Why not? Why'd you have to make it so she slaps one of them in the face? That is like the dumbest shit. And then it's and, and we're always forgetting what she does afterward. She just like grabs the un the, the, the helmet of the other and like just pulls it forward. It's the it. kind of thing where someone does to you, and you're like, what are you, stop, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Not like, oh, no, I've, I've lost the ability to maneuver my limbs. I'm stunned. There were tons of practical effects in the prequels. True. Uh, they get overshadowed yep. a bit by the excessive CGI, though. Is what yes. most people feel. Some of the CGI is downright bizarre. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's bad CGI in the prequels, for sure. Uh, dun, 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 dun. I kind of hate how non-CGI effects are referred to as practical because it somewhat implies CGI is unnecessary. Oh, do you, like the classic definition of what is practical, um, as opposed to just thinking of it as meaning it's not done digitally, it's done physically. Mm-hmm. Perhaps unnecessary was the wrong term. I more so mean that practical has the connotation of meaning optimal, and to me it somewhat implies CGI isn't sometimes the practical choice. I, I understand what you're saying, yeah. Um, I know what they're saying, we, yeah. Like I said, we, we, we try to push back a little on the CG hate. I don't uh, like it. It's not, a good, it's not a good attitude. It's not one that you can defend, I don't think. Not, certainly not easily. 
Whenever I see anything from RLM about Star Wars, it's like they can't let the prequels be better than new stuff. I kind of got that sense. Uh, I hate to pull that card, right? But like, I don't. I think it's true that they think the prequels are basically the worst Star Wars ever got, uh, including the new stuff. I think they'd be willing to concede that the Rise of Skywalker is got to be at least on the level with the prequels, but you could tell they really fucking hate the prequels. The prequels are what really killed their like love of Star Wars, so of course they feel passionate about that. Um, it's And it's weird because like a lot of people, uh, and I know there's plenty of you in the audience, some people, their love was ignited by the prequels. So, you know, it, uh, it, it can be awkward to listen to sometimes because we see such a borderline between the quality of the prequels and the quality of, like, the sequels or some of these shows or some of the things that happen in them. I think, yeah, um, I don't mind them hating the prequels. I would just prefer if they didn't rely on referencing how bad the prequels are to prop up something like the Kenobi show. Like, what are you, what? What? Um, I think their argument, and mine too, is the use of unnecessary CGI like the cafe scene in Black Widow. Why wasn't it just a practical set? The thing is, I've, I, uh, I've said this before on EFAB, I think it was the No Way Home one we did, I have come around on that because there could very well be an incredibly good reason why that was green screened, uh, for all I know. And um, just as an example, because we brought it up before, but people would be like, why the fuck did they green screen the uh, Flash being in like a, like a house or whatever? It's like, seriously, you can't just put him in a house and record it? And it's like, they didn't have access to the actor and the set at the same time because of COVID restrictions and stuff. And so that was the solution, at least that's, uh, as I understand it. And th at the very least, theoretically, that's possible. And so I just think that it would be very easy for any of us to be in the situation of getting these scenes done on a timeline and being like, look, we can record this and we can composite him on. It'll look a little flat, um, but it'll get the, con like the, the important events of the scenes done, uh, whereas we wouldn't have them otherwise. I actually made this, was it? This EFAP, because things are starting to fall apart from my mind, um, where I was saying, like, if everything was forced to not rely on CG at all, while simultaneously having the same release dates, I'm pretty sure these movies would fall apart. Like, you have to get everything done, practically, uh, with the same de deadlines. I'm pretty sure they would all, instead of just having some shoddy CGI in lots of different scenes, they would just have downright unfinished scenes. And you have to just watch really awkward shit happening. Um, so even with the Black Widow example, there could be a very good reason for that. Uh, and I think that what we need to rely on instead of questioning why they would have done that, we should instead say, did you notice? And if I'm being completely honest, I definitely didn't. I thought it was all real. And that seems to me what the what the issue with No Way Home was. A lot of people thought that those scenes were real until they were shown that they weren't real. So, um, is it much of a problem if you can't tell at all? Or is it just a curiosity at that point? Which, by the way, totally fair to have that curiosity. I would like the answer for why they couldn't just film on a bench, but, uh, there could, there could be a reason, like Joel invented CGI to ruin movies. Bastard. I was saying he's behind it all. Something needs to stop this man. Correlation equals causation. The existence of EFAP is causing bad movies. Mola, what have you done? Also, hi, Rags. Uh, hello to you. To be fair, there are some people who uh, do support that idea. Like, uh, they think cinema sins and people like me are making huh. movies bad. Because movies, <laughs> movies listen to our criticisms, and it's just like, that's fucking hilarious that you think we have, like, any kind of influence to that degree, but also that the movies that are coming out, you think that's a result of listening to us? I wish we had that kind of sway in the industry. Just like, we've That'd had tits. some of the most nonsensical fucking movies in a long time in terms of, like, density. Um, that's like the opposite of what we want. Remember when they said, like, Rise of Skywalker is what you deserve when you criticize TLJ? It's like, you... Fuck off. For real? No <laughs> one wanted the Rise of Skywalker. No. You guys have to watch Lion King 93 and 19B2B. Oh, back to back. 
we're, we'll probably do that at some point. I kind of want to do the whole set with the Disney movies, but we need to pace them out. Because that's, um, it's a trying thing to do. The Dalmatians one was, um, man, that's going to get a sequel, you know? Cruella 2. Yeah, that, that, that is. That. Oof. Insane. I'm drawing here with a pencil and feel personally attacked. I don't remember why. Someone, you'd, because you had used, remember the CGI analogy you used? No. What did I say? <laughs> about, about pencil drawings? I'm still blanking. What did I say? You'd, you'd said that, well, that's like saying pencil drawings are worse than like Baroque art, or maybe that was Fringy. Yeah, I was going to say that would be... Say that. Someone would have said it wasn't me, whoever compared it to Baroque. That's not true. That's a lie. Well, it was, well, it was someone had used the analogy of pencil drawings in the place of CG. The, the idea was like, well, pencil drawings are often bad, but that's because pencil drawings are often used as a way to teach people how to draw. And it's often what like children and stuff have access to, so they're often bad. That doesn't mean drawings with pencils are just bad. Oh, okay. Because they're pencil drawings. Oh, I don't remember making that point, but I agree with it. Bad CGI is bad, so CGI is bad. Except when CGI is good, then it's okay. <laughs> all wrong. Uh, they just put Thags chat afterwards. Don't worry, chat. It's not directed at all of you, okay? All right. Uh, what would you guys say about Vermithrax from Dragon Slayer 1981? Go motion dragon looks really good in some shots. I I have not seen dra was Dragon Slayer? Was well, that the animated yeah. one? The uh Well so the what is Go Motion? Go motion? Is that like a variant of slow motion? Uh, sorry, stop motion? I do not know what Go Motion is. Someone will have to Google. Sound familiar that to you, uh know. Free? Go motion? No. Doesn't ring a bell. It could be like a autocorrect thing. Maybe that's just a, a way to animate, like a technique of animation. I assume is what they mean, like stop motion, go motion. Computerized stop motion. I know motion. about sorry, animate. I know no, it's not is. that. It's like a, yeah. yeah. I'm having a look at him. I'm just, uh, I'll see if I can tell what kind of style this is. Hmm. Huh. If I can get a good uh, selection here, I'll... I mean, you have to keep in mind, this, this is, 19, yeah, 1981. That ain't, that ain't half bad at all. Like, obviously you can tell, but I mean, you know. Hey, that doesn't ago. look too bad! Yeah. Go motion. Maybe I can show this on screen a little bit. Like, its its movement is a bit off, and the detail's a bit off, but man, 40 years ago? You know? That's legit pretty impressive. That's... that's not bad. That is quite impressive. Hmm. Uh, think about this. The 1986 movie Aliens cost $18 million to make with the mostly practical effects. The 2017 movie Alien Covenant cost over $100 million to make with CGI. I'd like to know the the inflation, though, of $18 million in 86 to what's the, what, that, what that would be worth in 2017. Is that something that can easily be figured out? You could probably, I, probably Google inflation. Maybe. What? So let me, let me take... Uh... So 18 million from 1986, what is that worth today? Let's or, I, do you look. know what I mean by that? I got it. Inflation go doesn't make US that difference. I don't, ex I don't expect it to if make in, that difference, but I'd still be curious how much it goes up by. If in 1988, right? 86. I purchased an item, 86, okay. 1986, I purchased an item for, and they said 18 million? Yeah. Then in 2022, let's see. Wasn't for 2017, if possible? It says, f oh, 2017. Yeah, let me do that. 2017. 40,257,000. Hmm. 
Well, I I think it was, as, as long as you do that, I think the point is still very well made, being that Aliens is fucking knocking it out of the park for less than half the money. Um, and saying, like, Alien Covenant was made with CGI, again, to me, is highlighting the wrong issues. Alien Covenant's writing is fucking horrendous. Either of you guys see That's that? That's the main problem. Um... Was that the one? No, that was Prometheus. Alien Covenant is the one after Prometheus, right? Yep. I feel like I know a lot. I don't think I've seen it, but I think I've seen enough reviews on it that I have a pretty good understanding of what's wrong with it. I remember at, least, at the time. Prometheus was like a big deal to me. And uh, I still remember when me and Smile went to go see it in the cinema. And then Alien Covenant, I didn't even... I, I remember finding out, it's like, oh, that's been out for like a year now. And then I watched it just online and I was like, that was... It's fucking awful, and that was almost worse, I think, than Prometheus. And I was just sad. That's okay. <laughs> well, we're sad all the time. Yeah. Y'all yeah. should rename this to NASCAR, because you're going in circles with this topic. I don't know which one they're referring to, but apparently which, we're going in circles on one of them. Yeah. Where's my Maybe nine... Where's my 9-11 propaganda film starring Matt Damon and Ben Affleck? Wait, was that a thing? I have no clue. I honestly don't. I remember there were 9-11 movies, but I don't remember what uh, who was in them. There was one with Nick Cage. Hmm. Sounds like a disaster. Darth Maul's revival was a big contrivance, but at least Legends and Clone Wars did interesting things with Maul, unlike modern-day Disney Star Wars revivals. So this is the thing, if you were passed to write the story of what does Darth Maul do after the person before you story, which is the story of how he managed to survive and it's all bullshit, it's like, you're past something that's pretty dumb, but you can now make what's probably a pretty fucking compelling story. I mean, everyone compliments what? Darth Maul's uh, stuff in Clone Wars in terms of his like personal struggles and everything, and it's just like, yeah, once you get past the dumb shit of him surviving that, uh, you can play with him a bit. It's fun you can do. Sure. I think so. Um, a guy called The Gold Man is doing videos called Overanalyzing the Obi-Wan Show. Each video is about 10 minutes and it is the most shallow form of analyzing I've ever seen. Thought you guys would get a good laugh from it. Well, if you're analyzing it and it takes 10 minutes, it can't be that detailed. I was about to say... It doesn't sound like a very much of a deep dive. It's only ten. That's like a third of most of the episodes. But um, yeah, you a, a deep analysis. I feel of almost anything is often going to lead to much longer than the actual thing itself. That's where we're apparently in the minority on that one, right? Because everyone thinks if you go over, that means you failed your task. Mm, yeah, well, those people are wrong. Why are you talking about Kenobi? It's Morbin time. By the way, have any of you actually gone and seen Morb himself? I haven't. No. Morb himself. No, I haven't. Nobody has. They even <laughs> re-released it in theaters because they insane. thought people wanted to watch it. <laughs> I like that idea. It's like literally nobody has seen that movie. Like not even well, one person. It. Everybody makes fun of it, but nobody's seen it. That's uh, why we make fun of it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Kenobi is part of the TVA and... Honda Baba's arm was supposed to get destroyed on Jeddah. That's why Kenobi had to cut it off on Tatooine. Ah. The fact that you know the guy's name. <laughs> That's, dude, that was the power of Star Wars like culture when the OT was out. And even the prequels, people knew the names of characters that were not named in the movies. And it was just normal. Like, um, this, this, but like it's gone to the point now where people forget the names of the fucking main characters from Star Wars. Or, yeah, know, like uh, who is the who is the chick from the Rise of Skywalker, the 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 chick with the fro and the bow, the bow and the fro. What was her name? Fuck! I thought you were talking about Zori Bliss, and I was about to be like, that I remember I. her, but I legit don't remember the one you're talking about. I remember who she was, but I don't remember her name. Lando's not daughter. I it, can't remember. According to chat, it's Jana. I never would have guessed that. Jana. Okay. Because I, I believe it or not, when you said Zori Bliss, I was like, oh, I didn't I didn't remember her name. <laughs> so. I don't know why I remember her name, but I do remember hers. 
Well, I mean, we all remember Babu Frick's name. <laughs> I'll never forget Babu Frick's name. It's That's not a dude. Uh, I won't forget it until I like till the day I die. Babu until Frick's the day name. I. I'm more than six I, feet under. I'm I'll never. That one. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's going to be the case. I don't think I'm. It's just the name you remember. One. It's a well, very memorable. How do you not? Frick. He spends like ten seconds in the movie, and he's just this incredibly overjoyed tiny engineer who does jobs <laughs> to help people out, and he makes those noises. Like that's just awesome. And it, it just it and that's works. what's so special about it. It's it's he's it's about family. The in Frick my... family. The Fricks. Babu and the Fricks. <laughs> the really great wholesome family show. Mr. and Mrs. Frick. In my head canon, Randy the Goblin is the chosen one. I think that's fair. He's gonna lead us out of this quagmire. Uh, Rogue One breaks hyperspace travel. Hyperspace travel is instant in Rogue One, which breaks all the other films. Is it is instant? It instant? I can't remember it being in. I just can't remember. If it's instant, then yeah, that, enough, that is um, an issue. Because funnily enough, people were comparing shots of Vader looking out of a, death, a Star Destroyer from the OT to Rogue One to the Kenobi show. And uh, the one they showed for uh, Kenobi had, I think he was staring at the, the hyperspace wormhole thing. And yeah, the Ro was, Rogue One yeah. one, I think he was looking at something else, but I, I was just like... I was trying to think, like, do they have shots like that? I, I don't remember this, the hyperspace travel in, in Rogue One. Was it was it really instant? No, I do remember in Rogue One, they stay accurate to sensing objects coming out of hyperspace. Which is yeah. where actually a clip from that I use for... For some reason, I needed to look up that clip um, about leaving hyperspace, but... I'm not sure. Yeah, um... I know I had to. I rewatched part of Return of the Jedi when I when we there was an episode of season two of The Mandalorian when all the ships are like next to each other going through hyperspace, and I'm like, is that a thing? Can you be with another ship that's like right next to you going through hyperspace? I'm like, I I don't know if that's a thing that you can do, uh, but they were communicating back and forth while going through hyperspace, and I was like, do they do this in Return of the Jedi when Lando and the rest of the fleet are doing it? And they don't. They they don't show any dialogue between the rebel fleet mm. in between you see them taking off and the next time you see them where they leave hyperspace. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, it seems to me that um, it's, the, it's like the golden rule of, you know, hey, George, how does this thing work? And he's like, you know what? I'm just not going to show you the answer. I'm, just not, I'm not going to confirm it does not work the way you think it might, because it could cause me problems later down the line. At least it feels that there's a dynamic of that sometimes in Star Wars stuff earlier on. Just use it to get around quick, and that's about it. It's like poetry. It rhymes. Also, here's a cool fact. In Battlefront 1, when you aim your gun, your player model, of course, also aims their gun, but they also have a facial animation that will have the soldier close one of their eyes, except the... Except the U.S. snipers, who were at the time already trained to aim with both eyes open. That's an interesting attention to detail. Hmm. They do that. That is a detail in Battlefield Five. Whenever you are aiming down sights, your character model, they will close their off eye as they look down the sights of their uh, rifle. Those little things you, would, you, might, you might never know. Because you'd have to see someone else doing it. Because of course you don't notice it in your own character's model. But neat little, uh, neat little piece of detail there. There's a lot of little neat, neat, neat details in that game. Uh, if you go into water, then your character's model will get wet, like visibly wet. Cloth darkens everything, you know, things of that nature. And then you will dry from the top down. So after a while, your character will be half wet after you, you slowly but surely dry off. And the when you're in the mud and your character moves around in the mud, your character model picks up the mud on the character model. And it's it looks pretty accurate based off of where, you know, based on like the cloth and everything that you're wearing. There's a lot of neat details in that game. Shame they gimped it with a horrific PR and an awful launch trailer. Hmm. Um... I just saw one come in just now that said, I hated the first two episodes of Stranger Things Season 4, should I continue? 
Um, I thought season four, episode four was the, that was the one that I thought was actually worth other people having seen. I don't know exactly what I'd say about the first three, and so if you're not enjoying the first two, you probably should stop. I guess I, I don't think you're gonna like the rest if you didn't like the first two. But um, I was also gonna say we're about to hit eight hours. And uh, oh, wow. I'm afraid I've got to get up relatively early tomorrow, and so I don't think I can go on any longer. However, we've made it through half of tonight's Super Chats, and so I shall save them. Hopefully, we will we'll not, we'll not develop as enormous a backlog as we once had. We will figure out a place for us to answer these. Um, in fact, our final Kenobi recording is happening on Wednesday. Oh boy! We'll and see how they wrap it all up. Well, and, and if you and, and Fringy and myself are available, we could uh, do all of the remaining ones of tonight, as well as the ones that have come in from the premieres of the Kenobi episodes, as well as Streamlabs. We could do them in probably like a two-hour thing. Um, or maybe less, I'm not sure, if you guys are on board. But uh, closing early today, I, th I think eight is a nice, safe, solid... Eight's a long time. That's a third of the day of right there. Yeah. Um, so... Chat, let me ask your opinion on this. What do you think is the, the best way to go about this, right? This episode of EFAB, should it wait to be put out until Monday, because Kenobi's coming out tomorrow, or should I switch them? Or should both of them go out tomorrow, but like, I don't know, try and face them out, I guess? What do you, what do you think? Wait, what are you talking about? Well, because I've got, usually, our Saturday EFAPs go out on Sundays, right, onto the Moolah, but uh, I've also got a Kenobi episode to premiere, so right. it's not like I want to put them out at the exact same time. Yeah, I got you. If someone said this on Monday, but a lot of people, it's Kenobi tomorrow. Everyone wants Kenobi out, I understand that, especially the All people right. who are here right now, because they fucking listen to this podcast already, so. <laughs> They're like, more new Including us, I think, like me. Probably so. the way to go, I think. So, yeah, does that make sense then to put, so this episode will be put on Moolah on Monday then. Um, some people were saying okay, yeah. both, but I just, I, I, don't, I don't know, it just clashes them up, you know? And I, just, I, just, and I figure mm -hmm. it makes more sense to do it the other way. Um, we have a bias, Mullah. That's okay. I was just looking to see what people thought. Uh, so yeah, the the plan is then Kenobi tomorrow. I'll see you there for the old uh, live premiere, and then Monday will be this. Tuesday for me anyway will be real BBC. But also, if possible, uh, episode five of of the Kenobi. Could we'll be Tuesday. We'll see how we on that one. Yeah. Yeah, we got a lot of work to do in a short amount of time. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because, like, for anybody who's confused about this compared to Boba Fett, like, me and Fringy both had lots of life things happen at the exact same time as having to do this, and so it's been crammed into loads of random... Not only when we can even record it, but also when it's getting edited. And so the disjointed way you've seen the release is a result of that. Um... Though, of course, we're hoping to, to get the last one out promptly after recording it uh, on, on Wednesday. Can't wait for the Kenobi finale. Gonna be brilliant. I'm mm -hmm. sure about it. Um, and yeah, so that, that's, that's all updates other than just general working away right. on a bigger project. For myself, uh, if you guys want right. to go ahead, say, say whatever you want. Oh. Right. You know... <laughs> I think that, uh, I think we've said enough. I think that uh, everything that needs to be said, we've said. Couldn't possibly be anything else that is more or less episode 191 of Every Frame of Pause. Fair enough. In my case, um, you remember Top Hat's rags? I Top do Hats indeed. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. His point-and-click adventure game, Born Punk, is now out. It came out yesterday slash today depending on where you are in the world i did a little bit of writing work for it if you're interested in playing a point and click cyberpunk adventure game akin to like the ones that came out in the 90s monkey island and whatnot it's out on steam if you want to check it out there's a link go uh go give it a gander if that sounds interesting to you uh otherwise for me like specifically me it's mainly gonna be uh obi-wan <laughs> 
and then and then other projects when I can get around to those eventually. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's that's my two cents of runies and pieces and stuff. Well then, uh, thank you all so much for joining us. And yeah, we are we are getting eerily close to that anniversary stream. Things I, I guess I'd like to say that I usually start warning people about this far away from it. If you've got anniversary memes or videos, now is the time to start thinking about post renoing them because now is the time. Yeah, you might just. Uh, I, I'd like to try and get them all involved and in before I. I don't know, run out of the chance to be able to collect them and stuff. So you still got, like, what is that, two and a half months? Two months, I think. Yeah, two months until the stream itself. But two months flies by, all right? That's how it always goes. And, uh, you know, four-year hype. I know, right? It'll be four whole years of EFAM. Can you believe that, right? Can you? Can you? No, I can't. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I don't believe it. You are lying to it's me. It's around about four you years. Must be. Since Patrick Willems said, why the fuck do you care about plot holes? And we were like, let me explain. I know that wasn't the first episode, but it was close enough. <laughs> it's like a week after. Um, the genesis, the origins, the beginning. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I'm sure there'll be plenty of fun times ahead. But uh, thank you so much for giving us a, a little old listen. Hopefully you had fun. We shall see you on the next broadcast, being tomorrow. Fun times. Okay, goodbye, everybody. That's right. Be there or be square. Be there or we will stab you in the chest with a lightsaber, ah. which is only meant to inconvenience you, so it's all right. I'm pretty sure most of our viewers have several stomachs, but we'll be fine. Um, <laughs> it yeah. takes a lot of stomachs to be able to uh, well, stomach a lot of the stuff that we cover. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for the donations. Yeah. Thank you for the helpful engagement. You, 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 you provided uh, some, some interesting factoids for us tonight, as well as helpful bits and bobs in chat. Thank you so much. Toodle pip. Bye bye, 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 everyone. Bye, bye, bye. Toodaloo.